Greetings. Wait, why isn't the chat box working? That's weird. You guys guessed it. Today's a special day. Today we're going to stream 24 hours playing Plunderstorm double XP. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Then I'm glad to see that the Twitch and YouTube chat animosity has been continuing while I haven't been streaming. Someone in YouTube chat, <laughs> type one if you think Twitch chat is bad. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, they're typing it in Twitch chat. Oh, they're typing it in both chats, dueling ones. Dude, for some reason, my, uh... My chat plugin isn't working. Let me see if I can fix it. See if I can get it to work. I want to have this work before today for sure. Guys, today is is a is a great day. It's a great day where nothing of importance happens, where we all just enjoy each other's company. It's very sweet. Then why are you up so early? What do you fucking mean? Oh, fuck you, alarm. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm turning a new leaf. Maybe, maybe I'm fucking... Maybe I'm built different now. You guys don't think I could just... You guys don't think I could just fucking get up early? You guys you know how easy it is to just get up early? Nah, you're right. I could never do that shit. Actual fucking madness. Alright, I think I'm, I'm gonna change the URL. Of the chat thing, boys. There we go. Let's see if it works. Well, this is the Streamlabs chat box. I mean, this isn't even the right one. I guess that kind of works, right? Isn't that how it always has been? Maybe it's usually a little bigger. Max, season four is next week. No need to get up early. Wait, actually? Did I get the fucking dates wrong? Uh, 
Oh man. I got it for no no reason, man. That stinks. Back to bed. Just kidding, you can still play Plunderstorm all day at double reputation. Yay. Boys, it's gonna be a fucking Omega stream today. Non stop streaming. Dude, my chat box, I need to just make it bigger, I think. It's just so small. Well, that's way too big. It's just so big, and YouTube chat has to look at it. Here, one second. Let me... Let me, uh... Let me change it up. It's crazy going from Plunder to WoW Remix to this over the course of like a month. I know, it's like nonstop WoW. Well, I don't even know what you're referring to um, about to this, of course. But uh, yeah, it is, there's a ton of, ton of shit happening. What are, you, what are you typing caught for? Alright, one second. I'm gonna try to fix the uh the chat box again. I have the uh I have the link. I have the link. I repeat, the link has been given to me. Here we go. Oh there we go. It's extremely big. Oh my god, man. What a day to play Plunderstorm. Max, why is everyone on for the two times Plunderstorm rep? Where else do you get this kind of opportunity, right? Like, have there been moments in wow in the Earth's entire history where you could get double reputation on Plunderstorm? No, except for right now. No, nah, it's not Plunderstorm, though. It's not Plunderstorm. Guys, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen today. There's there's one thing that is definitely fucking for sure that is going to happen in the next hour. And that is, I am not saying a goddamn fucking thing about what's happened today. 
<laughs> if there's anything that's true, you guys can try to get me all you want. If there's anything that's true, I'm not saying a goddamn fucking word about what is happening today because I don't want to. I don't want to get in trouble with the authorities. So. Alrighty, boys. Time to go live. Except, it's nothing important or special. And it's just my face. And my dog's, my dog's fighting. Looking, looking pretty strong right now. Reptar with an early advantage. Oh yeah. But Lily's certainly not backing down. Lily's, I think, using exactly 1% of her energy to fight Reptar at the moment. Oh, going for a quick sniff. Quick little, quick little sniff break. Back into it. <laughs> Alright, very good. Full face cam. Dude, should I just stare at you guys for an hour? That'd be insane. Ugh. Oh, they're still they're still just they're going crazy. Max, when are you gonna lower your webcam? Did you guys notice I got new lighting? I, uh, it's more, like, bright in my room now and shit. I, I have, like, some new key lights. It's very, very pro bono. No, YouTube chat, I, I'm reading. Dude, someone in YouTube chat said maybe if we just glaze Max super hard, he'll pay attention to us. I already do, bro. Where did this narrative start that I ignore YouTube chat? I've never fucking done that. That's fake. That's fucking fake news. That's like some Twitch chat propaganda. Go Reppy T, Cheerky. He's such a good boy. We'll let Re we'll let little Reppy say hi. Hey little dog. Come here little dog. Oh he has his monkey. He loves his monkey. One second. Let me get this thing. All right, check this out. Reptar, go get the monkey, buddy. Come on, go get your monkey. Oh, he loves the monkey. He's gonna shake the shit out of that thing, look. Is he gonna do it? Come on, shake it. Shake it, buddy. Dude, he violently shakes toys, by the way. Like. Crazy stuff.
Why are you guys typing giyat? What does giyat mean? <laughs> what is a giyat? <laughs> Is Reptar part Ridgeback or Vesla? I don't know. He's just a he's a he's a street dog. He's a mutt. He's got a bunch of stuff in there. I found that dog on the road. He's one hundred percent dog, though. I know that. Wait, what's up? Hey, Max. I just wanted to pop in and say the content you produce is great. Yay. And even though, even if you don't know about the Aldrachi, you're still a pretty... What? What the fuck are you talking about? Wait, the DH thing? Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do not know what the Eldrachi are or the Reavers. Yeah, because I, I said I said that getting a hero talent tree called the Eldrachi Reaver like wasn't cool, but then someone told me that the Eldrachi Reaver is like a fucking crazy colossus beast that would like win wars by themselves. Like actual gladiator war war machines which is pretty insane like that's that's pretty sick dude honestly i'm kind of an eldrachi You could you could look at things that way. I think of myself like that. You know? Hmm? 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 Max, what wars did you win, good sir? All of them. You know, I'm something of an Eldrachi myself. Yes, yes. Reppy T trying his damnedest to get Lily on the ground, and she isn't even trying. Yeah. One of these days, though. Oh, Rebdar just got taken the fuck out, by the way. He, Lily has had enough. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. On God, Lily. Yeah, you're right. Lily Lily is literally using 1% of her energy. But she's very loud. <laughs> is that Ella just chilling? Yeah, she's Ella's sleeping in the corner, by the way. I just like how Lily actually entertains Reptar. Reptar will just get like tossed to the ground from Lily just moving and then like and then, and then Reptar will just come up and bite her neck like, rah! <laughs> Hi, baby girl. Are you hyped for the NHL playoffs? Yes. Yeah, Lily is kind of an Eldrachi Reaver. Kind of. Max, do you really not know what a giyat is? Dude, of course I do. That's the whole bit. I was even saying it weird and everything.
Dude, who doesn't, who doesn't li love a nice yacht? You know? It's one of the best things in the whole world. Max, my GM killed you in an undercover stream you did for Anduin. I know it's a reach, but is there any way or chance I can get that VOD? It's for her birthday. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's that been... Unfortunately, if I started YouTube streaming earlier, those VODs never go away. But yeah, uh, Twitch deletes them. That was years ago. Yeah. Definitely gone. Maybe someone randomly recorded that. I've had that happen before. Where I'm like, this VOD is gone forever. And one of my viewers is like, here, I have it. And I was like, why the fuck do you have that? Like, why are you just randomly recording my stream? But yeah, they had it for some reason. Max, lay some wisdom on me. I read on Twitter, Mythic Rizzy Glizzy got 2.6 billion HP help. Don't worry, we can go over that in 41 minutes. When, uh, what you guys have all been waiting for happens. Which is, the boss health data mining for the Season 4 raids will be public. I said it. Fucking NDA chat. I said it. I said it. Let's fucking go. I'm going to get thrown in the brig. <laughs> uh, hello, Mr. Streamer. Why did you violate your NDA? Well, my chat convinced me I'm an Aldrachi Reaver. So I asked myself, what would an Aldrachi Reaver do? And it's definitely not be constrained by some fucking legal language. So I just had to do it. So is season four going to be super short or something? I don't know, probably. I'm not going to play season four. I have no clue. You guys are on your own. Uh, I don't, I mean, I think the expansion is going to come out. Man, I've been, I've been saying for a while, I think the expansion is coming out in like August. Which is pretty fast. I think. No, I don't. I don't. I have no idea when the expansion is going out. Bro, do you realize how insanely in trouble I would be if, for some reason, I actually did know, and I've already told you guys that I was under NDA for something, right? Or I guess implied that. Can you imagine if I just went live while under NDA and was just like, hey, and they did tell me that? <laughs> And then I just said the date. Like, that would... I would never do anything ever again in WoW. But, like, I, I would I would be nuked from orbit. I don't know shit. It would be based... Wait, what the fuck would an Eldrachi Reaver do, though? I feel like you could just say it, right? Actually, let's ask ourselves, what would Towley do? And he would definitely leak everything. <laughs> Do you know how many times Tally has leaked shit with zero consequences? They might have tried to 
reprimand him, but he's just like a OG. Like, what the fuck are you going to say to Towley? Like, Towley has the most I don't give a fuck energy of all time. Like, he just doesn't care. <clears throat> oh, man. What a beautiful day. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Ah! When will there be another time in our lifetime? In our lifetime! That Plunderstorm can get double rep. Actually, wait, when is Plunderstorm going away? Is it next week? April 30th? Yeah. Title change, spill the beans. I did add something to my title. I'll t Guys, I can change my title whenever you want. I can change my title again. I could just type alien invasion soon. Like, it wouldn't matter what I, what I put in my title. Leaked? <laughs> yeah, I leaked that, yeah. That's a confirmed one right there. Oh, random quick shout, by the way. I had to clear some space on my computer recently, and I, like, went into Steam, and I was wondering why, and I just have, like, 50 games downloaded that I hadn't uh, fucked with for a while. <laughs> and uh, that that was good. I mean, there were some games that I would never play again for the rest of my life, for sure, that just were taking up 100 gigs. The old spring cleaning. Delete D4. Oh, yeah. I think I do still have D4. I'm, guys, I'm giving D4 one more season. I've heard good things from content creators this next season, but I, I'm with you. D4, definitely bad. They made huge mistakes. But I lived long enough to play D3 for that game to become super good. A lot of people didn't end up playing it, but like D3 got way better and it was a really solid game for playing the seasons the last couple of years before D4 came out. For like last five years. If D4 ever gets there, I'll be happy to play it. Right now it is definitely a steaming pile. <laughs> Dorky is live at this hour. Something huge must be happening. I'm glad you mentioned Dorky being live at this hour because all of you understand that I'm a responsible enough adult that for me being up at 8.30 a.m. is like, you don't even blink, right? You're just like, well, I mean, of course Max wakes up at 8.30 a.m. He probably does chores or runs errands or like files his taxes, right? Just things that you wake up early to do. But for Dorky, you're like, oh my God, he's up early. Because for me, I just I'm so, I just do so many things, you know. I am leaking that gi yacht. Yeah, the gi yacht. Is this what you think we do? Wake up and file taxes? I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Or, or look at your paper bills, or, like, look at, uh, look, read the newspaper. Dude, I think my dad still steady rips the newspaper in the morning, by the way. Just reads that shit while he drinks coffee. Crazy, crazy vibes. Yeah, that goes, it, it goes unreasonably hard because, like, you could probably just get that on your phone instantly when you wake up in a much more readable format that doesn't involve a bunch of paper, but my dad will just, like, read a whole-ass newspaper, you know?
What? 1,100 YouTube viewers in here and only 31 likes. A lot of fakers in here. Dude, fucking facts, dude. If you're on YouTube and you don't like this stream right now, you hate me. Think about that. Think about that. And on Twitch, you guys don't have a like button. If you guys have something close to it, it's called a subscribe button. Um, so you could use the same argument for that. Good, you guys liked? Okay, good, good. Make sure you do that. Hey, let's get some subs. Yeah, vegan for life. There we go. Let's get, let's get some subs going, guys. That's the only way I know if I'm doing well. There we go. Let's let's get him. Let's let's yes, sir. Make me VIP. You won't. Okay. I did. Make me a mod if you want. Okay. Slash mod plunder Craig. Wait, plunder Craig? Do you have a channel specific bit Twitch name? That's a... That's like a recent one too, because like... Thunder Craig is from the undercover raid leader video, and Plunderstorm is from plunder... And so plunder Craig, the mixture, that is like a... When did you make that account? Here's what he said so far today. I am leaking that gi yacht. I am leaking that gi yacht. Pog you. Fuck you. Make me a mod you won't. And then he got made a mod. <laughs> that's his only... That's the only thing he ever said. <laughs> that is so good. I love the random fuck you right after the pog. For no, I don't even know what he was talking about. Holy shit. That is the... By the way, that is the average max mod. That is... That is how they got mod, is by doing something like that. Dude, Frank uploaded my reaction to that podcast... On YouTube. And it did, like, really well randomly. It did extremely well on, on the tube. Well, I mean, I don't think that's, I guess, super surprising because the more viewers you get, the more your content pertains to casuals. It literally says casual in the title. But, like, bro, it got released, I think, at the beginning of yesterday. And it has 80k views on... On a two hour and 45 minute video in like a day, which is kind of crazy. It was really, it was really nice. And then I, and then I saw they, they actually came out with a new episode. Um, plenty of boss here. They responded to this. They came out with a new episode. I saw it. I listened to the Johnny beginning of it. Welcome back to Around the Mage Table, episode seven. Welcome to all our new subscribers. Um, I want to start today's episode off with a big thank you for those who don't know. Uh, Maximum, uh, who is, uh, I believe, the raid leader, maybe even the guild leader of Liquid. Uh, one of the You don't even know me? Guilds, okay, never mind. Uh, did a reaction stream to our last episode, uh, which was where we talked about the Asmund Gold three bad takes. And we don't want to harp too much on it. I just want to say thank you to all of you who subscribed. We greatly appreciate it. We found watching the stream, even with y'all live, we did most of it live, uh, very, very funny. And honestly, there was some really good feedback. So uh, I'll introduce everyone in case you forgot them. We got Shawnee over here who... Let's go. And their shit blew up too. Their last episode had 90, had 90 views over the course of like two weeks. And now they got a thousand. They got a bunch of subbies. Let's go. Wait, did it say new? Wait, did it? Was his name new Leo on the thing? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second.
Johnny over here, who's got a new microphone. How's Ro wait, 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 wait. So the the guy at the top left is Robot Overlord. Did I call him that? <laughs> this guy's new Leo. He is new Leo. And then and then Technic is Flashbang CEO. Pretty true. What does this one say? New Mike Shawnee. Garbage girl arguments. I did not say that. I think that was okay. Do you guys remember the bit at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the stream where we looked at that guy's comments under the video and it was like an Asmongold fan who started his statement by saying, "Believe me, I'm not just an Asmongold fan." And then he said that he never played WoW but had every single strong opinion Asmongold has about it. Which, like, how could you have those if you never played WoW? And then he said, and then he just kept like shitting on her and he's like this girl just doesn't know what she's talking about i'm pretty sure he said garbage girl arguments but i'm just gonna exonerate myself from that real quick i did not say that at all so just i'm gonna i'm gonna just, just we're just making that sure that's a hundred percent clear <laughs> that would be insane can you imagine if i reacted to that podcast and i was like yeah this guy's cool new leo we got the ceo and oh this girl's takes that shit's garbage <laughs> it'd be so bad Oh my god. That would be like the, that would be like the most I mean that would be the most like average Twitter user experience of all time, but yeah, holy moly. <laughs> Prove you like girls and make me a mod in parentheses I'm a girl. Oh, that's the easiest out ever. Holy moly, I'm giving you mod. <laughs> holy shit. Cater wall games. Shout out women. Shout out women, chat. All women. Let's go. Yeah, you like... You're a fan of women? Name all of them. Okay. Dude, I think my sister is a, is a superwoman. She is a ER doctor in Miami. Who doesn't like working at the big private hospital. She likes working in the cut in the middle of the city. Where like there's a lot of homeless people and stuff. And she did like Doctors Without Borders in Africa. She's a huge beast. She's a woman of the people. sister out here saving the world and you play video games I mean you don't have to put it like that you could put that so many different ways than that yeah I am saving the world in parentheses of world of Warcraft oh my god guys 25 minutes Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. My fucking god. 25 minutes for nothing to happen? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, I'll give you guys a hint. I'll give you a hint. There's a new storm out. That's what everybody likes, right? Everyone likes mounts for money. I actually just made that up, by the way. I don't know if that's true. Just in case anyone was going to get their hopes up. I lied. I lied about that. Plunderstorm 2 confirmed. Okay, I would actually be hyped about that. Wait, did anyone watch the uh did anyone watch the Czar thing yesterday? Czar had like a Plunderstorm tournament. I didn't do it because there was some stuff going on that day. I got asked to be a captain of it last week, but I uh I I declined. Very bad timing. Trill was owning. Yeah, Trill stays owning. Trios wasn't as good as duos. Well, that tournament was very different. It had way less creators that people know, which was like a big reason why the first one was so hyped. 
uh, and it had a different format. Like, it had the format of just who has the most points, which actually ended up being somewhat interesting, but usually tournaments like that are not interesting because you know who wins before you even watch the last game, so it's kind of anticlimactic. Uh, but it actually ended up working out well, as far as I know. Um... Wait, Max, watch the Zaryu reaction to your mop mount take. Uh, he tweeted his reaction to my take. Um, we had like a little Twitter exchange. Well, not an exchange. I didn't respond to him, but... Uh, where is it? Here we go. I said... Farming 38k... Okay, so this is about how the reins of the Heavenly Onyx Cloud Serpent originally dropping from the Shaw of Anger will cost this during an upcoming remix event. And you guys know, anytime they're bringing back old stuff that's like... Well, this isn't even unobtainable. Like, you can currently obtain it in the game. But, like, the argument is always like, well, if, like, these things matter, like... If you give... There's a lot of people who are like, if you give this away for free, people will, like, use it one time. It'll just become another mountain in their journal and it won't mean anything to them and it will reduce the meaning for the people who farmed it and those people have an argument and then there are people like hey i wasn't even playing mop because i was like a fucking i was like a baby when mop came out and like it'd be cool if we had some way to acquire these that required a lot of work or whatever and those people have a good point right and then there's most people in the middle which is my guess is that there's most people don't fucking care including the people who actually have these things uh, especially this mount in particular had a bug where, like, every evoker got it at the beginning of this expansion and they didn't remove them. So, like, this is a weird one to plant your flag in that hill. But anyways, what I said is, farming 38k bronze takes forever. You still felt that feeling when the mount dropped for you and other people not having it still have to work for this. These takes are super tiring. The majority of people, even of those who have these prestigious things, don't give a fuck. That's what I said. And then I think, uh... Uh, and then this was his response. Is it what you wanted me to look at? If Blizzard wants to introduce new ways to farm mounts, is awesome. And hey, whatever middle ground for us to all agree. In my opinion, introducing new ways to farm old mounts with an established farming method in place for 10 years, percent based drops is clear bait and switch and quite frankly, a bit disrespectful to the player base. I just think that's a little too extreme. That's all. But also, it's okay for people to have different opinions. All good. I think he also had another response. Not in response, but like a different post altogether. Sang said, give me unobtainable mounts. Dude, Sang, you want to do a mount off right now, you little, you little fucking weasel? I have, I have a mount you'll never have, buddy. That, that's the best thing about mount offs, chat, is someone can have actually 500 more mounts than you, like Sang does, I think, or more. I, he has literally every mount in the game. Uh, but you can just pull out one mount you know they don't have, and then it's like fucking checkmate, idiot. Get out of my lobby. Actually, I don't even know if I if I have a mount that he doesn't anymore. For a while, it was one of the TCG mounts. It was the the Shore Strider one, but he got that one a while ago. What a beautiful day, chat. What an absolutely beautiful day. Max, have you seen Fallout? I watched the first couple episodes. It seemed pretty good. I really like the uh, the character, the, the actor that plays Lucy. She seems really good. And obviously Walton Goggins. Bro, Walton Goggins? I like every show that Walton Goggins is in. Like, he's basically always doing the same bit. Like, Walton Goggins basically just acts and just says shit like, I'm Walton Goggins. <laughs> he just basically just does that throughout the whole show. But it fucking owns. Uh, which is great. Uh... And, uh, yeah, I don't know. The whole Brotherhood of Steel part d isn't grabbing me right now, but, uh, yeah. Hmm, I'm Walton Goggins. <laughs> it's just, he just talks like that, man. It's great. 
He also just looks like a Walton Goggins. I said this the other day on stream, but like you could line up 100 people. You know how like in crime shows, they'll like have a lineup and they ask the person to pick the, the person who like stole their purse or whatever. You could line up someone who's never seen Walton Goggins before with 100 other people and there's only one Walton Goggins in there and they'll be like, pick out Walton Goggins and they'd point right at that motherfucker. He looks exactly like what Walton Goggins would look like. Uh. Max, watch Yellow Jackets if you like Lucy's actor. Okay. Actually, I don't know. I probably won't do that. I I've got a lot of stuff going on. I I do need I need to I still haven't seen Shogun. I heard Shogun's super sick. I heard it's like a like a samurai Game of Thrones, but not really, and way better than that. I heard there's like a really annoying character though. The book is sick. Wait, so is this one of those scenarios where the show is based off of a popular book? But the book readers are not insufferable to listen to, listening to their commentary about said show about their book. That is amazing. The book is pretty old, doesn't have the same kind of fans. I raise you the Foundation Asimov fans about the Foundation Apple TV Plus show, which, by the way, absolutely slaps. Or Rings of Power uh, Tolkien fans, book readers. Not to say that Rings of Power was, was not uh, flawed in many ways, uh, but those people wanted that show to be bad before it ever came out very strongly, and that was very insufferable. I had the the in the levels of insufferable about Rings of Power before it ever even released told you all you needed to know. Lee Pace is an extremely attractive human being and you had to point out that you're a straight male. I mean, yeah, facts, dude. There's nothing guys, there's it is perfectly straight and fine to just like acknowledge that other dudes are beautiful, you know, like sometimes they just look way better than you. It happens every single time I watch a, a Van Rookie take, I get unreasonably mad. It's just not fair, man. Dudes out here hiking and shit. Fuck off, man. This is me watching every Mac stream. Thank you. I'll take that. I've I've been I've been working hard lately. I'm I'm feeling great. I'm in the best shape of my life right now, for sure. Lowest body fat percentage, best like actual physical shape. Playing playing hockey all the time. Feeling feeling real good. Yeah, but how's your Riz level? I don't think you can talk about your own Riz. That's the most anti-Riz thing ever. But I have, I have, I've been called the Rizard of Oz before. Or the Rizzler. By, by, by some, by many. They also called me the Red Baron in high school. Oh my god, 13 minutes. Holy moly. Ah. 
New Wowhead post? Let's check out Wowhead. What's Wowhead talking about? Yo, by the way, before you guys see my Google history here and it says sex wax before maximum videos, just know you put that on your hockey stick. You can look it up. Excellent wax. Have a bunch of sex wax. Uh, Wowhead. Good for skiing, too. I think it's for surfing, but it is it is OP hockey wax. Um, Dragonflight Collection Edition on sale. Only $100. That's a lot of dollars. I think they sent me one of these. Oh, yeah, dude. I got one of these bitches right here. Behold, chat. Oh, shit. It's dusty. It is dusty. Dusty, though. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they have Dragonflight Collector's Editions, but how many of you guys have some fucking dusty ones? Some straight dust. God, today's gonna be so busy, man. I... There's... I, I don't even know how I'm gonna get through today. With coffee and... Uh, Oh, wait, I need to, like, set a water reminder. You know, let me, let me, actually, every, everybody, water break, water break, water break. Everybody, make sure you have a suitable amount of water so you don't have to get up today. Standing desks, put them in standing position. Let's all let's all make sure we're prepared here. Check your posture. No no JB shrimp. Or if you don't want to drink water, just get like five or six uh, white monsters. Be right back. Scatter. Get out. Get out of here. I fucking see you, big dog. Get out. Dude, Cloudy actually loves this bit, by the way. He does this every day. In 100 years when Cloudy passes, or even longer because he's an unstoppable Aldrachi beast, they're going to put on his tombstone, he loved to type excavator bits in Max's chat. <laughs> VIP me? Fuck no. All right, maybe, maybe later today, if I remember. Guys, eight minutes. All right, let me get my title change all pre-typed out. Nah, I'm gonna fuck that up. I'm gonna do that in a couple minutes.
All right, guys. Okay. You know what? I'll spill the beans. I'll spill the beans. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. We're all getting our own privately owned and operated McDonald's franchise. Let's go. Everyone get one. Everyone gets one. McDonald's. Woohoo! Everybody gets a new Honda. I made that up by the way. I can't I can't don't hold me to that. The McRib is coming back. Yeah. Yeah, you know what it is. Wait, Tally's title is everything to see here. Wait. That title's kind of objectively better than mine, because mine is saying there's nothing to see here. So why would someone click on my channel instead of his? Alright, the game begins. I'm just going to leak everything early. Fuck it. And if they ask me why, I'll say it's because Tally made me do it. Actually, I'll be honest, chat. An NDA could never hold me down. Like, can they even enforce it? Are NDAs even enforceable? I say no. I say no. I mean, what's the worst that could happen, right? Like, okay. Like, Blizzard sues me. Well, woohoo. Yeah, right? And then... Uh, I'll just make a bunch of, like, Asmongold clickbait wow hate videos for the rest of my life. Who wins? Who wins? Me? You? Who knows? We'll see how it plays out. It's probably not that bad to get sued by a... by a, a company that sold for $70 billion. That'd probably end up all right. Dude, it's all this Eldrachi Reaver lore. It's got me feeling like a fucking gladiator. Like I could take people down. God, I can't wait to see what Tomris has to say about today. Wait, wasn't Tomris in my stream one day? I swear he was, bro. Double check the date. Is it Wednesday? Yeah, bro. It's Wednesday for sure. What? <laughs> Why did I Google real calendar? <laughs> I did that completely natty, by the way. Like, <laughs> I could have just typed anything. I could have typed calendar. Fucking just give me a real one, man. That's so good. Fucking real calendar. Okay. Um, fake calendar. You guys could be using the Liquid Raider Swimsuit Edition calendar.
Yep, Atlas is is January. I'm February. Tobo's March. THD is June and July. Like a double pager full feature situation. Two minutes, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Five gifted for leak? No, man. You'd have to gift way more than that. Don't do that, by the way. Do not give subs. Gifting subs is banned. Actually, fuck it. Y'all can give some subs. Let's get it. Money. Money. Two minutes. It still says 958. I'm going to prep my title. Fuck. Okay, is it almost time? One minute? Guys, I'm not fucking this up. Come on. I'm waiting for that time to tick over. Lob the ads. Uh, I have ads in 24 minutes. We're good. All right, we're just setting the title. 10 a.m., baby. All right, guys. So Alpha is out. Alpha is out. And not only has it been out, I've been playing it for the last two days. And I've learned a lot about it. Uh, I have a bit of information on some stuff we were able to ask them in a QA. and a uh, I got the footage. Uh, we have multiple interviews that are happening today. Uh, I did not do one this time around. I did a bunch in the last, like, uh, the last, like, content patch. Uh, but we have, uh... Bunch, bunch of shit. So I was able to see the first zone, try out some new dungeons, see the hero talents, and it, there's some very exciting announcements. Let me just rip some off the top of the dome real quick. So Heroic Week is back in raids. Uh, this was confirmed to us in a Q&A, so no more simultaneous release. We don't know exactly what that means for Mythic Plus and the upgrade crest system yet, but I imagine it will be uncapped. Uh, I see no reason why they would cap it. Uh, let's see what else we got. I had like a little notepad. Let's see. Warbands absolutely slap. Uh, we'll talk about delves in a bit. Um, they wanted to work on the, the difficulty curve in raids. Uh... They thought that Tendril and Firak were too hard, but also Laradar and Naimu were too easy. They want to have that be a more smooth difficulty curve for raids, if that's something you guys care about. Um, they're completely rehauling the UI of the raid management system. Uh, the Like, you know how you move people around in raid groups when you press O, and like you can see your raid info? They're like completely redoing that. Um, if you guys are on live or on as we're going to, I'm going to show you guys recently. And I think I also have a YouTube video releasing today about it. They completely reworked the Windwalker spec tree, the Mistweaver spec tree and the monk class tree. And I've been playing Windwalker for the past two days and I have a ton of footage of me playing it. And it, I think is the most fun version of Windwalker I've ever played. They fixed so many things with that class off the top of my head. They made haste matter. They removed button bloat. They removed defensive bloat. 
uh, but the class is still powerful, and that's something that I think they might do across the entire game. Uh, no more Serenity, no more AoE Touch of Death. They built in a Serenity-like super buff to Storm Earth and Fire, so you feel like an absolute beast. They made Fist of Fury scale off of Haste. Uh, they, uh, so your stats actually do something. Uh, they made, uh, whatever it is, Strike of the Windlord give you, like, extra, like, 10% damage to all abilities. It'll proc Rushing Jade Wind, which is no longer an on-use ability. It's completely reworked, and just does a ton of damage when you press Strike of the Windlord. Uh, Rising or Whirling Dragon Punch now is like an enabler for the rest of your build because you take a choice node that gives you the ability when you press Whirling Dragon Punch, it gives you four Teachings of the Monastery stacks, and now it also stacks all the way to eight. So, like, you press your Blackout Kick and it does fucking eight of them. Yeah, it is <clears throat> insane vibes. Uh, there will be a few videos of mine releasing. I will give you my first impressions on stream about everything and answer any questions you guys have but also my uh uh what is it the i have a video of that out right now i also have a video of the windwalker spec tree so we'll we, and also there is a ton of uh creator interviews today we're gonna react to all of it there's a million bit, bits of information so can you show alpha uh, I have a bunch of videos. So I'll actually, uh, Wowhead posted the trees. Yeah, Wowhead's probably going to have everything. We're just going to have to start through all of it and go through it one by one. There's just going to be a million things. So uh, yeah, Druids, Monks, Paladins, Warriors. Paladins, less so. Uh, Druid, Balance, Feral, and Resto got major changes. Prez got major changes. Uh, we already talked about Windwalker, but that's like the closest to my heart. I played a ton of Paladin. I have a bunch of Ret gameplay. Guys, Ret Paladin with Templar, with the hammer build, is fucking nuts and super fun. Um, Unholy, Rider of the Apocalypse, super banger. Bunch of good warrior changes, and they have the links to all of those. We'll go over those in a bit. I'm trying to, like, kind of find a good place to start. Um, oh, wait, I don't know if uh, Franck released the video, but in my YouTube video for, for this, uh, let's see. I don't know if he just slammed. Oh, yeah. So he slammed my first impressions video. Hey, guys. Uh... I am talking right to the camera, which is weird. But also look at the shoulders. Oh, my God. What? Okay. And then I'm talking about warbands. Look what he has for the background of my warbands, by the way. You guys don't understand how much better my warband picture is going to be than all of yours. It's going to be goaded. You're going to get slapped by my warband pick. Just know that. That we stay we stay we stay lit around this campfire. And that's what it looks like when you're in the in the mode. Uh and then I just give my whole thoughts and everything. I'm going to give these thoughts 100 times today. If you watch my stream today, you don't need to watch this video, but it does have some gameplay which I will be again showing on my stream. Uh like yeah, dude, Windwalker gameplay. It's so goaded. Uh we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, the new dungeon, one of the two dungeons we tried, I'm going to put my stamp on it now. And I do understand that pretty much any dungeon design could have some infinite scaling bullshit that people who are trying to do 30s will hate the dungeon because one ability like ruins the whole dungeon for them, which is like super hard to avoid. But for people who only do dungeons on 20s, I think this is going to be in most people's top three dungeons of all time. I'm willing to be proven wrong on this and I'll explain why. Number one... There's a bunch of mobs everywhere, so you're going to have massive pulls, and they don't do so much. Number two, it's non-linear. You can choose which way you want to go in the dungeon. That's another plus. Number three, it is deeply thematic. Like, on this boss, you have to carry beer to, like, someone else, right? So it's like an intermission, and you literally have to serve people beer, right? Go away and serve people beer. On the next thing, you have... Uh, on the next boss, you actually fight a boss called Ippa, which is like IPA because it's a beer place. And the other half of the dungeon is a bee thing. They have mobs that cast something called Bezooka and Bestial Wrath. And they have like this uh, big ogre guy called like the Performance uh, Review or something like that. And he casts Free Swag and Career Trajectory and shit like that. There's the last boss in here is the BEO. 
before you fight the BEO, you kill four people called Yes Men. I don't know. I'll show you the whole dungeon, but like, it is super goaded. There's a ton of bee stuff, ton of honey. It is just huge pulls, non-linear, and probably the most well-executed theme they've ever had in a dungeon, in my opinion. It absolutely slaps. And the other dungeon that we tried was only a three-boss dungeon, which is really cool. And talking about verticality, they have like a... Uh, you keep releasing at the start, but every time you go across, you go to the different level and you keep going down in the dungeon. So you start at the top and then you fall down a huge hole, do the middle, fall down a huge hole, go to the bottom. Uh, and I don't know, just falling down, it feels it's like Black Rock Foundry vibes. Feels very sick. Um, and I have footage of all of this to show you today. And what I have today while we're talking, I came extra prepared, chat. Let me just say that. I literally recorded myself listening to the NBA Finals, apparently, but, um, just, fl oh, this is a Windows Media Viewer. I want to watch this in VLC. Here we go. Or the, the NBA uh, play-in games. Uh, open with VLC, please. I, just for your all's entertainment, I have a file called flyingrandomly.mp4, where I am literally dragon riding in the new zone, or dynamic flying, whatever it's called, on a blue drake. Just so I have some ADHD flying to happen in the background. Because, because of all you kids in here that can't watch anything without subway surfers on. And also see the new zone. Uh, but that's the only reason I review this. You can even see I'm in the dark in my room. I'm just sitting there like, alright, we're gonna fly. But I was actually watching uh, the NBA at the same time here. So, easy, easy, uh, easy multitasking. Sitting in the dark. Bro, look at the difference. Look at little Reptar asleep, too. Um, okay, so that's that. And then I have... Uh, I have dungeon gameplay. Here we go. I have a bunch of... Uh, stuff of me doing... Uh, Rhett. So I was playing Rhett. Let me give you, like, a little little ret overview here. So let's say you're a ret and you have, like, all your cooldowns up, right? Look at this hammer, bro. Look at this hammer. I want you all to see this hammer. Yeah, my character's name is Hammer Dunker, but look how much damage I'm doing. I'm absolutely slamming. All right, so I'm, like, pulling this stuff. All right, we're getting up to max, uh, max here. All right, we Avenging Wrath, Final Reckoning. We press... Wake of Ashes to get our hammer thing. We spend our hammer thing. Look at the mob's health. Yeah, recount is the only thing that worked on alpha. It's just an ancient add-on that's really simple, so it actually works in situations like this. All right, check this out. I'm going to press this button right here. Wake of Ashes just turned into a hammer. Look at these mobs' health when I press this. Boom! Do you see how much damage that did? Let me rewind that, like, two seconds. It absolutely claps. Ready? Wake of at like this, into Wake of Ashes, boom, huge dam, into Divine Toll, into you just being a Hammer Lord and just doing infinite damage. Uh, it was a big portion of my damage. The Hero Talents tool is really cool. Uh, and then I have a bunch of monk gameplay, I think, in here too, especially in the other dungeon. Here's the B dungeon. Uh, did a lot of other, like you can see, like, uh, oh, this is actually a good example. This is a few of the new talents working together. So Fist of Fury, which by the way, I'll explain what this does now, but they basically fixed so many problems with Windwalker. I'll probably go over that individually after this. But when I press Whirling Dragon Punch, you're going to see I go up to six Teachings of the Monastery stacks. And then I get a Blackout Kick proc, which is also a talent that makes that do 175% increased damage, which applies to all six Blackout Kicks, by the way. You also have a talent that when you get Blackout Kick, you get a free Dance of Chi-Gi. You also have a talent that when you press Dance of Chi-Gi, you get another Blackout Kick proc. So you're just... The energy economy is totally different. Um, you have to keep in mind, I'm in, uh, I'm in Storm Earth and Fire right now. Uh, and every time you Rising Sun Kick, it makes everything cost one less Chi for the next five seconds. So you basically use Rising Sun Kick in your cooldowns as like a, a Chi reducer, and you get a bunch of combos off of it. And it allows you to like Blackout Kick for free, Spinning Crane Kick for one, Dance of Chi G, uh, creates Chi. It's extremely fun i'll get more into that later i have a bunch of gameplay uh it's it is it is i'll give it more time but 
it is a it's a very different version of Windwalker, and it's amongst the most fun I've ever played. So, uh, we'll we'll look that up. But we need to kind of figure out. Yeah, my name's a little stink in there, which you could also. I just closed it, but I was doing insane, just absolutely insane damage on that class. Uh, okay. Uh, no first impressions vid. Let's uh chat. Where the fuck do we start? Where do, where do we start? There's class changes, delves, uh, warbands, Ian interview. Yeah, I would like to listen to an, an interview, but maybe after I give my initial takes. Uh, Warcraft has a new video. Let's see. Twitter or uh, Twitter Warcraft? Or did they... Is it on YouTube? They probably, they probably tweeted it. Oh, I watched this already, but we can watch it together. I don't think you guys are going to find this super interesting. Dude, I need to like make a list of like how we're going to go through this and in what order. Uh, It's overwhelming. There's too much information. Oh, here we go. Oh, wait, they have information on lower gear cap. So Heroic Week returns in War Within, which I already mentioned. So if you guys don't know what that means, uh, at the beginning of Dragonflight, for the first time ever, the Mythic Raid simultaneously released with Heroic and Normal, and usually there was a week of just Normal and Heroic before that. Uh, this led to a lot of issues, famously Razageth's tuning. They said, like, you know, oh, well, the class trees and stuff were new, and we, didn't, we tuned the AoE phase for full AoE talents and the single target phase for full single target talents. Whoopsie. And then they fix that. They would have caught that with Heroic Week. You would have seen that on Heroic Razageth or other fights, that that was clearly not how that was working with actual information on it. Um, you guys are really mad about splits during the race right now. That was a Dragonflight problem. When you have Heroic Week, there are still splits in Mythic, but it's like half a day. It's nothing. Like when Mythic is out, you are in Mythic basically with this change so for the race it's an awesome change for for viewership uh people just in general hated the oh mythic is out but we're going to do splits for three days that is no longer going to be a thing uh and then they do have an interview answer about this and i want to actually look at this so because i'm not sure what they were doing with capping because like i don't know how crest will work we'll see um michael bybee said which i he was the guy in our q a i wasn't familiar with michael bybee but he uh, he seemed really smart in a lot of the answers he was given. So to be a little bit more specific here, one of the considerations for War Within is for the first time in World of Warcraft history, we are doing an early access period. People are able to, okay. Uh, one of the very major goals was allowing allowing that was that I didn't feel like it gave folks an advantage, especially in any power race. So that three day early access will give folks the ability to play through story content. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not a. Then we'll have a let's see. Uh, then we'll have a period where we'll actually have access to Mythic Zero system without the season having gone live. And then the season will start, you'll have your Heroic Week, and then you'll have the rest of the content unlocked. But I don't know exactly, is there more context? Because Dragonflight changed the raid release, and not having arbitrary caps, having guilds feel like they have to spend every available hour doing Mythic Plus Fan. Yeah, but they didn't mention anything about capping gear, right? That's the one thing we actually need answered, is if they're doing Heroic Week. The last time they did Heroic Week, Mythic Plus was capped at like plus seven or something but now that mythic plus system has changed that wouldn't even be above a mythic zero so are they not going to have mythic plus out the week that heroic is out that would be weird uh I, I would think that what you could do is just completely uncap it let people play the game i don't understand why mythic plusers would have to wait a week to start mythic plus i think they should just be allowed to play the game um and I don't know. It'll also solve a lot of problems for the race. Like currently, again, this is a localized problem to me, but uh, we will have to have significantly less characters if they do that. If there's a ton of spamming in week one, we can't do that on 12 guys, which is like, I mean, that just lowers the barrier of entry into this a, a million. I know that's not relatable to a lot of people, but it'd be very good for our space uh, and keeping players in this for longer. Um, and I don't think Mythic Plusers are going to want to wait a week. And the other thing is, yeah, I've given my take on this before. This hasn't changed. This isn't new information. But the whole three-day early access thing, I do want to point out, I think is a little lame. Uh, Blizzard's trying to frame it as, like, no one gets an advantage. Everyone gets to just level. But, like, I just think the idea of selling early access time, regardless of what you're able to do personally, I just think doesn't fit. I think they're giving a lot of reasons 
besides the main one, which is just it's an extra little thing they can throw in on their uh, super expensive edition of the expansion. Like, they're trying to increase sales. They had a meeting, probably, and they were like, hey, uh, how can we get more people to buy our super amazing epic edition of of World of Warcraft, which makes us $20 more per copy? Oh, well, let's let them play the game early, right? Other games have done this, which I'm not really a fan of in any game, but I think in an MMO, it's extremely weird, and I'm just not a fan. Uh, so, uh, I'll just, I've always said that though, that this is not new, but I just, it just seems weird to me. Uh, okay. They're probably just gonna be posting stuff just all day, but, um, Man, we might want to just get into an interview. Blizzard official Warbands preview in the War Within. So here's one thing I want to point out about Warbands. We asked them, because we were looking at this, like, okay, you pick your top four characters, whatever. You have, like, a Warband bank. And I think they missed an opportunity to call this the War Bank. <laughs> but you can put anything in there. You can put any Warbound items, any obviously not bound items, like like uh flasks and uh whatever or gold i don't know what the gold cap is but instead of having to buy flasks on every character and mail things over guys at the beginning of the expansion buy a hundred verse flasks put them in the war bank and every time your alts are going over to do a mythic plus you just easily open the war bank grab your stuff and there's like a central hub for all of your loot just playing around that a little bit that was incredible that's like insane quality of life and saving a lot of time mailing stuff back and forth. Uh, the the ability to uh, like actually have all of your gold in a central location and have auction house kind of pull from the war band war band bank. They need to call it the war bank. Um, and then I don't know. It's just it's all really good. And then we asked them in a Q and A session, how will war bands affect the gearing of alts? And they almost didn't even let the person finish the question, and they were like, it completely changes everything in regards to gearing your alts. So, like, instead of just having to start your alts and hit max level on your guy and then, like, go get stuff from the auction house, you're going to have warbound gear that your main got, and maybe you'll roll a mage because you got a nice warbound wand or something. And, like, you know you can just start out right off the bat from something your main got on your other character. It's approach. It's changing their approach on everything you'll get in the game. Uh, everything is account-wide, right? From the very beginning. Everything from, from like the beginning of any idea's inception is all of your characters on your warband are following the same progression, right? So uh, I just think philosophically, Blizzard has been at that point since the 9.1.5 uh, in the middle of Shadowlands, but now it kind of solidifies it in that everything from the ground level is built up that way. And I think that's really good. And I just think the quality of life of this is really cool. There's one thing they didn't announce that I think would be really, really nice. Is I I wish that they announced um, the ability to get more backgrounds. We were talking about this on the Potty C, which by the way, if you guys are bored later today, um, I don't know if it's out right now. But me, Dratnos, and Dork recorded a podcast last night. There it is, six minutes ago. And we talked about all this shit for an hour and 20 minutes. So uh, that's there as well. Pod surprise, there's a pod today. Uh, and then we have... Uh, yeah, so what we were hoping is that like certain achievements will give you different backgrounds to this. They do this in Lost Ark, which is like kind of a similar thing. But, like, I don't know, wouldn't it be cool if you uh, got the expansion meta achievement and you got a cool War Within background? Or you got a uh, Keystone Master or Cutting Edge or something and they gave you, like, a unique background? It's not something that would majorly affect the game, but it's just a cool collector's thing that you would be able to have a bunch of different backgrounds for your Warband. I, I think that would be really cool. Uh, another game does it. It works out well. Yoinking stuff from other games is always a good idea for every game, so... Uh, or put it in Blizzard shop for Bobby's yacht. Oh, Bobby's gone now. Uh, but definitely have it be in-game achievements. That would be really cool. Um, check the bottom of the blue post. 
Oh, we can oh we can talk about the warband thing here in a second. Is this new though? Is this is this post new? I actually kind of want to look at this while we're talking about warbands. I mean, it's from today. Okay, perfect. All right, let's check it out. So there's a couple things. I, I, I don't want to read all this. I just want to see some highlights. Oh, here we go. New reputations and renowned tracks will be warband wide. A new warband bank will allow you to easily store and share items in your characters. And the ability to collect most item appearances with any character in your warband, regardless of their ability to equip the gear. For transmog people, that's huge. Um, goals of the warband system. Make playing alternate characters easier and more enjoyable. Right? Data shows that many players already have an alter two or ten and enjoy playing them, so we want to make playing them feel even better. Everyone, every the, this, what's that old meme where it's like, everyone is a fan of this. Like everyone likes hearing that. Um, switch between characters without falling behind. There will always be a lot of character specific progression in World of Warcraft, such as high end gearing. But whenever it's appropriate, moving progression on your warband should allow you to freely play multiple characters without losing efficiency or long term progress. Has anyone this patch wanted to play one of their alts? But the amount of work behind getting the amount of crests you would need to make that character relevant, even though you wanted to play that character, felt like a hurdle you were not going to get over and didn't actually end up playing that alt because of it. The game desperately needs this, right? Uh, so I, I think that's something that warbands can, can literally solve with the crest system. So uh, maybe even something like crests just straight up being warbound, warband wide. Uh, but I think there's still more they could do there. Uh, acknowledge the player behind the screen. This is probably a nothing statement. Uh, I want to say, yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, clarify which aspects of the game are account-wide versus character-specific. It hasn't always been clear which parts of the game apply to your characters versus your account. We've taken this opportunity to clarify these differences in the UI as well as replacing the term account with warband throughout the game. Okay, so account-wide is no longer a thing, which is unfortunate because usually when I say system, everyone says madge because system, mad, right? Immediate bad feelings. But then I would just say account-wide, which would make all the people happy. But now account-wide is not even a thing. I have to say war-bound, warband-wide? I don't know if I can get behind that. It kind of makes me mad. All good. Uh, oh, wait, 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 okay. I don't think there's anything here. Warband or interpretation. I want to see the alt thing. Uh, where's, like, sharing? I want to see some, like, oh, items and gear in your warband. Okay. Here's, like, your warband bank, whatever. Oh, wait. That's 17 million gold, right? Okay, so I was wondering what the gold cap was going to be on this, but it looks like it's going to be a very large number. It's not limited by 10, so I would imagine this goes up to at least 100. And I only know, like, a few people with more than 100 mil, but then you could obviously just put it on your individual characters. Um, I would say, like, 0.0000001% of people who play this game have more than 100 million gold. Uh... Shaq is one of them. Shaq is a is the Iron Bank. Uh, let's see. Any non soulbound items can go in the Warband Bank. Carrot Sang has fifty million gold. And when we were playing, uh, ten point two point seven on the PTR last weekend, which by the way, it's such a whirlwind of things happening all at one time. Um, we had our rings bugged, but it turns out you could trade rings from other PTR characters. So Sang bought a socketed mythic Amirdrasil boe ring on his main just to transfer it over to ptr and give us all rings and i asked him why he did that because this is fucking ptr and he just said i have 50 mil i don't care that's insane oh by the way my twitch title and youtube title right now have have watermelons as the emoji what's the vibe check on that I couldn't really, I couldn't pick an emoji for today's title. I, I don't know if that's, uh, if we're feeling the watermelons. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of W's. That's good. Giat. Warbound until equipped gear. Warbound until equipped is a new type of gear binding that we are introducing the war within. Gear that is warbound until equipped can freely be traded across your warband, but becomes soulbound once it's equipped by a character. Okay, so I don't know how relevant this item level is. Uh, wait, isn't that... 
that's like literally less than our current shit, right? Yeah, it's like level 68 stuff. Also, I have a feeling that the War Within is going to be goaded for one reason. And there's very little logic tied to this. It's just that the last time in this game that we were level 80, it was extremely good. Right? Like, being level 80 in WoW has only been one of the best times ever. Uh, So, it must be... It must be true here, too. All right. Uh, in the past, item level account beer, uh, account bound gear hasn't been available because it used to be in freely traded across characters. We're still working out more of the design details, but current uh, current plan is to have warbound gear available within raids, dungeons, and the new devils feature. Whenever you earn loot, you will have a small bonus chance to gain additional piece of warbound gear's personal loot. This gear will be at least one tier lower than any other loot from that source, uh, and it could be gear usable by any class. Okay, so. That's fine. If you're doing mythic track, if you're looting mythic track stuff, you could be trading your alts heroic track gear. And that might not be something where you're gearing them up in one week, but like some something like two months into an expansion or two months into a patch, you might just have like a full or mostly full heroic set for an alt. That's insane. Bro, I'm not saying W-U-E. Yeah, we're calling that warbound gear. Like we're not we're not calling it woo we're not calling it woo right um okay enhancing your transmog collection i don't really care about this but i bet a lot of you like this shit a lot uh i think the basic gist of this is like if you're a cloth user and you get a plate thing you can put that in your transmog set because someone in your warband can equip it or some shit like that so no it's not ooh woo we're not it's not ooh woo chat do not say ooh woo um, everyone all together, updated character selection screen. Again, guys, my screen, and it's okay that this is true, but it's also important that we all acknowledge it, that my warband screen is going to look better than all of yours combined. It's going to look like a clown party in the, in the woods. Um, okay, uh, the warband system is an evergreen feature that we plan on continuing to expand in the future. Okay, warbands, woo. All right, you guys want to talk about Delves? That's the new major expansion feature, right? They're shipping it on the box. Um, it's literally in the Great Vault. Now, I told you guys going into Alpha that I don't think that Delves were made for me. And I think it's important to understand that right off the bat. I don't think Blizzard was like, you know who's going to love Delves? crazy high-end WoW players. I think this is directly pointed to the people that play WoW all the time, don't play it at a super high level, and like more solo slash small group content that they can do at their own pace. And that is the point of this. And what we learned from the Q&A session is that I think they're going to have some hard content in Delves a little bit later on. But I will give you my first impression, and then I'll give you that information. So me, Dorky, and uh, and Dratnos did a couple delves together uh, on the first day, and it was not very impressive. It was uh, we were like this fucking stinks. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we uh, got some more context. So we asked them in a Q and A session, and it turns out that delves go from tier three all the way to tier 11. Uh, sorry, tier 1 to tier 11. In the leveling content, in which our alpha was capped at level 74 and the first zone, you could only do the first three delves, and you were doing them at the max difficulty of tier 2 and uh, or tier 1, right? Tier 1, tier 2 is like super omega, super easy mode, and tier 1 is even easier than that, okay? That is the only thing we were able to test. There wasn't a lot of affixes in there. Maybe affixes is a buzzword. Hopefully you all didn't just hear that and get mad right away, which we will talk about that in Mythic Plus later. But like the affixes generally seem like they make sense in these. Um, there has been really good solo content in this game, like uh, Visions and the Withered Army training scenario that like had stuff like that that was really good. Um, but either way, we did the questing thing. And how it feels when you're questing is like, 
you'll just hear. I'll even do it in paint. I don't know why I'm doing this in paint, but let's just let we're already here, right? Okay, so you're in a zone, right? You're in a big zone and you're questing over here and you're doing a bunch of quests. You have like a big, oh, pick this up over here. Pick this up uh, and kill these guys and then and then uh, deposit the, the sockets in the statues or whatever. And then it's like, okay, there'll be a delve right here. So you're just doing that as a little guy, right? You're just walking around here going crazy. All right, and then you're like, oh wait, there's a delve right here, yay! And then you go in the delve, and then you do the delve, and it basically just feels like an extension of, it feels like an extension of questing. And I think that's the exact point, is that you're already questing in an area, you go do a delve, it's new, it's cool, they're kind of thematic. One of them was like a kobold, uh, one where like, why do kobolds have candles on their heads? Well, it's probably so they can see in the dark. It's completely dark, and there are candles that you have to steal from kobolds to be able to see further in the delve. Just, like, some cool shit like that. It was pretty cool. I, I like that one. But, like, they were super easy, and basically the idea was, like, loot these 11 things and then kill all these mobs that just auto-attack you, and then there's, like, a boss at the end that does almost nothing. But again, this is the beginning of Alpha, and whatever, and we've only seen Tier 2. Now, they did mention a few other things about the higher difficulties that I want to clarify, and a couple of them that I think are really cool. So when you hit max level, you unlock the ability to do tier 3. All the way up through tier 11. It stops the rewards at tier 8. I think this is significant. If you do above tier 8, in their exact words, the only reason to do them is for, in quotes, bragging rights. One of the problems with Torghast was that everyone had to do Torghast to get the best gear in the game. This is completely different. They made the hardest versions of this mode have nothing to do with rewards, so they could actually make them challenging and, and potentially fun, right? Uh, so it's completely optional to do. So there's two extra levels. And then there's another thing. If you do all 12 delves on tier 11, the hardest tier, you unlock the 13th delve, which is just a single boss, and I believe they'll make a new one every season. And I think that boss is going to be like the new Mage Tower. I think there's going to be like... And again, there's no power from it. So they can just make it really cool content. And that 13th Delve, which just has the single boss and nothing else, has no reason to not be very challenging and really hard. Those two things I just said made the same... They meant the same thing. Sorry. It's early. Um... So that, that I'm looking forward to. So my impression of them doing tier two is like, this just feels like you're doing almost like a bonus objective from WAD while you're leveling, which again, actually enhances the leveling process. But like our first look at it wasn't this super impressive thing, right? But we are not able to see what max level delves look like, which is the end game thing that's in the vault. So we basically have no opinion on it yet because it's hard to see. But the did, you know how... You didn't need... This is a Diablo 4 reference. I know D4 bad, but... Did you remember when you played Diablo 4 when it came out? And you saw Nightmare Dungeons right away? And you were like... Dude, Greater Rifts are just better than this. I don't even need to see this on a high Nightmare Dungeon level. Like, it's just boring objectives that just rotate between each other. And that just seemed like something that wouldn't have good replay value. That's kind of what an early level of Delve feels like. It's like, it won't be too different from each other. But maybe I'm wrong about that. But like, that was the vibe I got. But, again, we haven't seen the parts of Delves that would interest me. And I want to bring this all back to where I started. It's possible that I think that Delves fucking stink. And Delves actually stink for me and someone like me. And it still could be extremely good for the game. I could not interact with this content at all. And it could be an excellent addition to the game for the majority of players who don't play the game even kind of like the way that I play it. I'm not the target audience for this. That being said, I imagine I am the target audience for tiers 10 and 11 of the Delves. And, the thir and at the very least, the 13th Delve with the single boss. So... I'm really looking forward to trying those uh, because the way they have it structured right now with loot stopping well beforehand gives me hope that they can actually make that really cool. Mage Tower taught us 
that casuals are okay to aspirational difficult content, especially if it's solo with good rewards that makes them get better at their class. Not, I think one of the mischaracterizations of, in quotes, casuals in games is that they just want everything to be easy and handed to them. There are people like that, but there was a lot of people. Mage Tower is universally well-liked. Um, and I think that if they do something like that here, this will make Delves almost singularly, single-handedly a, a win. It is going to be a win if even that, even for most people, like if all of Delves is, is for the vast community and then also the high-end community gets to interact with like the 13th Delve and that in a cool way, I think it'll be a massive dub. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, but the one that I did while leveling is, man, maybe I, I could even show a VOD of it. I think I have a VOD of it. Um, here, let me actually pull up a VOD of it. It was when I was using my old UI, um, on, on the, I, cause I got another, I got a UI kind of working on the beta. I will say this is, I don't want to go on too far of a tangent here, but I did find myself, um, being pretty happy with default UI. <laughs> like, I actually have a very... I have a... Except for two things. Very rarely do I use full default UI. Like, even though they made a bunch of changes in Dragonflight, it was like Dragonflight Alpha, but even PTRs, they have LUI updated within a day, so I don't really have to use it. Bro, I made... I bound all my buttons down here, but I never looked down here, and I could even hide these if I wanted to, with the same buttons bound. And then I just put extra bars up here and resize them just like any week or a package I would want. And I felt like I had full control over my character and that I was blasting. Uh, and that felt great and pretty much the same. Now, let me, let me show you the two parts where default UI massively fails. Um, and they need to fix as soon as possible. Number one, the nameplates are illegally bad like it's illegal how bad the nameplates are it's someone should be in prison for how bad default nameplates are uh and yes i know you can change them i this is a brand new character i just made it so i don't have like the larger nameplates on it's still awful um so yeah they definitely should should change the nameplates and the other thing is buff and debuff management so one thing I even narrowed down while talking about being on the being on the alpha here was do you see these two things over my character? I wish you could customize this. Like on Windwalker, for example, that I'm playing later, uh nothing shows up on your personal resource display when you're in combat other than nothing like, nothing shows up except here. You'll see it. Okay, you see, uh, T... Or oh, I just used it. Fuck. Let me go back, like, one second here. Nice roll into the frontal. There's a reason I did that. Where... What just happened? Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, it's a little pixely for a second. All right, do you see right here on my personal resource display? It has, um, teachings of the monastery stacks. That's cool. I wish this was customizable. I wish your personal resource display could be more customizable. I wish I could put any buff I wanted to whitelist it and have it show up up here. That would be awesome for UI customization built into the game. And the other issue is debuffs, right? Like, for example, I'm playing Shadow Pan Monk right now, and Wisdom of the Wall is a huge buff. And I would have to have Wisdom of the Wall, and there's no other way for Wisdom of the Wall to be shown on your character, which is maybe a problem. But, like, I would have to look at it up in my buffs when it spawns, which is just awful, right? You should be able to, like... I mean, I could move all of these buffs in front of my character, but then I'd just be reading a bunch of nonsense 90% of the time, right? Like, having the ability to whitelist buffs would be so huge. So that's just my quick little tangent on default UI. I actually found myself playing at almost 100% by just setting up a natty default UI with no add-ons except for recount. Uh, and I just... I don't know. I think it's so close to being, like, extremely good. It just needs buff and debuff overhaul and it needs nameplates and it you're chilling so uh really good job on blizzard for that i haven't had a long i haven't had a time to interact with it in a while um so if you guys were just talking about me charging into that boss and trying to kill it i can explain myself before i get slandered 
All right, so we're fighting this boss that does this lightning torrent. Insane transcend by me there. Just, I mean, just legendary shit. Okay, so then we're about to kill this boss, right? And and little Stink is just absolutely blasting, right? All right. So, this boss is here. It's about to die. I'm in touch range, so I want to finish this boss off. I don't want to... Which, by the way, I do have one issue with this instance. Melee suck right here. What is a melee supposed to do right now? A range can just get full uptime. Melee or just AFK for this entire thing, I guess. They need to work on that. So I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to touch of death the boss. I'm spamming touch of death, spamming touch of death, spamming touch of death. And I couldn't get it off and I got stunned in time. But it was worth it. Uh, you don't fall through the thing here. There's actually a mechanic that makes you want to jump in the middle when you get a certain dot. Uh, but yeah, I tried to like finish the boss, but it didn't work. I was just feel I was, I was tired of not hitting that boss. You melee know what I'm talking about. Um... Oh, there's also... I wonder if I can show you the, like, roll thing. Oh, there's so much I want to talk about with Monk, but maybe we'll talk about the dungeons first. Okay, so we talked about, uh, Delves. Uh, oh, I was going to show you some Delve gameplay. Let me do that. Let's show you the Delves. Show you what a Delve do. Delvey, 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 Delve. Uh, okay, I have... Let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, it's in the Potty C drive. Show your booty. Giyat. Giyat. All right, I'm, I have to download it real quick, though. It's six gigs. It was a long recording. Check Wowhead. Guys, you can't just be saying check Wowhead all day. I, like, there is a steady stream of stuff that's just going to be going on Wowhead. Did an NDA just get lifted or something? Yeah, if anyone's showing up late, what happened was... Uh, me and a bunch of other creators were allowed to play alpha for the last two days since Monday, uh, and the embargo lifted 44 minutes ago, so we're able to talk about and show all of it. That's what's happening. Uh, and wow, uh, alpha will be down today, but we, I, I wouldn't even have the ability to play alpha today. It doesn't even matter. Like, I'm going to spend all day just talking about it. <laughs> uh, alpha comes up tomorrow on people's regular accounts. Uh, so hopefully you guys get it. But you said nothing was happening today, you phony in all caps. Is that really phony of me, chat? Did, I, did you guys feel lied to? I feel like when I said nothing is happening at all, it was obvious that something was happening. Like, I would, I would, I would get banned if I said what was happening. You know what I mean? I don't want to get banned. You know what I mean? I'm not a liar. You're a phony. All of you are phonies. Okay, uh, I didn't mean that. Okay, we have downloaded the file. One second. I will show you some. Actually, let me put it in the right folder. I have, guys, you know how prepared I am for today? I have a YouTube, I, I have a video folder called Embargo Day, and I just have some VODs to go through. I, like, 100% prepared for this. All right, here we go. Potty Delve. Oh, wrong, uh, wrong, not VLC. Open with VLC. Here we go. Potty Delve. So this is when I first made my character. I literally logged on Alpha and started doing this, but this is me and, uh... Me and Dratnos and Dork doing some delves. Dratnos is on a warrior named Axe Wielder, and Dorky is on Dorky Monk. So, yeah, I don't know, man. You kind of just like, are we in the, oh, no, this was the Rookery. We weren't doing dungeons yet, were we? Oh, is this us doing dungeons? Oh, I think we did the delves earlier. Oh, here we go. Here's us doing the Kobold delve. Let's just start it from the beginning. I'll just let it all play all the way through here. Ew, that quality. That's not actually on alpha. It's like a something wrong with my recording thing. Whenever I swap around timestamps, it does that. All right, here we go.
Uh, still not there. All right, here we go. We're at the beginning now. Me and Axe Wheeler are right out front, and we're about to go inside. Except I had to end these mobs first. All right, we're inside. This is the beginning of a delve. You just walk in, you need to get an enchanted candle. For everyone who's outside of the candle, uh, you have reduced vision and you get a stacking max health debuff. Uh, like you're losing your max health. So naturally, I learned this and immediately run away from Dorky and Dratnos knowing that I am holding the candle, if I remember correctly here. Yep, I'm like, haha. They're like, hey, they're testing it. And then I'm like, yeah, get fucking lost, weirdos. Then I'm out of there. Um, okay, and then, so this is it. 11, 11 keepsakes recovered. Uh, and your candle goes down over time, so you have to, like, get the new candle. And then you have to loot these 11 treasures while making your way through the thing. But, like, most of these mobs don't really do anything. Dratnos actually had a really cool idea. Which was that, you know, one thing that Plunderstorm does that's really cool is that all the mobs in Plunderstorm kind of just cast... They cast, like, spells you have to dodge. We wish that, like, every mob in here did that. So, like, pulling a ton of things was actually, like, kind of scary and you had to dodge everything. That could have been kind of cool. Um, yeah, it does have some speedrun potential, yeah. At higher levels, for sure. Again, this is the, like, very early leveling. This is supposed to be a leveling experience right now. We're on, like, level 71 characters. Uh... But it's like you just have to stay together and loot some stuff as a group. It also is obviously soloable. Bran is also like upgradable. Like you can give him, you can increase his level. You can give him abilities and stuff. So there is some like withered army training vibes of you make Bran stronger over time. I will say it doesn't seem as interesting as as that. Um, Okay, so you're going through as a group. You're going to kind of see what I'm talking about. Like, like the leveling version of this is not something... Like, it'd be really surprising if anyone today... Oh, oh, by the way, that was the new monk talent, if you just saw that. When you roll, after you after you roll, you can double jump, and it, like, dashes you in a direction. Monks have actually unlimited mobility with the new class tree changes. It is insane. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that later. That's going to be fun in PvP. Bro, you know what else they gave monks in their class tree? You can't be slowed below 90% when you have your Celestial out. So when you cast your Tiger and have all your damage up in PvP. When you roll through people, you can give them up to a 60% snare. Every single time you roll, it removes a snare on you. Uh, when you da Every time you roll... If you want to pick this point, every time you roll, it dashes you towards an enemy who's within 10 yards in front of you. Every time you roll, you can double jump and get a wind gust forward in the direction you're facing. Just like, you will never be kited. It is insane. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll show you more about that later. Max, does your opinion with the Wind, Windwalker Monk hero talents change now with the rework? Yes, it does. I played with both hero talents a lot over the last couple days, and I have a lot of opinions on them. We're, we'll, we'll talk about Monk in a bit. If you guys want to know about Windwalker Monk, I'm your fucking guy. I spent basically two days playing the spec and trying every new thing. Uh, and I, I have just, spoiler, very, very high opinion of it. Uh, they fixed almost every issue I had with the class. Um, and it is extremely fun to play at the moment. So I, I will definitely... Uh, Definitely be going over that later. They fixed scaling. They fixed everything. Uh, okay, so... This is, again, we're still just in the delve. Although we probably aren't doing it super fast because this was the first one we went into. But we had to loot a few more things. You can loot some of these like little treasures and get like little Torghasty powers. I think that's going to matter more on the higher levels. They're not like class specific. They like are pretty universal. I think you all get the same one actually. Bring back Legion Todd. Um, that kind of exists. Uh, when you touch of death something, you do more damage for the next. You do five percent more damage for the next thirty seconds or something, and it gives you a reduced touch of death cooldown. But it's not quite like Legion Todd. But they kind of put Legion Todd into Strike of the Windlord, though. 
Uh, okay, so now we're about to loot the last keepsake, right? Okay, I guess I'm just going to mess around with my talents. This is the first thing I ever did in there, so I was still seeing a lot of different things. All right, this is great for my gameplay footage, by the way. It's really good to show off the Delve Max when you just are looking through your talents, by the way. Crazy vibes right now. Yeah, you didn't even change it, but you didn't even change your... You didn't even change anything. There it is. There it is. I'll, I'll show you right there. So let me back it up like 20 seconds. All right. Now you're going to see me roll. Tiger's Lust roll, which gives me this buff right here. Do you guys see this little foot that says four seconds? That means if I double jump at any point in the next four seconds, it'll dash me forward. And you'll see me do it after I flying serpent kick. So I'm going to flying serpent kick and then look at my double jump dash right here. Ready? Doot doot. You see that little, you see that little jump? And you get three roll charges, right? So you can just do that all the time. It like almost, it like probably adds 50% mobility to every roll. Right there. Just did it again. I'll back it up. This is with no, uh, this is with no Tiger's Lust or anything. We finish these mobs off, blast them. And I'm like, all right, guys, I'm out. Let's do just one roll here. One roll. Doot doot. See ya. I'm out. It's like it's it's a little bit less than a fell rush. It's like half a fell rush. All right, so we're almost near the end of the delve. You could do these much faster, by the way. We just looted our eleventh keepsake, and then now we're going to the last thing. I'm pretty sure what I said right now is I'm going to get burned. Let me see if I remember that correctly. Burn me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck me up. <laughs> uh, that was in comms, too. Let's get it. Fuck me up. Fuck me down. I just wanted to feel something, chat. This, uh, this, okay, this Delve was not making me feel anything. And then you, like, get to the last boss, and then it gives you a, it gives you a, a like, you get, you just get to kill a little guy at the end. They give you a new candle. All good. And then you kill the last boss, then it's good. And I don't, oh, this is where we DC'd. <laughs> but there would be a last boss here, but we, uh, alpha, alpha server shut down here. Unfortunate timing. Um... So that's, that's what a delve is. Again, if you're leveling and you just come across one of these things, it'll be like a cool experience, and they're all thematic to the zone you're in. Um, so, again, I think that's pretty good. But it won't be interesting to me until I can see... Until I can see what they look like at tier 9, 10, and 11... And then the 13th delve, which that's that's going to be my my whole opinion on it. But again, I want to point out just to end the delve talk for today. It is possible and maybe likely based on what it seems like delves are supposed to be that I could think that delves fucking suck. And I don't know if I'm there yet because I haven't. No, I mean, it would be crazy for me to say that because I haven't even seen the higher levels of it. It's possible that I think they suck. But it is a very successful, good feature for the majority of WoW players. So, just want to point that out there. Uh, Alright. But we'll see what everyone else's opinions are. Okay. So, that's it about Warbands. That's it about Delves. We have multiple things we could do. We could look at some class changes. We're going to wait to react to interviews a bit later. Um... Did you go over the remaining hero talents? As far as I'm aware, only one new hero talent got added in this alpha build that is previously released. But they said that hero talents are going to be fully completed. Like the last round of hero talents, which I believe there's a, 10 more, are going to be released soon. Uh, but they were not available for alpha. But Shadow Priest did get their first one in Void Weaver, uh, which we will be reviewing later today. I am going to do over the next few weeks, uh, now that... People can actually log in on Alpha and play with these hero talents. I'm going to have a video up for every single one. Uh, or do two in one video. Like, I think the best way to do it would be, like, I do a video with a uh, Shadow Priest player 
and they're going to tell me how their class interacts with both of their hero talents, if that makes sense. So, like, not looking at every hero talent individually, but doing one with every spec and how their two that they can choose from interact with their spec. And I think that's probably the best way to look at it. So, uh, but that, that'll that be in the future. And I didn't want to do that until people can actually play with them because my opinion on the monk ones changed heavily after playing with them. So, uh, and we'll be going over that with the monk review later. Uh, okay, so we have to do interviews later. Uh, we already went over delves, so I'll just delete that. We already went over war bands. Um... We talked about dungeons, but I haven't showed you the dungeons yet. We can do that. We talked about Raid and how Heroic Week is back. How Blizzard said they're overhauling the UI, um, like, raid management system, like, where you can move people around in raid groups and stuff. That's, like, that UI overhaul is happening. Uh, they said that they felt from Amir Drasil that their raids need to have a better difficulty curve, more linear. They don't want bosses to feel like walls that you have to climb. They want them to feel like hills. And that has to include with bosses... Just having a good difficulty curve throughout the raid. So I think kind of what they were alluding to is that bosses like Firak and Tendril shouldn't be as hard. And bosses before Smolderon like Laridar and Naimu shouldn't be as easy. Right? There shouldn't be such a massive ramp in difficulty. And they were pretty, pretty, uh, pretty firm on that being an issue that they have discussed a lot whenever it got brought up. So... Um, they said the same thing after Sepulchre. That's true. And then they <laughs> and then they actually did that for a while. Uh maybe Razageth is an example of that not being the case. Like but there was pretty good linear difficulty in Vault until Razageth. There was really good linear difficulty in uh in Abaris with th barring the Scarn fiasco, but I don't think that has anything to do with that. But true uh, when when it, when they were asked the question, they almost cut the person off and stopped them, and you could tell that they had like just gotten out of a meeting of talking about this. But you're right in that they have said that before, and whatever results happened happened. Uh, okay, uh, so we talk about warbands. Let's talk about dungeons, and maybe we'll show you some dungeons, and that'll kind of allude to Mythic Plus. So for Mythic Plus, I think if you're a Mythic Plus fan. Actually, I'll I'll let Mythic Plus fans come to their own conclusion. But we found out that uh, when Season 4 wasn't having any major affix changes, which is when we thought they would experiment for something like this, uh, why do you guys keep saying Siege? <laughs> siege coming back? Oh, you guys are seeing... Oh, I actually didn't see the dungeon pool yet. Okay, before we even look at the dungeon pool, I have I have some things about Mythic Plus that we found out. So, when we found out there wasn't any major affix changes at the end of Season 4, we were like, okay, well, it's just the War Within, right? Because I think a lot of us are looking at affixes as like, okay, they were initially made to like, you know, think about Diablo 4 affixes. Or Diablo 3, sorry. When you go up to an elite pack, they have a different... Okay, you're going to approach a mob with, like, Molten different than one with, like, a Thunder affix, right? Like, it's just little minor changes, and if if D3 didn't have elites having affixes, the game would be worse. So then they were like, okay, well, we're making a Greater Rift system in WoW, so it's eight years ago in Legion. Shout out the fact that Legion was actually eight years ago, by the way. Uh, and then... Let's just let's just do that and see what happens. Okay, they do that. It kind of makes sense at first. People didn't really know what they wanted. And now eight years has gone by. And the affixes are complained about. And the ones that are liked are the ones that come the closest to not interacting with your character. The most a the affixes people are the most positive about are the ones that basically do the least. And if the purpose of affixes is to challenge your character strategically so you approach things differently, but people prefer that they do nothing, has to put you in a position where you're like, what the fuck are we doing here? What are we doing? Does this still make sense? If we were to make affixes right now brand new, would we make them the same way? The answer cannot be yes. It's just it doesn't make sense. Uh, but they basically clarified that they're not making any major affix changes. 
they said they're looking to innovate on new affixes, similar to what they did at the end of the of season two. Uh, like adding new ones and rotating ones that people don't like out, which I definitely think is good. It's definitely good to rotate ones out that people hate. That is a positive for sure. But I think people were hoping for just more. I don't know, just like a fresh look at it. Like it just needs a mix up. It's been out for a while. Just explain how it doesn't really make sense. And then seasonal affixes are a totally different argument. You know, for every good argument about seasonal affixes, there's the argument of, yeah, when they're bad, they ruin Mythic Plus, and they're a bad as often as they are good. Uh, so, whatever. So, I wasn't happy about that in general. But by looking at the dungeons so far, like the, the actual expansion dungeons, which I haven't looked at the first map pool, uh, they... They, the two that we've done on the beta were, or on the alpha, were awesome. And I want to show you them. But before that, Wowhead apparently posted what the first eight Mythic Plus dungeons will be. Oh, oh yeah, by the way, and this is something we'll do later in the week when alpha is up. Uh, so either tomorrow or Friday. The entire dungeon journal, barring Mythic Mechanics, is up for the raid. So we'll be going over that as well. Uh, I didn't do that already. Uh, I'll be doing that just when it comes up. I didn't feel like doing that in a whole video. That is a lot of work. Um, okay, first look at Dells. Where's the, uh... Holy shit, there's so many posts. Here we go. War Within Mythic Plus Season 1 Dungeon Rotation. Shadowland Dungeons and Siege of Boralus. So I'm okay with the Shadowland Dungeons for sure. Uh... I was actually wondering if that was gonna be an expansion long enough away to where you would actually bring some of them back. Uh, but it depends on which ones you bring back. Um, and Siege of Boralus is just simply not a great dungeon. It's really techy. It's not really memorable or cool. Uh, if you're going to bring back a dungeon from from a BFA, I mean, there are just... I know you've already pillaged through BFA's dungeon set for ones to bring back because they have really good dungeons, but like Motherload... Heater. Uh, actually, wait. Of, of what are the really, really good BFA dungeons that they haven't brought back yet? King's Rest. Has there been some revisionist history on King's Rest? Actually, okay. King's Rest has a lot of stuff wrong with it, but I feel like it actually... I'll, I'll give... I'll play the devil's advocate of King's Rest wasn't actually that bad. If you could skip some of the RP in that second room after the first boss, where, like, you do the four corners, and if Shadow of Zul wasn't complete bullshit, I think King's Rest theme would carry it enough to make up for the dungeon's length and, and difficulty. That's the devil's advocate argument. It also has good loot. But anyways. Uh, uh, that's a lot of ifs. Yeah, you're not wrong. Here's the War Within Season 1 Dungeon Rotation. Arakara, City of Echoes. Haven't seen or even read anything about that. City of Threads, same. Stone Vault, same. Dawnbreaker, same. Oh, wait, so the two dungeons we have available to us right now on... Uh, Alpha, I don't believe any of them are available in in uh, in Season 1. But both of the ones I tried on Alpha I thought were really good. So, uh, for different reasons as well. Okay, so we have uh, Mist of Tierna Scythe. So I know High Key Pushers didn't really like the first boss. And maybe people didn't like the memory game. But I think with just a few changes, Mists becomes one of the best bosses. So I think a few things need to change with Mist, or one of the best dungeons. First of all, uh, full disclosure, Mist was my favorite Shadowlands dungeon. Every time I zoned into Mist, I was a happy boy. Okay? A um, couple things they need to do. Uh, getting guaranteed feared on the first boss feels really bad. Fix that immediately. Uh, and the memory game puzzle going through, I think you should be able to do the memory game early and open the doors in combat if you so wish to do that. Uh, I think that would allow for group pulls and not weird pulling things through walls. And you don't have to do that, 
but I think that would just make the dungeon a bit more interesting if you were able to do that. Um, and other than that, I think the dungeon just hard owns. Really like this dungeon. They made the last boss a lot better. Uh, my opinion, though. Um, the Necrotic Wake. The Necrotic Wake is interesting. Uh, most dungeons that have items do all of the damage to things are usually, like, make you feel like you're not playing your character. But Necrotic Wake somehow escaped that feeling, even though the items were really powerful. It also required you to be Kyrian for some stuff in the beginning. I wonder how they're going to approach that now. Maybe some profession shit. Um, Siege of Borella stinks. I don't really need to give any any uh, any more context there. Uh, Grimba Toll was actually a really, really well-liked dungeon, but I wonder if they're still going to keep the beginning in it. I, I actually think Grimba Toll will be good. I think Grimatol will be good. Uh, it was it was one of the best Cata dungeons, but like the beginning of it is just an RP thing, and I I don't know if that would exist that way. I think you're just gonna they're gonna tune that trash for you to actually pull it. Maybe you can like pick a pack to get rid of, which would be kind of interesting for mob count, but like in a quick way. Either way, I'm I'm excited to test that. Excited for Mizzaturna Scythe. Kind of excited for Necrotic Wake. Kind of excited for Grimatol. Mainly because, too, bringing back dungeons from the past has had very varied results. Uh, like, for example, some of the boss changes they made, like to Wise Mari in, in uh, the Temple of the Jade Serpent, made that boss significantly better. But then the changes they made to Trash and the last boss made the dungeon worse. When they brought back a Kata dungeon, they've brought back two so far. Vortex Pinnacle and Throne of the Tides. Vortex Pinnacle was a really, really bad thing to bring back, and it didn't turn out well at all. Throne of the Tides ended up being one of the harder dungeons of the season, but they actually made a lot of really good changes in Throne. And I think overall is, like, Throne proved to me that they could bring back ancient content and actually do it well. Uh, so, I, uh... Definitely, definitely interested to see how more Cataclysm dungeons work out. Uh, but Siege stinks bad. And I know nothing about these four dungeons. I think. Uh, I, I'm pretty, I don't know the name of the second dungeon we were doing, but I'm pretty sure it's not any of these four. Uh, but the dungeon that earlier I made a very, probably hyperbolic statement saying that I think this is going to be one of the best dungeons of all time is not in the Season 1 dungeon rotation, which I think is kind of a mistake. Like, if you have a dungeon that's this good, and I'll show you it, Bro, the most people, we've looked at subscriber numbers, like the most people are playing WoW at the beginning of expansions. Load up that season. That season should be better than other seasons. Like, it's only logical. More people interact with it. If you want to keep more players, wouldn't you try your hardest to make sure that that time is, is awesome? Like, I don't know. Atlas will love the third boss of Grim Batol because it says minions. Yeah, Atlas loves minions. Um, okay. So. Uh, we see the dungeon rotation. Shall I show you guys some dungeons? Shall we, shall we look at some dungeons? Alright, which dungeon gameplay is this? Let's see. Okay. So this is me playing Windwalker in Cinder Brew Meadery, which is my uh my favorite place. I'm playing with the uh, Touchpad Warrior. We're playing with Raid Shots, Logan, and Doomer is Tally. So this is Tally. Tally makes a sick Blood DK play in this dungeon, by the way. Oh yeah, y'all y'all watching that sh movement? Just absolutely fucking moving around? Wait, did I do the, the roll things beforehand? Let's see. Dude, did I really just start my recording and just start zooming out? Just pressing buttons. I think this is what Demon Hunter did to me. Whenever I played Demon Hunter this season... Oh yeah, look at, look at the little dashes. Oh my god, the roll dash is so sick. Um. Okay, so what build am I playing? Oh, I think I changed my build halfway through the dungeon because I wanted inner peace for resource management. Uh, one bug with Windwalker 
on uh the on the alpha which like kind of affected how the class felt is this talent right here makes you no longer press expel harm you press it passively every 15 seconds when you press tiger palm but it is supposed to happen after the tiger palm so like you can press tiger palm twice in a row right because it won't reset your mastery like you'll tiger palm it casts expel harm and then you can tiger palm again uh so you can actually press it twice in a row because usually that's something that uh this was really really good for but it just wasn't ever casting expel harm currently uh so my energy economy will look different because of that uh, but yeah, so this is, we'll go over monk gameplay more later. I just kind of want to show you the dungeon. I'm just going to like scroll through it a bit. We'll see when we start here. All right. So we pull a shitload of mobs. I'm hard owning. Actually, let's just start from the beginning here. Looks like we're about to pull. Wait, Tiger Palm doesn't reset mastery. You're misunder you misunderstood what I said. And then here we blast. Okay, we just pulled a bunch of mobs, right? The thing is, is these mobs don't do a lot. Like, even though we're pulling a ton and it's like a like a normal dungeon or whatever, this room is full of mobs you have to pull. High mob count, very low mechanic intensity. Which is, I think, a recipe for success. Mythic Plus dungeon pulls very big? Yes. Mobs that don't require a bunch of micro CCs and stops to be able to pull. <clears throat> we like that. These mobs are basically doing a tank buster, and there's like one guy that has to have a stop. And then, and then it's just sh Chef Chewy here. Okay. Okay, so that's the first pull. I'll probably just skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so we're finishing the rest of this. Uh Oh, this is on the boss. Let me back it up. Okay, we'll finish this back here. Is there a way to skip... Oh, yeah, I can go, like, five seconds at a time. It pixels the video when I skip for some reason. Okay, so we're pulling the first boss. Oh, also one more change to... Oh, uh, no, we'll go over Windwalker changes later, but the uh, the statue still exists, but it casts passively when you press your tiger rather than having to press an extra ability, uh, which is a great change. Recount? Yeah, I'm blasting. We're blasting hard. Move chat, big dog. Uh, chat's fine, I guess. I don't know. Um, 30 second strike of the Windlord. Yeah, there's a talent that makes it do 20% more damage and have 10 second less CD. And there's also another talent that makes you all of your damage for the next 10 seconds happen twice, but at 10% value. So it turns it into like a damage window. Look at that. Look at me. Look at me delivering. And then this boss has a, has a, I think it's a timer based phase, but you can finish it instantly. Like basically how it works is, uh, the boss goes behind, and he's like a brew guy, right? So he's going to start... Uh, he you, you, He's a bartender, so you need to go take these, this beer to the customers, and there's people back there just drinking beer. So I don't know exactly how this is going to play out, but like you can like kind of optimize your movement. So I ended up doing two here. He goes behind. He takes less damage until this is over. You know, I don't think you like take a ton of damage while this is happening. I don't know the mythic mechanic here. And then you have to take this brew, and then you... uh. Gra you throw it to a guy, so I threw it to him, and then I realized that no one else was doing it, so naturally, as a monk does, I save the fucking group. I grab this beer, feeling great, by the way. Hit a little transcendy here, give the brew, and then you stop the phase and you go again. So very thematic. Uh, I don't know how that's going to actually feel on Mythic+. Plus. Uh, I don't think... We didn't do it long enough to know if it was timer-based or percent-based. I think you only do it once, and it's when he's at 50%. Uh, every time that I've done this, he he casts it under 50% and has only cast it once, but we also killed him really fast, so I'm not sure. It's his energy bar? Okay, so it might be timer-based then. Uh, okay. I'm playing Shadow Pan Monk here as well. I'll skip ahead a little bit. Now we're going to the right side. Now, you don't have to go this way. You can go to the other side. So you're seeing we have a bunch of bees here, and I want, I want to point out we're pulling a Brand Ambassador, and, uh, he casts... Let's see what he casts here. Oh, I'm changing talents, so I'm a little bit late to the pull. I think I added more energy gen. Alright, so that brand ambassador... I didn't see his cast. God, default nameplates are so bad. Uh, Shredding Sting is just a tank mechanic. Free Swag is just a tank mechanic, I think. Or like some kind of like thing he just throws out. Uh, Final Sting needs to be stopped. Uh, they cast this under 20%. It like hits you really hard if it goes off. 
Uh, so that just requires some stops, but it's only when they're about to die. Uh, which mobs like that usually aren't a huge issue. Um, here's another brand ambassador. So this guy casts career stagnation. My thought, and this could be tinfoil as fuck. I didn't know that stunned me. Um, this could be tinfoil. I think there's a few references in this dungeon that Blizzard employees are kind of poking fun at the layoffs. So, a brand ambassador maybe talked to some people who were laid off, and they were like, yeah, we feel like your career is stagnating, or like, here, you know, have some free swag on your way out the door for spending your time here at Blizzard. And then there's some stuff later with Yes Men, and there's a CEO mob that has something called a cash cannon. I could be completely off base here, but I could see when designing this, some of the dungeon people were like, yeah, Remember when our friend got told that his career was stagnating or something? And then they just, like, made some mobs like that. Anyways, that's my tinfoil hat, and I'm wearing it. Okay, I got stunned and destroyed. Did I die from that? Let's see. Okay, then there's just a bunch of worker bees that shoot honey. Uh, oh, that guy that guy back here, this guy who's casting, he cast Bee Steel Wrath. This guy, the Bee Wrangler, he cast Bee Steel Wrath. Uh, this guy is casting Bee Zooka. By the way, if you guys have ever seen the movie, uh, the B movie with Barry B. Benson, there is a version you can watch where it speeds up by double every single time they say the word B, and it's like three minutes long. It's one of the, it's a, it's a very popular way to consume that film. Yeah, he shoots a fucking B at you. Yeah. And again, this is another place where, like, the mobs don't do a lot, and you can kind of pull really big, and you can choose which boss you want to go to. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, because you guys have seen these mobs. Oh, yeah. When you go through this door, you just get a, just randomly a million bees spawn. And they're like, get the fuck out of our hive, motherfucker. And then you have to kill them. It's hype. All right. Uh, okay. And then we get more bee wranglers casting bee zooka and bee steel wrath. And then we get another brand ambassador, which casts free swag and career stagnation. Uh... Okay, and then I think we die here because we pull too much. Oh, made that up. All right, and then we go to the boss called Bank Busby. Bank Busby. Uh, how this boss works. Okay, we kill a few mobs beforehand. I'll skip ahead. Is he spawns three bees, and when the bees die, the bees become, like, not mountable, but I think they are mountable, actually. Uh... And then you have to destroy these barrels. Those barrels do something to you. I think they maybe spawn new bees, but it's whatever. Anyways, we're just going to be AOEing here. Uh, and once the bees die, you'll see... I think you'll see me get on one, and then... Sh and you can shoot the bee, and they, like, fly. And so you can see me clicking on the boss here. I'm trying to get it. You see how I just clicked on it? So now I'm on a bee, and now I have this button, and you can aim the bee, and then you shoot the bee. I press 1, and now the bee just flies and blows up the barrels. And getting rid of the barrels is good for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, let's see, actually. Maybe the uh, maybe this barrel will expire here, and we'll see why. Nope, I still don't know. Um, and then ads just keep spawning. So this is like a 2-3 to three target on top of boss ad cleave while focusing single target damage, a little bit of a knockback. I'm not sure of the mythic mechanic here. Um, yep, and then Bank Busby dies. Love that. The love a little cleave fight. Uh, going forward, again, we're going back through the middle and going to the other side. You can choose which side you want to go to first. And this side is like a beer wing. So we have a flavor scientist, which I'm sure is what someone who works behind a bar could call themselves. Uh, this guy, Reckless Delivery, he charges a random member. You kind of want to aim that at walls. Uh, this guy gives out free samples. If that, uh, I think that's just passive AOE damage. Oh, I think our group turbo wipes here. If I remember, we look like we're going down fast at the moment. I'm gonna skip ahead. Do we? Oh no, we don't perish just yet. Tally's a beast. Rejuvenating honey. Oh yeah. So I'm trying like, trying to. Oh, I go out and die with that. That's sick. Yeah, our whole group dies. Nice. All right. So we're gonna go back. Um, they. You can't really tell because default nameplates are bad, but those things throw some like totem. You have to kill. You can stop the cast, or if it goes off, you have to kill the, uh, totem thing that they spawn. It's not an actual totem. Uh, but it's just like, I think you actually see one here. Let me see if I can remember what it is. 
It's not free. It's failed batch. So if failed batch goes off, it'll throw the failed batch over there. And if that blows up, you die. It's called exploding brew. Uh, but like, you don't see it until you target it because default nameplates stink real bad. Um, okay. We'll go through here. More of the same mobs. More of the same mobs. Again, pretty decently uh, sized pulls. The pulls are much smaller in the other dungeon. Just in general, they're more spread out. Let me skip ahead again. Okay, so now we're doing a boss. Uh, well, he's not up yet. Uh, we have to kill some of the, some more mobs in here. Some more flavor scientists in the beer wing. The boss is called Ippa. I quotation P A. I think it's a bit on like an I P A, which is a which is a a beer that everyone with a mustache and a beer would like to tell you their favorite I P A recommendation. Like me. And that's him right there. He's just like an actual beer. He's like a beer globule. And how the boss works is it spawns some adds that tries to go into the boss. And if they go into the boss, they give the boss an absorb shield. So you have to, like, cleave down. This is a good cleave dungeon. You have to cleave these down while getting efficient boss damage, and he just does a few other mechanics. This instance is sick. Bro, it gets better. It actually gets better. Oh, I swapped to Conduit of the Celestials here. You'll watch me do that. Big, big damn. Conduit felt much better on the PTR than reading it. Um, okay. Okay, so what Tally does here, and you can't tell that mobs actually spawned because default nameplates are horrible. Um, as you can see, there's like a brew drop here, a brew drop there. Tally sees a bunch of brew drops. So naturally, as a blood decay, he just presses mass grip. And the boss gets an absorb for easily twice its HP bar. Uh, and we sit here and fight it for the next uh, the next minute or so, trying to get its absorb now. Now, now we know how the boss works, and we're like, all right, let's kill these now. Um, so we finish IPA. We'll cleave them down with some mobs for efficient count. You know what it is. Uh... Okay, and then we go back to the beginning. I change back to Shadow Pan because I've had enough of that nonsense. And then we go to the last boss, uh, which you take these little bees. You take the bee line. There is a bee line you take to the last boss area, which is just up here. Now, this is the B. This is this room is called the BEO Suite, where you fight. I forget the name of the boss, but they are the CEO of bees, the BEO. And before you kill the boss, you have to kill her yes-men that surround her. They are literally called yes-men. Which, again, guys, I think this is a play on the layoffs. It's, it's my tinfoil. Okay. Now, they cast something that's... Oh, yeah, they cast Downward Trend. I fucking love this dungeon. This is this has been the most positive I've ever felt of a dungeon after doing it like one time. Now this boss is actually really cool too. I so I think this boss is going to be crazy on High Mythic Plus. So I'll explain how it works. So what's the name of the boss again? Let me try to remember. Someone wanted their uh, breakdown. It was actually nice that that recount worked, so you could actually see what hero talents were like doing their. Uh, what hero talents were doing all your damage. Um, here we go. So the boss casts Cash Cannon, which is a frontal on the tank. Or it's a frontal on a person, and you have to aim it to blow up these barrels. When you blow up the barrels, it does Rashok waves that you have to dodge. On Mythic, I believe the Mythic mechanic is when the barrels explode, it does raid damage. So you have to control how many you blow up at a time. Um, they're much slower than Rashok waves as well. Um, and then you need to get rid of them little by little, or you can get rid of them all at once if you want. You could have none of these actually break them. You could have Cash Cannon never break them, and then what the boss does is it does, like, a little phase after those two mechanics. Not doing too well with the waves here, although they were not dangerous. Uh, one more Burning Ricochet. I think we got rid of most of them, so you're not going to see it, but the boss casts one more Cash Cannon, and then she's going to jump to the middle and cast Let It Hail. And when Let It Hail goes off... They are, 
she will blow up any remaining uh, barrels in the room, which will create a bunch of Rashok waves at the same time. And on Mythic, they will also do damage to you. So you're kind of encouraged to either break none of them and then use heavy immunities or uh, defensives all at once, or you can get rid of them little by little, deal with the damage, spread out some healer CDs, um, and deal with them. It's really, really, really cool. I think this boss is a really nice dungeon boss. So, Flight Stones. Uh, they didn't mention anything about the upgrade system yet. I imagine this is just a relic of it already existing. But I do want to point out that Flight Stones make no sense and should not exist in this game. The fact that Flight Stones... Like, you could remove Flight Stones from the game and remove their requirement for upgrades, and the game is instantly better. So, uh, I, I hope they've gotten that feedback. Anyways, that was this dungeon. So, you guys can feel the way you want to feel about it. I think this dungeon fucking rocks. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, so here's the next dungeon, which I think we swapped some characters. Tally went to Templar Prop Paladin. I think we were waiting for a few people. Let me wait until it starts here. Oh, this is already on the first boss. Yay. Okay, so this is just the first pull. Like, you can do a pretty big pull down here, and then you have to start this pull. This allows you to, like, actually go over to the actual place. So you kill those mobs, great. And then you can take a bird over here. So the respawn point is always at the entrance, so you always have to take this bird. But note that, like, as you progress through the dungeon, there are three different levels. There's this level, there's this level, and there's the bottom. I'll actually back it up five seconds. And there's the uh, the bottom level. Uh, the bird will always take you to the level you're supposed to be on. So the run back times are not actually that long. However, I wish you did spawn here instead of having to take the bird. Uh, for there's this is only a three boss dungeon. It is uh it is linear. You have to kill these mobs. I'm not gonna bore you on what the mobs do, but you just kill some mobs here and then you fight the boss. The boss again, terrible melee fight. Uh, you have no uptime. It's extremely hype. <laughs> Love that. Oh, dude, this oh monk feels so good, dude. Look at that. Just look at look at. I just want to show you. Just we're gonna talk about monk later. I just want you to watch the beginning of this fight. This is with no. This is with no tiger. And I didn't even start with max chi either. And my expel harm thing wasn't working, so my energy economy was off. But like. I told you guys that Storm Earth and Fire has like a mini Serenity in it now. So when you press it, you get two Chi. So I press Tiger Palm. And then I press Storm Earth and Fire going up to four Chi. And then I press Rising Sun Kick, which is now going to make everything in my kit cost one less Chi during my Storm Earth and Fire. Okay. So we're... Okay, we're just not going to... We're just not going to play then. We're just going to... Right? Let's just... I mean, let's just not even play. Let's just have the VOD just not work. All right. That's sick. I guess I'll reopen it. Woohoo! Oh, wrong application. Turn off hardware acceleration in VLC. Uh, how? Uh, well, all right. I don't know how to do that. Got, got it. Going, going uh, to this boss here. All right. I just wanted to see the opener. It's in ten seconds. So the rising sun kick reduces everything, and just look at like how this combo feels. I'll pause it as we go. Tools, tools, preferences. Uh. Input and codex, and then hardware acceleration decoding. It says automatic, and you want me to turn that off? All right, save. It's been saved. I don't know what that'll do, but hopefully it does everything. All right, Storm Earth and Fire. We Rising Sun Kick. Now, Whirling, or uh, what is this? Fist of Fury is only two chi. Strike of the Windlord's only one. 
Another Tiger Palm. Quick little this. Now look at my uh, teachings of the monastery stacks. We Whirling Dragon Punch to get four more going up to six. Get the free Whirling Dragon Punch. Pop that. We got unlucky. You have a 15% chance per teachings of the monastery to have it refunded. So sometimes you get three to four back instantly. Blackout Kick is one of your top damage in dungeons. It fucking blasts. Anyways, this boss stinks though. <laughs> so going back to the boss, this boss real stinks. Um, really not good. It uh, it goes to the middle and range can hit it and melee can't. Uh, need to figure out some way for them to fix that. Probably he jumps here and then you. He does the beam so you can still get up time. Uh, and then there's another mechanic. I'm not sure if I got it or not, but you can jump if you get it you like jump into the middle so it doesn't do damage to other people i think it's unstable charge so unstable charge goes on this person what they should do is jump into the middle with it but i don't think they knew the mechanics so they stayed up and it hit everybody but it's normal so it doesn't do any damn and the boss goes for more thing i try to touch a death at whatever all right then you jump down here we go boys get some black rock foundry falling vibes Except you have a feather that you can use. I didn't have my extra action button bound yet. But like you could use it to instantly jump to certain things. I think there's some achievement for landing on these things. Or maybe some like buff you get. I'm not quite sure. Then you just do a bunch of trash. A bunch of trash. Then I want to show you the next boss. When was the last three boss dungeon? Was it Ruby Life Pools? There are two mobs in here that would be a huge problem on a scaling key right now. They put up a shield, and when they have their shield up, they do pulsing damage, and you have to pull two of them at once. Restart VLC. Uh, maybe later. Here's the second boss. This boss is actually really cool. I think, at least. Um, Crush Reality jumps on the farthest person. Oh, that's actually made up. It jumped on someone close. I have my entire impression of that mechanic was wrong. It's going to do a suck. He's dying real fast, though. Lil Stink has given this boss the heat. It does a little suck you have to deal with. I stay in, though. I think it only does big damage at the end, so you can stay in and get melee up time if you want. Crush Reality jumps on the farthest person, which is what we, we were testing there, so we made it jump far. This debuff just jumps to a few players. I think it does damage to people around you, so you have to spread, and it, it will jump four times before disappearing, so a little bit of damage to heal and some spreading. Pretty easy to deal with, even with multiple melee. Uh, and that's it. I think it's a good fight. Pretty pretty basic dungeon fight, but we like it. And then here's where I felt like Blackrock Foundry. Tell me you don't get Blackrock Foundry vibes right here. Yes, sir. I felt it. You just procced a memory. Yep. Okay, these are the mobs. These radiating void stones are insane. They cast Embrace the Void, they get a shield on them, and they pulse AoE damage. Look at our health. This isn't a normal. Like, it's not doing a lot, but this is a normal dungeon, and we broke the shield in like two seconds. You also pull two of these at once right here. This is something where, like, these are avoid these mobs at all costs scenario in Mythic Plus, in my opinion. I think they cast it... Oh, no, they cast it at the exact same time. So you have to break both of their shields, and you're just getting destroyed. Would be fun to heal, though. Uh, then you kill a few more mobs, and then you have... Okay, the last boss I'm not a huge fan of. I couldn't even really tell what was happening here, like... The last boss, you... It's kind of like the other side, but not really. Like, he goes through phases. Like, the boss has a shield, and when you break the shield, this bird flies down and does damage to his health. So there's almost, like, damage phases. Oh, yeah, Towley fell off here. So he ended up just pulling it... He ended up just pulling it from down in the water because we didn't want to wait for him to run around. Uh, so I think we eventually all end up in the water here, except for me. Uh, so Tally just gives up because he doesn't want to go all the way around and is like, fuck it. <laughs> he just pulls the boss from the water. <laughs> but the boss has a shield. 
And when you break his shield, some bird comes down and just, like, destroys the boss. He spawns three adds on some people that you have to kill. I think it's... Oh, I think he spawns them on Tally here because he's in the water, though. Uh, these things do a uh, thing on the ground. Dude, by the way, look how ethical... Oh, guys. Guys, come on. Look how ethical that was. Holy moly. Because it puts a pool down forever, which definitely would have mattered here as we killed this boss instantly. Okay, so like you you do some damage to his health, but I don't know if it matters because look at this bird. This bird just does like 30% of his health here. And you do that every time you break a shield. I My thought is, I think the reason they did this and they have another boss that shields... Maybe they're trying to put an emphasis on abilities that do damage to shields. Like, warriors have that one ability. Evokers have unravel, right? Um, maybe maybe that's the thought behind it. Shadow Priest just got one. Oh, interesting. So that seems to be more of a focus. Anyways, that's the whole boss, and that's the rest of the dungeon. Woohoo! Yay! All right. Uh, we like that. Uh, those are the two dungeons we tried. Fuck yeah. And the new Mythic Dungeon rotation seems not great because neither of these dungeons are involved in it and both of them look pretty good. Uh, but hopefully these four are good. I haven't seen or read anything about them. My opinion, Mist of Tirna Scythe, great dungeon. I suggested a couple changes. Uh, you should not get automatically feared on the first boss. And uh, you should be able to open up the maze anytime you want and not only out of combat. So you can go through it fast and double pull if you want. Uh, Necrotic Wake, I'm generally okay with. Siege of Boralus stinks. Grim Batol is one of the better Cataclysm dungeons. I'm interested to see if they keep the RP event at the beginning. At least in Mythic Plus. I, someone told me Tally's interview. They brought that up, so we'll be listening to that later. Um, okay. We have some more stuff to get into. We're probably going to spend the meat of today on the class changes and the new hero talents. Wait, so they data mined new hero talents? Is that what's up? They said they were going to release some new hero talents soon, but did they actually release new ones today? You scrolled past it? Six new hero talent trees and full alpha hero talent tree updates now. Oh, I mean, we're going to spend a, a bunch of time on that later. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's... Okay, let's, let's keep looking through my list here. All right, so we've gone through Mythic Plus... We've gone through dungeons. Uh, we've gone through raid, really. Except we haven't gone through and looked at the actual raid, but... We could talk class changes, I guess, and then look at the hero talent trees. Alright, guys. Let's talk Windwalker. Uh, where can I actually look at the alpha tree? Should be a wowhead post, I think. Class and talent tree reworks, and I think you can go right to them. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Do they not let you interact with them? There has to be a talent calculator. Now, this is the old one. You passed it. Nah, I think you guys who are all spamming are all wrong. Must be. Uh, click beta at the top left. Oh, I see. Maybe it's that. Max, I DM'd you the talent calculator. Uh, oh, on Twitch? Oh, thanks. Perfect. Okay, here we go, guys. Here's what they did to Monk. Let's start with the class tree. Usually if you zoom it in far enough, you can go. Uh, that, that looks ridiculous, doesn't it? Uh, we'll just go here, I guess. Okay, so let's talk class tree. All right, so no longer... Actually, let's pull up and compare almost. This will This will be an even better way to do this. Let's bring up the old one now. Wait, we're going to have to maximize this so we can actually go there. Okay, Windwalker. All right. So 
Oh, wait. Nope. Uh, that's... Oh, it's because I'm on the beta version, aren't I? That's what I did wrong. Yeah. Live. Tools, Talent Calculator, Mon Quinwalker. There we go. Perfection. All right. On the left is old. On the right is new. Before, to get a second roll charge, you had to take Soothing Mist. It was like that for a whole expansion. Makes no sense. Uh, to get Fortifying Brew, you needed to get either an Improved Paralysis or Disable. Two things you might never want. Uh, Fortifying Brew was a six-minute cooldown that required, you know, a a, cat, a a level under it to just make it even four minutes. Uh, two Touch of Death nodes... Um, and the bottom being all capstones of totems that sometimes even your own spec didn't want your own totem. Brewmaster was situational. Neither other spec besides Mistweaver wanted the statue. And move chat for this. Uh, yeah, I can turn chat off for this. Remind me to turn it back on after. Um, and then you have, you know, the Windwalker one, which is like the least inspired fun thing ever. Like, it's just zero coolness about this and it was just a weird global and sometimes i wouldn't even spec this just because i didn't want to press it because it was so insignificant and annoying to do in your uh in your uh in your rotation they also had two mandatory raid buffs in your thing which was kind of annoying because you felt like you had to choose these things but you did end up losing these you still have a raid buff that will be wanted the physical buff one but like monks lost a ton of raid but like like monks were probably the best raid buff in the game like if you combined the fact that they gave everyone in your raid four percent increased healing taken and four percent avoidance and five percent physical damage that's all combined probably better than mark of the wild um so that's like super super oh yeah it's it's eight percent yeah it goes up twice i forgot uh that's like just super crazy uh these are now gone and uh become personal things uh transcendence is here with only one escape from reality thing kind of making it cool uh and then just stuff was just kind of jumbled everywhere and it didn't make a ton of sense all right let's look at the new one let's say we're, let's approach this from a windwalker's perspective okay and i'll show you how many cool things you have to choose from at the end all right so we're grabbing tiger's lust every time gg right uh this thing makes rising sun kick deal 70 percent increased damage sign me up right uh we have all damage taken reduced by 3%. Say less. Um, all healing taken increased by 4. Who knows? Maybe we'll come back to it later. Kick, you need in almost all uh, content. Uh, now, Paralysis is a single target and rage dispel. Doesn't quite uh, end up being as good as like Evokers having an AoE dispel. But now, Windwalkers, besides just using their Paralysis to CC something, can use it to dispel and enrage, which is a great, great Mythic Plus tech for sure. Um, you all know that not only do you need enraged dispels, but having another one in your group means that, like, if you miss it or something goes wrong, having an extra one can mean the difference in wiping or not. Um, dispel, not sure. This one gives you a cooldown reduction on paralysis and leg sweep with one point. For now, we need a couple more points to even unlock the next level. So let's just spend two here, and then let's think of some things we might want. Roll and cheat torpedo, t uh, roll and cheat torpedo, travel small distance, sounds good. And then we have a choice between increase all healing taken by 4% or out of combat movement speed by 15. Maybe we'll want the healing taken later, uh, but let's just take this to open up more pathways. We can also get this to grab the instant vivify, which isn't awful for uh, for Windwalker. All right, so now to get Ring of Peace, you need to get Transcendence. Transcendence is an awful is an awesome ability. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go ahead and grab Ring of Peace. Need, needed in almost all content. You could not grab it for raid, but that's perfectly fine. It's not required for anything else that seems super necessary. Uh, we have Fortifying Brew, which is now, uh, this is wrong, by the way. This says a six-minute cooldown. That is incorrect. Fortifying Brew is a two-minute cooldown now. Uh, and the node under it, uh, the node under it makes it a one-and-a-half-minute cooldown or a two-minute cooldown that is a 30% health and 30% DR thing. This is incorrect data mining. This is a two-minute baseline cooldown now. For Brew, it is still six minutes, uh, and you have the Brew reduction built into your kit. But for Windwalker and Mistweaver, this is a two-minute baseline spell. Uh, or a one-and-a-half-minute, depending on which thing you take here. So let's do that. Uh, we have uh, Diffuse Magic. I'm going to take that almost every time. Uh, I do want to point out a few changes here. So as you'll notice, Dampen Harm is gone. 
Now, if you're any class right now that has a ton of defenses in the game, you're probably not a fan of you losing defenses. But if you've been paying attention to this channel for a while, you'll understand that there are classes in this game that have too many defensive buttons. And if you're going to talk about pruning in this game, the first thing you would start is with defensives. How they start at the beginning of this expansion, they looked at like how many defensives mages had and monks had. And they were like, you know what, hunters, you need more. Other classes, you need more. Rets, you need more. The reality is what they should have done, what they should do now, is bring every class as close to like shamans as you can. You get astral shift, you get like a nice personal. You get earth Ellie, maybe like a little, like a uh, little extra thing. And then maybe like the thing where when you hit 35%, it like heals you a little bit. And that's it. Every class should be something like that. Maybe some classes are like minorly stronger, but reducing the amount of buttons is important. No class individually wants to see their defensives removed. But what I hope to see from the game is that the classes that have a ton of defensives, you can lose one and it would never matter. Uh, monks losing Dampen, you'll still never die. It is ridiculous for you to die as a monk with two minute fortifying, 30% fortifying brew or one and a half minute regular fortifying brew with diffuse magic, with touch of karma. You're not going to die. Uh, and the only reason you would feel bad is because other classes have way more. And I think all of those classes should have their defensives pruned too. So I think this is a step in the right direction by remo removing Dampen, but I'm going to kind of move off of that. All right, so we're Windwalkers, right? So let's grab some stuff we think we're going to want. Uh, you're going to want Resonant Fist. Does damage, right? Love doing damage. You have Celerity. Uh, I like Celerity over Chi Torpedo. Up to you, though. Uh, you can get Improved Touch of Death. Okay, Touch of Death will do more damage. And then this thing is just a dodge chance thing. I don't really care about that. It doesn't improve any pathing we need. And I think we need to spend a couple more points to, to go on. How many? How many do you need to unlock the last level? Is it 20 points spent? So now we have five points to spend before we can even enter the capstone level. You have so much choice. Maybe you want to grab Chi Burst. I have news about Chi Burst. Chi Burst no longer grants Chi. I read this and I used it and I was like, that's weird. That doesn't really see. And also Chi Wave uh, is now cast automatically. Again, a reducing button bloat situation. Chi Wave is now cast. And I was finding myself playing Chi Wave rather than having a million buttons, which Monk, if there's a class that wants to reduce buttons, Monk is like one of them for sure. Um, Chi Burst not giving you Chi is on purpose. Um, so I'm going to go over something they did in the spec tree later, but they basically made haste matter a lot more, not only for Fist of Fury scaling, which is your top damage so far in, uh, playing, playing Monk, but haste actually makes your rotation feel better for the first time ever. If you guys played a Dragonflight Monk, you could have zero haste and your rotation feels perfect with zero downtime. That's a problem. That means that, you know, haste doesn't matter for you. What happens then? You need maintenance buffs the entire expansion because one of your stats does literally nothing, right? Uh, they not only made haste actually scale your damage, which is super important for them to do, but I noticed haste and talents that reduce energy on Tiger Palm and give you more energy or somehow give you resources, those things felt much better. That's important because having haste make your rotation feel good makes haste a good stat. When haste is a good stat, your class is going to be tuned regardless. It just means that you have an extra stat that can actually benefit you, which is huge news for Windwalker. Uh, but I'm just going to jump ahead to that just to point that out, but... Uh, that's why Chi Burst being gone doesn't feel bad, because they had to reduce your Chi economy to make haste make sense. Playing it, it feels great. Okay. Uh, duration of snare effects reduced for PvE years. We don't care about that, right? Expel harm's uh, crit healing is increased and critical strike chance, kind of whatever. We have points to spend, right? You guys want increased healing taken? You want that instant vivify? And then we're going to talk about something that I, that I intentionally stopped over at the top. Okay. So now you have two options here. You can get Disable, or you can get Crashing Momentum. Brand new spell. Targets you roll through are snared by 40% for 5 seconds. Note under that. The duration of this is increased to 8 seconds, and its snare now reduces movement speed by an additional 20, making this 60. So you are now one of the very few classes in the game with a controllable slow that is above 50%. In a dungeon scenario, that's insane. In a PvP scenario, I think this is going to get nerfed. <laughs> I'll explain why. Can you guys imagine kiting a monk? You, If you roll through your enemy, you slow them by 60%, 
when you roll, you remove a snare effect from yourself. When you have your tiger out, you cannot be slowed below 90% movement speed. If you want, when you roll, it will lunge to the nearest enemy in front of you within 10 yards. And also when you roll, you could double jump to get a gust of wind and dash forward in the air, and it's like half of a fell rush. Windwalker monks are going to fucking destroy people in PvP. <laughs> um, so I think something with that might get changed because of PvP, unfortunately, but I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, yeah, so let's continue with some of the changes. Uh, so let's take that, because that sounds good, and basically all content, besides maybe raid fights that don't need it. And now, and we have a ton more points we could have spent, but again, you just have an infinite amount of choice here. I think the... Why I think this is one of the best class trees in the entire game is this class now has, um, you get everything you want really easily and the stuff that you didn't have before got baked into your class. And then you just have like eight, almost eight points at the end of this to just get whatever the fuck you want. And all the things that you want are really cool new shit that they added. It's like the opposite thing that Druid got. Druid got a new class tree, but Dorky was like, dude, you spend this entire class tree just picking up everything you had before, and there is cool new things, but you can't access them. They made cool new things for Windwalker and Monks, but you just have eight points to pick all of them you want, which is fucking nuts. Okay, so let's start with the capstone level. So, uh, now, Summon White Tiger statue still exists. Um, you don't have to take it, depending on how much damage it does, but now it just happens passively, when you use your tiger. So let's grab that. Damage is good, right? Um, right here, you can make your fortifying brew a one and a half minute cooldown. I'm thinking you're going to do that most of the time. Generally speaking, something that it's pretty rare that a cooldown that gives you 30% extra health and damage would have made you live where 20% extra health and damage reduction wouldn't. So you just take the uptime almost all the time, uh, in my opinion, but kind of fight dependent. So we'll take that. Uh, then this one increased your physical damage done by 2% per point. In my opinion, that's required. Um, at the bottom, Touch of Death increases your damage by 5% for 30 seconds after being cast, and its cooldown is reduced by 90. Okay, so like using Touch of Death to benefit your other spells. We like that. Um, there's fights where this will do nothing and you won't take it, though. Uh, we have six more points to spend. Uh, this one here, Expel Harm's healing is increased by that. You could take that. Better self-healing, right? Uh, so we can just do... Let's just go ahead and grab that. This one, this, you could argue whether this node is mandatory. You don't do a ton of magical damage, but it does increase magical damage done by 2% per. And this is actually my least favorite part of the tree, that it feels like four of these points are kind of locked in in the capstone. But you still have three points after all of this to grab stuff you want. I'll explain what those things are. Now, as if you needed any more movement, you could grab the thing where roll makes you lighter. And you can do the double jump thing. There's a new transcendence thing. Let's say we grab bounce back. Because bounce back is nice, right? Just a quick little one-pointer. Transcendence linked spirits. Transcendence now requires you to target an ally to cast it. But when you do, it will stay on them for an hour. And it'll be just like an augmentation stone. Every time you press transcendence, you will go directly to where that player is. Rather than having to put it in a spot. That is extremely valuable. This will... Probably over the course of this expansion makes monks really, really good for a fight purely because this exists. Uh, super cool addition to this. Um, okay, so let's just talent that because we like, we like doing that. Let's take the movement speed here and then we're done. Uh, if you wanted to remove this, which you won't need all the time, uh, you could grab rolling removes a snare effect. You guys remember Jaina, duration of snare effects? You guys remember when tr the troll racial made that dot fall off of you? You're going to be one of the few classes in the game that's going to have a default snare effect reduction. Uh, you could grab increase the range of leg sweep by four yards. Big old fat leg sweep, big, big range. You could grab reduction on ring of peace or song of Chi -G. You could grab dispel. And the only thing you're losing are very minor things. Like right here, bro, we have fucking vivify instant taken. Like that doesn't matter. We could grab, we could grab the paralysis and rage thing. We can grab dispel. We could, you don't need like five or six of these points. You're just specking them because why not, you know? Uh, so it feels like you have a lot of choice and with the choice, you aren't picking stuff that doesn't matter. You are picking things that, you know, actively are cool new things that feel impactful. 
So I, I, I just could not be more impressed with this tree, especially with how bad the old one is. I ended up not really going down the old one here. I explained kind of why it was bad. But, like, you can even just see. Why would you have to pick kick to select celerity or cheat torpedo? The only thing that matters when you kick chick now, or uh, click, click kick now, is you can now have, when you're kicking on a fight, it's going to reduce the cooldown of your roll every time you do it. Might not matter, but sometimes it's great. Probably good in PvP. More keybinds, woo. There's significantly less keybinds on Monk in this expansion. It's the opposite of that. All right, let's talk about the spec tree. We'll go over the hero talents later. I did play with both of these, but just feeling like talking about Monk right now. All right, so let's let's build this for a single target, and then, then let's do AoE. So you take Fist of Fury every time, and then this one is required because you need Combat Wisdom to get Flying Serpent Kick, and you need Flying Serpent Kick to get Storm Earth and Fire. So these are kind of like locked in for you. Most trees have things like that. Um, not to mention you would want both of these things. Here's one. So Expel Harm is no longer a button. It casts automatically every 15 seconds. Uh, and it does uh, reset your mastery. So the Expel Harm happens after the Tiger Palm. So one thing that I felt like would be bad is maybe you would feel like you were resetting your mastery by Tiger Palming twice for your new Chi economy. But like you would Tiger Palm with this proc and then you could Tiger Palm instantly after and it wouldn't reset your mastery. Uh, because it's casting Expel Harm in between. You're just not actually casting it. Um, really sick. And then these two, uh, in my opinion, are required for AoE and single target builds. This one solves multiple problems. Fist of Fury's damage is increased by 100% of your haste, and Fist of Fury does 10% more damage each time it deals damage, resetting when Fist of Fury ends. Your auto attack speed is increased by 60% for 8 seconds after Fist of Fury ends. There are three parts of this that tell me that they're actually listening to Windwalker feedback for maybe one of the first times ever. They fixed so many problems with this one button. They made haste probably matter alone because Fist of Fury is the majority of your damage in this expansion, which it should be, uh, by making it scale off of haste. And it affects the whole Chi economy thing we talked about later. But let's just focus on this button. Fist of Fury does 10% more damage every time it deals damage, resetting when it ends. You no longer cancel Fist of Fury or clip it. Excellent. At the end, your auto attack speed is increased by 60% for 8 seconds after Fist of Fury ends. One of the issues with Fist of Fury is you don't auto attack during it, and things like Thunder Fist work when you auto attack targets. Um, and now, when this ends, you will have extra auto attacks, and that makes up for the fact of your Fist of Fury, and it means you can actually go through your entire Thunder Fist charges. During all of my dungeons, Thunder Fist was my third or fourth damage, purely because it's proccing much more because of this button. Uh... Also, there's extra auto attack synergy. Your auto attacks have a 20% chance to kick your target, dealing 180% attack power or physical damage, and increasing your damage dealt by 5% for 5 seconds, right? So, that there's a little synergy with auto attacks there. The last expansion, you would have laughed at this. Now, it feels like a combo with fists. Um, and Wind Fury matters, right? Before, Wind Fury didn't matter for monks. Okay, continuing on. So again, we're focusing more on single target here. So let's take the Rising Sun Kick node. Rising Sun Kick increases the damage the target receives from you by 4% for 12 seconds, and it instances may overlap. This works like Iron Fur and not Festermite. So best possible version this could work on. Rising Sun Kick feels good in all scenarios because it is increasing, well, mainly single target scenarios, but getting extra resets on, on Rising Sun Kick feels great uh, because you are just turbo piping. Okay, which makes things like uh, Fury of Zwen feel a lot better. Oh, well, I mean, you know what I mean. Uh, okay, the uh, Ascension versus this is kind of hard to tell. We need to spend a few more points here to move on. Uh, I don't know if you'd take both of these. Let's see. We, you would either take Tiger Palm damage or uh, Blackout Kick, Crit Strike, and Crit Dam. We'll maybe hold off on this. Like, right now, I kind of want to take the Auto Attack thing and Ascension. So we'll, we'll hold off on the AoE side because this is pure single. Uh, you take Glory of the Dawn... I still think this has the issue of not doing enough damage when it procs, but obviously the restoring chi part is good. Uh, the top of the tree feels a little bloated. I feel like in AoE, you don't care that you're missing Tiger Palm damage and like Blackout Crit Strike chance, right? This feels like a weaker node and you don't need Mark of the Kraid. And in AoE, you still get Ascension. You just don't get Glory of the Dawn. So I don't think it's really that bad. Guys, Meridian Strikes is no longer a precursor to get anything else. Like it used to be with Spiritual Focus. Okay, let's grab things we know we want. We want Storm Earth and Fire and we want Zwen. Easy, right? Uh, let's talk about how they changed Storm Earth and Fire now that Serenity's gone. They kind of built Serenity into Storm Earth and Fire. Let's read this node. 
During Storm Earth and Fire, Rising Sun Kick reduces Chi cost by 1 for 5 seconds, and Blackout Kick reduces the cooldown of affected abilities by an additional 1 second. Activating Storm Earth and Fire resets the remaining cooldown of Rising Sun Kick and grants 2 Chi. This feels fucking nuts. This makes Storm Earth and... It, it's the best of both worlds. It makes Storm Earth and Fire actually feel like more of a cooldown. You pop the fuck off in, in your Storm Earth and Fire, and it gives monks the versatility that they've always had, which is the ability to kind of have cooldowns whenever. Um, we'll get into that more of that in a second. Plus having the cooldown actually feel like a cooldown. Uh, personally, maybe you guys, some of you guys like Serenity. In that case, rest in peace. I fucking hated that button. And anytime Serenity was Biss, I wanted to log off the character and not play it for that season. Because I have a huge pet peeve with having mechanics overcap your character. I hate it. It didn't line up with your cooldowns. It had a weird cooldown timing. And you just sat capped on energy and chi. And I feel like they could have changed that in so many ways. But basically what they did was, hey, we like Storm Earth and Fire more. But hey, let's make it feel like a mini Serenity. That doesn't overcap your resources and makes you feel powerful. If you play with this, it fucking owns. Okay. Then you have a you have a choice node. Previously, Spiritual Focus, which was actually really interesting, was tied behind Meridian Strikes, which sucked. So, you never took it. Now it's a choice mode with Drinking Horn Cover. Both of these make sense. There are fights. In Mythic Plus, you'll probably pick the one that does the most damage. Um, in Raids, this is gonna... You're gonna change this on every fight. There'll be fights where... You want to have longer cooldown windows at specific times, and there's going to be fights where you need your clones up earlier at a certain point, and then you will take Spiritual Focus. I think this is an example of a great choice node. Um, I was playing Spiritual Focus in Mythic Plus, and I really liked it. The uptime, having more clones uses feels better than them being longer, even though them being longer makes sense with Ordered Elements. One note on Ordered Elements, I wish this lasts seven seconds. Uh, instead of... Uh, I wish this lasted seven seconds instead of five. It would actually make the like rotation feel a little bit less clean because you end up pressing Rising Sun Kick again when this is gone. And if it was seven seconds, that would not be true. Um, and then we have some more new nodes here. Um, the cooldown of Rising Sun Kick is reduced by one second and the damage of Black of Kick is increased by 10. Uh, not sure about that for now. Let's take Hit Combo, right? Because Hit Combo is uh, just 6% passive damage. Sounds good. Um, Strike of the Windlord, and let's talk about how they changed Strike of the Windlord. So Strike of the Windlord is exactly the same with this node, and Thunderfist exists in the same version it existed in before, but there are four nodes that, three other nodes that directly support it now. Rushing Jade Wind, which is now a passive, and just happens when you press Strike of the Windlord. Just based on tuning, it'll just be an AoE button, right? It'll make this feel better. Okay. Then you have Gale Force. Targets struck by Strike of the Windlord are sent reeling from its impact, causing them to become vulnerable for 10 seconds. Your abilities have a 100% chance to affect the target a second time at 10% effectiveness as nature damage while they are vulnerable. So it basically turns this into like a 10% overall damage buff with a some, uh, some uh, what is it going to say, intricacies. So when certain things hit twice, they do things. Auto attacks, dual threat, you literally have double the chance to proc dual threat. Uh you rising sun kick actually casts twice right um so it makes strike of the wind lord kind of like a damage cooldown you play around in a way um and then if you want strike of the wind lord up more often the next thing that goes off of it is strike of the wind lord is reduced by 10 seconds and its damage increased by 20 percent. i was playing with these all weekend or all monday and tuesday feels super super good um Okay, so let's take the super OP Storm Earth and Fire. Let's take Spiritual Focus. Let's keep that. And then we can kind of talk about some of this stuff on the left. Um, how many more points? We have five more points to spend here. Uh, I actually liked playing with Inner Peace. So Inner Peace was really bad last expansion because what it did was it increased your Tiger Palm damage by 10% and increased your maximum energy by 30. Remember how I told you your Chi economy is different because they wanted to make haste matter? At least at low levels with not a lot of stats... I really liked Inner Peace because what it does now is it reduces the energy cost on Tiger Palm. That felt incredibly good in the dungeons. Uh, maybe that won't be the case when you have enough haste and you can move this point around. Uh, but it felt really good in the dungeons, so I would take that. Um, energy Burst, when you consume Blackout Kick, a uh, proc Blackout Kick, you have a 100% chance to generate a Chi. We're going to get more into that in the AoE portion. I think we're going to skip that for now. 
So we still have four more points. Let's take the teachings of the monastery, obviously. Uh, what we could do is... Let's just do this really quick here. Let's just grab blackout kick proc increases the next blackout kick by 175%. Super value. And then let's grab Dance of Chiji, just because Dance of Chiji in single target is really fucking fun. Like, it's actually just really fun to have Dance of Chiji in single target. Actually, let's go ahead and grab Energy Burst, because that would work for single target, too. All right, boys. Let's grab Gale Force. Let's grab Communion with the Wind. We just talked about it. Okay, bad news. Jade Fire Stomp still exists. The only thing about this tree that I universally hate, because not only does it exist, Jade Fire Harmony still exists, which means that you will almost be certainly playing this because it just increases your damage by 12%. Uh, and I don't know. I, I haven't played with it, so I won't poo poo it yet, but like, because of how powerful Jade Fire Harmony is, you're pretty much locked into playing this in an ideal scenario. Um, but yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't reset and it's a 15 second. It says 30 second recharge on, it was 15 second cooldown on PTR. Um, it's not 30 seconds, by the way. This is a 15 second thing. So Jade Fire Harmony gives you a 10 second, 12% damage buff. And this is a 15 second cooldown. It is wrong on the P on Wowhead here. So not as bad, but I still, I, I just hate, I just don't like this button. Uh, but that could be just me. All right, let's go down the middle. Invoker's Delight grants haste for 20 seconds after summoning your Celestial. This is nerfed to 20% haste on PTR. Uh... Probably makes sense because it used to give you a ton of haste because haste didn't mean anything for you. But now haste, I assume, will be good. So them nerfing this kind of makes sense. You really feel the haste when this is up. Uh, so you take that. Transfer the power. Always goaded. Zwen's battle gear makes the entire class work. Uh, those are all pretty pretty uh, basic, right? All right, here we go. Sequence strike. You have a 100% chance to gain blackout kick proc after consuming dance of chiji so after you get a blackout kick proc your next blackout kick does 175 percent chance it also guarantees procs a a dance of chiji even in single target that feels incredible i'm a fan of uh we're building a fun tree here so we can do that and then let's add whirling dragon punch so i like a lot of other people saw whirling dragon punch last expansion and was like i don't know i just feel like i don't ever really want to play this mainly because zwen's battle gear took its place in the rotation, like, the reduction of all these things made it feel like Whirling Dragon Punch was less needed in your rotation. Alright, that changes in this expansion, motherfuckers. We can do two things. We can either make Whirling Dragon Punch have a 100% chance to activate Dance of Chiji, which in AoE would be great. Or, what would also be good in AoE, and single target, is Whirling Dragon Punch grants four stacks of Teachings of the Monastery, and Teachings of the Monastery can now stack up to eight times. Guys, the feeling of having a blackout kick proc go off, which means your next blackout kick does 175% increased damage, and then you rip eight of those motherfuckers and just watch mob's health just get deleted is incredibly satisfying. Not to mention, I don't know where the exact talent is, but there's a talent that gives you a chance. Uh, your black Oh, I think it's a hero talent. Um, one of your hero talents gives you a 15% chance per Teachings of the Monastery uh, consumed to give you back a Teachings of the Monastery. So sometimes you'll press this and hit eight Blackout Kicks, and then, which also cleave, by the way, uh, and it'll give you back, like, I've seen six come back before, like, just high roll crazy. It just, it just feels nuts. Um, and super, super fun. Um, so let's go ahead and take that one just for fun factor, and we're talking about single target. And look, boys, 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 we still have two points. We got all the shit. We have two points. We can get Jade Fire. We could get Fury of Zwen and Zwen's Bond. We could get Sky Touch. You could spend... Is it, there, here's one issue I have with the tree. is like At least they're not required to get anywhere, but picking Rising Star feels like shit still. Even f picking Spinning Crane Kick points. These I feel like you'll never interact with these two points or these two points. But the rest of the Capstone tree fucking bangs. So... Uh... Big fan. Huge fan. Uh, so, I don't know. What do you guys think of for single target? I think we grab Fury of Zwen. Maybe a little Sky Touch. 
in one sky touch window we could get a fist of a rising sun kick fist of a strike of the wind lord fist of fury rising sun kick whirling dragon punch blackout kick with enough haste in a scenario where you're doing 50 percent more crit holy fuck oh yeah by the way aoe touch of death is gone forever which is very good for monks uh, it was kind of fun to press AoE Touch of Death, except for the fact that you constantly wanted to press it twice, delete your mastery, and then also it took too long to actually proc, so you couldn't get it off and you were sitting there spamming it. And it was a large portion of your damage, which sucked because it was fake, not real damage. Like, yes, it was real damage, but like you were, like actual damage, but you were doing it to a pack that was already dying that you could have just killed slowly while walking to the next pack, and you killing it early didn't really matter. So, like, you overkilled a lot with it, and you ended up... It it was on your meter, but it made your class look better than it was. And that throws off the perception of balance. So, I, I think it, it being gone is so good for so many reasons. Touch of Death is still important, and it's single target. And you get a buff from it, but it's just way, way less impactful. Uh, and just way better gameplay with this. Alright, that's fucking goaded, right? Alright, let's, uh, let's talk about AoE. Uh, very briefly, this will be much shorter because we already talked about most things. Uh, can I just do this? Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, so we do Fist of Fury, grab this, grab that. Uh, Tiger Palm damage is interesting. I'm going to hold out on this. I initially am like Tiger Palm damage, fuck that. Bro, I did a dungeon and Tiger Palm was like my sixth damage and it was like decently up there. And there's another node that gives you stacking Tiger Palm damage. Sounds boring, but potentially strong. Um... So let's go down and grab Mark of the Crane, because we're AoEing, right? Uh, and then we still have five more points to spend up here, and we need to grab this. So let's grab Acclamation, let's grab Ascension, and then maybe we'll leave off Dual Threat for now, although it seems pretty good. Ascension is definitely good for AoE, but yeah. Um, let's grab that. Tiger, Ordered Elements, let's grab Spiritual Focus. Um, let's grab Hit Combo, Strike of the Windlord, uh, Thunder Fist. This time, let's assume Rushing Jade Wind is tuned well, let's grab that. And then we have four more points to spend. We could get Teachings of the Monastery. Uh, we could get Courageous Impulse to get to Dance of Chiji, and then one more. So we could either get Energy Burst for more energy economy. We could grab Jade Ignition for the first time ever, because last expansion it was tied under Inner Peace for no reason. Uh, so you could just never access it. Now it's uh, now it's here, so we could grab that. We could also grab Inner Peace for better energy economy. If Rushing Jade Wind isn't tuned well enough, which is, I think, currently the case on Alpha, but that could be changed instantly, I took Inner Peace just for better economy. Uh, oh, sorry, actually, you would take uh, you would take Shadow Boxing Shreds for sure. Uh, the only thing that's weird is, like, I kind of want to get Dance of Chiji, but I don't... Courageous Impulse is really good. Black Oak Kick was literally my top damage in one of these dungeons. Uh, I can show you, actually, the end of one of my dungeons, and I looked at my breakdown. Um... But yeah, okay, we got some AoE stuff. Uh, I still think Gale Force and Communion is insane because this just buffs your AoE so much. Still get this, still get all this good stuff. Uh, not that. I ignored the Spinning Crank Kick thing. I took Whirling Dragon Punch. Maybe you take Dance of Chi-Gi and AoE, but I still think the Teachings of the Monastery thing is broken. Uh, and you have two points. So basically, AoE to single target doesn't change too many of your talents. Um... You just kind of grab a little bit more of this stuff and you make Blackout Kick cleave. But, I don't know. You have a lot of stuff you can get here. They they brought Last Emperor's Capacitor back. I don't know if it'll be strong again. Never liked Zwen's Bond. Maybe this is a Jade Fire Angle. Um, but, yeah. You're one of the classes that has very similar talents, potentially, in an AoE versus single target scenario. But also, those classes are also usually really good. So, not sure. Yeah, Bonus Brew is gone. So, anyways, I'm not going to spend much more time on Windwalker, but just know that I'm I'm really happy. A lot of good changes. Um, Last Emperor's Capacitor is in a weird location. Yeah, it's in a weird location behind Dance of GG. Definitely true. So, woo! Alright. Sorry. For people who are not into Windwalker, you had to let me get my, uh, get my bit out there. Alright, what do we do here? Do we... Look at the new hero talents.
Let's look at the new hero talents and then let's uh, listen to some interviews. Okay. What do we look at first, boys? <clears throat> we have Hunter Sentinel, Mage Sun Fury, Monk Master of Harmony, Priest Oracle, which was remade because old Oracle was super stinky. We have Priest Void Weaver. Uh, well, wait, Soul Harvester was already. Did they remake it? All right, one second. We got to pull something up, too. All right, boys. We got to pull it up. <clears throat> we currently have a running tier list of this was before they were ever played. This was based on initially reading them, getting some general feedback on them, and just based on their overall quality level and their th how well they got their theme. Okay, so these previously were unreleased. Uh, these were really bad, but I think we're going to move Oracle to unreleased now because they remade it. We'll, re we'll redo it. We're going to look at this more at the end, um, but... This is kind of where things stand for, for me. Not not speaking for everyone, of course. All right, let's check it out. Is Mage about to be 3 out of 3 super insane? <clears throat> Maybe. Let's see. All right, Hunter Sentinel. The Sentinel tree is for marksmanship and survival hunters. Sentinel, your attacks have a chance to apply Sentinel on the target, stacking up to 10 times. While Sentinel stacks are higher than 3, applying Sentinel has a chance to trigger an implosion, causing a stack to be consumed on the target every second to deal arcane damage. Okay, so usually you can tell if these trees are good just by reading the first thing. Not wowed by this. Uh, but I need to see a lot more. I mean, this this is like this is setting up the tree to have a lot of interaction with these sentinel stacks, so we need to kind of see that. Uh, let's go to the left. Each time a sentinel deals damage to an enemy, you gain an absorb shield equal up to 1% of your max health up to 10. That's actually going to be really good for sustain. I think that's going to do a lot of healing. Uh, you guys already know how I feel about defensive bloat, so I won't give you that spiel. When you apply Sentinel on a target, you have a 15% chance to gain a second stack. Okay. Oh, RNG in the short term over a long fight, this will always average out. Uh, let's see. Whenever a Sentinel deals damage, the cooldown of True Shot and Coordinated Assault is reduced by one second up to 15 seconds. Okay, that's one choice node. I, generally speaking, love things that reduce cooldowns of other spells. But some classes, having your cooldowns be randomly 15 seconds earlier changes nothing because you end up holding it anyway. I don't know how Marksman works. Um, uh, question. Mar Marks Hunters. Uh, if I'm, I'm going to ignore Survival because no one plays that spec. Is If True Shot is 15 seconds earlier because of this choice node, will that feel good potentially? Max, as a PvPer, please stop talking about defensive bloat. Well, first of all, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. And then defensives are all PvPers care about. Actually, I had a conversation with uh, Van Ruki, and he agreed that a big issue with PvP's current gameplay is the fact that there are actually too many defenses as well. Um, You press it when you have it. Okay, then, then it's just good, right? Okay. For eight seconds after activating True Shot, uh, all abilities are guaranteed to apply Sentinel. Ooh. That could blast, depending on some other stuff. Let's read the middle. When you apply Sentinel to a target not affected by Sentinel, you apply one additional stack. So the first time you hit any enemy that doesn't have Sentinel, you immediately give them two. When a target affected by Sentinel deals damage to you, they are rooted for three seconds. May only occur every one minute per target. It's a PvP thing. Sentinel starts dealing damage. The target is snared by 40%. So hunters in PvE will always snare something by 40% the first time they touch them if they're playing this. Which is insane. Uh, Marksman. Multi-shot causes any target affected by Sentinel to explode, dealing arcane damage by up to six targets within eight yards. Okay, that's massive. That's I mean, I was looking for a way for this to apply to AoE, and that makes total sense. 
Uh, the first time... Wait, aren't Mark's Hunters going to have, like, crazy burst? Because, like, the first time you hit something, it's going to immediately give them two stacks, which also means you're going to... Oh, no. It's multi-shot after they're applied by Sentinel. Still, still a lot of burst. Yeah. Okay. Aim shot and rapid fire. Okay. Deals more damage. Each time Sentinel deals damage to an enemy, it has a 15% chance to generate five focus. Ooh, energy economy. This is already sounding really good, by the way. Again, theme ignored. I don't know if this really nails any theme, but gameplay so far, stacking thing, chance to apply, cooldown reduction, and energy resource recovery. Assuming you're not over capping on this and that the cooldown reduction actually matters. Like, that, that sounds really good gameplay-wise. So, and not to mention, um, Eyes Closed is going to be super good for resource generation as well uh, because of this thing. Okay. Uh, all Sentinel debuffs implode when a target affected by more than three stacks of your Sentinel falls below 20% health. Okay, so not only are you going to have good burst, but you're going to get the full value of these things when they get low. That's going to be super good in dungeons. Uh, and then Crescent Steel targets you damage below 20% health, gain a stack of Sentinel every three seconds. Okay, so in, in, like in a raid scenario, you'll probably take Crescent Steel uh, for better execute, which is real. Okay, this, this, I haven't even read the capstone yet. This shit bangs. Invigorating Pulse doesn't matter for MM. Uh, you have no idea if that's true, right? So you're, you're saying based on the focus economy in Dragonflight, you having a chance to generate extra focus won't matter. Um, you have absolutely no fucking clue what the focus economy will be in the War Within. There was even a class just with the release today that had their energy and chi economy completely changed. So you have no idea if that is the case or not. Um, okay, anyways, let's read the capstone. For every 15 seconds, your next wildfire or bomb or rapid fire summons a celestial owl oh here comes the bird that conjures a 10 yard radius lunar storm at the target's location for eight seconds okay an enemy affected by sentinel within your lunar storm gets struck by arcane damage every 0.4 seconds any target struck by this effect takes 10 percent increased damage from you and your pet for eight seconds so that seems fine. It's like kind of building off more of like the AOE part of this. And maybe that will be the theme. We were talking about this on the podcast that what they can do more with these hero talents is make you visually see that you have them. Like Rider of the Apocalypse, it's impossible to not tell. There's fucking horsemen around you. With this, you will constantly see a lunar storm. So you'll know you're a sentinel hunter, like regardless of it changing your gameplay or not. But some of them, you can't tell at all. Like Shadow Pan Monk, you actually do have no idea you're a Shadow Pan Monk. It all happens in the background. It doesn't change your rotation. Um, and like you don't look any different, right? But like they could do some shit like Wisdom of the Wall m makes you turn into this Shadow Pan. Like a thing of smoke comes down and you're like a panda or something. I don't know. Like just some shit like that. Um, this is going to be up almost all the time. Only thing that's kind of bad is, like, Hunters really didn't like Wild Spirits for the sole reason as tanks could kite out of it. I mean, that could easily happen here. Like, if you start... Like, you just need to know, like, when you rapid fire, you're not going to want the tanks to move. So, my only thought is maybe a better version of this is the Lunar Storm follows the enemy that you're targeting when you rapid fire. Um... But maybe it won't matter because this isn't as impact. Each individual Lunar Storm isn't as impactful as Wild Spirits. But I could definitely see it being frustrating. And it happens pretty consistently, so. Okay. And then, yeah, this this affects survival in some way. I just know nothing about it. No one plays it, so I'm just going to disregard that. Um, All right. This is awesome. This is by far the best gameplay Hunter tree. They've. I mean, nothing is going to equal the theme of Dark Ranger for Hunters. But this is... Uh, this is one of the better gameplay... This is the best gameplay Hunter one for sure. Big fan. All right, starting off today with a dub. Dubs in the chat. Giat. Okay. Mage Sun Fury. Can mages... Here's the question. Can mages 
get their third tree that are all fucking insanely good. Let's see. Uh, we'll start off. Arcane and Fire. Every four times you consume clear casting or six times you consume a hot streak, you conjure a spell fire sphere. And then while you're out of combat, you will slowly conjure them over time. What that does is it just increases your spell damage by 4% and stacks up to three times. Okay, we've got some potential. Cool looking icon too. Consuming hot streak or clear casting grants you three or 2% haste for 10 seconds. That can overlap. I wonder if that's iron fur or... Uh, or Fester Might. Your Prismatic and Flame Barrier now grant 5% avoidance while active and 5% leech for 5 seconds when it breaks or expires. Um, they not going to do the whole spiel. Adding defensives to mages is lunacy. Um, but they're adding defensives in every class hero talent tree, so it's going to happen. Hopefully they remove defensives from all classes with an extreme amount of them uh, universally outside of these trees. Um, okay, that's also not super powerful for what it's worth. Um, overflowing power. When you cast Arcane Surge or Combustion, its duration is extended by, uh, 2.5 seconds maximum for each Spellfire Sphere. Okay, uh, up to 2.5. That's the first one, so longer cooldowns. Sun Fury Execution. Arcane Bombardment damage has increased to 130%, and it now deals 100% damage against targets below 35% health. Uh, Okay. Uh, fire Searing Touch Damage bonus threshold increased to, to 35%. And, yeah, I, I know what Searing Touch does. Oh, I didn't know what Arcane Bombardment is, but I, I recognize that talent, but I just read it for whatever reason. Okay, so it's an Execute talent, right? So this one is, do you want longer cooldowns or do you want Execute? Very powerful node, uh, for sure. Uh, okay, Invocation Arcane... F Wait, what? When you cast Arcane Surge or Combustion, you summon an Arcane Phoenix to aid you in battle. Your Arcane Phoenix aids you for the duration of your cooldowns, casting random Arcane and Fire spells. Over its duration, your Arcane Phoenix will consume each of your Spellfire spheres to cast an exception. This fucking owns. Like, maybe this thing is tuned to do zero damage, but the actual feel of this is fucking sick. Um, god damn. And, and I wonder what the exceptional spells are. That's going to be fun. Okay, let's keep going. Your Arcane Phoenix now has a chance to cast, uh, Gravity Lapse or Supernova as exceptional spells. I don't know what the fuck that does. Um, and will periodically spell steal buffs from nearby enemies. That kind of doesn't matter. Probably a PvP thing. Um... Gravity Lapse. Replaces Blast Wave. The snap of your fingers warps the gravity around your target and the two other nearby enemies, suspending them in the air for three seconds. Upon landing, they take arcane damage. What the fuck? I'm assuming that was already a thing? What the fuck is that? That's a new spell? That looks insane. Alright. Uh... Summoning your Arcane Phoenix grants you a sphere. Your Arcane Phoenix can now cra cast Greater Pyroblast and Arcane Surge when casting an exceptional spell. C fucking why not? I'm holding the capstone. Conjuring a Spellfire Sphere caused your next Arcane Blast or Arcane Barrage to deal 50% increased damage. And Conjuring a Sphere caused your next Pyroblast or Flame Strike to deal 100% increased damage. Okay. Uh, Glorious Incandescence. Uh, consuming Burden of Power. What's Burden of Power? Ah, this previous thing. Yeah. Okay, Consuming Burden of Power causes your next cast of Arcane Orb to call down a storm of eight meteorites on its target that it damages. Each meteorite reduces the cooldown of Arcane Orb and generates an Arcane Charge. Fucking... Oh my god. Fire Consuming a Burden of Power causes your next cast of Phoenix Flames to call down a storm of eight meteorites, and each single one reduces the cooldown of Fire Blast by 0.5 seconds. Okay. Very cool. Spellfire spheres can now stack up to five times choice node or generating a sphere while your phoenix is active cause it to cast an exceptional spell. Okay. Uh, let's see if this gets any better. 
Uh, while your Arcane Phoenix is active, you gain twice as many stacks of mana addiction. They are addicted to that shit. Well, uh, this is when your Arcane Phoenix expires, it empowers you to grant Arcane Soul for three seconds. Which is just Arcane Missiles that have 100% chance to proc clear casting. Plus an additional one second for each exceptional spell. So you could just get multiple clear casting procs off of Arcane Missiles guaranteed when it expires. And then also for Fire, it'll be the same thing. Except Pyroblast and Flame Strike will have no cast time and are guaranteed to critically strike. <laughs> So, for probably up to six or seven seconds, you're going to be machine gunning pyros that crit and are instant. This is probably better than the other two. This is probably the best one. Not to mention Arcane Phoenix, bro. All the, like, Shadow Flame stuff in this game is so goaded. Like, Arcane Fire combo, that visual is so sick. I mean, it's just, like, what the fuck is that? Dude, mages are just living in a different world. Absolutely insane. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Uh, Monk, Master of Harmony, Brewmaster, and Mistweaver. Tank and healer trees have always been kind of interesting. Oh, I didn't rank the, uh, the Hunter Sentinel one. I think Sentinel was really cool. I think Sentinel's, like, almost really insane. It's, like, definitely top of really cool. Uh, which is a good change for Hunters. Store Vitality from 20% of your damage dealt and 10% of your healing. For 10 seconds after casting Celestial Brew, your spells and abilities draw upon the Stored Vitality to deal 25% additional damage over 8 seconds. So after Celestial Brew, you do hella damn. Okay, same thing for Mistweavers, except for 10 seconds after Thunder Focus T, your spells and abilities draw upon that to deal 25% additional healing. So make sure Thunder Focus T turn you into a Giga Healer. Okay. Chi Burst and Chi Wave did 100% increased damage. Pretty basic. Tiger's Lust reduces the remaining cooldown of roll. That's super whatever. Tiger's Lust grants 20% speed up to two allies near its target. That's... V Wait. Okay, no, no, no. I thought it was going to grant Tiger's Lust to three targets. That would be insane. Uh, that, that second one's also bad. Um, and, yeah, just, like, compare this to the one we just read, by the way. Uh, Rising Sun Kick, Black Oak... Kick and Tiger Palm damage enemies in a line through their primary target. Depends on the damage it does. Could be nice, though. Uh, middle, Purified Spirit. When Aspect of the Harmony ends, which is the first thing, uh, any remaining vitality is released as damage over 8 seconds split amongst the targets. Uh, same thing with healing. Uh, that's randomly also doing damage right now and pulling the whole instance on Alpha. Needs to fix that. Uh, harmonic Gambit. During Aspect of the Harmony, Expel Harm and Vivify. Withdraw Vitality to Heal. Okay. For so extra healing for Brewmaster when it's up if you need it, and during Aspect of Harmony, Rising Sun Kick, uh, Black Kick, and Tiger Palm also withdraw vitality. To okay, so it's a damage buff as well as a healing buff for Mistweaver, and a healing buff as well as a damage buff for Brewmaster. Cool, uh, but it's a choice node though, right? So kind of depends which one you want. Uh, Celestial Brew is one additional charge. Oh, that's nice, right? That's gotta feel good, right? That's fucking massive. Wait, that's, like, fucking insane. Like, the what you kind of, like, build a fight. How you're going to tank a raid fight, at least, kind of around Celestial Brew, that that is going to make you way more versatile, man. That's insane. That's fucking crazy. And then Mistweaver, Thunder Focus T has one additional charge. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the fuck healers do. Dude, that, that, this one node is fucking crazy. This should be like a capstone or something. This is like like more powerful than everything I just read so far combined. Uh, okay. Chi Burst, increased vitality store by 25% for 10 seconds. Eh. Uh, Rising Sun Kick, Blackout Kick, and Tiger Palm contribute. To, yeah. I, it's hard for me to understand exactly how powerful vitality will be, so I'm just, you know. Um... Let's read this first. Uh, casting a physical spell or ability increase the damage your next fire or nature spell by 5% and vice versa stacks up to 5. So it'll just keep stacking. So you're never going to think about this, really. Well, maybe you would. Maybe, like, if you want to revival soon, you would make sure that you cast 5 physical spells before it so you just get the fattest revival of all time. Like, is that a nature spell? I'm assuming it is. And then for... For Brewmaster Monks, like, you could get the fattest Breath of Fire. 
something like that. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's some... Okay, that's that's kind of interesting, actually. I, th I think maybe more interesting for healers than deep than tanks, but yeah. Uh, Purifying Brew removes 10% additional stagger and causes you to absorb up to some incoming stagger. What? I'm just going to... That's, you know... Uh, when casting yourself, your single target healing spells heal for 10% more than granted. Okay. And, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, are you sure these aren't flipped? Fortifying Brew applies a Chi Cocoon. And Mistweaver Fortifying Brew grants Stagger. That, that has to be flipped, right? Is it, does anyone else think that those are just flipped? They are not. That is accurate. Really? I mean, Mistweaver monks getting staggered during their fortifying brew would definitely be super crazy. Like, that on top of 20% health and DR. Okay, let's go over both scenarios. Brewmasters giving themselves a full power chi cocoon. Which, let's just call it Monk Bubble, guys. Ain't, ain't no one call it... Wait, is Chi Cocoon Monk Bubble? Is that what that's called? Is that is that what that thing is supposed to be? No? Chi Cocoon isn't Life Cocoon. What the fuck is a Chi Cocoon? Why why do you guys have two cocoons? Hmm? It's from chi -G. You're not helping me. What, what does it do? It's a smaller shield. Oh, that stinks. Okay. Uh, so, Miss Weavers are probably hoping that they get a 20% stagger. Sounds good. Okay, that's way less cool. I thought that was going to give you a life cocoon. That would be fucking insane. Uh, okay. Uh, casting Purifying Brew, Swords Vitality. Yeah. All right, let's read the bottom. Uh, Aspect of Harmony deals damage as a chance to spread to a nearby enemy. When you directly attack the affected target, as a chance to intensify as a Brewmaster. And then Mistweaver, when it heals, as a chance to spread to a nearby ally. When you directly heal an affected target, as a chance to intensify. Targeted damage or healed by your Aspect of Harmony takes 10% increased damage or healing from you. Okay, so damage... I mean, ov overall, this seems great. It definitely had us in the first half, and then this made it fucking way better. This one node could have been the capstone. Uh, little little damage windows, little healing windows, ways to, like, buff specific spells. I mean, it's hard to tell because we just read this abomination, like, in a good way. I don't tank or heal on this class anymore, so unsure what the community feedback is. Maybe I'll wait to hear more of that. But I get, dude, I can just know Brewmaster alone just getting a second charge of Celestial Brew is at least going to feel different, feel really good. Like bottom of really cool. Yeah, probably something like that. Let's just make it up. <laughs> there we go. Woo. All right, here we go. Uh, Priest Oracle. All right, boys. It's been remade. When Oracle first came out, it was a power infusion replacement that had maybe one of the worst gameplay loops I would have ever seen. Uh, let's see what we're looking at. Premonition. Oh, no. Looks like the gameplay is still here. Oh, so maybe... When they when they said they were gonna remake it, they said they weren't gonna base it around power infusion as a replacement. But it looks like it's okay. Well, let's let's okay, guys. Open, clear mind, clear clear mind, clear thoughts. Open open mind. All right. New button premonition. One minute cooldown. Gain access to a spell that gives you advantage against your fate. Using your abilities rotates through the available spells. Premonition of. PAD increases your healing done by 5% and causes 50% of overhealing on players to be redist redistributed on up to three nearby allies for 10 seconds. That seems pretty good. Premonition of Insight reduces the cooldown of your next three spell cast by five seconds. Uh, and then Solace, your next single target healing spell increases your target's healing received by 25% for 10 seconds. Okay, so Solace stinks. The other two sound really interesting. Uh, okay, that's it's one minute CD too. Uh, okay. 
Is it supposed to be piety? Is that why you guys are making fun of me? I'm saying piety. It's got to be piety, right? I'm going to call it piety. All right, let's go down the left. Increases the damage absorbed by Power Word Shield by 10% and healing of prayer many by 10. Okay, whatever. Uh, Power Word Shield can apply casts apply one stack of prayer mending to your target prayer mending casts apply a power word shield to your target at 20 percent effectiveness and this one's under construction okay so this was actually part of the oracle tree that i liked was the left side and it had like prayer of mendings going out when you were power word shielding stuff and then this other node which is still under construction or whatever this this like gave you some synergy and CDR and some weird shit like that for Prayer of Mendings going off. I think there's a lot of stuff to be done there. That sounds really cool. So I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do with this. I'm actually liking this so far. Increasing the dur duration of Atonement by one second and Renew by three. Cool. Reduces the cooldown of Purify by two seconds, so they'll be the only healer in the entire game with a six-second dispel. Um, And... That... Kind of makes sense. It's the only hero talent that is shared between two healers. Um, and I don't think that's a huge problem. Like, literally the only fight this would have ever mattered for so far, like, a uh, raid fight, is uh, is rat, is uh, Fire Rack. Uh, I mean, I guess technically Tindril you could dispel earlier, but, like, I don't know. You wouldn't have done that. So, super not important. Anyways... When an ally walks through your angelic feather, you are granted 100% of its effect. I think you're going to take that almost all the time. Maybe you'll take the shorter dispel in dungeons just in case something goes wrong. Um, because then, like, people can't steal your speed. I'm not sure. Shout out to Priest, though. Hopefully their talent tree in this expansion will allow them to get a choice node for life grip to grip you to a target. No reason why that doesn't exist. Reduces the cooldown of Premonition by 6 seconds uh, to make it a 54 second cooldown. Strange. And then Clairvoyance doesn't exist yet. Uh, right side. Premonition causes your next power radiance heal or prayer of healing cast to be instant and cost 15% less mana. Well, that's kind of nice. That's... That's going to feel good. Uh, reduces the cooldown of powered life by 3 seconds and allows it to be usable on targets below 50% health. Um, Pain Suppression reduces damage taken by an additional 10%, and Guardian Spirit lasts an additional 2 seconds. I don't think that really matters. Like, if you PS someone, they're alive. Whether it's 40% or 50, right? Um, uh, but fine. Uh, Premonition gains an additional charge and now only rotates to the next spell when you cast Premonition. Wait. Premonition gains an additional charge. So you have two charges of this now on potentially a 54 second cooldown. And now it only rotates to the next spell when you cast Premonition. Oh, I see. Using your... I didn't read this initially. Using your abilities rotates through the available spells. How this was made before was you had to wait for it to rotate to the right one. But if you want the second one, like you would just cast one spell and then press it again. Like, so it'll just rotate easily. There's only three things. But then here, it says... It only rotates to the next spell when you cast Premonition. So this guarantees that you will go through them in order. I don't think you would ever take that. I think that's like a, I don't want to think about this. Which is probably really smart. Because I think a lot of people won't want to think about this. I think... Like, good players will never take that because you're going to want specific ones at specific times. I think it's good that this exists, though, for sure. And then the opposite one for that, if you play the game, is uh, Premonition's effect is increased by 30% if the Divine spell is different than the previous Premonition. Okay, so just make incentivizes you to use different ones, which you will never use Solace. You'll probably just go... If, if you care enough about it being 30% more powerful, you'll just go back and forth between Insight and uh, Piety. Um, okay. Uh, okay. When you use power word, when your power word shield is fully absorbed or your prayer of mending heals, gain a stack of grand reveal. At 150 stacks, you gain an additional charge of premonition. So this is going to be better for holy, right? Because they're going to have a lot more prayer of mending stacks going off. Like, disc is just going to Basically, every cast of Power Word Shield is going to give you two. 
as disk. Right? Because you're getting a prayer of mending given by this thing. And then for holy, you're getting six grand reveal stacks every time you press prayer of mending. Something like that. So maybe just better for one than the other. I don't know. I kind of like this. This sounds kind of interesting. I don't know if uh, I don't know what their other options are for priests. I don't know if we've seen them yet. I, I'm I'm not a healer priest though, so my opinion like turbo doesn't matter. But I don't hate this. This is way better than it was before. Um, I'm probably gonna hold off on takes from this until I hear from some other people. I I don't I don't feel confidently enough to. Yeah, I don't know. All right, like I could see I could see insight being really interesting for both specs, like reducing the next three spell cast by five seconds could have some cool combos that don't exist currently. I could see piety. Uh, I kept, okay. PD. <laughs> PD. I could see PD being really fucking good when you're in your cooldowns, because if you're overhealing a lot, which most healers do in their cooldowns, it will just give you more value and keep people alive more. I don't know. I'll wait till I hear some some takes from some reasonable priest players. Uh, Alright, guys. The very first look for Shadow and Disc's final hero talent. Let's see if it's sick. Shadow priests are permanently down bad, so hopefully they get one that is cool. Mind Blast tears open an entropy rift <laughs> entropic rift that follows the enemy for 10 seconds enemies caught in its path will suffer shadow damage every one second while within its reach yay uh let's go down the left entropic rift slows enemies by up to 80 percent increase the closer whoa okay they are adding so many slows to this game bro an 80 percent slow is insane the only thing that's better than that is the very first second of death and decay and they have to be in it. That's fucking nuts. You could you could you could play around that. And it's a choice note as well. So if you don't want that, you don't have to get it. And then while Entropic Void is active, you move 20% faster. Uh and also Void Torrent can be used while moving. Okay, they're gonna take that all the time. Sounds good. Uh one more under that. Shadow Word Death consumes absorb shields from your target. Oh, and this is, we were just talking about having a shield synergy earlier, so that probably is impacted by that. Dealing up to 300% extra damage to them and granting you 1% mana if a shield was present. Or 5 insanity if a shield was present. So, huge damage to shields. I haven't checked the raid dungeon journal a lot yet. Maybe there's some shields in there, but there's definitely multiple dungeon bosses with shields, and it seems intentional. Um, okay, and if you don't want that... Uh, summoning an, which is most of the time, you're not doing damage to shields, right? Summoning an entropic rift empowers your next power word shield to be 80% more effective. So that's maybe, is that your defensive option where you're just, your power word shield on yourself is just twice as good? Okay. While entropic rift is active, active, your atonement healing is increased by 20% for disc. Oh, and then also this is a disc tree. So that just kind of makes sense. Um, while entropic rift is active, your shadow damage is increased by 10%. So after you cast mind blast, you just do 10% more damage all the time are you gonna have this open all the time this is this on a cooldown wait you didn't read the shadow part oh summoning an entropic rift gets you one charge of mind devourer what the fuck does that mean mind devourer is a free and stronger devouring plague got it um cool uh down the middle void blast entropic rift upgrades smite and Mind Blast into a Void Blast while it's active, uh, sends a blast of cosmic void energy at the enemy, causing shadow damage. So just like a visual upgrade, I guess. That's good. Again, we talked about this on the podcast, but like from playing a bunch of different hero talents, it is very noticeable which ones make you visually feel like you are that hero talent. Some of them achieve this really well. Some of them don't. This looks like it will feel like that for sure. So it uh, probably also hits harder. But this also means that this doesn't spawn Entropic Rift, though, right? So, like, you're going to hit Entropic Rift, 
you're going to Mind Blast again, but that's not going to spawn a new Rift. It's just a super OP Mind Blast you can do in this one, and then it's going to... Your next Mind Blast when your Entropic Rift disappears will open the next one. Is that correct? Void Torrent spawns the Rift. Oh, am I missing... Oh, maybe... Mind Blast tears open an Entropic Rift. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. All right, anyways, let's keep going. I'll read more. I'm sure it'll make sense later. Uh, Tooltip is incorrect. Wowhead is bad, not you. Oh, got it. Okay, so Void Torrent open... Oh, okay, everything makes so much sense now. Thank you. So, so Void Torrent opens the Rift. And vo it turns Void Torrent into, like, a damage cooldown. And it also makes your Mind Blast giga powerful. Uh, okay. Void Blast increases the duration of Entropic Rift by one second, uh, up to a maximum of five. Ooh, love that. Love active gameplay extension of cool things like that. Uh, Atonement Healing with Void Blast is 100% more effective. Oh, shit. That's pretty good, right? And then Void Blast generates 100% additional insanity on top of what Mind Blast would normally do. Uh, okay. For disc, powered shields are just 20% stronger. And for shadow, your dots deal 20% increased damage. Love dots feeling powerful. Uh, depth of shadows. Shadow or death is a high chance to summon a shadow fiend for 5 seconds. Chances increased against lower health targets. Okay, execute choice. And then transform your shadow fiend into a void wraith that casts void flay, dealing up to 50% additional damage, dealing more damage to the higher health enemies. Okay, so just straight up, this is, in a lot of like five minute dummy test this will just be a they will this will just be a uh like whatever does more damage choice node but in specific raid encounters this will definitely be a fight specific choice node which is really cool um void leech every two seconds siphon an amount equal to three percent of your health from a nearby ally if they are higher health than you That is really good. And also, people will die to that. There, There's going to be, like, it's going to happen, like, one in every four raid nights. Someone's going to link their death log. And, like, within two seconds of them dying, you took 3% of their health, and then they died, which is awesome. Hopefully, you can, like, choose which classes it steals from, too. Like, Augs and Moonkins. Fuck them. And then the other one is... You absorb 3% of all magic damage taken. Oh, wow. So, this wasn't even their... Uh, oh, I was reading that for disc. That's why I thought that was their defensive thing. So you just straight up take 3% less magic damage, which is most dangerous damage. And absorbing shadow damage heals you for 100%. Absorbing shadow damage specifically heals you for 100% of the amount absorbed. So... Basically, if you take the second option, you take 3% less magic damage at all times, which is pretty good. And if you are on a boss that's dealing shadow damage to you, you will basically absorb or heal for 6% of the damage you take, which you could kind of look at as like a passive 6% DR, but not really. Uh, but nonetheless, very good. So uh, that is definitely strong. Okay, Capstone. So far, this fucking bangs. Collapsing Void. Each time penance, damage, or heals, Entropic Rift is expanded by one yard. Okay. Shadow. Each time Devouring Plague does damage, ticks, is cast. Entropic Rift is expanded by one yard. After it ends, it collapses, rapidly dealing shadow damage up to eight times to a random enemy based on how many times it expanded. Uh, oh, each time it'll hit a random enemy? That's interesting. Uh, I wonder if it wouldn't just be your target. Either way, on single target, it's going to own. This is great. Uh, how does this look? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, the, the more I played Hero Talents on PT or on Alpha, the more it was obvious to me that you visually need to feel like you are that Hero Talent for it to feel awesome. I wonder how this looks. Frank says I have a video of it. It's in your YouTube video. You think I fucking make those? How foolish of you to assume that a video that I release I made. Let me bake it up. 
yeah. All right, do that. Dude, my favorite part of the Franck edit on on my first impressions video, which is probably getting... Let's see if it's getting any views. Probably not. See, it's weird. We didn't know what to do today because... We didn't know what to do today because... I'm live streaming on YouTube. But, like, when... I have 2,500 viewers on YouTube right now, but... Most of them clicked on that because it showed up in their channel. Like, you go to your thing, and if you watch my videos and you've seen them all, it'll just show up here, and it'll be a live stream, and you can just click it, right? That's why people see it. But, like, when you're live, basically your videos get nuked in the algorithm if you are streaming at the time because less people click on it because they either click on your stream or this. Or, or like, YouTube only has room to put one in there. So we didn't know whether to release all the stuff right away or wait till I'm done streaming... But then if you wait till later, it's it's like old news. You know what I'm saying? It's like weird. You kind of just have to slam it. But yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is Franck made a cursed version of what my warband will look like. And it's fucking incredible. My favorite part is that it says Glizzy on Rizzy Glizzy's foot. Uh, okay. He's ba he's baking up a shadow thing. I want to see how it looks before I moved off. What is it? A lot of YouTube streamers schedule vids to release as they end stream to help with viewers. True. That's what I normally do. Uh, but I can't really do that today, right? Like, if I have a First Impressions War Within Alpha, I kind of have to release it when the embargo ends. Or begins, I guess. Uh, no, it ends. Uh, and then... But I'm also streaming. So there's no way to avoid it specifically today. But every other day. It's just a today thing. Same thing with, like, other YouTube videos. Releasing multiple YouTube videos at the same time. I have three videos baked up right now to be released. But only one of them's out. Because we're trying to space them out a little bit. Because if you release them all at the same time, again, it nukes all of their visibility. So, I don't know. It's weird. Release the front cut. Bro, he's sending it, he's sending it to me. Damn. Did Shadow Priest actually get something good? I wonder how long this will be good for Shadow Priest until you get reworked again. Get mad. Also, I read that last comment from... Uh, from YouTube chat. Just a reminder that YouTube chats are at war and don't like each other. Will you react, Ian? Yeah, we're gonna watch the interviews after the class. Uh, after the class stuff. The only problem is you're forced to take Void Torrent and potentially talents on the other side of the tree. Okay, so some tier sets and hero talents, in quotes, force you into certain talents. But I don't think priests are mad at taking Void Torrent, especially if it's casted while moving, right? Like, that's generally how things like that go. Like, tier sets that focus on certain talents that force you into them... It's pretty easy to just, to determine whether those are good or bad. And it's as simple as, do people like using this ability? And with Void Torrent, the answer is yes, and even more so because you can cast it while moving. So forcing you into something that is just objectively good isn't a bad thing, right? So I, I assume that that won't matter. Oh my god, someone in YouTube chat said Twitch chat smells bad. Get shit on! Giat! Discord DMs? All right, I got it. Here's what Shadow looks like. Um, wait, what's, oh, is that the Entropic Rift? And it's growing? Wait, let me see that Mind Blast, though. Oh, mind Spike Insanity? No, 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 show me that Mind DB. Oh, you just casted it. Okay, so here it is. Mind Spike Insanity, here comes the Void, void Blast. 
It's like looks like a little beam. Okay, that looks sick. Dude, you totally feel like a Void Weaver. This is what I'm talking about. The, the, the theme is sick. You look like an absolute monster right now. Dude, I wish... That is my new... That is my new... Thing you're going to hear me harp on in every stream that I talk about hero talents is... You need to be able to look at a VOD of someone hitting a dummy... Over minutes of time seconds of time and you need to be able to tell that they are insert name of hero talent here it's it's extremely important like it, it's so fucking cool that if you don't have that it feels like shit um uh okay let's move on uh wait sorry I'm so confused. Didn't we already read Soul Harvester? Why is this on this post? Did this get remade? No, this is new? Bro, am I crazy? I thought... I thought we already looked at this one. Oh, no. Yeah, you're right. It was the one we haven't looked. Okay. By the way, uh, we're going to hold off on Oracle... Because I just want to hear some takes. I actually think it looks pretty good. Uh, but I want to hear from some actual healers first. Bro, Void Weaver's in super insane. Looks insane. Looks like it plays insane. I'm putting it up there. Shadow Priests are actually happy for once. Amen. Uh, and have we looked at any other ones? No. Dude, Shadow Priest is going to have... Dude, Archon just sounds like it's going to be cool too. I, I hope Archon is a play on Diablo 3 Archon, which is like, you know, like a, it was like a cooldown button and you entered into a cooldown and you were in Archon and you just fucked shit up. Uh, and I hope Archon is like a strong cooldown for Shadow Priest and it kind of felt like how like a deep insanity form used to feel. That would be fucking sick. Or Archon is just literally Surrender to Madness. Yep. But I don't know how that would apply to Holy Priest. Like, Holy Priest just have to keep healing, and if they stop healing, they just fucking die. Fucking get owned. Oh, you're not doing enough healing? See ya, kid. Uh, Alright, Soul Harvester. <clears throat> the last Warlock one. Which, uh, where are the Warlock ones right now? It's like, Hellcaller and Diabolus were both sick. I don't know why. Is Hellcaller the one where... You're spawning all the fucking demons from whatever. That one's definitely way better than it's listed here. Like, that is one of the coolest themes ever. No, that's Diabolist? Okay, well, Diabolist fucking pipes then. Okay, uh, Hellcaller's real bad. Oh, shit, get owned. Soul Harvester. And this is for Affliction and Demo. Okay. A demonic entity now inhabits your soul, allowing you to detect if a soul shard has a suck. Bro. <laughs> All right. It has a succulent soul when it's generated. Oh, it's going to make me say succulent every fucking dude. A sucky soul. Empowers your next Malefic Rapture, uh, and reducing its soul shard cost by one, increasing its damage by 20%, and unleashing your demonic soul to deal an additional amount of shadow damage. Okay, so cheaper Malefic Raptures uh, when this happens. And I'm just assuming this just procs. Oh no, okay. Certain soul shards are going to be succulent, which by the way is a small cactus. Um... And you'll see on your soul shards that one of them is a small cactus. And you will then know that its soul shard cost is reduced. Okay, something like that. Yeah, kind of like Echoing Reprimand for rogues. Uh, Demonology. A succulent soul empowers your next hand of Gul'dan, reducing its soul shard cost by one, summoning one additional imp, and unleashing your demonic soul to deal additional amounts of shadow damage. Uh, okay. 
I'm not sure I... I don't play Warlock, and this all sounds very confusing to me. Can I... Just on the first node, can I get a pog check? Or is it boring? Like, what's the deal? I know you haven't seen it get played yet. It's fine. <clears throat> okay, meh. It's fine. Got it. Mid. Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul damage increased by 20%. Nightfall increased the damage of Shadow Bolt and Drain Soul an additional 50%. And Shadow Bolt damage increased by 20%. Power Siphon increases the damage of Demon Bolt by an additional 20%. Okay, Fillers doing more damage, kind of whatever. Uh, you also gain the benefit of Soul Burn when consuming a Health Stone, increasing its healing by 30% and increasing your max health by 20%. You always gain the benefit of Soul Burn when consuming a Health Stone. I don't know how how frequent is Soul Burn used right now. I don't know how Soul Burn, Soul Burn works. I know you can do it whenever you want. Does it just cost extra? It saves you a shard, basically. So pretty minimal impact, like quality of life. I'm assuming. Uh, okay, Dark Pact now shields you for an additional 50% of the sacrificed health. Oh. Okay. So we're going to use that all the time. Got it. Okay, uh, let's see. Damage dealt by your Demonic Souls increased by 10%. Uh, consuming Nightfall and Demonic Core feeds the Demonic Entity within you, causing it to appear and deal shadow damage to your target. Unleashing your Demonic Soul bestows a fiendish entity into the soul of its targets, dealing shadow damage over 10 seconds. When you kill a target, its tortured soul is flung into a nearby enemy. See, this is this theme might be sick, though. Like, the way that all of this sounds, this could look really fucking cool. Like, fucking souls flying around. When you kill a target, its tortured soul is flung into a nearby enemy for 3 seconds. This effect inflicts shadow damage to enemies within 10 yards every 0.8 seconds. I don't know. That sounds sick. When you kill a target, you have a chance to generate a soul shard that is guaranteed to be a succulent soul. Ooh, okay. Uh, soul... What? Soul an anathema damage increased by... Okay, this thing. Increased by 25%. Anathema? Is that another kind of cactus? Is this just a cactus tree? Uh, consuming Nightfall and Demonic Core activates Shared Fate or Feast of Souls. Uh, your Demonic Soul deals 100% increased damage to targets afflicted by your UA. Uh, same thing, Hand of Gul'dan. Uh, while just doing damage to the main target. Fell Domination cooldown is reduced by 2 minutes, is one choice. Uh, or Burning Rush no longer deals damage to you and increases your movement speed by an additional 30%. Okay, but it's now a 50 second cooldown. That's going to be very fight dependent. And also that choice node is making you choose. Isn't fell domination? What is fell domination? Is What, what does that mean? Instant demon summons? I mean, yeah, this just seems like a doggy choice node. The burning rush thing is interesting, but the cooldown would have to be much, much shorter than 50 seconds. That that is that is fucking insane. Like 25 seconds, maybe. Um, but even then, it wouldn't even really make sense as a choice node. Like, what are you fucking choosing between here? Um Okay, corruption deals damage 25% faster and haunt grants nightfall. And wild imp damage increased by 5%. Wild imps that are imploded have an additional 5% chance to grant to the monic core. Soul rot grants shadow of death for 15 seconds. While Shadow of Death is at wait, give me, oh, that's this thing. While Shadow of Death is active, casting Malithic Rapture always invokes your Demonic Soul, and your Demonic Soul deals 10% increased damage. And Demo, Nether Portal, and Tyrant grant this for 15 seconds, so your cooldowns are more powerful. While Shadow of Death is active, casting Hand of Gul'dan always invokes your Demonic Soul, and your Demonic Soul deals 10% increased damage. Okay, so this is like aggressively mid gameplay. The whole thing, just super mid gameplay. However, I can't wait until Alpha comes back up tomorrow because I think this could look fucking crazy. And that, I think I think that matters a lot. That's something that's less likely to get way better where the tuning and the, the, like, the actual design of it can change. I think this could look fucking sick. And that's my new pet peeve. They need to look sick. Won't look better than Diabolist? That's for sure, yeah. Max, are you streaming Alpha tomorrow? Yeah, of course. 
What's up? When does Alpha come up? Was it closed? Did it crash? No, for the last two days, we were playing Alpha on accounts that Blizzard gave us. On Thursday, like, reggie ass Alpha goes up, and a lot of you guys will be whitelisted for it, and then we'll be whitelisted for it. Uh, and then, like, you'll just be playing Alpha on your own accounts. Um, that's the, that's the difference. Is alpha randomly given to people that's not content creators? I have no idea how it works. I assume that's true. Uh, I'm sure some people get special treatment and that they also add in people randomly. I have no fucking clue. All right, if I don't get it, I'm blaming you. But it's not my fault. That's not very succulent of you, buddy. Deluxe Edition gives alpha? No, it doesn't. Deluxe Edition gives beta, which is in a couple months. Uh, okay, so this seems mid. All right, so mid Soul Harvester, but may look cool. Void Weaver is sick, also looks sick. Oracle, I think, is a lot better than the previous one, but I'll hold out until I hear some healer opinions. Uh, it sounds sounds like it could have some... I just don't know. Like, something like uh, Piety or Insight, I would need to understand both of those specs to know what kind of combos you could do with that. And that could just make or break the entire thing. I have no clue. Um... And it's also missing nodes, so you just can't know, right? Um, uh, Monk Master of Harmony seemed really cool. At least for Mistweaver, it seemed really cool. And Brewmaster just gets a second charge of Celestial Brew. Sun Fury is probably the best one I've ever read. I think that's going to look sick, feel sick. Yeah, this one's fucking crazy. Um, mages are the main characters. And Sentinel was also really good. Really, really good. God, you know, mages are so fucking goaded because, like, not only are all three of their hero talents really, really sick, but they all look very distinct. Like, Frostfire is going to have a aesthetic. Sun Fury, you have a fucking arcane fire phoenix that's casting greater spells that you don't even have. Like, Spellslinger is going to be shooting out shards. Maybe Spellslinger, if anything, is less epic as far as the feel of it but the gameplay of spellslinger looked really good so yeah the uh god damn god damn preed as a video of sun fury wait i kind of want to see that Sun Fury Fire Mage gameplay reveal. Yep, let's see the gameplay here. Sun Fury Fire Mage gameplay. Let's see where you've... Okay, so that's the thing over your head to show you how many spheres you have. Okay, wait, hold the fuck up. He casts Combustion right now. He gets his Phoenix. And then after his Combustion ends, right? Isn't that when you get the Machine Gun Pyroblast that always crit? Dude, what the fuck am I looking at? Bro, his, his owl's fucking shit up, too. Right? There's, he's just pyroing right now for another, like, five seconds. <laughs> Wait, where'd the... I didn't see the meteors. Where? When do the meteors come down? It says, uh... Uh, I forget the... It was right over here. Um... Here it is. Glorious Incandescence, Consuming Burden of Power, which is this. Uh, conjuring a Spellfire Sphere. Oh, Consuming, which they're consumed. When the fuck are they consumed? When you cast Pyro? When you cast Arcane Surge or Combustion, you summon an Arcane Phoenix. When it does that, it will consume... It's when the bird uses the spell. Okay. Oh, so you can see it when you're losing this. Wait, those meteors? Oh. And all of those are reducing your cooldown on... I just don't even get it. Like, how Like how? How are mages... He's just fucking spam casting pyro after dance. How do mages exist, man? That looks so fucking cool. That is insane. Holy moly. Alright. Um, wow. 
Oh, wait, I want someone... Is there a Hunter content creator? Is there someone with Dark Ranger gameplay? I want to, like, look... I want to look at all the hero talents, and I want to just look at how they... How they interact with a dummy. Like, just like that. I just want to see fucking dummy footage of every single spec. I'm sure a lot of individual content creators have that shit up. Is there is there a Hunter creator that has this up? I want to see Dark Ranger. I want to see if it looks sick. Wait, Ro I mean, Roger was there. Roger was on. But I don't know if he made, like, a YouTube thing. Do we have Sentinel footage? No, nah, I don't think so. The Mage Council is just faster? Yeah, true, true, true. The DK tier that just dropped on WoWhead is something else. Wait, we got data mine tier sets? Guys, I only have so much energy for today. And we still have to watch interviews and shit. Just the appearances? Oh, I don't give a fuck about that. Actually, I do kind of give a fuck about that. Let's look at a... Just because it'll be fast. We don't have to spend any time on this. We're literally just going to say W or L. Giat. Wait, do they not have them all in one thing? Okay. We don't have them. Why are they separate? Po fucking wow head, man. They're going to post them all individually and then just do a post with all of them. You got to respect. You got to respect the hustle chat. Um, All right. Rogue tier set bonuses. Initial thought was L, but this is W as fuck, right? Look at the purple one. Look at the fucking orange one. Hard W, I think. Hard dub. Hard dub. The purple looks absolutely insane. Giat? Druid. Um. Feeling L... Feeling L, but the but the shoulder using just the shoulder with the with the little lion's head on it would be sick. Like you wouldn't use the whole mog, but like you could use pieces of this, like this too. Look at you see how this one has like the braids and the. Is that the belt? Is the belt the one that has braids? I think the shoulders and the belt both have like the little like cool fur on it. Th those are definitely good. Individual pieces good, the whole thing bad. A uh, warrior. <laughs> um Okay. What the fuck's going on here? Uh I guess it's like I mean the armor besides the shoulders and helm is just so basic. Like this looks like a Minecraft outfit. I don't even I don't even play Minecraft. Maybe I'm making shit up. The Are these supposed to be like horns or tusks of something on the shoulders? Maybe the helm could be used in another mog and look cool. Please scroll down and look at it from the side view. Oh, I guess there's like a Okay, so the shoulders have like a titan in there. I guess that makes it a little better. I still think these are definitely not awesome. L, L, L Mog, L Mog, L Tier. All right, uh, Hunter. <laughs> um, okay, wait, let me look at it from the side. The helm might have potential with other stuff. Overall, definitely L tier, L hunter. Any of the colors good? Like, I don't know. Could you make some, like, cool Venom transmog with these shoulders and helm and gloves? I think you could. I think, I think this green one's got potential for sure for a specific look. I think this blue one even maybe too. You know what? I'm actually turning around on this. I think the colors are... Does this show them, like, moving around? You could definitely make something cool with this. Right? I don't know. Probably still L. L hunters. L. L. 
All right, monk. Uh. Uh. I'm thinking W here, actually. Huge Shogun vibes, yeah. Look at the shoulders, dude. In detail. They've got like an ox with a fucking nose ring. Yeah, you could definitely do something with that. That's a dub. This is a dub. It's different and it's a dub. Look at this colorway. This is a dub for sure. Maybe the horns are a little too big on the helm, but you could just not wear that. Yeah, this is a dub. Also, this purple's kind of sick. Monk bias? Nah. I don't give a shit about Monk Mob, but you've seen what my monk looks like? <laughs> Have you not met the old wizard? Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, okay, Evoker. Oh, what the fuck? This is insane! Bro. Dude, these are like the best tier sets I've seen in a fucking long time. The colors, too? You'll never see it, though? I mean, you could you could mog it on other characters, couldn't you? Bro, look at those shoulders, though. Oh, you can't? Aw, oh, shit. Dude, why would they make something so cool and you can't even see it? Wait, aren't there going to be off pieces that look just like this, though? Don't they usually do that? Oh. Max Ian said visage form will be usable in combat. Oh. Hype. Oh, dude, I need to listen to that interview then. Bro, these are fucking... These are insanely cool. I think this is my favorite one. That's really, really fucking cool. Alright. And let's finish off here with, uh, I think DKs are the last ones, right? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here, man? Hey! Hey! What is happening right now? <laughs> um, okay. Alright, is there anything... You know what? It's different. So, like, individual pieces, like the... The helm. You see, have, like, the crazy eyes. You could do something with that with another Mog. It's almost so bad it's good. Like, every... They've already made epic DK sets, you know? They're, like, trying something a little diffy. This colorway is awful. But, like, this one's cool. This one's cool. This one's cool. That one's cool. This one's actually kind of cool. This one stinks. I hate this one. The rest of them I actually kind of like, I think. It's weird. I, I, like, initially hated this, but I kind of like it. The bronze is the best one. Nah, you're wrong and I'm right. Yeah, you do look like a Shadowlands trash mob. <laughs> That's actually accurate. Okay, um, yeah, look like a fucking trash mob, buddy. Uh, any more posts since we, uh, wait, what? New achievement for completing mythic dungeons with every roll. It's a warband achievement. With warbands arriving, Blizzard's experimenting with more achievements that possibly require multiple characters. One example is the new Dungeoneer, which requires you to complete with every roll. You get the versatile peddler's trinkets. Is that like a toy? Also, completing the Algar Algarian Dungeoneer also rewards the versatile Peddler Transmog set, which can be seen below. That looks dumb as shit. I could use that in one of my mogs. We like that. We love bad-looking mogs. Um, okay. Mount models for the War Within. Fire Bees? 
Okay, we got cloud griffins. Definitely sick. Okay. Oh, what the fuck is that thing? Mole rats? Yo! That's me. Actually me. Yeah, W, W, W's in the chat. All right, here we go. Ton of mole rats. Uh, fire bee. Huge W. What is this? Chitin? Chitin? We got chitins. Uh, we got earthen paladin mount. It's like a it's like a stone ram. We like that. Oh wait, there's more. There's a grass earthen ram. Okay. Very grass. Earthen horse. So how are they alive, right? If we're getting real deep with it. Magic. Okay. Okay, that's cool. We like magic. Have you heard of the Titans? No, actually. I don't know what any of that means. Uh, here we go. Firefly. Ooh, very cool. What is this thing? Uh, Shadow Elemental. Very cool. Skittering Spider. Ooh, don't like spiders whatsoever. Not even looking at those. Fuck a spider. Unicorn! Dude, those things are ugly as fuck. <laughs> like, in a good way, though. <laughs> they look so mad. Look at them. As mad as shit. He's like, why are you taking a picture of me? That's actually how I look in pictures. I'm like, just fucking, what are you doing? Fire bugs. Didn't we just look at these? Aren't these the fire bees? Oh, they're actually... They're diffy, I think. I'm not going to scroll all the way back up. Max, check Wowhead Legendary Trinket. No. Bet you weren't expecting that, huh? Oh, gargoyles with armor? Oh, fuck. Those look crazy. Gorms? Gorms? What is a gorm? All right, flesh bugs. I don't like that word at all. Uh, vicious war mount horde. Vicious war mount alliance. Wait, those look sick. Dude, am I? Maybe most expansions have cool look. Bro, these mounts are all fucking insane. Wait, there's just boat. What does boat do? Like, can you dynamic fly in boat? How do you obtain boat? Singular. I mean, I know what normal boats do. It float. Okay, lynx. Those look kind of sick. Why is it? Why is there a massive close up of their ass? <laughs> On the right side. Dude, it even zoomed in. It fucking. It fucking. It zoomed in on the red one. Giat. Going down. Oh, that's it. Okay, fuck yeah. Love that. Okay, those mounts were actually sick. What is my favorite? The mole rats look... Uh, this is definitely my favorite, I think. The mole rats look dumb as fuck. Uh, maybe the gorms. Gorms also look dumb as fuck. Maybe boat. <laughs> Wait, do they have boat as something you can click on at the top when they're talking about different mount types? Yeah, dude, just fucking boat. Hey. Uh, okay. Legendary companion trinkets data mined in the... You made me go... It's, a, it's for fucking Bran. 
With our continued alpha test data mining, we've determined that the Delve Companion can get a legendary trinket. Get your bearings and meet up with Bran who heroically swoops in to deliver this damage before granting you... Wait, no, this is for you, though. It's associated with Bran, but it doesn't... Has mastery. Get your bearings and meet up with Bran, who heroically swoops in to deliver big damn, and then granting you a ridiculous amount of primary stat before exiting. If already by your side, Bran will proudly re direct you towards adventure. <laughs> Immediately repositioning, granting himself 50% damage for 10 seconds and performing a dot. Two minute cooldown. So... We don't have a lot to go off right now. This appears very different from most legendaries we're used to. Most interesting in relation to Bran, who we already know is a designated Delve Companion, though the fact that the Trinket summons him. There's also a potential hit with the flavor text. It's entrusted to you by Bran himself. The Trinket could be a reward for maxing out some kind of level, friendship, or reputation track with the Explorer. We've also found a second legendary Trinket, though this one doesn't appear to be for players. Again, related to Bran... Brand's shots have a chance to pierce through enemies. Yeah, you can you can give him a trinket. So I'm assuming this is just for him. Yeah, you can equip him with a combat trinket. And a utility trinket, I think. Uh, Delves include many unique rewards, including a customizable flying machine. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, W physical damage. Yeah, dub. Wait, account-wide leveling rewards in the War Within. One Warband Mentor, The War Within, reach level 80 with one character. Reward 5% additional experience up to level 80. Please tell me it keeps going up. Oh, two Warband Mentors. So every time you level a new character, your other alts level faster. That is fucking goaded. Goes up to 25%. Uh... Maybe even just uncap that. Allow you to get like 10. I don't know. This is a great step in the right direction. It's something that I've been harping on for a long time. I really think that everything you do in this game on another character should be significantly faster than you did it on your main. Leveling, gearing, everything. Uh, to just get into the action and actually enjoy your character more. And this is uh, a sign right direction. Warbands already seem sick. Let's go. Probably maybe a little bit higher. But uh, you don't need to wait until the War Within launches to enjoy some new account-wide bonuses. Achievements for reaching max level with two characters now reward you with a toy that allows you to open your Warband Bank anywhere. The Warband Bank Distance Inhibitor. Oh, a three-hour cooldown, and you can open it wherever you want to, like, log on an alt and grab some stuff out. That's sick. I, th I think that's not surprising that that exists, though. But, yeah. Um, okay. Are we finally ready to do some interviews? I might need to go heat up some food first so I don't die. Oh, earthen racials? Oh, good shout. Human racial diplomacy going away in the war within. No more reputation bonus. Dude, get owned. Uh, Let's see. Data mind, earthen, allied race. Racials, paladin mount, background, heritage armor. Earthen's racial abilities include the first non-evoker empowered spell. Oh, shit. I'm down with that. I think they can make really cool empowered spells for a lot of classes, but I think introducing them slowly and not replacing things that already exist are the move. Um, Azerite Surge. All right. First of all, instantly mad. I read Azerite and I'm mad. Who would have guessed, right? Just read a word, now I'm mad. But that's fine. Um, draw on your inner strength. Uh, release to invoke the power of Azerite, dealing fire damage. Empowering is the following effect. Does Level 1 does fire damage. Level 2 heals allies. And uh, just heals allies also. And number three, deals extra fire damage to the highest health enemy. 
Okay, so if you're using it mainly for a heal, you only go to two. If you just want to get it off real quick, you go to one. I mean, it's a two minute cooldown, so you're just going to slam it on three, right? That's cool. Depends on how much damage it does, but I like that. Uh, ingest minerals. <laughs> you are always well fed, but cannot consume food. Activate ingest minerals to consume a gem and gain the benefit granted to you by well fed. So, whatever your best stat is. You just eat rock. Forever? That's kind of sick. We like that. Hyper productive. Increases your finesse by 0%. What the fuck does that mean? What is finesse? I mean, I know what finesse is in real life, but... Oh, it's a gathering stat? Oh, I thought it just meant, like, have crazy riz. But I guess this makes more sense, because it's about gathering. Uh, base armor from equipped items is increased by a certain percent. So you'll have more armor? Oh, that's really interesting. I wonder how that'll be for tanks. Like, it'd be weird if, like, tanks specifically who really scale off armor are, like, significantly stronger by being whatever this is. It's probably going to be small. I imagine this number is going to be very small. Uh, okay. When you gain experience through exploring a location, gain a certain extra additional exploration experience. Okay, I get that. I like that. Character screen background. Wait, that's super cool. Is that the best character screen background in the game? That's sick. Heritage armor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm going to use this helm. I need to get this immediately. What a fucking dumb looking helmet. Oh my god. Oh, no, it, it is probably just missing textures. God damn it. I like it looking like this, though. All right, shaman totems. Ooh. Guy's got a fucking Lego helmet on. <laughs> okay. Uh, new NPC models in The War Within. Alaria, Anduin, Moira, and Magni. I don't know who any of these people are except for Anduin. He was a raid boss. Uh, Alaria Windrunner. Giat. All right, where's the uh, Anduin? Ooh, Anduin's kind of a beast, though. Look at him. Look at that jaw. Look at that thing. That thing's pointy as hell. You could pop a balloon with that thing. Moira Thrasian. Probably a new character. And then, uh, it's so funny. I just know someone just heard that and they're getting so mad. Is it not a new character, by the way? It probably isn't. Yeah, okay, perfect. It worked it just as expected. Uh, Dagrin Thra uh, Thrasian. Thars Tharason 2. Farin Lothar. Uh, High Speaker Irik. Magni. Oh, I know Magni. He's an OG. Um... Or Wayna, Queen and Sarek. Oh, is that the that's the last boss, I think. Giat? Question mark at the end? Raised my pitch. Just so you could yeah, maybe. Uh okay, and then we have the Candle King. Uh okay, wait. The Candle King goes hard as fuck. He's got like wax all the way down his neck. <laughs> I just like randomly look at chat and someone types it's a mod actually that types that bitch has a in all caps huge abdomen <laughs> dude this guy's got JB posture too uh, void and ethereal NPCs we don't care about that earthen look at those look at that hairstyle wow okay Nerubian bat question mark yeah it's got more legs than it should but it's got some bat bat wings worm I like the gorms better worm boat 
All right, we've officially caught up on all the news. There'll probably be more soon, but we're going to react to some interviews. But let me go heat up some food again to prevent death. Uh, I'll be right back. And I'm going to let my dog out. I'm going to play some ads so you guys don't get them in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, don't do the excavate thing. YouTube, actually, if they do the excavate thing, just sit there and think about how you're so much more sophisticated than them. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to run ads, but it's just not working, so super hype. Oh, wait, no. There we go. I can do it. There we go.
the back. <laughs> okay, I got my food. I got some ground turkey chili. Some carrots and some zucchini. Uh, okay, so where are these interviews? Uh, maybe I have to... Usually Wowhead posts about them, but maybe they're... It's just on YouTube right now. So who has interviews with people? I know Tally has one. It's down there. Mr. Gm. Okay. Wowcast developer chat, go into the war within. Uh, maybe we should just start with this one. This is the one that, that WoW released, right? What a thumbnail. Uh, all right, let's do it. We might skip through some of it if it's not, like, uh, stuff that we're super into. Like, if they start talking about the expansion story, I'll probably just, uh, not, not do that, but... Today we're going to talk about The War Within, which Alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce Let yourselves. Let me turn this shit up real quick. Hi, I'm Ian, Game Director on WoW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WoW. Let's go, Thank Tina! Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about The War Within, Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to well-known video games. Oh my god, all right, we gotta stop right there. Guys, that's a big number. We've been doing this shit for a long time. Game World of Warcraft, but even, I think, more special to us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Uh, so as, you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey that's probably to a true. new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens not just, you know, ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home. And I hold all of you dear. What do you mean? What do you mean it's been you're never getting that time back? Guys, it's about the time we spent together. It's about the journey and the friends we made along the way, you know? Oh, my God. And the very world Yay. beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one... Nothing else matters. Yay. So this character has been everywhere for the War Within. Let's all Zalapath. get in parasocial Purple, relationships with each other. She's amazing. Can Let's you tell go. us more about her? Yeah, Zalapath is, uh, you know, one of our key villains of the uh, World Soul hey, Saga. Hey, guys. The expansion is, I mean, part of it is this journey, uh, delving deeper, find Zalapath and her allies, and uh, the inspiration uh, for her design from an art side. So this is my first guess of the expansion. She's actually not uh, a bad guy. She, she means well, I think was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon that she had been trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs of you know her belt, her shoulders, really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks, uh, those are a homage to Nizoth, who freed her from the dagger. Uh, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down. <laughs> yeah, why walk didn't they away put... Fucking amen to that. Amen to that. Can we just all take a fucking say that shit again? Talking raid somewhere, just... Uh, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests. Fucking... Someone, like, frame that shit. For not just putting the knife down, yeah, why walk away from the... the talking dagger, and oh, we wouldn't no. be here. Oh my and yet... Um, are there any other familiar faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are uh, Illyria and Anduin. So these two, they've, I mean, they're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their past. But in the end, they're yeah. going to find hope and redemption. Yeah. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design yeah. that really reflects the duality of her character. And Anduin, yes. uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He's, he's been through a lot lately. Look at that chin chat. 
He grows beard. <laughs> He's working on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that has a couple of layers to it. Right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. But this is also a story that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes. See, there's so much divide here. You guys are like Anduin, Manduin, and some people said Elduin. Someone said he's still a bitch, though. He you has know, he done bitch-like stuff. We and, have to say it. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. And with the War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the Earth right, is we're calling Kazalgar. This is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. You know, just a, you know, a couple hundred nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking out of the Oh, the yeah, of what Kalimdor. sword? But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing varied settings. Yeah, uh, so our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of Earthen there. And so they have their awesome city, Dornogal, which we're very excited to play. Yeah, that's the new out. Beldraken. That'll be the hub in the end. New hub. Uh, the second zone is the Ringing Deeps. So, you know, the evocative of like. Yeah, so one other thing that I want to express to you as well on Alpha, especially now the dynamic flight is in, and like most mounts just Dragon Ride, which we didn't talk about dynamic flight yet. It's just dragon riding, but every mount does it. It's th it's just that. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Uh, I think they added a few extra talents or whatever, but like it's just the exact same thing, which is good by the way. Dragon flight owns. But one thing dragon uh, or dragon riding uh, did is it allowed you to make massive zones because dragon riding exists, and you can feel that in the war within. We've only been to the first zone, but it is fucking huge, and it feels huge. Um, there's like very, very distinct little like, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? Like, like sub locations of each zone. I don't know. I, I just, I, I really like that. And I, I haven't seen these underground zones yet other than these pictures. I, this is actually the first time seeing this. Um, but I don't think you're going to feel claustrophobic with them all being underground except for the first one because the, it's so massive. I think one of them is so big that they use a crystal on the ceiling as the fucking sun. And it's so far away that you can you could like barely even see it but you're like underground mine pigs yeah, industry. Biomes, what I meant. yeah and so this is the heart of earthen industry but it's not all just you know lava and fire it's uh mixed with these beautiful caverns cenotes with uh, light and water coming in creating these uh you know lush spaces for the players to enjoy and then uh, we go to howlow fall look at Howlifall that fall is where we really that's uh, it that's it look at that bro i like this one uh, that looks insane That looks cool as fuck. This is Arathi airships. Right, underground airships, right? The first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface, how are they gonna get around? Well, airships, of course. Of course. <laughs> and then our final zone is Ashkahet. So this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be able to see the Nerubians and all of their strength. Funny th fact, fun fact, uh, for people who are arachnophobic, there is a buff you can turn on before going into this zone that turns all of the spiders into crabs. So you don't have to see spiders. Now, I know what you're thinking. What if you're afraid of crabs? Like if you're crab phobic. In that case, you're just gonna have to fucking get over it. But but uh but at least you can get away from the spiders. And glory, like with the height of their civilization. I think uh, we'll get into the details of Alpha later, but Everyone's journey is going to start in the Isle of Dorne, but I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. And I think the, you know, Tina mentioned that this crystal, it is such a striking visual element that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place deep within the earth. This looks fucking insane. crystal of light. This looks and the way, insane. You know, as it illuminates the surroundings that actually- WoW's art team is undefeated. Plays with the environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts to it. And I think when we set out to create this underground space, we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive, that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a What's place What's that dog doing? Let me see. Which one? Oh, Ella? She's doing two things. She is sitting simultaneously while standing and also eating her own ass. Ella, hey, 
None of that. None of that. All right, she's done. Going back. Sure. Honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It feels like you could be outdoors in some vast welcoming area that's just, it's incredibly epic. When we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're gonna see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in in the Alpha on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive, and really is the scars of an initial battle that seems like it didn't end so well. Um, and the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an- Oh, true, they say together, but you can pay to play early. Which is lame. Investigation of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat of Wait. Um, and the beginning. Wait, is that Dalaran? Yeah, it kind of looks like it. That rest in piss like it didn't end so well. Um, and the beginning of our journey, as as many as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation of of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're gonna stop it, and our journey begins on the doorstep of these ancient earthen people who yeah. are gonna begin, you know, helping us figure out where to go next. They're gonna become our next allied race too, right? Once we are in their trust, that's for <laughs> sure. Is there any other NPCs that we're gonna be familiar with? Yeah, there are gonna be uh, some characters that we haven't- Yo, shout out Tina seen in World of Warcraft in a while, but will be, you know, part of this story uh, as because of their, you know, Dwarven heritage and, you know, Magni, he hears the Radiant Song, he brings some of his family members along. Yep, W, Tina. Uh, Moira, who is leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves and heir to Iron... Also, fun fact, Jaina's sister. Forge. Uh, she'll be it's here. all the one big dragon family, Jaina, Razageth, Deathwing. With her son, Dagran, who is now a young adult. Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, <laughs> uh, you know, the dark iron heritage is starting to show more in his appearance, along with his personality. So he has a bunch of these scrolls and books, like really showing that he has a- like, Dude, this boy's got so many scrolls, they are busting out of his backpack. He can't even hold them. Nature. I think one of the one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of yeah, characters L nerd, and champions you're right. nerd. And heroes L. And, and you know backup L. characters. And whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are, the first question we ask is, who needs to be here? Who does it make sense to have answer this call, want to step forward? Just as when we were dealing with, you know, the Green Dragonflight or the Emerald mm -hmm. Dream or or the like. Okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our dwarves. Bro, that sentence he just ripped was crazy to just do off the dome. To take center stage. What did he just say? This is a time for our dwarves. This ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth. This ancient connection to the dwarven legacy of Azeroth. This is a... What a what a word What a wordsmith. W E N. favorites are the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. The Rookery is the place where I like the, the Storm Griffins were raised and trained by the ancient Earthen over, over the centuries. Um, you know, dwarves and griffins go hand in hand, and the Earthen have a legacy of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of if you, you know, got the war within heroic edition you might have been flying around uh, on that guy there's plenty more where that came from in the isle of dorne and so and this dungeon of course is not oh, wait i gotta ask you something real quick frank are you there a uh, public reached out to me and said hey would you mind if i use the shadow priest b-roll footage that you and frank made from the war within alpha in my video unfortunately i didn't get in to record anything and i said yeah 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 but I wanted to make sure that you're okay with you using his content because you're a celebrity. He is so good. Use it all. Okay, I'll tell him. Peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by Use it all. corrupted earth. Make sure to give and we're credit be, I'm just beginning and to understand add revenue where they came from and what their nature is Frank. as we fight through it. But one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. 
Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons, I just like solo questing, that's terrible. Well, fortunately, in 10.25, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. And we're really happy to bring... Oh, that's such a good point. Yeah, so they're adding... They're adding dungeons to the main story. Like, the main, sto the main story quest is going to put you through dungeons, which most people would be like, eh. But now you don't have to... Uh, you can just do them with NPCs, which is good. So, amen to that, if you don't want to do them with other people. That to the level up dungeons in War Within right from the outset. So that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon if that's what you prefer. Or of course you can just queue up with regular with, with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that Yep. We couldn't in the past in ways that at times was frankly awkward because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance in a zone, but we couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? One of my favorites is in Hollow Fall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame, and it's this okay. Arathorn mm -hmm. Monastery. Tina W. So uh, one of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling oh, that's of Hollow awesome. Fall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room as well as just how it ties in with the narrative of the Tina, story. Tina nonstop as a whole. dubs. And another really cool one, it's the City of Threads. So this one is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the newer civilization was built on top of. And just to think about the layers of Nerubian history that, you know, is in this land. Is it that the, the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even Far before oh, that, it's even, even farther before that, yeah, the yeah way, way think, before that, you know, Chad. We yeah. might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They are one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth, right up there with wow. the you know elves and trolls and the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only really seen hints of them going back to, to Wrath. If you ran the Azjol Narub or Ankehet dungeons, you could see you know they're building. I actually randomly unlocked a nostalgia memory of doing. Is that what it's called, the Ankahet Dungeon? I don't remember exactly when I did it, but I have random nostalgia for doing that dungeon. Off in the yeah, in the back. Old Kingdom, that one, specifically that one. Round. But you know, they were a civilization that at its height rivaled the oh, high Oh, YouTube up. chat said Twitch chat L three times. Oh my God, oh my God, Twitch chat. Look at this, look at this. Just for no reason. They did have, I didn't even prompt them. Oh my God, you guys hate each other. Elves and the Nightborn on the surface. That's insane. They were able to go toe to toe with the Lich King's armies and win until the old gods and you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is oh one God. of the things we're most excited about when it comes to Dude, World they're War. fighting back, they're spamming it. One of the things we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could never, you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on arachnophobia filter and all uh, spider beasts will turn into crabs. So Common Tina W that. right there. Yeah, it actually looks, it, it, it works way better. See, than okay, I'm just gonna be real right? with you. If I'm somehow, me as myself right now, and I was just somehow transported into this moment in time in this game, and I saw that thing in front of me, I would be more scared of that than any spider I've ever seen. That, that thing would, I mean, I would defeat it. I don't think I could be defeated. Uh, but... It would be scary as shit. Pumped about that. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks, it, it it works way better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't wait for players to you know, be able to jump in, turn it on, and you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world. You know, this is something yeah, that- Yeah, I'm an Eldrachi. They the call me the Eldrachi. The Nerubian-centric themes of War Within at BlizzCon, we heard trepidation from portions of our community who love WoW, but were worried they weren't going to be able to experience it. Why did someone Honestly, time out Elbereth? something we heard concerns about from within our own team. 
where there are you know That's people good. who genuinely felt uncomfortable with Get these on. elements of the game that we were building together. And so we set out to try to find a solution that would still you know preserve the fidelity of the game, but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. Yeah. So speaking of the Nerubians, all right, get into the stuff that I care about. Let's go. go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Oh, uh, is oh, there anything you want to speak about that? Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, yes. One of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, showpiece uh, that is just Ooh. in front of the Queen's Palace. It represents the Nerubian race, and it just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. This raid will get one of the sections of the raid will get to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where you know only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go, and you really get to explore the dark elegance of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, like the Nerubians, we need to remember they are an advanced yeah. race, very you know, just this epic civilization. That was cool. I think there's some dude. It does. It kind of gives like Spider Castle Nathria vibes, and what going into that city and that palace felt like. We really want to show the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower of Azeroth that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's gonna be the end boss of okay. sort of the initial <laughs> season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built Dude, this huge Castle Nathory vibes. Okay, like, some vertical elements and, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web? Wait, actually, that's a good point. He said the last boss being tested. They haven't tested the last boss in a while, but that was when they were doing simultaneous releases. I wonder if they are going to test the last boss now that it'll be out on Heroic before Mythic. I mean, that would actually make sense, because if you know anything about this last boss, they keep mentioning verticality. You're going to be doing some crazy web-slinging shit to be moving up in the room, and that sounds like something they need to test for sure. <laughs> While locked in combat against the Queen, those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see that up for testing. Does that mean we're going to get tier sets again? Certainly. I think well, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the street. New tier means new tier sets. And these days, you Dude, know, the Evoker one is ago, fucking when nuts. Had, when you had to raid in order to get the tier set, now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, Mythic Plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes now Delves. Wait, did we see new? Player. Did we see now, new tier? Years ago, when works in the street. <laughs> yeah, we did. We we saw this one earlier. This is warrior. This is evoker. That's priest. It must be right. That's a that's a W W W priest. W priest for sure. You can make a lot of stuff work with that. Warrior. We already talked about this. Warrior's an L. Tier. <laughs> evoker is a insane W. Druid is a W for the shoulders only and the belt where you can get the little braids. But overall, an L. Whether you're a Raider, Mythic Plus player, or an Outdoor World player, which includes now Delves. Ah, Delves. Let's talk let's about get, Delves. Let's start talking about Delves. Let's yeah, do I mean, it. Delves are one of the let's major new features it. in War Within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more structured, progression-oriented extension of the Outdoor World gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And you know, delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards just through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. Yeah, we'll be able to get it from the Great Wall, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, super exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of our goals with building Delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place, and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. Like, it what's definitely is. Like, I think the one near here is, like, the Kobold one. No, I think this is in a different zone. But, like, it does feel thematic to the place you're at, for sure. And, and I think it will make the most sense while questing, since we have no idea really what it's going to look like with the really hard max level versions. The elf, there's this, you know, dark misty door, and you click on it, and then it just disappears, and you just walk into your own personal delve instance. So very excited about that. 
I mean, players are going to see, have that first experience on the Isle of Dorne early in the alpha. Uh, the first spell they're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend, Bran Bronzebeard, outside an ancient earthen mine w that Bran. has been overrun with Nerubians who are borrowing up from the depths. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as a, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. And you'll venture in and have your very first Delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you want to do it on tier one or tier two difficulty. Tier one is kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier two is for those who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Tier 2 presents absolutely zero challenge. Maybe they missed the tuning on that, and it's very early alpha, and they'll fix that. Uh, and he's probably going to talk about that. Like, Tier 2 is like, you could literally AFK and do it. Um, but again, early alpha. And then I talked about this earlier, but Tiers 3 through 11 are available at max level. Uh, gear stops happening at 8. Oh, shit. Something fell down. We were fine. The dogs just got a little hyped up. Uh, the They stop at 8, but the difficulty goes to 11, and the only reason to go to 11, as they stated, is for bragging rights, which means they could actually make the content potentially challenging and cool, um, like some single-player things in this game have been in the past, right? Um, and then another thing, once you do the hardest tier on all of the delves, all 12 of them, it unlocks a 13th delve in which it is only a one boss thing you just zone in and there's a boss and giving heavy mage tower vibes of something that's available every season where you just fight like that one boss might be really hard early maybe you need to get some gear for it i'm not sure but uh yeah that that's the one thing i'm looking forward to the most from this uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as part of the end yeah, game the dogs are hyped progression up. and we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset really all through alpha on this new system on you know how it is or isn't working for you and whether we can you know really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression Yo, Lily, get up here if you really like to overcome um, if you like really the war within how this evolves oh she did so it w lily as a central part of war within w yeah, lily i'm excited that we're going to be able to just jump in and get our, like go solo with bran or you can have friends but also just get rewards in that way especially the tier sets with the catalyst exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount <laughs> yeah, so this is going to kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delves end game. As you hit max level, as you hit 80, and start to get a sense of the Delves ecosystem, right at the start of that, we're going to give you this epic customizable mount, kind of the, the successor to the customizable drakes you had in Dragon Isles, where you'll be able to, through doing Delves, earn a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can... I will have the dumbest looking plane. You can ...mix and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. So does this mechanical mount have dynamic flying? This is one of the big questions we had moving on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, dragon riding is amazing. Mm -hmm. We're in, we can't get rid of this, mm -mm. but how is this gonna work alongside of the hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections? And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Show we boat. We were very excited to Show be able the to boat. make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So even Nimron's head, in, we figured it out. <laughs> we made it work. So. Oh, hey. I'm really excited to see Nimron's head going like super fast. <laughs> Another feature coming in the War Within that I'm really excited about, as well as a lot of other people, is Warbands. Yeah, Warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm -hmm. almost everything. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly play multiple characters. And this is something we've heard loud and clear that, you know, the game needs to be more alt-friendly. That players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of feeling like they have to reprogress everything individually. And so, yeah, yep, the Warband huge, is just, it is w. your account in its entirety. It is your collection of champions, whether they're Horde or Alliance, regardless of what realm they're on, they're all part of the same Warband, which gives access to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see all of your favorites on, uh, you know, one screen together. So uh, in our new UI, we'll have Warbands, and you'll be like, you know, move four up into that space and see them all hanging out around a campfire. Is that on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's going to be totally different than what we're used to. All right. right. Exactly. Yes. All right. You'll, you'll all right. Like, this is all right. Hey. Different. That was... 
There's no way that was a genuine reaction, right? I'm all hanging out around a campfire. <gasps> Is that on the character? That she was told to ask that question that for screen? sure. Yeah, the character's oh, cool. screen. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be totally different than what we're come used on, to. Come on, come on. Exactly. Yes, you'll you'll know. Like this is a put completely different world. It's a completely put different up. welcome into World of Warcraft. Um, what we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock-up, but we're excited to see people react to the real thing. And really, as with everything else, you know, warbands are yeah, she's a, a junior foundation. Job. There, this is a system. Lingzi's that... really fucking cool, by the way. She's actually been like really, really supportive and helpful for a lot of the creators. We want to build the next generation. Shout out Alex Duke. On. You know, in 2004, WoW launched with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't wait to hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. And that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft. Guys, that's today. a long time. You can't forget about PvP. Let's talk about it. They, they do kind of sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new battleground but that's called okay. the Deep Hall. This one is okay. earthen themed. Um, it's a bit of a mashup between uh, Silver Shard Mines and Iraqi Basin. Like it is, it is, like in a way it is, in their defense, it is kind of easy to forget about PvP. Now you're going to hear that and immediately get mad. But let me explain. In PvE, you are forced to constantly create new content because that is the content is like, uh is just seeing and doing new things. That's everything. If there was no new content, there would be nothing, right? PvP is kind of like the players are the content. As long as you somewhat try to balance your game, which, wow, 39 specs will never be perfectly balanced, they kind of just... They'll play the same nine arena maps forever, or however many there are, right? Like, you can you can kind of just let that go for a while, and it's chilling. It's a lot harder to add interesting content for them because you don't really need to. They are the content themselves. Uh, other than like, which obviously they would feel ignored through like tuning, but they're not saying anything like that. Like when, when you're talking about ignoring PVP, like that actually makes sense. Like that's kind of what PVP is made. Why do you think MMOs oftentimes try to become a PVP MMO like BDO or like Lost Ark try to get PVP going? Because it's like the cheapest and easiest way to have players enjoy your game because they just permanently generate content and you have to do nothing. So, you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one. Yeah, and in terms of how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with War Within. Uh, people who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, battleground blitz, our kind of brawl that was testing out a Wait, what is that? solo queue rated battleground format. We're happy to move to that as a default for how rated battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think. Wait, so how does that work? It's a solo queue, solo queue rated battlegrounds, eight v eight. That sounds really fun to me. I mean, I've always actually really enjoyed RBGs. I love doing RBGs. Actually, let me be specific. I love doing RBGs with all my friends while we're stomping teams, until we queue into someone who's like. 3k and then they stomp us and then it's not fun that's that's exactly how that works for me um but then uh yeah but like with randoms yeah i mean like you're gonna need to communicate i mean yeah dude rbgs bring out the worst in people i have seen unholy things happen in rbg lobbies uh uh so like yeah if like if like someone gets capped on but like you're gonna it's gonna be a shuffle though right so, i don't know i think it could be fun I, i'll i'll cue it on stream you can hold me to that. That sounds really fun. We're really excited to make that battleground experience. I'll do that. that. Personally, I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP. Same. That larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based, um, you know, collaborative, competitive setting as opposed to the deathmatch style in Arena. So, to make that more accessible to everyone who you know loves battlegrounds, loves PvP. Um, we know you know it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm -hmm. adding a new battleground map into the rotation. And we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the end game. Okay, hold up. In in Twitch chat right now, clip it. Oh, wait, YouTube can't lol. Okay, can you at least admit that YouTube chat is now living rent-free in your head? Like, like, if you're Twitch and you think you're the superior chat, right? Like, you wouldn't constantly feel like you had to demean YouTube. Look, there's like almost 10,000 of you in here. There's only 2,000 in YouTube. Like, you don't need to, it's like insecure to constantly be like L YouTube, right? Like, I feel like they're winning by default. Rewarding part of PvP. 
And yeah, this is just the also the they of a can chapter. clip you. Another I didn't even know that, but you made that up. Is hero talents. So we've been having a lot of it's articles for the bit. talking about yeah, get them. Owned. What are some of the other things that we can expect with the hero talents coming forward? Well, I can say there's going to be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump. Okay, in. hey, hey, real quick, Twitch chat, why don't you just real, real quick, just rewind the stream on Twitch by ten seconds. Play, and I think that's you let's know, just the do that. Most exciting thing. We're so grateful. Oh, that's weird. You have to open up at a completely different page. In recent months, going back to the first oh, hmm, blog weird. in December, very weird. This really helped us shape this central feature. Dude, actually, how is that not a Twitch feature, by the way? To that, insane. <laughs> um, you're gonna see hero talents that you haven't yet. Oh, seen. Oh wait, it's not. That we have. Oh, that's weird. Wait, the page you just opened isn't caught up yet. Oh, haven't discussed hmm. previously, and for many of the ones that we have released. You'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback. Uh, by Bro, look at that. Loud and clear in some cases about what was and wasn't exciting. Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero talent trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just dialing it all in to make the polished yep. experience that everyone is excited about. That's Frostfire Mage. So what are we doing oh, yeah. with professions in the War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhaul professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. So you can expect, you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders w with their fellow crafters. Okay. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be you know Earthen in Isle of Dorn who need a hammer made or need a helmet made and they're constantly putting their offer their work orders up onto them onto the market so that there's always something for you to grab the player and if you fuck up their shit right like if you don't make their thing well they can't even say shit ones will still be more lucrative they're a fucking computer there should program. always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up you just want to practice your trade skill and there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins the ability to have quests that yeah now no can tip point you towards that system because we can count on it always being there so with Dragonflight and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with the War Within? Yeah, so... They... Please, God, nameplates and buffs and debuffs and the raid management system. UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvements that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One of the oh, new ones good. that you'll see is one that's like we consider an important one. Yeah, These I aren't saw those. campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, some uh, that must do ones for your profession or ones where you're going to unlock the revival catalyst. Yeah, I think as we've leaned more and more into that's outdoor good. world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different types of public events over the course of Dragonflight. Oh, also the profession or not profession sorry the the spell book is now attached to your talent pane and it looks sick honestly we reached a point about halfway through dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and everything's kind of all on one page at the number of different icons that were there and it was just a kind of icon soup situation that made us say like it's kind of at this point we've advanced far past the world of oh you just have some daily quests or world quests here we need a clearer visual language and so really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do in wow on a given day so that covers the war within and the alpha is starting extremely soon pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak as we sit here right now and yeah so the way this is going to work is pretty similar to the i guess it could come up today they told us that it was going to be up tomorrow uh also, from all the creators, which I could tell, there were like a couple hundred that have played Alpha for the last two days. It's insane that no one, when hitting start recording in their OBS, didn't accidentally hit start streaming and violate their NDA and spoil everything. It's insane that that didn't happen to anybody. Dragonflight Alpha, for those who, who followed that, 
where really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player feedback and our attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're gonna start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is gonna be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. With successive alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within, okay. um, inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder <laughs> to do so. Um, we, you know, really yeah, let's just type all that out. True, there's no secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get, by the end of this, countless people into our testing. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase, which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within okay. from mm -hmm. 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout, you know, feedback, bug... Max, check to see if you have Alpha. Dorky looks like he's on right now. Well, he might just be playing footage of when he was in Alpha, uh, but I can definitely do that, yeah. Uh, probably just like a restart Bnet angle. Let's see. I mean, I'm, I still have a lot of interviews to react to. I wouldn't even play Alpha right now. Reports, suggestions, all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year. Thank you so much for joining me for The War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Really, this is one of the most exciting times ever for the development team when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha and can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys w, in the alpha. W Tina, W -E W-E-N. All right, uh, so now we have the interviews, right? All right, let's watch Sun Fury Mage again. Ready? Because that's open in my, in my uh, thing. He casts Fireball, he pops Lust. He combusts, which spawns his Owl, which casts Spells, which drops Meteors, which reduces the cooldown on his ability. Combustion ends in 5 seconds, and at the end of his combustion, based on how many spells his bird cast, he now can instant cast Pyroblast for 7 seconds that will guaranteed grit. Holy fucking shit. <clears throat> Holy moly. Uh, okay. Let me... So, Towley. Bro, <laughs> this guy ripped... fucking... nine videos when the embargo went up. Holy shit. Dude's going crazy. Uh, here we go. Exclusive The War Within interview with George Velev, also known as Ovid, former uh, Midwinter Raider, and Andrew D'Souza, which I don't remember if I met him or not. Maybe I did. I don't recognize the name. I definitely... Actually, I do recognize the name. I just don't recognize the face. <clears throat> uh only 18 minutes please tell me there's timestamps. no uh that's fine we might skip through some stuff that uh you know you know what it is i'm a game producer working on the world of warcraft team i work on primarily the combat team so things like classes class tuning pvp um things of that nature uh for the war within i'm working on okay we got a class guy like hero talents uh deep hole ravine battleground and raid of battleground it's a lot of pretty quick fire hey, questions I'm, uh, drew d'souza i am an assistant lead encounter designer so my focus is uh dungeons and raids that sort of thing and uh, oh, sick. in the war within my big focus was dungeons awesome thank you so i'm just gonna start just firing off the questions at both of you um let me know if Bro, needs... they look great and tally looks like He's on a 2004 CRT television. Repeat anything at all? 
So uh, that's not my cursor, a, by the way. Question about uh, dungeons in general, uh, going into the that's, war within. So there's a my cursor is a here. broader conversation when it comes to affixes. Always that's pretty seems fucking to be funny, actually. A bit negative sometimes, unless it's about removing or nerfing an affix. Uh, why do you think that is, and how can affixes become something that could be more fun in the war within? Great question. We're off the bat with a heater, Tally. Let's go. You know, the conversation around affixes, uh, there's always going to be some tension there, right? To, to do the nature of them. They, they create friction. They pose new challenges you go up throughout the key levels. And that's something that, you know, uh, we talk a lot about a lot on the team and how we want to address that going forward. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything concrete to share with you today. Okay. Um, that said, you know, uh, we're always experimenting, right? We made big changes in Dragonflight Season 2. Uh, even in Season 4, you'll notice that we've pushed the last bucket of affixes deeper into the pool. Wow. So we're looking for the right place to put that kind of challenge and the right ways to challenge players as we go forward, right? Um, the, the main goals being uh, an opportunity to present some extra challenge as you go up in the key levels, um, places you know for week over week change so that your dungeon experience feels diff different every week and then lastly uh, a goal that you know something we're always striving towards is an opportunity for your class to shine on some weeks and feel like you know you have a really powerful part of your kit are there any so that's <clears throat> yeah they, they're supposed to create friction but uh, okay you guys have heard this spiel a million times i'm not going to give it I, I think one of the most disappointing things about the war within uh while overall very positive for sure is that the affix system is currently lost. Uh, I don't think it makes a ton of sense in the game right now. Its initial point of existing is increasingly with how the community is reacting to changes, not hitting what it was supposed to do other than just having variants, but you could do that in so many different ways. Uh, I'm surprised they're not reworking affixes, and I think they need to do that as soon as possible. And that was a pretty non-answer. Any hero talent trees that we have not seen yet that you can give us a little preview or TLDR of? Maybe one that's exciting to the team that hasn't been presented like in any kind of a good question recently. Yeah, yeah. So we showed a lot. Um, there's four in public alpha that haven't been seen yet. So they are the Void Weaver priests. Uh, these are priests who sort of dedicated um, themselves to studying the, the origins of void magic, and they summon this like really, really. Can you cool, move? Like, cur yeah, that's not my cursor. Hole. It's really sweet. It's his um, cursor. There's a soul harvester warlock, and you sort of like sign a pack with a demon, which empowers your spells, um, as long as you treat the demon right. Uh, there's Sentinel Hunter, which is a hunter that's sort of themed around drawing their power from nature's forces. Can you move it? I mean, I can try. Really cool Sentinel owls. Um, my favorite. Nah, it's there, bro. It one. is stuck. Uh, probably the Sun Fury Mage. Uh, it's a fire and arcane mage tree, and you summon this like sick spellfire phoenix that like cast a bunch of fire and arcane spells at your target and you also summon these like really cool like spellfire orbs around your character that are reminiscent of a certain raid boss so yeah, yeah uh, those curious. are four that players haven't seen but are going to be in public alpha one awesome can't wait to try those out kind of like the same question but for both of you what is your actual favorite hero talent out of all the classes out there like from, i like from, that i'm a i've been a prop paladin for about almost 18 years so the templar, templar goaded, prop pally goaded. is awesome yeah i just seeing the hammers ring and it down. slaps it does so much and damage almost made me cry the first time i actually saw it and used it once i figured out how to use I it almost cried. Uh, and it was super fuck. fun to use in the alpha dungeons please don't nerf it um so for for both of you what what are your favorite hero talents and that or ones that you probably be playing yourselves once the expansion comes out oh this one's easy for me i, I love slayer big fan of that i uh, play my arms warrior and helps me do what i do best hard for me to choose since they're like picking your favorite child um <laughs> it's true it's true i love all 39 of them equally um if i had to say one that stands out to me i'm particularly proud of oracle priest um it was one okay. of the first ones that we published with our hero talent blogs we took a lot of big swings intentionally to get people's reactions to it and we since pivoted um you know it's no longer support oriented it's more about concentrating the priest's healing um, while still sort of feeling like it's an interpretation of what we think an Oracle Priest is. So that's what I'm really proud of. Wait, what are you guys saying no shot? You asked him what's his favorite, most proud of, or or likes. And he's saying it, and you guys are like, no. You can't just say no. Like, he's, that's his opinion. Right? And new Oracle looks pretty good. Okay, no L. Okay, oh, shit. Um, in terms of how it sort of develop over time. If I had to pick one... Probably Chrono Warden uh, for Evoker. I played a lot of Evoker in Season 3 and uh, like the idea of having like a mini teleport with uh, Warp. So probably that one for now, but changes on a daily basis. Awesome. So um, so there's, now there's follower dungeons that are available. Will those be available for all eight 
of the War Within Dungeons, and has there been any thoughts of possible follower raids in the future for the expansion of oh, the World wow. Soul Saga in general? Yeah, dude, that's crazy. I've never heard that. I said, oh, wow, at the same time this dude's eyes went up. Check this guy's in the bottom left eyes real quick. Possible follower raids in the future for the expansion or the World Soul Dude, let me see if I can get a perfect Soul pause on this. Any thoughts of possible One second. follower raids in the future for the expansion? <laughs> I don't think they've thought about follower rates. That's what we're that's what we're gleaning here. Or the World Soul Saga in general. Um, so we're still discussing, you know, where follower dungeons will land. What we do know today for sure is that the Rookery dungeon will have a follower dungeon support. Um, it is a part of the like the, the critical campaign of the War Within. So players will be able to experience that with like an AI companion and play through it if that's how they want to play the dungeon. Awesome. Um, now going to hero talents for a bit. Is there any concern in hero talents? Um, for like ability bloat or passive bloat as someone like myself who uses something like let's say weak auras and I have to track like already for what we have with the revamp talent tree from Dragonflight so many passives so many abilities mm. is there any concern that if we decide to go further with the hero talents is is that like is there going to be a mix up or a shake up there I think they kind of so a lot of times when you get buffs from hero talents it's very visual but there's some where there isn't, and I wish he would have used examples. Like Shadow Pan, when you get Wisdom of the Wall, which is a massive buff, I want to say it's something like your Mastery is 30% better, you have 25% crit damage, your crit chance is increased by a percentage of your verse, and like you get haste. Like it's it's an it's an insane buff. But you have no idea you have it. Everything else in the game, when you have a Blacko Kick proc, your button lights up. When you have a spinning crane kick proc, dance GG, your spinning crane kick lights up. When you know you get most things you need to see a buff for, a button lights up. It is in the game. But then some class tree things or some uh, hero talents just aren't. And you just have no idea they're even there. Yeah, I mean, this topic is something we discuss all the time. And we've heard a lot of feedback about this as well. Um, our process for hero talent trees is sort of start thematically and figure out what makes sense. Um, so some trees like Sun Fury, for example, that Phoenix had mentioned, it's not a new button. It's tied to when you hit combustion. Um, and sort of like a rider on that button. Uh, other trees like Frostfire, we felt like if you want to do Frostfire Bolt properly, you need to replace Fireball and Frostbolt effectively. So it's just an override instead. Um, so we're very cognizant of the amount of abilities that we're adding and we're being very conscious about when we add them. In some cases, uh, we are making class updates to sort of make room for these abilities. So for example, Mistweaver in Public Alpha 1 no longer has Essence font. Part of that is because we wanted to give them a new active by Conduit of Celestials. It's Celestials. not my cursor. Stop telling me to move it. I can't. It's not so mine. we're trying to make sure that when appropriate, um, we're leveraging those options. But it's really being, it's really assessing it like case by case. There's no like one right answer for Hero Town Tree or for a spec. Okay. And will there be Guys, more this is my cursor. just coming on later to the expansion or is this... Uh, more within hero talents. So it's like the first iteration is going to stay with us throughout the entirety of all the seasons that we're going to get. Um, you know, right now we're just focused on making these as great as they can be for the War Within launch. Nothing. Dude, uh, here's what I find funny. This is a video that Tally is releasing, but clearly Warcraft recorded it. Like they used Warcraft's recording of it because they're in perfect quality and Tally's on a Zoom call, right? And it's funny that Tally, to, this probably isn't even his fault. Whoever was recording this just had their mouse on Tally. So when they blew it up and put it in in the box here, it's just, that's just how we share got. about more down the line, but it's something, you know, you know we've talked about. Uh, so when we do share something. So whose cursor is it then? Probably community manager. Consideration in, but as of right now, 39 for launch. And that's all we can really talk about right now. Okay. Um, so PvPers have like a brawl system for experimental game mode. So you have like the solo shuffle and the blitz. Is there any interest the in like a plus brawl to test experimental affixes like mid season or in, in, that, in that PVE spectrum? Not something we've discussed currently, but there's a there's a cool idea there. Um, that's something we talk about with the team. Okay, going back to hero towns, is there <laughs> right. be, is, are there going to be any more like class design changes or any like class specific hero uh, talent like revamps? You know, sometimes we take an entire class and we revamp the talents because something like the hero talents exists. So I don't know if there's a say shadow priest you can give us, or if there's a definitive classes are. If just there's a go god, like a good overhaul because of the say hero shadow priest. Uh, I mean, I can give you a definitive list of things in public alpha one. So yeah, alongside hero talents, there's a good amount of changes for classes like evoker, druid, warrior, monk, paladin. Are oh, you just going to um, mention the classes that got changed? Alpha, both just on things that we've been cooking and just aren't ready to show and based off of internal and external feedback. 
Um, so yeah, uh, there's a good amount of class changes separate from Hero Town and the Public Alpha one, and definitely more down the line as we go over the course of Alpha. Awesome. Um, are there any new mechanics to Mythic Plus affixes coming in this expansion? And are seasonal affixes just gone for good? I, it feels like good question. the community's kind of been 50-50 on it in Dragonfly. Like, we want seasonal affixes. Others kind of enjoy that it wasn't there. You know, so what is... What if... And some enlightened individuals say, just rotate between the seasonal affixes that already really worked. It's already there. Don't have to what guess. What is the direction that we're going with in the War Within with that? So uh, we don't have seasonal affixes as planned for the War Within currently. That said, that doesn't mean they're gone for good. Okay. Um, like I mentioned earlier, right? Like affixes are going to continue to evolve. We're going to continue to iterate on them, and you know we're going to take community sentiment and and feedback in when when we make these decisions, right? Um, as far as like new features that I'm excited about, this is you know a little bit in line with what we're trying in season four. Like there's the the difficulty recalibration of like you know what a mythic zero is, right? For yeah, we already that talked really about like that. Make a dungeon. Um, what we're going to try going forward is any dungeon that's part of the Mythic Plus rotation will be a part of Mythic Zero as well. So you'll actually have rotating Mythic Zeros as well. And you'll have, even if you don't do Mythic Plus, you get the new uh, set of content every season. Awesome. That's actually good. And are we keeping the uh, four new, four old dungeon system in War Within? Oh, yes, we are. It for Dragonflight. And are there any hints to some dungeons coming with that, if that is the case? Yeah, smiles, so, smiles. Yes, come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're pretty happy with how that came to or came out as well. And I guess your early point on the seasonals, I guess that's where our stance is right now. Is like, um, the the rotation did a lot to keep each season pretty fresh, um, in a way where we didn't have to layer a seasonal affix over dungeons that you've been playing for an entire expansion. Um, yeah, we know. Yeah, well, this that, has been that still doesn't mean that's before. gone forever or anything of that nature. Uh, as far as any spoilers or hints, uh, I'll share one. Uh, Rimbo Toll's Ooh. coming back. We thought that was a pretty Ooh, cool setting okay. for you know us going and visiting some dwarfs, um, taking all the lessons we've learned through Dragonflight 2 as we've done some of these revamps. Like awesome. We want to keep the spirit of it. Like There will be a bombing run still, if you remember that part. Oh, so there will be the bombing run. Now, that part is interesting in Mythic Plus. Right, yep. right, but we'll make sure we touch it up for you know modern pacing considerations and balance and that sort of thing. Now, okay, I'm trying to think how the bombing run could be cool in Mythic Plus. And let's just say there's all those trash packs at the beginning, but let's just say you don't have an unlimited amount of shots. Let's just say each person has one shot. And you have to kind of choose what trash packs you want to play. I think that could be fun. Uh, Yeah, no, not, a, not Mom Spaghetti. Yeah, I know, I know. But like... Like, okay, let's just say there's 15 trash packs before the first boss. And they're spread out. And each person in the group of five each gets their shot, and when they shoot it, it they get ported back to the beginning and they start the dungeon. Or they can start playing the dungeon. And that way, things could evolve, packs could change. You might want to double pull these packs. Maybe that pack is really bad. You want to remove that one. And, like, over the course of the expansion, you or course of the season, you, like, pick new packs and try new stuff, and... I don't know, I'm trying to... Like, something like that might not be awful. Issue with that is communication. What happens when you start the key? Someone doesn't do the one they're supposed to do, and then... Then, like, you just have a bunch of extra trash packs, and now everything is hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's issues, I'm just... Yeah, the, the dungeon pool, it's weird. Every time any dungeon pool gets announced, everyone's mad. That's always true. Uh... This one in particular, I think the only thing that's egregiously bad is Siege of Boralus. That dungeon fucking stinks. Uh, I think Mist has a lot of potential. You've seen when they've brought dungeons back, they've changed them a bit. Some for the better, some for the worse. You have no idea how good the four War Within dungeons are. Uh, you know, when they announced this season for Dragonflight, we had at least done all the dungeons at that point. So you knew which ones were good and which ones weren't good. And there was like a lot of actually good Dragonflight dungeons in season one. So, like, we don't know if it's going to be filled with really good, like, the better ones of the War Within. Like, we won't know until we see all of them. Mist is fine. Necrotic Wake is fine. I just think Siege sucks. And Grim Batol, Cata Dungeon so far, Throne of the Tides being brought back was pretty good. It, it like, it is a, it's, it's right now, it's one of the harder keys of the season, but, like, they made good changes. It's a good dungeon. It makes sense. Uh, the, especially the changes to the bosses that they made. Um... And I, I feel like, uh, 
then like Vortex Pinnacle, a lot of the stuff they changed were not great. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm definitely in a wait and see moment. I think Siege is definitely a bad choice, but I'm interested to see how people feel when they actually test it because, again, the overwhelming response from Mythic Plusers is always obscenely negative, and they, you don't even know what most of these dungeons even look like or what they're going to change about them. So outside of Siege, I don't see a huge reason to be upset. But, yeah. Yeah, th that's going to be fun. Just trying to calculate the percentage of mobs on those bombing runs is going to be pretty fun. <laughs> Are there any plans to uh, take it easy on the restrictions that raid buffs impose on endgame content like Mythic Plus and raiding? You know, we've, we've always had the bring to player, not the class conversation over the years. And just recently when I was playing the MOP remix, we had stuff like the buff scrolls. And that kind of just reminded a lot of people. Fucking like, wow, great buff question. Scrolls were really cool that anyone can actually use them. So is there any kind of, you know, um, you know, easing up on those kind of restrictions in the current war within game? I don't think they're going to say yes because they've gone in the other direction with this. I think it's going to be next expansion when we, for the third time in WoW's history, give every class a raid buff and then end up removing them and then repeating that process. The only issue they have right now is shamans don't have one, really. And DKs outside of grips don't really have one. They just need to they just need to actually fully finish it instead of being almost all the way there and stopping if you're going to do one or the other, right? Because if you remove raid buffs, which I would be a fan of, it does present more problems, right? Then certain classes aren't brought for a whole expansion. One thing raid buffs do in raid is they basically guarantee that every class will be brought again, except for shamans, <laughs> uh, which is weird. Uh, and that, that is actually good. You know, there's not 20 classes and there's 20 spots in a raid. And that, that, that does have positive benefits. If it wasn't that you would just stack classes that had really insane defensives or really insane utility or seven of the best DPS class. And that just presents other issues and it's harder to actually tune for everyone in the game because the people at the top can actually do that and most other people can't. So it actually helps minimize the relative difficulty gap between what the top guilds can do and other guilds can't. But then you have Mythic Plus and Mythic Plus is like really weird with raid buffs. Like raid buffs can almost determine a Mythic Plus meta for an entire expansion and that's a in my opinion, a significantly bigger problem than it would ever be in raid. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I could see tons of problems with removing them, but I definitely think it's weird that they have them on every class, but not one of them. Or uh, not currently. At least yeah. nothing that we can share publicly. It's something okay. we've talked about, but as of right now, no current plans. No. Okay. Um, this is for hero talents. Um, this is actually from uh, so, no. Preheat, who is a content creator who loves to play his augmentation evoker. He says, I had to ask this. With the new hero talents, uh, we can glean that augmentation is here to stay. Does the team still consider this of course it is. to be a success? Are there any big changes Great question, to the though. augmentation play style or the way the damage is out? They were never going to remove aug. Yeah, I mean, we certainly can consider augmentation a success. Um, there's a ton of players who really enjoy the play style, and we're happy that we made it for players like that. In terms of new changes to the spec, I'm just gonna yeah, pause it right there. A ton of you guys are gonna be like, "He's making that up." I think he's exactly right. I don't think it's people you interact with, but I would bet that the majority of players that play WoW are huge fans of Og. Even though people who play at the high end are universal haters of Og, uh, I think both can be true. It's internally, nothing we're gonna be share right now. Um, did want to mention though that we definitely uh, heard that there's some categories of improvement that we can make in regards to logging and we're tracking and planning on addressing those for the war within launch yeah one of the main issues with logging in that is that it's completely fucking broken and no one has any idea how much including blizzard has any idea how much damage classes are doing right now classes at the top of warcraft logs uh are classes that are really good yes but they also are classes that randomly don't contribute some of their damage to aug so they just and they're really good dps so they're getting augged so they appear to be higher than they actually are because since Graham Berger quit, uh, the Og guy, he uh, they just have had it broken for a while, and they have it. It's been it's been like six months or something since Og log hooks worked correctly. Awesome. All right. Uh, so going to a little bit of uh, mythic rating in the war within. So let's is go. The plan let's go. Or rating in general. And let's mythic go. Rating to kind of keep. Um, those last couple of bosses like extremely hard for like the elite great the fucking uh, question tally it took several nerfs to get like let's say tindril and frock to a point where even like you know two to three day raiding guilds that would normally just get cutting edge for an entire raid took them a lot longer this last tier so is that just like a tuning issue and or just maybe a mistake like how is that going to be worked on going into the war within with, All like, right. those big end game bosses i, I think you had i heard an answer from this 
that was not from one of these two people, I'm seeing how closely they align. On the head there, right? Like we we have the the audience that gets there first, and we really want that to be really engaging and exciting. But we do have to consider everybody else. Um, I don't have anything concrete as far as a plan, but this is a serious topic that we're talking about pretty often um, inter internally. Um, that's what I can say today. Is okay. Well, someone else said in an interview that they talk about this all the time, especially since Amir Drasil, and that they're looking to smooth out the difficulty curve. And they mentioned a few things specifically. So I, I'm I'm looking to see that. But I have one thing. Uh, new paint. What were we drawing earlier? Oh yeah, delves. This is about delves, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Um, so here's your eye level in a patch, right? So here is the eye level you start with. And here's the road all the way to getting max eye level. And here's the most eye level you could possibly have. In most patches, when we kill an end boss, and again, end bosses are generally tuned to be just possible with whatever gear us or Echo have, right, at the time, usually our eye level is like here. And in this patch, because of the upgrade system, our eye level was like here. Very simple. When you are here, when we killed the last boss, it being tuned here, that's not that much power you gained. The helm enchant wasn't very powerful. There was no other things to the raid. Why do they have to over nerf the raid? Because the boss was tuned here instead of here. If you guys were 12 eye levels higher or some other power increasing more than the helm, like, more powerful than we were, you guys would have fucking shit on Heroic, or on, on Tindril and Firak on Mythic. It's just that you were basically doing it with the same... We killed Tindril at two, at 481 item level. Like, we were almost fucking Biss, outside of Mythic Crest Gap. Like, you know? Uh... And maybe for Tendrils, eye level didn't matter for some of that, and mechanically it needed to be nerfed. There's all kinds of stuff, but I think that is the main driving force. Like, yes, mechanics matter, bro. When you have 10 extra eye levels of health, a lot of stuff stops mattering. You don't need to nerf things like Falling Star a million times because you just don't get one shot by it anymore, you know? Uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't know. They need to definitely smooth out the difficulty curve. I think if you're going to have a boss like Tendril and Firak, there are people that aren't world first guilds that enjoy the difficulty of those fights. A lot of the people in the top 100. Basically, your experience with Tendril is negative if that boss was not nerfed adequately enough before you got to it, and that is true of almost everyone. And that's because we had such high eye level, and because they made a fucking very mechanically challenging fight. Uh, and they needed to nerf it faster or have it tuned for a lower eye level. Okay. As a tank over the years, I've seen a lot of back and forth over tank threat, snap threat. We've even had like tanks and dungeons get nerfed and buffed over the years, depending on different play styles. Like, okay, we, we, we don't want tanks like kiting on the highest of high keys because there's a possibility that it's just, this is a bad play style. So what would be like the long-term solution for this? Are we just gonna continue to like buff the overall tank threat through like talents, hero talents? Overall, I know, like, you know, we've, we've played Mr. Kata, we had, like, Resolve, and we had uh, Vengeance as Great. big boosters to our damage that we never had to really worry about, like, getting our threat nerfed or buffed. So I was wondering, um, is there, like, a way to solve that issue in the War Within or going forward? Or is it just going to be continually just a lot of... Is there a threat problem right now? ...data coming in and just figuring out where to buff and nerf certain tanks and certain threat aspects of them. That's a good question. Um, With Vengeance DH, there is... I don't think that's as much, like, outgoing threat problems as, like, the amount of globals that Vengeance needs to set up on a pull. Also, there's a bug with one of their spells. I think it's something like if you aren't in combat or are in combat, when you play Sigil of Flame but then enter in combat after it, it does no threat or something. Like, it's literally a bug. Like, some weird shit like that. Uh, Yeah, so... I think it's more of, like, a design problem with vengeance rather than a overall threat issue our philosophy really is we try to keep tank threat output and dps power at similar levels but you know it's inevitable that sometimes like there's a reason that you don't automatically have threat right like it should be in my opinion it should be true that when you are playing tank properly you should have threat on mobs like a dps cannot out threat you if you are playing the game as well as you can but if you are, like, missing a ton of globals and not playing properly, you should lose threat. And that that's true. A lot of the times. Like, if you're just... If you guys have ever played with a new player or watched them on stream, you will notice they just don't press globals sometimes on, on CD. Like, they just don't press their buttons. Like, in that scenario, you should lose threat because it's the game telling you you need to play better, and they're right. So, uh, I... 
I think it's I basically that's just me pushing against the argument that like why does threat even need to be a thing? It can just be automatic. I I think there's room for a skill gap there, and I don't think it's egregious either. Bonuses that sway in one direction or the other. Um, we try to make sure that we can address it on the tank side first, but sometimes it requires us to come up with creative solutions. Dev Evoker can out thread any tank with perfect play. I think you're right. Yeah, it's because of their mastery and if just how bursty they are. Uh, but if that's true, then that's an outlier on the on the offensive side. That was also true in previous expansions. I think Fury Warriors pulled a lot of threat. Uh, Frosty Ks, if you went in with Breath and uh, Frostworm's Fury, you would be a big threat puller. I'm sure you guys know of multiple other DPS specs that would do something similar. Um, but yeah, the uh, most of those things can be, in Dragonflight, can be outplayed with good play on a good tank. You won't pull threat. And if anything, you just like just wait like a babby second, which you can kind of feel out if you're a good DPS. Um, and you know who you're playing with. I think it's probably only Evoker in the game currently that, like, could could just straight up, you can do nothing and you'll pull threat. But even then, I bet most of that you could do without, you could do with better play. Um, for specific problems. Uh, early, our goal is to keep tank threat high enough um, or give them tools they need to sort of deal with snap threat. And we're not really sort of planning on shifting or adding things. Evoker like can wait five seconds and still rip. Yeah, if that's true, then again, it's, uh, I don't know, Seems pretty simple to just give Devastation Evokers like a, uh, just like a natty threat reduction. Like, uh, Vengeance or Resolve for the War Within currently, you know? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that answer. Overall, with the Hero Town system, this, I guess, would be a question for, for both of you, really. What, what would be a win for the WoW team with the Hero Towns? Would an example being like everyone just using different talents frequently? Like, what would be like the win with that feature, considering it's such a big feature? Well, I haven't heard this them? yet. I'm the gonna give a guess. I think the guess is. My guess is, is that someone plays this expansion or some people play this expansion because the hero talents are in the game. And I think that's true. I think there are DK players who are going to play the War Within that otherwise would not have because Rider of the Apocalypse exists. Right. Or mages come back to the game because all fucking three of them are as insane as Rider of the Apocalypse. <laughs> you know, like, I, I think that has to be the goal. But maybe it's good balance. Let's see. Biggest win, in my opinion, is getting people excited about what they add to their spec. Um, if you're the type of player that really wants to sort of eco maximum performance, or the type of player that really wants to sort of dig deep into the flavor of certain things, like, you know, for example... Dude, one second. Someone in my chat said, bought a horse because of Rider of the Apocalypse. Dark Ranger and Black Arrow. We just hope <laughs> that there's so something good. there for you. Um, at the end of the day, we Bro, want to Bro, aren't just horses, like, hella expensive, say, by like, the way? Oh, I want to play that, or, like, I want to make a new character that's a hunter specifically because of Sentinel, or... Um, I kind of have Shaman horses. Of Farseer, things like that is sort of what we consider the win. Um, beyond that, uh, there are some goals that we also set out for ourselves, like not adding too much complexity, having different options and different content, um, and maintaining the core identity and gameplay of the specs. Hitting the mark on those is also very important for us. But excitement first. People should be really excited for them. Absolutely. That's a, that's, you that's you have horses fun. that you can't ride. You actually can ride them. They'll they'll hold your weight. Um, I just don't do that because it's probably bad for their hips. They're strong awesome. as fuck. For the entirety of Dragonfly, we had the release of our raids. Uh, we had like heroic, normal, mythic all released on the same week. Is that staying in the War Within, or will that be changing up back to the I guess the pre DF format of we have like two weeks, then we have normal heroic, then we have mythic. Like what what will be like the release raid? looking like for each season so i can speak a little bit to release i believe we we do have an interest in having like a heroic week again like, like folks refer to it as is it for a long first of all fucking amen to that and let's fucking go oh my god i let, let me i usually try to speak for like how things affect the majority of the game i'm just gonna speak for me for a second this is so fucking good for the race it lowers the amount of character it probably lowers the amount of characters we need to have it increases viewership for the race the hype when Mythic comes out is you're actually doing Mythic and not doing three days of splits. And you can get all that bullshit out of the way before Mythic's there. It just feels like you can just raid and you don't have to worry about this fucking spreadsheet level gearing. The only thing I hope, and maybe he'll clarify this here, is I hope that Mythic Plus isn't capped. I think it's bullshit if Mythic Plusers have to wait a week to start doing Mythic Plus. Because previously, Mythic Plus was capped at like a 7 during Heroic Week. But now... A, like, Mythic plus 10 is a Mythic 0. So I don't know if they're going to actually allow Mythic plus that week. I'm not sure. But Mythic zeros will exist. Launch, right? There's a lot of benefit there. And, like, have it, giving folks time to level up, smell the roses, do some of the max level content. Right. And it gives us a chance to, you know, make sure balance feels right and that we're in a good place going into our first set of raids. 
but um, only really here to talk about uh, you know that that War Within release for now. Awesome. So so it's possible that it, it could just be like that for like the beginning, and then it could just go back to the old style later on. That's just a possibility. Potentially. Fuck yeah, that. But for for War Within, we're currently. You know what? I, I'm gonna make negative. Uh, Dude, I'm going to hold that against them. I'm going to be spiteful. If they bring back simultaneous release, I will, like, do one full year of negative Asmongold, like, shitting on WoW videos only, just to spite them. I don't even know if it'll matter, but if I could make a dent and be spiteful in any way, I will. Thinking we will have a bit of lead time. Yeah. Now, this may not be a question you uh, you two can answer, but um, the is the patch cadence for War Within going to be the same as Dragonflight overall with, like just overall releases in general like three they're not gonna answer faded, that although we've had the like the last two expansions or is there a possibility for some surprises at the end of the expansion well i wouldn't be surprised if we talked about it now not what it yeah uh, in, in regards <laughs> to like uh seasons and cadence um right now nothing we can sort of talk about it's yeah. things that we talked about quite a lot and we're so very early on public alpha so uh yeah unfortunately can't really comment too much on content cadence or you know secret surprises down the line all right sounds Fair, very fair. Just speaking a little bit about Faded, we're about to hit up season four where we're going to get our Awakened uh, season. Um, how does the team feel about Faded going into just the war within in general? I know a lot of your decisions are mostly based on... Dude, this has been a fucking... I don't think they've really given him a lot to go on here. Like, the answers have not been awesome or really... Sometimes it's just really short. But, like, he has had an excellent interview. Like, these questions were really, you, really good. I saw was really good for Faded, which is, I'm assuming is why Awakened happened. Um, but for, I guess for me, like as a raider, um, I get excited for like the gear chase, but it's always good to have like a new raid. But and when we don't get that, it can feel a little sad. <laughs> Whereas I guess Mythic Plus players and PVPers get like their own regular season and they get to just ball out and, and have fun. Dude, so, preach, Tally, preach. How do you guys Faded in general and then going into the War Within and there are possibilities there? So n nothing necessarily for the war within today, right? But right. as far as season four goes, you know, it's it's a love letter to the Dragon Isles for us, right? Like, here's everything we've made. Um, go out and play it, right? And you, you called it out a moment ago, but like the gear chase, is a, there's a bit of a, a texture change up there. And for a lot of folks, it's a part of like, a, there's a, not reprogging, right? But revisiting encounters that you haven't seen in a long time and having them feel relevant. Um, one thing that, you know, might be a little bit exciting for folks is we're actually messing with uh i don't feel rather love. We're, we're we've adjusted some of the tuning in the dawn of the infinite's mega dungeon to where it should feel a little bit closer to an actual mini raid it's much harder than what it was in 10 and has rewards that match that as well so hopefully there's Dude, like can a, you guys stop asking there. me to move the cursor first of all let's just let's just think logically for a second do you know how fucking old would I have to be for my cursor to be that big look it that is 10 times bigger than my cursor Like, that's insane. The only reason it looks like that is because they, like, they blew up, and why it's so pixely is they blew up a zoom call of Towley in a smaller resolution, and they blew it up to fit this image. That's why the mouse is so big. It's not my cursor. I can't move it. Come on, mate. For folks to chase early on um, and play with that in, in like, that format. Okay, so they mentioned season four. I, I, I'm not a big fan of season four. I'm not looking forward to it at all. Uh, we asked them in a separate Q&A where a different person answered, and they said, hey, if you guys hate season four this time around, we won't make it next time. Because last time, the, the uh, reception was pretty positive. And I think that's partially because last time, season four, it was kind of well known that season four was not a plan at the beginning of uh, Shadowlands. It was something that was innovated by a few developers later on, and I know this for a fact, Innovated by developers later on in the in the season, it was just like, oh, here, you get this extra Mythic Plus season, this extra PvP season, and then you get to go back and revisit these raids with affixes. Okay, that's cool. At least you're trying something new with affixes. It didn't really work out. I don't think affixes worked. There's a reason. That, especially non-raiders, it was great. And people were happy about going back to the raids because Castle Nathria was awesome. There isn't really a Castle Nathria tier raid that we're going back to in this expansion. In fact, the closest thing is a Myrdrasil, and that just happened, right? So we're not going back to shit. So... And then there's this other thing where the perception is last time they did this because it was like an extra thing, and this time it was in place of a raid. So they deliberately answered that. I actually asked them that specifically, and they were wondering about the feedback on Season 4, and I said, I can maybe even find the exact thing. I said, the basic sentiment is, if Season 4 is extra and purely extra, 
most people are okay with it, especially Mythic Plusers and PvPers because they get a new season. But even Raiders, if it's just... There's some people that obviously are hurt by this because they like have to reprogress these raids and keep their guild together. But generally speaking, Raiders, it's extra and it's just good. There are some people looking forward to doing the raids they didn't do before. I've heard from those people. But like generally speaking, if it's in place of a raid everyone hates this, right? Well, I guess Mythic Plusers and PvPers, it doesn't really matter if you purely only do those things. It's very, very few Mythic Plusers, only Mythic Plus, and don't also raid. The majority of Raiders and Mythic Plusers do both. Um, so, the... And then they responded very clearly with, this was never a, are we making a raid or doing a Season 4 thing? Season 4 was either... The argument could be Season 4 happens or doesn't happen, but it has nothing to do... Same thing with Plunderstorm and the other thing. It had nothing to do with the creation of a raid. The people who make those things were not working on any of that content. Um, so, and I, I believe that's true. So, but I, that still doesn't change the fact that I don't want... Like, I'm not even going to play Season 4, but a lot of other people might. So, going to raid. there's... There, their feedback they get from this this time will be interesting because I think it might be a little bit different than last time. Can you remove the cursor? Okay. So now that we we're hitting up the uh, the World Soul Saga, um, in Mythic Raid, something I've always liked was uh, Mythic only. So the base plan was just no content for like six months? Yeah, when you put it like that, it sounds bad, but that's also what's happened at the end of every single expansion. And it's more of a new way to break up that time and make it slightly more interesting for people who are continuing to still play the game phases and i know i know this is probably something you can't answer but i still ask anyway is there a possibility with such such an epic i guess uh cast of characters coming into the world soul saga could we possibly be seeing some extra mythic phases in the upcoming raids uh at least in the war within I think that's something we'd have to, you know, keep close to the chest. Uh, I think our stance, fair, you know, remains fair. the same. When, when it makes sense, we'll do it, right? Uh, but that's all I really have to share. On well, what right is now. this music, bro? Tally has crazy ending music. What did I just click on? Okay, um, bro, look how Giga Chad Tally is in this thing too. Dude, I was just gonna say something, but then I forgot because Tally's music freaked me out. Fuck, what was I going to say? Something about, uh... Something that they answered in that Q&A that they're not talking about here. Or didn't get answered here. Fuck, I'm going to have to remember later. It definitely, definitely escaped my brain. Oh, come on. Maybe it's right there. Give me a second. Nope, I think it's gone. Yep. Okay, I'll probably remember it at some point. Maybe if I read our podcast Discord. I remember typing some stuff that they typed in there. Let's see. Nope. Fuck. What was your thought mouse related? No, it has nothing to do with the fucking cursor. Damn, that's going to bother me. Okay, are you going over the raid bosses tonight? Journal has been on Wowhead for a while now. Uh, no, I'll probably do that tomorrow when I can log on Alpha. I absolutely hate going through Wowhead's Dungeon Journal. The in-game one is so much more... Uh, I just like going through it better. So Alpha's tomorrow confirmed? Yeah, I think Alpha's supposed to be up tomorrow as soon as possible. That's what they said. Um. Okay. Uh, what other interviews were had with who? Someone said Mr. Gm had one. Wow, developer interview with Holly Longdale. Oh, was this this London thing? Oh, yeah. When I said on no stream till Wednesday, a bunch of people added me on Twitter and they said, good luck in London. Guys, I wasn't going to fucking... I didn't go to London. Who the fuck went to London? You know what I mean? Hello and welcome back to another developer interview. We're here with Holly Longdale in London. Yay! 
Holly. <laughs> we were just talking about this off okay. camera. Okay. W Holly W W. Yeah, let's what's your role? What do you do? I'm the executive producer of World of Warcraft and vice president. Vice president. Yeah, I, know I love it that. Sounds fancy. Um. So, we're gonna start off with a, an easy one. I might try to skip through here because usually someone this high up, like there's a reason when you have interviews with Blizzard people, you can ask them whatever the fuck you want. But the reason you send your stuff ahead of time is so they can actually, if you're going to talk to Ian, he's probably going to want to check in with the people who work directly on said small thing I'm asking about and get a better answer. It's possible that Holly doesn't have her like boots to the ground on like everything to do with retail WoW. So maybe the questions are smart enough to know that she won't know a lot of that stuff. Or maybe... They sent in the questions, and she did actually get good answers for them. Maybe interesting either way. Uh, welcome to the UK. So is... Sorry about the weather. It was beautiful <laughs> on Sunday. Oh, uh, on Sunday, yeah. Like it's so not like Southern California Wait. where it was beautiful every day. Uh, Facts. That's the best part about living here. The yeah, weather here is right. actually it perfection. There. Just while I was here, it rained there. Pausing Andy. Oh no, I'm gonna pause the video a lot. Uh, someone in chat just said pausing Andy. Just play for the video. Definitely encourage you to leave. I'll even link the thing here. There's no way. Here it's... you go immediately leave and go watch it on your own that way it'll play all the way through and you don't have to uh you don't have to worry about any of that it's true. i don't believe it it's a fact yeah well okay um <laughs> how's the jet lag um extraordinary yeah yeah it's awful isn't it um uh, jet lag for me is usually I'm way I'm worse sorry. on the way back to the states the from Twice europe I know, I know. Um, <laughs> like infinitely I'm worse i'm not sure i can do it yeah um but more than happy to be here. It's been really awesome to, you know, spend time with you. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing to have you. Let's like, go. You and uh, Maria over just hanging out and playing the wall within. So what, here. what was the London event? Like, was that just, I guess, EU-based content creators? The Warcraft executives flew to London to interview and schmooze with the EU creators. Is that the deal? In alpha, All right. yeah, launching soon, very soon, hopefully. Um, I can't comment on extremely that. soon, probably by the time this is out. Who knows? <laughs> we, um, do. we are doing things a lot quicker. Oh, now. yeah, yeah, don't worry. It's fast. <laughs> Let's go. Um, showboat, actually. First question for that. Yeah. Uh, so how do you feel? So, I guess, kind of going back, we'll start, you know, Dragonflight. How do you feel like uh, the boat, pacing boat, and content boat. of Dragonflight has been? It's been super quick, you know, we've had a bunch of stuff. Which we'll go into a little bit more because I do. I am curious about certainly one thing, but uh, yeah, how do you feel about the pacing and how has this been content-wise for for Dragonflight? Um, so it was the beginning of our journey on you know what does it mean? We we gave ourselves a we'll be able to, we'll be able to tell here how good of an interview this is going to be because like this actually does give room for a good good answer. This is. Like the release schedule in Dragonflight is the most different thing about the expansion and they totally tried something new about just giving you way more content than you're expecting in a six month period and they did that the whole time uh there's definitely a, a lull now waiting for the war within like they're definitely trying to get ahead of schedule for these 18 month expansions but for the the first year of dragonflight there's never been that much content in one expansion uh so let's see is this is a good interview we might we might turn this interview off if this is a we let's see cadence, um with varying amounts and types of content in each one um it's certainly been a journey um we learned a lot with each one no, um, no. and so i think now we're going to be focused more on how do we make it sustainable for the team and how do we make it sustainable for our players yeah. as well um so we're taking everything we've learned um and then looking at what all right guys okay the curse is on the screen right there we now take steps to measure uh, expectations. We set goals. Um, so for something like Plunderstorm, we're like, okay, this is a bit crazy, a bit novel. Let's set some goals and then see how it performs. Uh, and it outperformed our exp expectations. So great. Yep. Uh, and we'll do the same thing with uh, Remix uh, for Miss. It's on the list. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's been a learning process. And I think, you know, we have to get a little sharper to help the team and also, you know, be able to create discoverable content. There's plenty of stuff that was, you know, I didn't know. I'm not making my cursor bigger. I, it wasn't surface. I don't know if this is the move. I don't know if we're going to watch this whole thing. We might move to some Dragonflight Alpha stuff. I don't know. 
Let me, let me, God, dude, guys, if you guys make YouTube videos, especially interviews, time stamping the questions is so cracked. It's so good. It's, it's like makes videos so much better. And it doesn't even take that much time. I say as someone who doesn't actually do this myself, but I don't think it does. Uh, okay. Okay, you you know what I meant. The war within, man. I'm gonna be saying that for a while. All right, what other interviews are there? I don't know if I'm feeling this one. Maybe I put it on the back burner. He asks a really good question at 1501. That's at the end of the interview. All right, fuck it. I'll bite. Things that are going to happen um, that I'm excited about, and I think Honest. hopefully you will be too. Amazing. Well. That was Holly Longdale in London. <laughs> I hate, I, dude, you guys sometimes just, God fucking damn it, man. Just be normal, right? God damn it. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see if there's any new Wowhead. Wowhead's probably just still steady posting about shit, right? Oh, yeah. Like six new posts. Dungeon encounters and abilities. Uh,. I think we're just going to skip that. Uh, we'll, we'll learn them by doing them. Earthen allied race customization options in the war within. Yeah. Drakthir class restriction removed likely early in war within. What does that mean? Oh, Blizzard plans to allow Drakthir to roll other classes besides Evoker in the war within? What? Okay, that is going to be fucking way too... Like, isn't... I don't even know... They're going to have to make changes to Drakthir, right? Because it's weird. Like, when Drakthir and Evoker came out, it was almost as if Drakthir were Evokers and Evokers were Drakthir, right? Like, it was hard to separate them. Don't Drakthirs have the best racials in the entire game? You can just glide on every class. Every class gets two AoE stops and Tail Swipe and Wing Buffet. Like, they're going to have to... I think they're going to have to change how much of... How much of those abilities are for Evokers only and how much are for Drakthir specifically. Or else they're going to be, like, super OP, I think. But... Nope. All right, dude, I think we're hard vibing. I mean, I, I don't have... I can't log on Alpha. I'll, I'll, I'll be doing that tomorrow because I want to do a bunch of dungeons on different classes. And now what I really want to do after seeing more of the hero talents is I want to actually make... I want to play as every hero talent in the game and I want to see how they feel and how they look. That is important to me now after seeing some of them. Max, check Discord. Okay. Okay. Wait, game, World of Warcraft's game director calls controversial the war within paid early access in experiment. Wait, what is this? Oh, God, it's IGN. Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe there's some good answers here. Let's see. It is controversial. Um. Okay. Wait, is there more? Where's the arc? Is this it? We spoke to Hasakostas in a big interview. Okay, April 17th. This was today, posted today. Uh, okay, let me see if there's any, any questions we want to hear the answer to. Let's start with Hero Talents. What work is being done to make sure Hero Talents really feel impactful? I feel like there's a sense that there are a lot of tacked on passive buffs as opposed to real active gameplay changes. And I was admittedly a little underwhelmed with what I played around with. Um, maybe we'll look around. I mean, they're just, that just seems like it's not going to get a great answer. Let me see. So they're not really class shattering abilities. They're not, honestly, they're class augmenting. Yeah, we know that. Uh, okay. I know there are some people looking at things being done in Season of Discovery and getting excited at the notion of specs getting a little weird. 
I play shaman, so my guild's been saying shaman tanks or totemic shaman could be a support class. Oh, Jesus. But it sounds like that's a little outside the scope of what you're doing here. Okay, his answer is going to be yep. Okay, moving on. Last expansion, we got the new and improved talent tree. In this expansion, we get additive talent tree. It's a lot more than that. But yeah, is this route you see yourselves taking going forward, just tweaking the talent trees in different ways, expansions after expansion? Yeah, it's likely that in Midnight, as the level cap goes up again, we'll probably add talent points to some or potentially all the existing trees spread across each class spec and hero. Wait, that's super interesting. That is really... They kind of said they weren't going to do that when Dragonflight came out, right? Isn't that the opposite of something that's evergreen? Let's let him continue. We don't want to keep adding all new trees and new systems every time, but we are trying to manage that complexity growth. Being mindful of the lessons of last time, we had an open-ended talent tree 15 years ago where just the alternative to hero talents might have been something like just add 10 points, add two new rows to the class of spec trees. Then on one hand, that might seem simpler in a sense, but it actually would have been an incredible amount of extra com combinatoric complexity to layer onto the system, and we know where that path leads. It has led us to take a giant step back and prune out half the trees. We want to manage that more carefully this time. All right. How big is the War Within compared to Dragonflight? How big is the War Within map? I can't say it's the top of my head. I, said, I, I didn't even read map. How big is the War Within? I was like, what the fuck are you mean? Vertical. Uh, yes, exactly. There are a couple zones that are a bit smaller of a footprint, but it's... Okay, whatever. We don't want... Uh, how do you feel it's going so far? This is a personal thing, but playing around the alpha, I suddenly missed being, not being able to fly. Which is the thing you always said. You want people to explore the zone on foot. Now I'm like, ah, the whimsical days of running around on a ground mount and seeing everything. Yeah, I mean, you could have that, but then the zone would have to be a quarter of the size. I think this is better. Yeah, IGN's brutal right now. This is bad. Would dynamic flying become the standard? Is there going to be a move away from having ground mounts as rewards from big content? No. Really? Yeah. It's no more so than it's been in the case of World of Flying, right? Before Dragonflight at all, cer certainly flying around at 310 speed was better than being on the ground when you can do it whenever. If we have prestige mounts, generally we try to make them ones that can fly, and of course they'll be able to do so dynamically now. But there are still key PvP mounts, dungeon mounts, and other things that just we make cool terrestrial creatures that people want to put on a saddle and ride around sometimes. Facts. This guy, this guy really hit him with a fucking really? <laughs> I think some people were bummed out about the Mythic Plus rewards being ground-based because you can't show them. Dude, what am I reading? All right, uh, here's the new profession, or the new uh, spell book, by the way. Yo. Yeah. It's fucking sick. It's really nice to work with, too. All right, here we go. Uh, can Horn have a big beam? Ah, oh, IGN. Can Horde have a big B mount, please? I wanted to ask about that too. Is the same customization system using dragons? It seems to work out pretty well. Airplane, whatever we're calling that in the war with then. Okay. Uh, are you still happy with planning to bring the Mythic Plus rotation that includes some old dungeons in that cycle? Yep, that's been asked already. Do you expect that later in the expansion you might add other new dungeons with major patches as you have before? And as you said you were going to do in Dragonflight and never did, by the way. Uh, nothing specific to announce right now, but we love adding new dungeons, clearly. We know it's a great vehicle for storytelling and just for expanding the Mythic Dungeon Pool. Okay. Guys, Mega Dungeons don't count. And that's not what he was referring to, and they said they would want to do that. Uh. Can you say how many raids are the plan for the War Within? We don't have a specific number we're committing to at this point, but I think it's likely that by the end of the year, we've been in a habit of releasing these fun roadmaps. We'll probably lay one out for 2025. We want to be as flexible with how... I mean, there's got to be at least three. It's the question... I really doubt we'll get four in an 18-month expansion. I think the if you can get three in an 18-month expansion, that is going to be the most raids or as much raids in a two-year cycle as we've ever gotten, and I think that's perfectly fine. I vaguely remember you all saying at some point that there are three chapters of the World Soul Saga would move along a little bit faster clip. Are they roughly expecting War Within to be roughly two-ish years away the Dragonflight was? Will it go faster? What should people expect? Great question, actually. I, IGN pulling it back at the end here. There are a lot of variables there. We are trying to, and really a huge focus of ours, and hopefully this shows, is delivering more than ever for our community and ensuring that there aren't lulls or gaps in content. There's always stuff to do in WoW, and we want to strike a balance between that 
and also moving our story forward at a reasonable pace. I can't say definitely. I think I said this at BlizzCon too. We're not looking to engage in expansion shrinkflation where we are just pivoting or trying to repackage what what the offering is at a fundamental level. We're going to have an 11.1. We're going to have an 11.2. We're going to have new outdoor spaces that you're going to in raids. And beyond that, we're still figuring out all the details and the pacing that makes sense. When you join the, join the war within, yes, it's the first chapter of this big epic World Soul Saga. It's also an awesome WoW expansion. So definitely, I mean, that makes sense. They wouldn't want to get caught in an interview saying the expansion will definitely be 18 months. The reason everyone is gleaning that is because they said the World Soul Saga will be done before 2030. And the only way that is possible is by doing that. Uh, so, yeah, but no 11.3. If it's an 18-month expansion, there would not be an 11.3, right? That's too long, yeah. Also, 18-month expansion is kind of... So, the word on the street right now is... Well, I mean, just based on their roadmap as well, saying that the expansion is coming out late summer, they're trying to get this bitch out by August, right? Or September, something like that. Because that's, I mean, that's literally the end of summer, right? Somewhere around there. Uh, and it says it's coming out before fall. So th why would they be releasing this one early if they weren't planning on just having an earlier, uh, earlier cycle anyway? Uh, you briefly mentioned Mist and Pandaria Remix second ago. I'm curious, why do you miss specifically... I can say there are no major lore easter eggs. There's no war within Driven Thematic. Honestly, Mist is cool. Pandaria is a really fun sandbox, and it's great to invite people back to experience it in an all-new way. Yep. So we shouldn't be reading too much into either that or Season of Discovery for the war within lore. What? I think the only thing we haven't deeply covered here is Delves. Eh. Are you expecting players to do all the Delves every week or a Delve a day? So what gives with the three-day early access situation? Here we go. I feel like I've seen criticisms of that, having to pay $40 extra to be there on launch day. Yeah, that's exactly how it is, by the way. Like, I hate that this is phrased as early access. In reality, when games have early access, it feels more like if you don't pay extra, you get the game late, rather than you bought the deluxe edition, so you get the game a little early. Like, the actual launch is definitely when anyone has access to the game, and anything after that is playing the game late. Uh... So, super bullshit, in my opinion. We're not reconsidering it at this point, certainly. We have sold Epic Editions with that expectation, of course. It is a bit of an experiment. We are looking to see how we can maximize the value of each different expansion tier. It used to be that you needed to get the Heroic Edition to get a boost, for example, in Dragonflight. We actually now make the boost part of the baseline offering. We haven't raised the overall prices, but when we added more value to the baseline, we were looking for things we can add to the higher tiers to keep them a compelling value proposition. Hey, at least an honest answer. Sometimes it's weird when you're making games to get into the nuts and bolts of how much things cost, but that actually completely makes sense. He's basically saying, hey, we need to make these things that you're paying $20 for have value. So we're giving you value, but also that value is weird. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Now we're definitely super mindful of fairness, competitive concerns, feels bad concerns around any form of early access. Yeah, that's the main thing. It feels so fucking bad. And the way you were trying to position this is with regard to your point about rating concerns, really it's pulling in that first reset period that we've already established, which is to say until Tuesday in NA. Endgame weekly quests won't be available. Endgame dungeons, rogue dungeons won't be available. Profession weekly countdowns won't be available. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, all you can do is level. We understand that. But it's still fucking weird. Like, I don't know. I've had this feeling happen to me where I was really looking forward to playing a game, usually off stream. And then I'm ready to play and I'm like counting down the hours of that previous day waiting for it to come out at like 9 p.m. And then I open up Twitch and some fucking dumbass streamer got given some kind of early press copy and they were picked in their special and they get to stream the game a day early. And it fucking kills my hype for the game. I hate it. I hope no company ever does that. Uh, and I just, I don't know. I, I, I think this is just going to make people feel that. Oh, you can't afford the crazy edition or it's not a reasonable purchase for you. Well, then fucking here. You get to watch people play this expansion and experience the story before you do. It's just fucking corny. Yeah, it's the Squidward meme. <laughs> haven't you played Alpha already and we haven't? 
Yeah, I mean, then, well, first of all, Alpha's, like, not a game release. But, yeah, same shit. I would rather never be given something early if it meant that everyone could have it. I always feel that way. Like, if someone gives me access to those games early, you better believe I'm not going to sit there and just fucking not play it. But I hate being in the position as a content creator or not where you can't play it. But, like, I think every single one of you would agree that if you had access to play it early, you would also be happy to play it, right? You just don't want to feel... You don't want to be the Squidward meme of being left out. I'm never a fan of anything like that. I've also... Every single time I've been given special drops or gift to sub campaigns that has been available to specific creators and not all of them, I have been very vocally against that ever being the case and everyone should have access to everything like that. And they do that now. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think stuff like that... I, I, I have felt the feeling of that being awful and I hope it applies to no one. But I'm also not a strong enough protester to where, just being completely honest with you, where like, let's just say Blizzard's like, hey, you can play Alpha early for two days. And I'm just like, you know, wait, sorry, Blizzard. Is every single person who plays WoW getting access to WoW for these two days? No. All right. Well, no, then. Like, that's not going to fucking change anything. It just means that I'm mad and sad. <laughs> right? Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do. Uh, okay, yep, yeah, so this I IGN continues to be pretty brutal. All right, you guys have any questions about this? Thoughts, concerns, alpha things you want me to look at? I'm not looking at raid bosses today. Here, even while we do this, I'll even throw on a video of me dragon riding. It's a video I have called Flying Randomly, where I fly randomly. So you can get the experience of me being in alpha without me actually being there. I'll even cover up my camera of me sitting there. Look, it just looks like it's me. I'm just flying, guys. Hey. Are we going to go over the new Monk Talon trees? We already did. Look at me. I don't know how I found my way down here, but here we are. We made it. Max, are you disappointed that the shitty Windwalker Stomp maintenance buff is still in the game? I am. Uh, definitely the thing I like the least about the talent tree is Jadefire Stomp, but it is a different ability. So it's on a 15 second cooldown now instead of uh, whatever second cooldown, and it no longer resets. It's a button you press and that's it. So you don't have to worry about standing in it. Uh, and it's on a shorter cooldown. So it, it doesn't feel nearly as bad as it did before. Yeah. It is still a maintenance. Well, it's not a maintenance buff anymore-ish because it's just a... It's a... You press the button and you get a buff from it, but it's not like a button you constantly reset and have to press every 10 seconds. You just press it on cooldown, which is way better. Do you have a different opinion of Conduit for Windwalker after playing? I do. I do, actually. It, uh... So, remember how I told you that, like, hero talents need to make you feel like the the thing they're trying to, to do? Like, you need to feel like you're a Conduit of the Celestials? You do. Like, you see the little guys spawning and doing stuff all the time. And some of their effects are actually pretty meaningful. Like, Yulon comes out and, like uh reduces the cooldown on all of your major spells for like eight seconds so you like have like a mini pop-off window and then when you actually channel the spell it does a ton of damage so you don't mind channeling it and when you press it again it invokes the celestials and they all do their ability it just looks if you're down with the august celestials it just looks fucking sick 
and you feel like that. As opposed to Shadow Pan, which I think Shadow Pan is a little bit more thematic for me, but like there's no actual theme. Like you have no idea you're playing a Shadow Pan monk. Uh nothing. So, like, you could just completely ignore the tree and it just happens. And I don't know. I think that's a problem. I think they need to fix that. Can we have normal and dragon riding in the beginning of the expansion? Yeah, so basically, every it's called dynamic flight, but every single mount dragon rides now. Uh, Like, every flying mount. But you can toggle that off. If you want to just auto fly somewhere, you can't. Max, I think you got the evoker thing backwards, by the way. You can be, for example, a dwarf evoker but n and not a paladin drakthir. Wait, really? How the fuck does that make sense? That's... You have it backwards, I think. It's definitely that we, we found the drakthir and they learned how to do all of our classes. I don't know how the fuck a dwarf would learn how to, like, breathe fire and shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Max, do you think other specs talents will be revamped like Monk? Yeah, others have. Resto, Feral, uh, Rhett got a bunch of changes. Uh, Moonkin, I think, got a decent amount. Or maybe that was just the class tree. The Warriors got a Warriors got a bunch of uh changes. Prez Evoker got a bunch of changes. Mistweavers got it. But yeah, I think so. I think by the end of this alpha beta cycle, I think basically every spec except for ones that were freshly reworked and are already good by the end of the expansion will all get one. Did you rank the new hero talents? Kinda, yeah. Max, do you know of anything regarding hunters in alpha? That's such a big question. I don't know. They're there. Of all of the ones that we haven't seen yet, the ones that I'm looking forward to the most are Archon and Stormbringer. I feel like Stormbringer is going to be fucking goaded. It's got to be. Totemic is going to stink for sure, unfortunately. Uh, Fatebound is going to stink just based off name. Same with Felsguard. Deathstalker might be cool. Word up said he saw a few totemic abilities and they looked pretty good. Link. Let's see. 10.2.7 Dark Heart PTR development notes. Updated UI. Ooh, and accessibility. Several changes have been made to improve the experience of finding Mythic Plus groups in the pre made group finder. Filter options will now save between sessions. Language filters denied applications will now save between refreshes when previewing an ensemble. Because they completely remade the group finder UI, by the way. That's what they're referring to here. These are just like alterations to that. When previewing, this is, this is nothing. Fuck yeah. Uh, after playing Conduit with Monk, 
Uh, does it move on the tier list after playing it? Nah, it's still like kind of mid. Shadow Pan is. I completely agree. Shadow Pan is still kind of bad for sure. Both of these are confirmed by playing them. Man, Templar can only be moved up after playing it. Holy fuck, Templar slaps. Dude, you know what? Instead of instead of me doing dragon riding while we're talking, let's just fucking let's look at some Ret Paladin gameplay. Hammer up. Hammer's up, boys. Hammer dunker. Hammer dunker's clapping. Hammer dunker's beating shit the fuck up right now. Why are you the only person doing damage? Because I'm fucking huge. Windwalker did way more than this. I don't think damage right now is really relevant at all. The only reason I have re recount on is to see how much of my damage is coming from certain abilities. He's doing no damage. It's all the aug. Nah, buddy. All right, boss time. Oh, no. One more pull. One more pull. Here we go. Hammer dunker. Come on. Oh, my God. The power. The power. Now you're going to press Wake of Ashes. It becomes a hammer. Five holy power spend. Blast. I have threat. Look at my health. I have fucking threat. I'm blasting. Oh, my God. Oh, use Divine Toll. I forgot to use Divine Toll. That's not good. <laughs> Little default UI diff right there, boys. Fucking blasting so hard, forgot to press that button. <laughs> All good. And then I use it late. Even worse. Oh, no, I think we had to wait for someone to come back or something. So it ended up coming up for the boss. I waited a full minute to press my wings and uh, reckoning. Oh, no, I waited for this to press another time. Let's go, boss. Old man's UI, button so big you can see him from the moon. This was my version of like making a live retail week or a string, but just with default UI. All of my buttons are bound down at the bottom, but I just put extra abilities on top and these are just purely for seeing them visually and I never look at the bottom. Worked just fine. I felt like I was playing pretty good after I got used to it. Animations look super neat too. Yeah, you're just a hammer. You're a hammer dunker. You dunk hammers. That's all you do. Why not have binds on the middle one instead of double? Because I don't want to... This is the only thing I'm looking at. Why would I want to see binds on this? It would just look worse. Right? Like this, I'm not looking at anything down here. I could just hide this. No, no button down here is relevant to me except for ones that I put up here. And I, I could. I just I didn't bother. I mean, it's there and I'm not looking at it, but you could just hide them. Glad others get to see the little Drakthir drive-by from the scale commander. Wait, where was that? Yeah, it's weird to see things that are marked with bombardment. I don't know. That, that hero talent is still like interesting to me. Bro, dropping the hammer does so much damn.
This looks like a fun dungeon. This is an amazing dungeon. This is like the most I could ever be impressed by doing a dungeon the first time. It has everything. It has flavor. It has really fun pulls. It has theme. It has funny named abilities like career stagnation and free swag and cash cannon. Those are actually real abilities in here. There are bees that cast spells like Bee Steel Wrath and Bezooka. There's a boss in the beer wing called IPA that we're about to fight. Does it have creativity in terms of count? I have absolutely no fucking idea what the count is, but because uh, we're not doing Mythic Plus, but uh, it is non-linear. You can go in multiple directions if you want to. Oh, man. Oh, damn. The potty, the potty C Discord is... Someone added me in the potty C Discord and said, at maximum cursor question mark. Bro, that... What are you... What are you fucking... What are you doing? Oh, is this the one that... That he... That Tally mass grip? No, nah, it's not. Dude, I want to play Alpha so bad right now, man. Fuck. It's down. I wonder, did they flag our accounts yet? Has anyone been flagged for Alpha yet? I don't know if you get, like, an email or, like, a... Are player HP levels similar to Legion in the Alpha? I don't know. I mean, yeah, throughout expansions, until we have another item level squish, I mean, you're just gonna, you're gonna see that. But also, I want to say that is something that people talk about often that I've never cared about. Like, we could be doing 6 million damage or, or 60 damage. It doesn't, like, it's completely irrelevant to me, like, what the numbers are. They're, it's all relative, so it doesn't matter. Max, what is it? I got a WhatsApp from Holly Longsdale with a link to sign up to the alpha. You just need to create an account on this crypto casino and I'm in. Yeah. Lucky, lucky guy. I wish I got that WhatsApp. <laughs> yeah, totally risk-free. Use Divine Toll. Come on, use Divine Toll. Dude, I keep getting procs. Oh my god, the procs. The procs, dude. It's like on this pull... What is happening with my... Here. On this pull, I got a... Alright, I like pop my shit, right? When you press Wake of Ashes, it turns into a five holy power spender called like fucking hammer machine or something. Right, so you'll see me do that right here. But then you can also get random procs of it for how many hammers you're calling down. So, like, right now I press it, which now I have it. And you're going to see I'm going to spend five holy power. Look how much damage it does. Look at the mob's health. Ready? Three, two, boom. Fucking, you can see those, you see those hammers falling from the ceiling? And then I got a proc of it, so I can press it again, which I was confused about because that hasn't happened yet. Then I just press it. I'm like, wait, this thing's still up. You get a free use. Fucking, boom. you're just fucking flying. Doing infinite damage. I have threat on everything. All good. Yeah, it's like a fucking nuke.
Yeah, I should hit for a mill. God, this spec is so fun, man. Give him the hammer. Oh, no. The hammer didn't come down before they died. I don't know what other changes Rhett's got. I know that they got a... Uh... So if you look at their beta talent tree, tools, talent calculator, Rhett, I saw that like uh, Truth's Wake is now just baked into Wake of Ashes. And now they replace that talent with one that increases your all of your dots when it's up. And it extends the duration when it crits. But I just chose to play the basic Mythic Plus build now, but not pick this and just pick Divine Arbiter instead. With that last video. Max Discord DMs for the link to data mined totemic stuff. Uh okay. It's towards the bottom. Hmm. I dude, looking at MMO champ makes me not want to look at MMO champ anymore. It's under shaman general changes. You know what? Can we just wait until? Scroll down to talent 1 through 12. Is that... Where... You passed it? I mean... My brain's about to explode looking at this shit. Warlock class changes. This one's shaman class changes. Like, what is this? Oh... I see. Talent 1 through 12. These are the leaked totemic things. Okay, okay. We finally found it. These are still under construction. When Fury Totem has a cooldown now and does something interesting when you drop it. Okay, that's kind of sick. For Enhance, at least. But I'm assuming that's something that doesn't involve... Read Talent 1. Your spells and ability have a chance to call down a Spire Totem, increasing your main stat by 2%. Spire Totem stack on top of each other. Enhance, when the Totem reaches 3 stacks, your next use of uh, your spenders activates the Totem, causing it to hurl an elemental wave at your target for X damage, causing Y damage to nearby enemies. Resto, when the Totem reaches 3 stacks, when you use Healing Wave, Healing Surge... Uh, that sounds fine. Uh... Okay. Uh, enhancement. When Searing Totem deals damage, the cooldown of Fire Nova is reduced. Resto when it heals, the cooling down of Healing Stream and Cloud Burst reduced by three. Enhancement. When your Spire Totem reaches three stacks, your next spender consumes the totem, causing it to hurl an elemental wave. Isn't that the same thing as before? Healing Rain is now a totem. Wind Fury Totem has a cooldown and does something cool when you drop it. Healing Stream Totem and Cloud Burst Totem does a chain heal when dropped. New weapon imbue effects. Resto Shaman gets a shield imbue ability. Totem stacks up to four times and is more powerful and easier to get three stacks. Talent reduces the cooldown of pro totem projection by three seconds and the cooldown of totemic recall by 30. Chain lightning and chain heal totem. <laughs> you guys read this and were like, that seems really cool. Am I crazy? This sounds fucking dog shit well I mean we'll wait till it's out but yeah, it looks pretty bad hopefully it's good let me ask Blizzard when we're supposed to be flagged for alpha Maybe I'll get an answer.
All right, going back to my dungeon gameplay. Beautiful. You don't want to get final stinged, by the way. That shit hurts bad. Max, did you ask Blizzard about defensive bloat? Nah, I didn't. I would like to, though. I was not given an interview. Why? I don't know. I asked them I'd be down for a new one, and they said, uh, we'll get you looped in for some of the next ones since you've had a couple more opportunities than others. We wanted to provide them to other creators that haven't gotten one in a while or ever. And I think that's completely fair. We fuck with that. We like spreading that shit out. Yo, boys. What do you guys want to do for the rest of today? Alpha's you know, supposed to come out tomorrow, so... I'm going to be spending all day on that. But today, I kind of went over everything that I already already showed. I could move my cursor. That would be fun. Play Plunderstorm. Double XP. Dude, I said I was going to do that earlier today. I could still be telling the truth. Dude, Plunderstorm is sick. I love Plunder, man. I'll do some plunder. Dude, I don't know if it's just me, but I've queued a random solo plunder game. Uh, Like, probably, like, five or six times off stream over the last week. I'll just, like, randomly sit on my computer and just fucking slam a thing while I have something to do in 30 minutes or something. And I don't know if this is because of, like, where it is in the season. But, like, I think the only people playing it are PvEers. Like, people who do not want to fight you. I, every single game that I've played, I won all six of those games, and I probably got 20 kills or more in each one of them. You slaughter people, because the only people still playing it are, like, trying to finish their Renown track. Really? Like, outside of just random people who are playing it for fun every now and then, but, like, there was already four weeks of that. So it's just absolute slaughter. But maybe it was just the games I ran into or something. Because I played solo before and you would still win most of the time. But, like, you would fight people that, like, knew what they were doing. I, in those six games, I did not find a single player that looked like they played that game before. And I think that's, because it makes sense, though, right? Like, wouldn't it make sense, especially during double XP week for people to finish their renown and shit? It's probably going to be a fucking, fucking massacre. Shout out to the couple people I gave I gave wins, though. Every now and then, uh, when I'm at the end of the game and I see someone, like, five levels under me and they're the last person, I'll just run around with them and I'll, I'll like, try to... I, like, they're, they're trying to kill me and I'm trying to talk to them. Like, I don't think they're really at... They're mad at me. They're just scared. That's why they're attacking. And I'm just like, hey, have you won a game yet? Hello. And if they say yes, then I, I kill them. But if they say no, then I usually... I usually let them win. Get a pick if they want it. I let a level 2 bush win yesterday for managing to get top 2. Yeah, that's that's a fucking... Bro, getting to the end of the game as a level 2 is hard as fuck. Dude, maybe we could try that today. Max, did you watch the tourney yesterday at all? No. I was playing Alpha. That's why I didn't... I was asked to be a captain for that tournament. 
my agent said that Twitch Rivals or someone reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to be a captain in this tournament? And I'm like, that sounds fun. And I'm like, what's the date? And they're like, oh, the second day that you guys will have alpha access. And it's like, uh, the fucking, of course not. Like, why the fuck would I do that? It's like the worst spot, worst, worst timing ever. This is a new dungeon. Yeah, this is. Yeah, we're fighting bees. Guys, is Shogun really worth watching? I keep hearing really good things about it. I'm like, I'm close to starting it. Like, give me, give me a show that you confidently could say that Shogun is on the same tier of that you know that I like. early Game of Thrones? You think Shogun is as good as early Game of Thrones? That is a... I, that, by the way, I'm not saying you're wrong because I haven't seen it, but that is an insane statement. If that's true, then holy fuck, I need to watch that like right now. Holy moly. Max, thoughts on the mage hero talent trees from an arcane perspective? Seems like they got giga shafted. What are the two that arcane can do? Arcane is spell slinger and sun fury. Um, I've only seen fire gameplay for sun fury, so it's actually possible that like arcane is bad with it. But Fire Sun Fury is incredible. I I'm not sure about Arcane specifically. But like Sun Fury looks like one of the best in the entire game. But it's very possible that a hero talent could be amazing for one spec and bad for another. I've on I've honestly only really looked at uh Sun Fury from the perspective of Fire. Mainly because I'm too stupid to understand Arcane. But Spellslinger also looked really strong. It didn't seem that cool, but it definitely looked really strong. Max, there's no shot you're reading subtitles? What do you mean? Like, I, I've watched a couple foreign language shows that I really enjoyed, actually, that... That, uh... That you just read subtitles and you didn't listen to it dubbed. I don't mind that at all. Foreign language show means anime. I, like, almost never watch anime. I'm thinking of, like... I watched that one Money Heist show in Spanish because that was like the OG language. I watched Dark in German. That was hype. Loved that. Um, Squid Game. I don't know. All that shit. I think listening to dubs is insane. So anytime you can listen to it in the original language, it seems ideal to me. Max Wowhead just put out a tally interview, or is it, is it a new one or the one you talked about? I think it's the one I already talked about. I believe. Max, where is that shaman info you were just reading? On MMO Champion, I highly recommend to not go there, though. Dude, this is the best time of year, man. 
I'm so excited. Just every Wednesday, there's like a new alpha slash beta build for the next four or five months. Just constant information. It is perfect for my channel. What is it, Max? Lol, why? Are dubs insane? The native language does nothing for you if you don't understand it. So you're saying reading is better than dubs. For me, yeah. Like, I don't know. When you listen to a dubs, maybe really well done dubs that I haven't heard before, but it usually misses the mannerisms of the character and the voice acting doesn't equal the acting and it doesn't seem like it's coming from the person. Uh, so maybe I could get behind like dubs that were done really well and I just haven't experienced those. But yeah, I mean, I would rather listen to the original language and hear the 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 actual actor speaking rather than someone who's voice acting over them usually. And the mouth being off is, yeah, their mouth being off of what they're saying is like really distracting. Will Alpha be playable for some people tomorrow? As far as I know, Alpha is coming up tomorrow. Uh, I was told that the creators that... Or I think I just said in our little cheat sheet for what we were supposed to do and not do on Alpha over the last few days. It, I believe we will be getting access, I think. Um, and then I know that they're also spreading a very wide net and giving a lot of other people access and Ian said in an interview that that would be done at random they're just randomly pulling people in uh so hopefully hopefully as many of you guys get in as you can that would be sweet also may I say and I know this doesn't mean a lot coming from me because I was given the opportunity to do the alpha thing but I really do feel for the streamers that were unable to like, if you were a streamer, content creator, and you didn't make or you didn't pass whatever checks you had to make to be invited to the thing over the last few days, I would feel devastated and really left out if I was left out. And I, I, I feel bad for anyone who was. And I wish more people got to do it. Yeah, I, I'm not sure of, like, a list of people. I know, I think Kalamazi wasn't able to do it. Uh, I'm not sure. List of how many, but yeah. Not inviting Kalamazi is wild. Yeah, Kalamazi has, like, decent viewership, but also, very importantly, is Kalamazi is the exact kind of streamer you want in your alpha, right? Like, I kind of cover everything, but a lot of those creators that were in there are, like, specifically play one class or spec. And those are, like, the exact people you want. Because if you play that spec, maybe you watch that streamer, and you have something to look forward to, because you play a demo lock, and you want to see exactly how demo lock is impacted by the alpha and what changes there were and how the hero talents felt to play. And, like... Maybe it's hard to find that information without that person there, right? And I personally think Kalamazi is a really, really good... I think Kalamazi might be one of the best versions of those class of creators that exist for different specs. So him being out was definitely uh, interesting and unfortunate. Class creator tier list. Yeah, let's just rank them, right? I mean, what could what could happen negatively from that? It's like that one guy on Twitter that wanted to make a tier list of all of the WoW e-girls that are on Twitter. And they're all cheering him on as if that was a good idea. And then who would have fucking guessed it? Someone got really fucking mad and he deleted his Twitter. <laughs> or like, privated his Twitter for a while. Because it was, in fact, a really fucking stupid idea. <laughs> but Dratnos is S tier. Dratnos is S tier. Dratnos is the best WoW creator. At least for PvE. 
Peekaboo is probably the best WoW creator because he's got like unmatched energy. Um, and I just uh, he's like a he's like a streamer created in a lab or some shit. But like for PVE only, Dratnos is fucking way better than everybody. I'm pretty sure. Um, Max, so there's anti-spider mode, but what if I'm afraid of bees? Fucking good point. What do you do in this dungeon if you hate bees? What would be the funniest thing that they could have a filter on in this dungeon that turned the bees into something else? Corgis, ducks, children. <laughs> that was good. Uh, okay, here we go. What is the uh, what's on Wowhead here? Let's we'll see. Someone said raid boss models were data mined. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, you can literally on the alpha, you can open the dungeon journal and scroll through the raid tab and like, you can see what every single boss looks like. Also, almost every mechanic is there outside of mythic mechanics. Like it's a fully formed dungeon journal. That is a process for other days though. I even have, I did like a shitty recording of myself just like scrolling through every ability on every boss so we could talk about it, but that sounds cursed. I don't want to look at the one on Wowhead. I'm just going to do it when I'm on the alpha tomorrow or Friday. I, I, I don't, I, I'm, my brain is fucking cooked from talking and thinking enough so far today that I am, I'm, 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 I'm on fumes at the moment. So we're not, we're not doing anything important. Max, I hate bees IRL, but I'm obsessed with beekeeping videos. We aren't the same as spider haters. Yeah, but you don't characterize all bee. Dude, that is kind of true. I also don't really fuck with bees in real life. Like, like if I saw a bee, like, I know they mean well, but, like, I don't want them close to me kind of kind of shit. Um, but, like, I would find it really interesting to, like, look at bee stuff on, like, a YouTube video. But, like, spiders are definitely different. Like, I don't want a spider close to me, and I don't want to know anything about spiders. Like, oh, you have eight legs? Cool, bro. Fuck over there. Go sit over there. Away from me. They mean well. Don't they? I'm pretty sure bees are, like, super lit. Like, they do almost exclusively good things for the environment. It's wasps that are kind of assholes. But maybe that's me getting sucked into bee propaganda. Maybe I've... Maybe that's not true, and a bee, a bee taught me differently. I am, a, I am a, unfortunately, just a shill for big honey. Big Honey was my high school nickname. No, the fuck it wasn't. No, it was not. That is not fucking true, buddy. What would that even mean? You're like a big sweetie? I could see Big Honey being a good basketball name for someone who's really tall, like a big center. But real smooth. You know? It is Nikola Jokic. Wait, Jokic's nickname is Big Honey? I've never heard that ever. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, you guys are all saying that. I guess that makes sense. I mean, he's a fucking beast, by the way. It's weird that Nikola Jokic does not get the... This is. I know some of you guys hate sports talk, but 
yeah, this this dude's about to win his third MVP. Probably should have four. And he won the title last year. He's probably going to win it again. Uh, and he's just a such an interesting, really cool basketball player. He's, like, not super athletic looking at least. Like, obviously, he's an NBA player. He's athletic. But, like, compared to other NBA players, he's not. He looks like a slightly out of shape, just like tall white dude. And he just is a fucking beast. Like he's like the smartest player, like insane passer. Puts up like 30 with 10 assists every game. If he doesn't want to score one game, he'll just only get assists and play defense. He's just a fucking beast. And, oh, dude, you want to hear the best part? He won, like, the NBA Finals last year, and they were interviewing him, and he's like, yeah, I just want to I just want to fucking go home to, like, uh, to Serbia and play with my horses and, and go see my family. He was just like, he was just like, this is my 9-to-5 job. Let me leave now. We just won. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so fucking good. Or Slovenia, sorry. Yeah, Is, is it Luka who's one of them? Wait, which one's? Oh, I forget where they're from. I thought Nikola Jurkic was Serbian. It's Luka that's Slovenian. Yeah, yeah, okay, I had it right. I had it right. Y'all are fucking gaslighting me. All right, anyways, enough sports talk. Max, did I miss you going over the Void Weaver Priest talent tree? Yeah. Apparently it owns. Not only does it own gameplay-wise, but I have a video of its gameplay too like it looks sick i got this from a. I got a leak here this is from a legendary shadow priest named franklin look at this you're just a shadow warlord look at these little beams here we go wait he hasn't done it yet there we go void torrent now we're in the mode now we're a shadow god we're making that riff. That riff's about to collapse and pop eight times right now. Boo, 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 boo. Very shadow. Seems cool. And shadow, you already have one great hero talent, and you could potentially have another one. You could become one of a few specs in the game that have... M you can become one of the few specs in the game that have multiple insanely good hero talents. And I think there's very few of those. It's like... It's it's all mage specs. It's Ret Paladin. Uh, is there a, an Evoker spec that has both Scale Commander and Ruby Adept? Is that Dev? Okay, so Devastation. Devastation, all mage specs, Ret Paladin, and, like, that's it. So, like, potentially Shadow Priest, right? Like, you have the possibility of having that, and, like, almost no specs in the game do. Yeah, dude, all mage specs. Fucking surprise. Who would have guessed? Wait, I think I I, I, I mouse over my, my damage breakdown here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here we go. Hammer Dunker's attacks here. Well, why am I holding this on Hammer Dunker's? Whenever I first up... When do I click on it for the first time? Do I have this open for minutes? And I'm just talking over it? Oh, no. Oh, I just found it. So that was my breakdown for this dungeon. Divine Storm, Wake of Ashes, Blade of Justice, and then Empyrean Hammer and Hammer of Light. So 20% of my damage at minimum is coming from my hero power. That is a very... Or hero talent. That is that is a very strong hero talent tree. Like, that's just two of the abilities that it is. Like, there's probably other ways that it busts your damage, too. Your Divine Storm is way lower than I would have thought. Uh, there's a reason for that, because either one of these, I forget which one of these is the five Holy Power Spender, but you're literally spending Holy Power on this instead of Divine Storm. Does that make sense? 
like you would normally be divine storming with more of your holy power but you just actually have another holy power spender now which is you know so all of the damage you did here with Empyrean Justice or Bla Empyrean Hammer and Hammer of Light at least with Empyrean Hammer I'm pretty sure that's the button uh that's just holy power you would be spending on divine storm It is very hype. Did they make the mastery change on Alpha? Yes. So Rhett's mastery, I, I forget. Wait, okay. So what's Rhett's mastery now? Because I read what it was yesterday on Alpha, but I actually don't know what it is now. It's just percent holy damage. Okay, it was still percent holy damage on, on Beta. Did they just buff the amount? Did they just make it give you a lot more per mastery point or something? It has a second effect now. Oh, yeah, it did have a second effect. I forget what the fuck it was. It's like your attacks do bonus holy damage as well, I think, on top of... It went from 8 to 12 baseline. Wait, so they buffed it by 50%? Is that a real number? They buffed the mastery by 50%? <laughs> That is insane that it was that low, right? We stack verse now. Oh, say less. I know, I know your pain. I played a little bit of red this expansion, but yeah, uh, I know your pain. Getting a stacking verse means all your stats fucking suck. So hopefully, Windwalkers have haste now. Which is weird to think about. Not only does haste scale your Fist of Fury damage, but also haste is kind of necessary to make your rotation feel nice. Which is good. Like, that actually makes haste valuable. Wait, you see this Paladin tier set? Alright, let's see. We've seen all the other tier sets before. Let's see. We got a new tier set data mine, boys. W or L? Holy shit, look at those fucking shoulders. What the fuck? Okay, so the shoulders are a W for sure. You can make that work with plenty of other mogs in different colorways. You can make some wild shit happen. Or is that the cloak? It looks like it's the shoulders. Also, is they just they're just no helmet? You just you just become bald. I don't believe the helmet was done. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I didn't actually think that there wasn't a helm. You're just a bald guy. Like, I mean, that would be pretty hype, but... I That would be good for my kind of transmog. All right. Yeah, I think I've seen enough Wowhead for today, man. I'm fucking cooked. I am cooked. Exclusive interview, Tally. Yo, actually, I feel bad for Tally, kind of. I feel like they gave him nothing in that interview. Like, they seemed like they were just ready to get out. They were ready to just leave work for the day. That was the vibe for sure. I've never had an interview that felt like Tally's just did. I think they didn't like his questions. He had very reasonable and, in my opinion, very good questions. Like, really good questions.
Price is Right when? Oh, we can do more Price is Right. That was really fun, wasn't it? Some of you guys weren't here for that, but uh, I got access to uh, this company called Gaggle that has licensed rights and they sub license them to me of some old The Price is Right shows and soon to be Family Feud episodes from like the 70s. And you can watch them as a as a stream. There's like a guessing function to have everyone try to guess how much the things are. And then it has a leaderboard of chatters for who's the most, uh, the most, you know, the closest to the numbers. And well, and then it also shows how much it's increased due to inflation since then. It's pretty cool. It's really, we had a lot of fun. When we did it. I still have like three more episodes I can do. It nuked your last YouTube mod. Yeah, that was my fault. So on Twitch, so they sub license this to me, but on YouTube, they'll still like automatically take down your shit. On YouTube, you have to like pre-clear your channel to run certain copyright stuff. So I didn't like get my channel pre-cleared. So it nuked my YouTube mod. Uh, but I have it pre-cleared now. So we're good. Dude, my, 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 my channel like violently got shut down. It was like, if you try to click on my channel, it said like, you cannot watch the stream because they are, they are burglarizing content or some crazy shit like that. Oh, look at, look at this mechanic Lord right here. Let's go. Look at that. Look at me. Let's fucking go. And then I'm a melee and I can't touch the boss and I'm mad and I'm mad and I'm mad and I'm mad and I'm mad. That's like the only mechanic on this boss. If you get the thing, if you get the debuff, you got to jump in the middle to not kill everyone. What are those birds doing there? I don't know, bird stuff. What do birds normally do? They, I don't know, they fly? They're flying. Before you laugh, that was on purpose. My touch of death was lit up. Melee can't hit the boss here. And I'm like, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to touch of death this fucking idiot boss for running away from me and I don't care if I die. So I'm like, fuck it. I tried to roll in. I fucking, I popped a fuse right before I go in. I'm like spamming it and it just doesn't go off and I get stunned. I'm pissed. Not happy. Imagine they fix all these monk problems, but not the arming time on touch of death. True. It's always been a problem. That sounds like something that to me that could probably never be fixed. Even though it would definitely be nice. Looks like a nice themed dungeon. Yeah, you fall down and stuff. We like that. Oh, man. Monk cooldowns feel so good. Oh. Ah. So much banging. Dude, this is overall damage right now. Bro, this reset before this trash pull. This was like absolute perfection. This is everything you want. I had every cooldown up. Oh man, that like look how good Storm Earth and Fire feels now, man. You get like you press Rising Sun Kick, and now everything is reduced by one everything is reduced by one chi. You strike of the Wind Lord, which makes everything you do do 10% more damage for the next couple seconds. Proxy rushing Jade Wind does huge damage for one chi only. Fist of Fury for two chi, because we have that reduction. Whirling Dragon Punch to give yourself six stacks of teachings in the monastery. And then you get your free blackout kick. Which fucking pipes, by the way. Because you have six stacks. And then you're just fisting again, which does all of your damage, by the way. Fucking blasting. Mmm. Goddamn. Goddamn. And also, this is not working correctly. I should have more chi. 
there's a uh, expel harm is built into your tiger palm now, and that just wasn't working. So every 15 seconds, you just weren't getting an extra chi, which adds up over time. It's crazy how recount just works on all versions of WoW with little effort. Yeah, it always has. Uh, it's because it's just super basic. It's not uh, It's not trying to do too much. Details doesn't work because it's trying to be all extra and shit. Recount's just all about giving you just the damage. It's a man of the people. Max, have they at least made it less about Mythic Plus in terms of layout and more dungeon-like? What does that mean? What does that mean? Like, okay, I'm, let me try to guess what you're talking about. So, is it like a, you know, Black or a Black Rock Depths or what was it? BRD, is that what it's called? The dungeon with all... I'm just trying to run away from these mobs I have thread on here. Where you're talking about like where there used to be like fucking 30 dungeon bosses and that's what a real dungeon was. But now in shitty fucking dumb retail, everything's a fucking competitive pro gamer Mythic Plus thing. And now it's a... Uh, I think he's saying design the dungeon without Mythic Plus in mind. I mean, they're always going to design the Dungeons with Mythic Plus in mind because they should. Because probably 90% of the dungeons run throughout an expansion are done in the Mythic Plus format. Right? So not including that would be insane. But like even before Mythic Plus was a thing, there's not a massive difference on how dungeons are designed from, let's say, something like Warlords of Draenor or Mist of Pandaria compared to Legion. They're very similar. Um, and, and Mist of Pandaria and Warlords didn't have Mythic Plus. Uh... So I, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just kind of confused on what you mean. They had challenge modes though. Well, sure, but are, are we bringing this back that much, Max? Are they done designing Mythic Plus? Are they done designing dungeons for Mythic Plus and challenge modes, and are just they just designing them like normal dungeons again? Like I don't know, maybe you're making some kind of point like that, but it just kind of sounds like old man yelling at new things. I can't get over how good these Windwalker changes are. It's so fun to play. The only thing that I was not a fan of about Windwalker on the PTR is I had a higher opinion of Conduit of the Celestials. I have a lower opinion on Shadowpan after playing it. I have an extremely high opinion of how Monk plays with no hero talents whatsoever. In fact, it's currently better than it is on live and maybe better than it's ever been. And I've played Windwalker through every iteration. I think it's fucking insanely fun. I couldn't stop playing it. And they fixed so many problems. That being said, I'm not excited about either of our hero talents. Not to say that Monk is a class that needs a bunch of sprucing up from hero talents, but it definitely doesn't feel great that both of them are super, super fucking whatever. Dude, I just want to play this right now. Let me in, man. Max, are they done designing for the whole expansion? Yeah. It's completely done. Uh, Let's see. Would you play Season 4 if it had New Monk? Absolutely, yes. That's actually kind of the only thing that drives me to play the game nowadays if, if you really pull everything back. It's, it's actually just if I am looking forward to playing a specific spec. That is almost exclusively why I still play WoW ever. That's the only reason I played a lot of Mythic Plus last season is because I thought New Demon Hunter was fun. And it was. Why don't you play Havoc now then? I don't know. I got my fill. Hey man, you love that meal. You've been eating it. Why aren't you still... Like you've already eaten like... 
two full courses and you're full. Why don't you still eat? Well, I'm full. I don't know. It was really, really fun and new, but that doesn't mean it's going to last forever. I mean, I'd still log in and slam some Demon Hunter. It sounds pretty fun, but I'm not, I'm not like obsessively playing it like I was. God, I love Current Havoc. Holy moly. Havoc is kind of lacking defensives for higher keys, which is a bit bad. Uh, I'm going to throw a counterpoint out there and say it's kind of irrelevant. Which some people aren't going to want to hear. But when you're tuning classes defensives, I think the last thing you should consider is how classes are balanced defensively in an infinite scaling game mode that the point of infinite scaling you're referring to where Havoc's defensives actually become bad is only done by the smallest fraction of players you could possibly imagine. Like, Demon Hunter tankiness in raids is amazing. Demon Hunter's tankiness in pretty much any dungeon up to level, like, 28 is amazing. Is amazing. The only time that Demon Hunter defensives seem not good is when Demon Hunters are... Uh, is when Demon Hunters are, or any class in the game is trying to live something that shouldn't be lived. Where, like, the boss just yells every 15 seconds and you just need to have something up. So you need to be a verse stacking rogue or a mage with five defensive cooldowns or just the most ridiculous defensive stacking, which all that stuff in the game should probably be nerfed too rather than uh, buffing Demon Hunters defensives. But, like, in 99% of content that people do, Demon Hunters are very strong defensively. And it's just an extremely niche market that they're not like most people who do mythic plus there is aspirational content like like you have keystone master you have like a little bit higher than that that gives you a tier piece and then when you do all the 20s it gives you a portal to each dungeon and that's like this really cool thing that's on your character forever and people strive for that and above that there is a one percent achievement or 0.1% or something for, like, the highest rating. The amount of people that do more than the portals just for the end-of-season achievement is, like, you could not possibly imagine how little of a community it is and why it is, in quotes, not, like, paid a lot of attention to. Like, the high-key community has issues with a certain dungeon. If that, if that same ability isn't an issue on a 20 or a 22, Blizzard's not going to give a fuck because almost no one is interacting with it. Um, where, like, affixes is something they should pay attention to more, because affixes affect everyone. You can be doing 15s or 20s. Bolstering fucking sucks. Right? Uh, but, like, so if you ever wonder why they pay attention to specific things in Mythic Plus, it's usually because they, they focus on the things that affect everyone, rather than... Usually when you listen to streamers or you listen to Twitter, people who are doing Mythic Plus deep into the season, they're a very, very specific... Very niche, extremely microscopic, tiny community uh, that is overrepresented in terms of Twitter users and streamers as opposed to, as opposed to the rest of the game. Uh, and that's where you hear all these takes. So, like, that's why it feels like Blizzard isn't listening. Because it's like, from Blizzard's perspective, it is, like, the most... Not to say that they shouldn't make the game great for everybody all the time, but, like, you can understand why it's a lower priority. It also is the primary reason why augmentation is misunderstood by a lot of people who are on Twitch and Twitter a lot as to like how Blizzard thinks that they're getting positive feedback about this thing. Because if you look at where Aug was the biggest problem, it wasn't in 20s. You could do 20s without Aug easily. But like Aug became a necessity in Super High Mythic Plus and like the whole God Comp thing. Again, that it seemed if you're someone who's in Twitch right now or you pay attention to WoW Twitter a lot. It seemed like it was everywhere because it's all your favorite streamers talked about. But that is such an microscopic small representation of the entire community. And for most people, it was just like this cool new thing that they didn't care about. There's also a rating issue where this is kind of within Augmentation's player base, but 
rating as augmentation was significantly less fun than dungeons because uh, of the like computer spreadsheet usage of buffing people being like a big thing. Which actually, I, we haven't talked about that in a while. They need to fix that in The War Within. Like, Aug, I think the only thing that makes sense is in dungeons, you don't have to think about who's getting buffed. Like, Prescience is like a small buff, but like when you Ebb and Might, you Ebb and Might everyone. I think in Raid, you straight up need to pick four people that get Ebb and Might at the beginning of your pull, and it never goes on everyone else. On anyone else. I think the whole, like, proximity bullshit, the whole, like, making sure it's on the right people at the right time, not only makes that spec impossibly hard to tune and balance... Because if everyone was just forced on picking someone for the whole fight, the difference between the best players in the game the, who can optimize this the most and the average AUG raid player would be a lot smaller than it is now. Because right now what happens is the average AUG raid player just buffs like their top DPS on the fight. And the high level optimization literally makes sure that in every single Ebon Might window, the absolute best DPS in that 30 second window is being buffed. And the difference between those two things is fucking colossal. And if that's the case, it'll never be possible for it to not be extremely OP for the most optimized players in the world. And, or sorry, not and, or it will be tuned really low for the people that it's actually designed for to make it not the best thing in the game for that. So they just need to make that change. It would solve a ton of shit. Give your thoughts on the Paladin tier set bonus. Uh, our tier set bonus is data mined. I thought it was just... Oh, tier set appearance. Thing looks kind of whack. They have some talents that looked like they were totemic data mined. Yeah, I saw them. They look kind of ass. Max, can you tell me the name of the background you're using? It's just on Wallpaper Engine. Just type in Dragonflight. It'll show up. Dude, I need to change it to a War Within background, though. Let me see if I can uh, pull that up on Wallpaper Engine here. Not on stream, obviously. That would be extremely dangerous. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do you search on here? Uh, let me type the War Within. Discover. Search. <laughs> wallpaper engine contains a lot of anime wallpapers. Do you want to see anime wallpapers? And then you have two options. Show anime or hide anime. <laughs> if you guys respect your humanity, they're kind of not telling you the whole story here, but you want to hit hide anime more than you've ever want to hit anything else in your life if you knew better. Uh, <laughs> you will see some shit you'll never unsee if you press that. Because you're like, hmm, that's a weird, that's a weird thing. Like, why are they putting it like this? They might as well just say, do you want to see NSFW wallpapers? I don't know why they're spe specifying anime, even though all of it is anime, which isn't surprising. Uh, let's press hide anime. Search. The War Within. Does someone have an animated The War Within background? <laughs> uh, nah. There's a really cool Shadowlands one. So, Shadowlands had an awesome one. And it was animated. I don't know if I have to type animated or not let me see if i can do this here it is wait it went on the wrong screen god damn it there we go this was my shadow this was my wallpaper for a while let's see this isn't this fucking sick This is an insane wallpaper. So basically, I've gone back to back. I've done, like, the really, really cool Shadowlands one and then the Dragonflight one. And I need to, uh... I need to find one for... for the War Within, but there isn't one so far. Dude, 
doesn't a wallpaper engine eat your PC resources? Probably. There is an animated war within one. Okay, I'm going to search for it, but I just can't find it. Here. Uh, change wallpaper. Uh, the war within. Let's, let's find it, boys. The war within. Alright, I think I can show this on stream because it doesn't... I don't see crazy anime shit here, so we should be okay. Is it literally just the Anduin one? I, mean, I don't know. That's not sick. Look up Hallowfall. Wait, Hallow World of Warcraft, The War Within, Hallowfall concept art animated. Okay. Pretty fucking sick. Nice. We, we might keep this one for a while. This is on wallpaper engine? Yee. Dude, Hallowfall might be one of the coolest zones they've ever made. Is Hallowfall underground? Yeah, it's underground, and they use this giant fucking crystal as the sun. Uh, Max, any thoughts about Warrior DD gameplay? What does that mean? What is Warrior Double D gameplay? Damage dealer. That's... Is that an EU thing? Wait, it went back. No. We we say DPS around here. I'm that has to be a EU thing. I'm calling it right now. It's got to be. Oh, but yeah, I mean, I have no opinions on Warrior DPS. That's actually a class I've, like, never, ever played. I played Arms Warrior in Dragon Soul as an alt, where you could get Girthalak, that weapon that just spawned tentacles and shit. That's the last time I've played Warrior DPS. It's been that long. It's been, like, 13 years. All right, I'm going to throw back on some gameplay here. I'm just hanging out. I think I have my monk doing this dungeon. Yeah, it is. Yay. Look how fa Oh, my God. I'm, I have the zoomies right now. Look at my character. We're flying so fast. Is there any Celestial Monk gameplay? Yep, I swap to Conduit of the Celestials in this dungeon later. I'll swap it. I'll skip ahead here. It's like halfway through the dungeon or so.
Is Touch of Karma baseline now? Yep. Max, is Tally going to be your new tank and raid after having him tank dungeons for you in Alpha? Uh, nope. But that would be hype, though. Love Tally. He's an OG. Um, speaking of things in beta, though, or things in Alpha, we have, uh, with Heroic Week coming back, what that might do... Oh, someone's at my door. Let's just bark, by the way. Bark, 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 bark. Come on, guys. Twitch chat, grow up. YouTube chat doesn't do stuff like that. Oh, anyways, here we go. Go and, go and, uh... Oh, I don't think I swapped, uh, Celestials just yet. What was I talking about before I went away? Oh, yeah. Um, with less care, if... It depends on how they implement it. But if Heroic Week works the way I think it'll work... It will reduce our character requirement by uh, quite a bit. And what that can do is bring back some players to our guild who... Sp who There's some other reasons, potentially, that don't raid here right now. And one of the main reasons why is because they just didn't want to have a million characters. Uh, one of them is Ben, who has expressed interest in coming back if that changed. Uh, Trill is another one, potentially. Um, that That is, like, by far the worst part of being in the race is having to make 12 guys and that's been increasing throughout the expansion so i'm hoping that the way they set it up makes us have less dudes specifically i hope they don't cap mythic plus that week like they have in the past because if you can like fully spam mythic plus for that week you can't do that on 12 characters to wait for what character you need to gear the next tuesday you have to just kind of pick a character and go uh, maybe you do a couple runs, but like you're gonna pick one and just farm Mythic Plus. So, I think uh, that would definitely reduce the amount of characters that some players need to have. Potentially, I mean, it depends on how they set it up. That would be a top 1% of the player base decision. No, what I'm expressing to you is how it would affect the top 1.1% of the player base through us, but that wouldn't be a decision that would be made for us. <laughs> I'm a frequent advocate of them not making changes for us, uh, but for the rest of the game, and we'll do whatever regardless. Um, the reason why it would be good is, let's ask yourself this. If you're someone who likes doing Mythic Plus, um, do you would you like it if... Because there was a heroic week, you now have to wait an extra week to do any content that you care about. That would suck, right? It has nothing to do with the 0.1%. It has to do with literally fucking anyone who does a Mythic Plus dungeon. That would suck. So, uh, that's what you were implying should be there. Like, it's not... You're, you're making the wrong argument. I'm saying that they should have Mythic Plus available for people who want a Mythic Plus. The side benefit of that is that it will uh, also have uh, a good effect on the race. But there is zero reason to cap it. Um, I can give you Blizzard's... I, I, I kind of agree with you, but I can give you Blizzard's reason as why they capped it before, if that helps. 
They capped it before because they feel like if heroic, if mythic plus is uncapped week one, then it makes heroic gear make no sense. And now a lot of you guys are just like, well, good. Well, fuck heroic. I don't want to do it. Right. I can already hear some people are like, fucking yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense for a reward structure in the game if there's like literally no reason to do a certain mode, especially with them viewing PVE as this combined thing. Uh, so it'd just be like, why would you ever step foot into heroic? Where like if heroic has its place, then like it's a natural reward path. But there's ways around that too. So I I, I hope whatever they do, I hope they don't. Uh, I hope they don't uh, leave that like that. I hope they don't. Uh, leave mythic plus out for a week that would just be strange you still do heroic for tier something that they mentioned is uh i think through delves and mythic plus you are going to obtain tier now and i'm not talking through the vault i think they are adding things into the game for you to obtain tier naturally from those content modes they mentioned that in a q a We'll see more when they actually implement whatever feature that is. Just to make the first week sanguine bolstering? Fucking why? To like, oh, well, you guys, we're going to get it capped. But because it isn't capped, we got to make you suffer in some way. So here's the worst affixes ever. <laughs> So there is a world first heroic before mythic. That's not a thing. One side benefit that heroic week has that we definitely felt in a multiple tiers in Dragonflight is that it gives them a week to get a hold of current tuning to actually properly tune things before the raid comes out, both how the raids are tuned and classes are tuned. When mythic is available right away, they kind of have to just launch it with whatever they have. Heroic Week gives them an infinite amount more data than they have before the new content is out at all. Uh, you saw this happen a few times last expansion. Uh, so Razageth was tuned, in their words, uh, to have... Basically, it was tuned for... The single target parts of that boss were tuned for uh, full single target talents, and the AoE parts of that boss were tuned for full AoE talents, which like makes no sense, right? That's because in Blizzard's own admission, they didn't really like understand tuning the class and spectry system. It's a brand new thing. Okay, cool. Well, if you had a heroic week, you definitely would have figured that out before Mythic started. In season two, they added a brand new upgrade system. Uh, Aberus died pretty fast, mainly because the new upgrade system was super fucking OP and we had way more gear than we ever do in week one. In fact, I think the number was we had one more eye level at the end of week one in Aberus than we did at the end of week two killing Razageth in the previous season with relative eye levels kept the same. More eye level, unprecedented eye level gain. If they had a heroic week, maybe they would have had time to figure that out and actually tune Mythic for the gear we were actually going to have. Uh, you could make the same argument for this season, right? Uh, heroic week allows for more quality control on the content they release initially uh, on all difficulties. And I think that is significant. Max, can you tell if you met any other Race to World First players in Alpha? Uh, I think Miraz and Roger Brown were in at least. I'm, I'm not sure if I saw anyone else. What is it, Max? There are two more War Within wallpapers by the same artist and wallpaper engine. Just click the search icon be beside his name. Okay, let's check it out. So here's one we have right now of... This zone, I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep this one because this is the coolest looking zone to me. But let's check. So, uh, let's see. By the artist, so I just search, I just press search next to the artist. Uh, wait one second. Let me make sure I find the right one here. Okay, it's this one. Oh, there we go. Uh, I don't see any more by them.
Reptar check? What's he doing? Oh, he's being a dog. Oh, the landscapers are here. He's just checking up on him. He's just stands the fuck up to make sure that they know what's up. And now he's tired. You can only be stanced the fuck up for so long, boys. Alright, I'm gonna keep looking for what you're talking about, but I'm looking, let's see, Dragonflight Animated Search. No. Dragon Isles Search. Nope, he made an Elden Ring one. Shadowlands 4K Search. No. And this one, Search. Uh, no. Your linking links don't work in chat. Not sure why it doesn't show. Yeah, links don't work in chat. Alpha is a pure test of a broad scope. Beta is a fine tooth in theory. Yep. Yeah, he's making sure no funny business was going on exactly. You know, let's say, let's, let's say hi to Reptar. Reptar, hey buddy, come here. Come here, buddy, come on. Come say hi. Oh, what a stretch. Look at this stretch. Legendary shit. One leg still on the couch and everything. Come here, buddy. Come here, Reptar. Come here, Reptar. Come, buddy. Oh, he's so big. Oh, he's such a big boy. And he's so tall, and he's so big. Hmm? Dude, you're tired. Why are you so tired? Hmm? Such a good boy. Alright. Let's see, is he going back to sleep? What was he doing? I think he's going right back. Yep. I could send the URL to one of your mods. Bro, just DM it to me on Twitch. It's easy. Looks like end boss won't be tested. Really, they said that it would be. And back when there was a heroic week, they used to actually test. So I, I think it was, so they tested end bosses on the on the PTR and beta in every raid tier up until Sepulcher, and then they didn't test Rigalon, Lords of Dread, or uh, the Jailer. But you saw Anduin uh, only on heroic, of course, and then. You never saw even heroic of Lords of Dread, Rigalon. You didn't see anything of those bosses until Jailer came out, whatever. Um, and then after that, uh, then we've had Simultaneous Mythic. Since Simultaneous Mythic, they have not tested the end bosses ever. You saw the end boss for the first time when you walked up to it for all of Dragonflight. That might change back because with a heroic week, we've only ever seen a raid keep bosses not seen and that was uh a raid that was really weird like the jailer thing was just different is in a mr gm twitter post max i sent you a twitch dm okay steam community shared files key art animated okay there's one and there's two Oh, the other one's kind of cool, too. Isle of Dorne concept alt. Oh, uh, add to one of your collections? Oh, it doesn't think I'm signed into Steam. How do I find this? Okay. I don't know how I find it actually in Wallpaper Engine, but... well max go to steam workshop not discover what i mean yeah i'm there now i guess i could sign in no i don't want to go through i would have to log into my phone i don't want to do any of that won't be doing it uh mr gm twitter Here's a... Wait. 
people. Nope. Mr. GM. There we go. Uh, War Within group interview with Ian has Acostas. Participants. Wait, there's a group interview. Where? Participants. Sko, T&E, Rage Darling, and Emanate POV. Is it just a written interview? Was it one that happened in London and then they just transcribed it? Okay, interesting. Oh, this let's read this. There's just an interview on a tweet. I've never seen this before. This is a new frontier. We got content, boys. Strap in. Strap the fuck in. All right. Delve difficulty and expected gear. Additional difficulties unlocked in the mouse level. We know this. Lower difficulties during level up. Got it. Similar to leveling up in D4 world tiers available. Okay. Tune for the same item level across difficulties. Oh, interesting. So the difficulties are mechanically harder. They won't be numbers harder. That's really interesting. Currently looking at eight tiers at max level, which is three to 11. Uh, gear from Vault at high end is mid-range Mythic Plus. Uh, keys for rare and epic chests earned through outdoor world content. High end keys used for vaults for better end of run loot. Okay. Return of the Heroic Week. Considering having one tier at launch but not for later tiers. What? Considering having one tier at launch, but not for... What the fuck does that mean? Because this is about the return of Heroic Week. So we're considering having one Heroic Week at launch, but not for later tiers. Oh, they talked about this in the other interview. They basically said we're not set on this being the case for the rest of the expansion but we're going to bring it back that's fine i think they're going to bring it back and as long as they don't cap mythic plus it's just objectively better than re releasing it at the same time really hope they do that whatever we'll see how it goes the first time if people hate it we can go back this is what they're saying sounds good uh i assume that means heroic week only for launch no they stated they, they just said heroic when we asked them they said heroic week is back and then we were like is it going to be like that for the whole expansion and they said Oh, well, I mean, if it goes well, but if not, we're not sold on it. Like, basically, we can go back if we want to, if it isn't well-liked. Okay, new expansion brings changes in player capability and guild performance. Okay, beta data doesn't accurately predict guild capabilities. What does that fucking mean? Not in guilds. There needs to be questions and answers here. Not in guilds. Best interests if numbers are far off from the start. What? is decision not just for world first race but for the broader of course at the start of season one everyone has dungeon blues and mythic zero gear correct later in the season players have high-end gear from previous seasons we want to ensure oh that makes sense that makes sense why they would do it for the first tier and not for other tiers because literally in the first tier you have no gear so like you going in right away is a bigger jump than from other tiers that actually makes sense um well that's actually not true so if you guys remember in Amir Drasil, they actually jumped up the eye levels an extra 13. Which actually made it the same gap as it was at the beginning of the expansion with blues on. Where in most seasons, it didn't do that. So the other gear you had was still relevant. But I wonder if they're going to continue doing that. Uh, later in the season, players have high-end gear from previous seasons. We want to ensure content accessibility for broad player base early on. Subject to change based on beta testing feedback. Yeah, always have a heroic week. It's goaded. All right. Uh, updates for Quest UI for a more immersive experience. Asked by Rage. Not happening in War Within. Okay, we can stop here. Uh, account-wide raid skips. <laughs> Impromptu decision of yes. Oh. I fuck with that. If your main has achieved a raid skip, all of your alts should have it by default. That's a great change, actually, for everyone. People who are farming Mog and people who are, uh... Also just doing the raids every week. That's insane. Uh, great. Uh, arachnophobia filter, and does it affect the final raid boss? Uh, I don't care about any of this. Uh, public testing of the final raid boss. Unlikely to test final boss on lower difficulties if confidence and tuning and quality internally is high. Great. Prefer to leave the final boss to surprise player to discover on all difficulties. Dragon glyphs post-dragon flight. 
The goal is to have glyphs as a collectible, but not necessary for flying experience. Collections still exist for achievements. Cool. Amount of raid tiers more within. They're not going to answer this. Uh, let's see. Happy with restructure with structure of recent expansions. What, I'm just missing a raid? Uh, focus on releasing more within before deciding on future plans. Ideal tier length around five months. That, that's the same as it was in Dragonflight. Uh, longer tiers indicate players running out of content. Shorter tiers might not allow players enough time for completion. Season 4, possibly subdividing expansion length into tiers. Consideration of greatest hits approach for Season 4. That's interesting. I bet the question was, would you consider bringing back older raids for a Season 4? I think that's what that's referring to. Uh, plans for Season 4 not finalized for War Within. Uh, makes sense. Expectation of announcing 2025 roadmap for clarity towards the end of the year. Lit. Uh, okay. Th so three raid tiers on the norm now. In an 18-month expansion, that is totally fine. In a two-year expansion, three raid tiers is, is embarrassing. Uh, customizing the character select screen. Hope to provide options more within. Valiant customization. Cena's foundation. Focus on gaining experience. Cool. Uh, you should have different options for the login screen that you can earn through achievements for sure. Uh, choosing specific flying mounts for regular and dynamic flying. Current plan is to have... Uh, doesn't matter. Airlock tech impacting how quests are designed. Completely skipping that. Player experience difference in delves depending on difficulty. Definitely skipping that. Cross realm auction house. Not yeah. Uh, updates to loot and gear system. No major changes planned except for delves own vault. Evergreen system formalized with valor stones replacing flight stones. Delete those from the game. Uh, flight stones fucking stink. Anything replacing it stinks. It doesn't need to exist. Uh, or give you much more of it and uncap it only other thing like rewarding you from doing a bunch of things in the game makes flight stones make sense ever feeling like you're gated on flight stones when you have enough crest is fucking awful so that needs to be changed for sure uh d themed from dragon isles specificity uh system praised uh for player agency and organic gear upgrades continual tuning and satisfaction cool uh bold story choice skip cosmetics tied directly to our hero talent choice skip cross faction queuing skip 10 man mythic rating no current plans to change the 20 player size of mythic raids mythic being cross realm from the start will aid groups transitioning from heroic to mythic creating correct creating ultra competitive difficulty below 20 players poses challenge in tuning and social dynamics true the goal is to have well not potentially actually the goal is to have raid compositions with room for one of every class and a mix of others except for shamans uh, desire to address the mandatory feeling of certain buffs and compositions. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, is that in Mythic Plus? Because in Raid, you're saying you literally want... Saying the goal is for Raid compositions to have room for one of every class and a mix of others is literally making them certain buffs mandatory. That is how you achieve this. So how... Can you have a desire to address the mandatory feeling of certain raid buffs in raid when you are literally making them mandatory to achieve this? Uh, I'm assuming this is missing a lot of context, but uh, that doesn't; those two things contradict each other. Uh, also, shamans still don't have one. Crazy, uh, and they're certainly not removing all buffs. So, and they're not bringing back scrolls. I think this might be in re in regards to dungeons, because like raid buffs are actually a bigger problem in dungeons than raids. I think. Uh, aim to make diverse compositions viable without feeling heavy-handed or mandatory. Okay. Uh, <laughs> tuning adjustments planned to address composition concerns. Oh, okay, that, that, that doesn't mean anything. Updated tavern designer skip. A simpler way to learn in new in-game systems. Okay, checkpoints and rating environment. Wipe recovery is still intended with tools like Soulstones available. Aim to clarify and improve visibility of checkpoints. Desire for players to have more control over respawn locations. The goal is to avoid ambiguity and hesitation when deciding to release. Uh, no major systematic changes planned. Focus on ensuring checkpoints are sensible and consistent. Cool. Avoiding borrowed power system and introducing more systems like this. Conscious effort to make to manage complexity in the game. The addition of hero talents aims to mitigate the overwhelming complexity. Hero talents provide flavorful options without adding micro choices. Players choose between packages of talents rather than individual talents. No intention to return to big borrowed power progression systems. Borrowed power in gear will remain, but character capabilities will evolve forward. 
course. Character evolution ideally always moves forward without taking the capabilities. Doesn't say anything. More race class, com race class combos doesn't really care. Uh, except for the fact that Drakthir can be other classes. Again, is there anything in here about how many racials Drakthir have? Because they will be by far the most broken race in the game. They're going to have to give some of Drakthir's things to evokers. Let me get this right. Am I, am I right about that? So Drakthir have Tail Swipe, Wing Buffet, Double Jump, or not Double Jump, they have Glide, and they have Deep Breath, and 2.5% Mastery. They don't. Do they not have Deep Breath? Is that an Evoker thing? So it's they have a two and a half percent mastery buff and they have two group DPS stops and the ability to hover. I think that's better than every other race. It certainly is for Mythic Plus. Can you imagine how many stops you could have if like three or four of your people in your party went to Voker? I mean, it's fucking insane. Is Hover not an Evoker move? It is an Evoker move. It's not Drakthir. Yeah. It's not a racial, yeah. Aren't knockbacks DR'd? I think there is some kind of DR on that, but you don't frequently hit it unless you ring a piece. Plus a bunch of other things. Actually, I don't know if I've ever seen ring of peace DR in PvE. Do knockbacks DR in PvE? I, I'm thinking about it in my head right now. I don't think I've ever seen a Typhoon not work because, like, too many knockbacks have happened. I don't I don't think there is a PvP knockback DR. If, if it is, it's extremely high and never conventionally reached. In PvP, it does. Max, they would shift the CCs to the class since they have talents that modify them. I think that's the... I think you're right. In the class tree, yeah. I I, I think they should do that, too. Either way. um, Okay, spectator mode for raids. They're not going to do that. Interest in exploring the ability to spectate while dead. Okay, that would be good. Like, using Plunderstorm spectate when you're dead is just better than if you're alive. Uh, This is actually a good question. I forgot. I thought they were doing this like some 21st man shit. Um... Uh, let's see. Concern about the impact on the competitive landscape? I don't think that would matter because you wouldn't play with 19 people. Uh, not wanting the correct way for most guilds to play to involve non-participating spectators? Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, no one... If you're doing 20 first man and you're not going for world first, you're fucking crazy or very, very small amount of people actually prefer doing stuff like that. Makes no sense to do. Um, so that is... They should not encourage you to do that. Uh, openness to supporting organic spectatorship if it doesn't affect gameplay negatively. Sure. I mean, yeah, the, it, straight up put Plunderstorm spectator mode just in WoW when you're dead in a raid. Goaded. Instantly great. Uh, it's just simply better point of view than if you're dead. Great. Great little mini interview. Let's go. Max, you only liked Sko's questions? And that's not true. I read this one. I like this question. I mean, most of his were just about raids, and that's what I care about the most, right? Didn't care about this. Didn't I this was a tal this was a good one. We liked this one a lot. And this was a T and E one. We just didn't care about that. Public testing of the final raid boss was Nate's. We found that lit. <laughs> Dude, you guys are are fake news. Fake news out here. Skipped every Evatel question? Yeah, but like... This just doesn't concern me. And that's okay. 
Like, for example, Evitel might listen to one of my interviews and be like, I hated this. I didn't care about a single question. And that would make complete sense. And it wouldn't have meant a single question was bad. She might be asking great questions that I don't give a fuck about. You know what I mean? First time message, you only care about the 1%. What a surprise. <laughs> yes. I just care about raids, really. Uh, I find dungeons... Dungeons, class designs, and raids. Any questions involving those are super interesting to me. And new systems. And I said systems and I'm mad. I mean, if a question is ever approaching the bold story choice of the bold story choice at the intro of the War Within, I'm just immediately out. We're out of there. That's the thing. T and E have an entire community that's built around people who care about that kind of shit, and that's cool. I just don't care. I don't give a fuck. I'm pretty sure if a T and E viewer listened to me wax poetic about class design, they would probably just like throw up. <laughs> they just wouldn't care. And that's okay. Max, have you seen day nine videos of him playing WoW? Nope. I don't know that guy. You don't know Day 9? No. Not a StarCraft gamer? No. I don't play StarCraft. Day 9 is even more OG than Tally in WoW? He's one of the OG of OGs. Yeah, I, I was like a huge normie until like 2012. I, I didn't pay attention to anything in gaming before that. But yeah, it sounds like you guys like him a lot, so that's hype. I think, oh no, uh, I did watch a YouTube video with him recently, and I had an idea of stealing the content. Where was it? It was uh, Raran. Raran did a video with him. Uh... If you're in this BG... Raran did a video. Where was it? Here it is. X Hearthstone creator guesses how good new cards are. And it was an incredible video. Really good content. Um, and I think that's him, right? Day 9 TV, I think is who you guys are talking about. Uh, I had the idea of stealing this content, but talking to an old WoW raider. So someone like Kriparian, who raided at a high level in WoW for a long time, but hasn't for a long time. And like describing to them and showing them videos of bosses and having them guess if the boss was hard or not or if they thought the boss was hard or easy i think you could make really good content out of that Uh, Max, have you watched Preach's Death of Nihilum video? Nah. Max, what's the most frustrating bro boss you have ever progressed? Uh... Oh my god, it's not close, Razageth. It's It's not fucking close. It's not even kind of close. Like, Razageth was just... 
like every every single phase was just ridiculously overtuned. They nerfed it. It was really easy, and you just did that five times, and then it instantly died. Just just a fucking nightmare. Like you never felt good about your progression. Imagine you're learning an Elden Ring boss, right? And normally, what's what normally happens in Elden Ring is maybe it takes you thirty tries to kill a really hard boss, but you keep getting better and better and better, and then you have a really good pull and you get low, and then you think you're gonna kill it, and then you got lower than you actually were supposed to because of like a random bleed proc or something, and then you like wipe, and then you start getting upset with yourself, and then you finally start getting better again, and then you kill it. That's like the Elden Ring gauntlet, right? Everyone knows that feeling. But just imagine that you could never make any progress until they updated the game. And now you've gotten the boss to 50%. Can't make any progress. Update the game a week later or a day later or something. Get to 30%. Update. New update. Can't get any progress no matter how hard you try. And then they update it again and then you kill the boss instantly. You would feel nothing, right? That's how Razageth felt. It was by far the most frustrating boss. It is unquestionably... Nothing comes even... Com doesn't even kind of compare. You feel nothing. Felt nothing when we killed that boss. It was also nerfed and killed while we were asleep. If there's if there's anything that is frustrating that could possibly happen, it would be that. Um, Stone Legion General was actually fun for a raid leader. Um, Stone Legion Generals, while it was frustrating to play, it was really fun for me to memorize ability cues. And because Bigwigs wasn't reliable, you had to actually figure that out on your own. And that was engaging for me. So that wasn't frustrating for me as much. And then we like one shot the last phase because I memorized that. Um, so I felt like I was really impactful and I was constantly engaged. But yeah, Razageth is... There's nothing close. Wasn't Ashara similar to Raz? So what happened on Ashara happened at five times on Razageth on, at different points of the fight. So Ashara was... We still made progression past Ashara. Like, people forget this because it was so long ago, but, like, that super broken P3 that was, like, super overtuned, we beat it. Like, we got through the phase before they nerfed it. It was just extremely hard. But, like, we were kind of constantly making progression. What sucked about that and was frustrating was they... We got to the boss, like, a day and a half ahead of anyone else, and then, like... That was the great equalizer. Like, getting there at any lead didn't matter because of that, and that was frustrating. But, like, you still felt like you were making progression that whole time, even though it was impossibly hard. Razageth was, like, infinitely more overtuned and multiple times, and there was just no satisfaction. You never felt like you were getting better at the fight. Uh, Max, you said you might watch Jimmy's video about WoW from the old school RuneScape player perspective. Nah. Thoughts on Zar's plunder tourney? tourney. I didn't watch it. It was on a day where we were playing Alpha. I have no idea. They had three. It looked like there was a lot more like people who played the game. Like the one that I played in had a bunch of like streamers in it. Um, and that one was like more. It seemed like more PVPers, people who took it really seriously. Uh, so I imagine it was fun to watch, like pretty competitive, a lot of fighting. I, I don't know. Uh, I have no, I have no opinion on it at all. Did you have any takes on the season one dungeon pool? Yeah. Uh, Siege of Morales is really bad. Interested to see what they do with Grim Batol. There's been a uh, mixed success rate on them bringing back stuff from Cataclysm. Uh, I actually enjoyed both of the dungeons they brought back from Shadowlands. And I think there's some easy changes they could make to miss to make it way better. Never getting feared on the first boss, for sure. Uh, just remove that. And the ability to move through the maze while you're in combat. So it incentivizes you to do it while you're fighting the mobs and to be able to double pull. But overall, I just love mists anyway. Um, and Siege stinks. Uh, and then I have no idea if... Uh, I have absolutely no idea if uh, any of those... War Within Dungeons will be good. The only two that I've seen, and I like both of them, none of them are in the first season, so no clue. Uh, and 
as far as I can tell, people are, like, overwhelmingly negative about the dungeon rotation announcement. Now, I'm willing to say that this dungeon rotation might be really bad, but I want to point out that people have done this the last, like, three or four times they've announced dungeon sets, and the dungeon sets have been a mixed result of good and bad. Uh, like, people fucking hated the Season 2 shit until it came out, and then Season 2 dungeons were pretty good. People were so down on certain dungeons going into Season 3, and the entire reaction at the beginning of Season 3 was that the dungeon set was actually pretty solid. Um, Mythic Plusers, I don't think, are good with, with like, their guesses on what's going to be good or bad before it comes out, except for people's opinion that Siege is bad. That one's correct. But the whole idea that the entire dungeon set is bad is just... <laughs> You know, it's just normal Mythic Plus behavior. Dragonflight Season 3 was the best season. Okay, you want to know something interesting? Dragonflight Season 3, going from PTR, like, because I was a part of a lot of these conversations, of, like, how is this dungeon set going to be going into Season 3 was the most negative of the entire expansion. Straight up. Like, going into Season 3, it was pure doom and gloom on the dungeon set. And it ended up being one of the better seasons. This like, Mythic Plusers have fucking no idea what they're talking about. Also, you have no idea what these dungeons even look like yet. They could make two to three big changes to any dungeon you currently hate, and it could be good. Except Siege. That one will stink. <laughs> How would you fix Siege? So there, the thing is, is like when Mythic Plusers, especially high Mythic Plusers hate a dungeon, it's usually for a few very specific reasons that almost always involve super high scaling on certain abilities that no one else can relate to. But Siege is just kind of uninteresting the whole way. The vibe is bad. The aesthetic is bad. The bosses are not great. Uh, none of the trash like really sticks out as being good. There is one thing that's kind of fun in that dungeon, and it's mass pulling all those mobs at the end and killing them with the spotters. That's that's like the only redeeming thing in the dungeon, and I could see someone making the exact argument that stuff like that is really cringe and bad, and you have a good point. So uh, I just like stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. I, I just the last boss, you're just killing tentacles in a circle until you know what I'm saying. Like it's just like what are we fucking doing? Like. Have you watched any of Boomy's YouTube videos? No, I've done a ton of content with Boomy. Wait, does Boomy have his own? Boomy. I mean, this is the guy we recruited recently. Oh, dude. He has a huge YouTube. Five times Brawlhalla world champion content freak. Yeah, this is the guy we recruited. I haven't seen any of his YouTube content. Wait, he releases fucking content all the time. I didn't know that. Well, I mean, not really, actually. He made content eight months ago and then two days ago. <laughs> and he made a YouTube video called SpongeBob is on... What is... Could this... Yo, what's going on, everyone? I never thought that I would be making... SpongeBob is unstoppable. Oh, I'm guessing it's, an, it's, an, it's a character in Brawlhalla. 23k views after four months at 179k subs. Yeah, I mean, that's not really indicative. Like, for example, you can be a content creator in a game at a certain time when your game's really popular, and then your videos will, like, pop the fuck off, and you will have videos for the amount of subs you have, like he does. He has videos with hundreds of thousands of views, but what do you notice? They're all from three and four years ago. That's probably when Brawlhalla had a bigger impact. It's, like, a pretty specific game creator. Uh, it's pretty normal, yeah. Like, same thing for mine. I only have, like, 150,000 subs or something like that, and, like, you could... You could look at some of my videos that are like, you know, 800,000, 500,000, 400,000 and be like, wow, that guy has so many viewers for consistently, right? 
for his sub count number but subs are weird like i don't ever ask for people to sub in my youtube videos ever i never say like subscribe that matters i've done it on like three youtube videos ever out of all hundreds of them and every single time they get like two to five thousand percent more subs per video than my regular video because saying that shit works i think it's annoying i'll never do it even if it means i get less subs right um so the uh but like you know sometimes it depends on like wow like for example right now look some of these are getting like 100k views 80k views 100k 80k 100k 50k 100k 130k 200k like all this stuff it depends on what's happening in wow if i'm making content and there's not a lot going on and specifically i launched a few videos when i started youtube streaming and it killed it in the algorithm and we didn't learn that lesson yet um that was like right around this time and then also like it's just not i don't know my view maybe my viewers just don't care about plunder storm right and then uh yeah i don't know but then like alpha content will get released and it'll go fucking crazy and get hundreds of thousands again it just like totally depends on when wow is what people want to watch on youtube and they care about it but he's also a five times world champion yeah boomy seems to be a really good wow player too but i guess we'll find out in the next year you watch your own videos well, I don't edit them, so sometimes I watch them to see what Frank did. I also listen to all of our podcasts just to potentially improve it. Like, I listened to some of our early podcasts, and I noticed I was interrupting Dorky too much, specifically. And then I, like, I would, if I didn't listen to it, I wouldn't have acknowledged that. And then I, like, hard stop myself from doing it now. Uh, it's, like, a really bad habit. I'm really, really good at streaming because I can just solo podcast for... What is it? It's been nine hours now of me just talking to my chat one-on-one. -on -one. I can do that forever. I can just talk forever. But it's hard for me to learn how to talk amongst a group of other people without interrupting and talking over them. So I've had to, like, really work on that. And listening to the podcast helped me do that. Paid to yap. Yep. Out here fucking yapping. Max, do you feel WoW Mythic rating got overall harder with time or pretty consistent with a few outlier bosses? I think for like 10 years, the highest level rating content has been about the same difficulty. Sometimes there's easier tiers, sometimes there's hard tiers, but it's about the same. Like this tier had Tindril and Firak, uh, right? But then the previous tier was one of the easiest tiers in a long time for a lot of people. Uh, Razageth, by the time it was nerfed, was, a, was not that difficult of a boss. Uh, even all going all the way back to Legion, Fallen Avatar and Kill Jaden had the exact same effect on the community as Amir Drasil did, and there was no streamed Race to World First that they gave a fuck about, right? Uh, sometimes they just make really, really hard bosses back-to-back, -back and it can be hard to kill them, right? I, I don't think that's happening more now. It's just kind of happened uh, at the end of the last two expansions and has happened kind of sprinkled throughout WoW's history. Uh, Max, Potty C episode approaches any new stuff or just more of what was talked about during the stream today? The Potty C episode is entirely our three impressions on Alpha so far, but it's us talking together, which is better than any of us singularly. So I would I would definitely recommend listening to it. Bro, Max, why devs don't like me, man? I tried. Bro, you asked really good questions. I respect it. You asked great questions. Um... They did, yeah. You were you weren't wrong. Tally was telling me about this interview yesterday, and he was like, "Yeah, dude, I don't know. It kind of seemed like they mailed it in." And I like listened to it, and I've done a lot of WoW interviews, albeit all of them have been with Morgan Day or Ian, who are much more personable in interviews and try a lot harder. And yeah, you could tell that both of them were sometimes just like, "Yeah," and they just like kept going. <laughs> like if someone told me beforehand that both of them just like. Not like hated you. This I'm being a little extreme, but like if they were just like, man, fuck that tally guy. Like I would, I would believe it. They, they def like I don't think they actually think that, but like if you told me that from that interview, I could have believed it. Mm 
Max, wish my guild luck. My guild is getting to P3. I hope we kill it before Tuesday. Hope your guild dies, buddy. I'm just kidding. Uh, I think you can kill it in one week now, right? Because you only get like three seeds. Don't you only get like three seeds the entire fight? I mean, what the fuck would you even wipe to? Or I guess three corrupted seeds. Maybe two, even? I don't know. I haven't watched someone kill Firerack in over two months. Are you going to spectate the race to world last? Maybe. Max, well, that guy just DM'd me in an update and his guild just died. So good work on that. There's no way he DM'd you in that amount of time. Oh, but it's so sad if he did, though. Dude, the race world last is kind of interesting, but it's also sad sometimes. Like, when you listen to a guild that enjoys each other and is having a good time and they finally kill it and you feel so happy for them because they're cool, that's great. But then sometimes you listen to some of those guilds and it's like they don't even like each other and, like, some of them are... They'll do some annoying ass shit like openly sigh after people wipe and then give nothing constructive to say at all. And then it's like just the most insufferable thing to listen to. Wait, Tally, you recorded that? I thought Blizzard recorded that. You, you didn't even record your own camera. You recorded the Zoom call you were on showing your camera. And you put your mouse over it and you just, you just sent it. That's insane. That's actually crazy. You had all sorts of camera issues. Yeah, it sounds like it. God damn. Dude, if it, for whatever it's worth, my chat loved the mouse, and they loved to tell me to move it as if it was my mouse the whole time. They were, they, they, it was actually one of their favorite bits of the day, so. I hated that bit. Um, it distracted us from the dev's crappy answers? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dude, how you guys feeling about this animated wallpaper of one of the uh war within zones feeling 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 good about it think it might be a keeper max on mythic fire act did you guys ever have issues with the weak auras i remembered what i was gonna say earlier Let's fucking go. Do you guys remember when we were listening to Tally's interview and I was like, guys, they answered one other thing in the Q&A and then I got distracted and I forgot? I just fucking remembered. It's about private ores. Fuck yeah. Holy shit. That's, it was actually three hours ago. Okay. It just, <laughs> okay. So to answer your question, first of all, about the Mythic Fire Act thing, um, the Mythic Fire Act Week Aura will give you two of the same people if either not exactly 10 people click it. So if less than 10 click it, in some cases, or if more than 10 click it, or if someone clicked it incorrectly, it'll do that. Uh, at least in our, in, in our, that you're using the same one as us, for us, that's the only thing that happened. But, but what I've heard with a lot of guilds is that basically their, theirs won't work. Everyone will be like, well, I didn't fuck it up. And then they'll be like, hey, Max, your weak or didn't work. We all actually did it correctly. Uh, everyone said they did it correctly and uh, it's still fucked up. It's like, well, someone probably fucking fucked up. <laughs> that's all it is. Happens. Uh, anyways, private ores. Uh, so we asked them about private ores, which is a great question because what the fuck are you doing with those? And then the guy answered it and he just explained why private ores were made in the first place, which we all get. They were like, well, you know, certain mechanics we don't want to be solved with weak ores. So like, we're probably going to continue down that path. And like, they, they gave like a 30 second explanation of why that is that you guys have already heard. And... They totally missed the whole point of like, yeah, okay, we've had two tiers of private ores now. They were both massive failures. Every time someone's using a private aura, they're still using an aura. It just now requires you to press a fucking macro or ping yourself or something, which is infinitely worse than just using 
a weak aura. So like, how, like how, how can that be the solution? And no one followed up with that question, but like they just completely didn't answer it. And I really hope they have some kind of like if you don't have a better way to do the make us not use weak auras thing, just don't make private auras at all. It absolutely makes it worse. Because the reality is, if you make a mechanic hard enough to, in quotes, need a weak aura, people are going to go around it and do this private aura bullshit, which is super annoying. Um, and you can make really, really hard, good raid mechanics not need weak auras. It's been done most of the time. Just don't make the ones that do need it, you know? Uh, I think that's maybe the biggest misconception that at least people in chat have, is that... Hard mechanic equals needs weak aura. False. Completely false. And some of the hardest weak auras that have ever... Some of the hardest mechanics that have ever been in this game have nothing to do with weak aura. Three second seeds? Ain't no way. Holandra's bombs? You don't need them. Like, you can make mechanics that are hard that weak auras do fucking nothing. Right? Uh, do those. Uh, so, I don't know. Like, even even Fyrak. Like... Okay. Fyrak was this massive intermission one disaster, right? And everyone gets different spots every pull. Make it this simple, man. Hey, 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 hey. You start with no debuff, and you just get a debuff for the first orb you soak. You can go to the same spot every pull. You can always be first left red, first purple left, you know, and, like, just move based on that. You make it consistent. No fucking weak ores are needed. You don't randomly need to make a mechanic that early. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's there's ways to design fights that don't require this shit. Do that. Don't... Well, that's that's one solution, right? But it's pretty easy for me, someone who's never designed a fight and is a fucking idiot. I would never have any idea how to do that, right? To say, like, hey, just make fight better. But certainly don't do private aura. And that that is... If you are like, hey, this mechanic might need a weak aura. Let's make it a private aura. That is not a solution. That does nothing. That That is basically saying, hey... We're going, we know this mechanic needs a weak aura, but instead of making it not need a weak aura, we're going to make you use a really annoying version of a weak aura that still works, but you'll hate it more. That's, that's what's actually happening, and that's fucking ridiculous. So, anyways, I just had a full Menti B talking about that, but they need to, they need to, they need to fix that for sure. Alright, I'm, I'm calm now, I'm calm, sorry. I freaked out a little bit, I'm back. We're back. We're back. I'm gonna get some water now. I'm gonna get some water. Be right back. Before, before you go, please move mouse cursor. All right, there. Look, there it is. Excavation time. All right.
The real you think the dogs are the real streamers? Bro, they are passed the fuck out. <laughs> they are so tired. Can we get this wallpaper? Yeah, I mean, I didn't make it. You can, you can get it for sure. Just type, uh, what's this zone called? Hallow Fall? On a uh, wallpaper engine. Max, do you think DKs have a chance to get some changes? I think every single class in spec that was not very recently reworked, so like as soon as 10.1, I think every single class in spec will see major class and spec tree attention before the expansion. All of them. Which is like, I think it's like 19 or 20 specs or something like that. Hopefully they fix the druid class tree again. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Like, I was looking at this recently. It's so, like, we showed how the monk one is sick, right? You basically get everything you got before, except you get to pick between a bunch of really fucking cool new stuff. Right? When you're looking at the beta tree. But then druid's got a brand new tree. But let's just say you're a guardian druid, all right? Like, so what do you want or think you need? Uh, Okay, so we want bark skin duration. We want uh, Verdant Heart. We want Iron Fur. Uh, we really want 15% movement speed, but let's see if we even have the points for it. You want physical damage and armor increase. Uh, I think you have to get Rejuve, remove Corruption, even if it's not good for you, and two points in Nurturing Instinct, which I guess is fine depending on your build, just to get Astral Influence. Right? You, you're you going to want the range of all your spells by 5 yards. It's, like, pretty necessary, right? So you have to get 1, 2... 1, 2 potentially dead points, slash most likely dead points, and then 2 other ones that are, like, really weak, depending on your build. Max, you're set as Guardian right now, so you have different starting talents. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally looking at this as a Guardian Druid. Um, nobody's doing that? I don't know. I was talking to Dorky, and this is what he said made sense. Uh, the only alternative is, like, 15% movement speed, but, I mean, range... Five-yard range on all your spells is fucking insane. Uh, okay. What else... What else do we need here? Reduce all damage taken by four? Say less. Stamina and bear form increased by ten? Say less. Uh, wild charge? Yup. Both of these stink, but let's take matted fur. Uh, kick in almost all content? Yes. Um, not sure about the cat weaving thing yet. Uh, and then we have to spend some more points. Well, you kind of need Stampeding Roar. Uh, so let's grab Ursul's or Mass, whatever you want. Uh, let's grab Soothe in most scenarios. Let's grab Stampede. Still have an unlocked Capstone. I have to spend two more points. Uh, what do we need here? We could get Renewal. We could get Increased Healing Received or both. Uh, renewal also puts us on the path for Typhoon. So maybe actually we just get Typhoon. Oh, but actually Rising Light Falling Night is free stats. Increasing the damage of your healing damage and healing by 3% during the day and verse by 2 during the night. I mean, that's... That's just... You gotta take that, right? But then you also have to have Typhoon, so one less capstone level. Alright, let's see what else we got. So, you kind of need one minute roar, so let's grab 3% of each stat to get there. Heart of the Wild will leave for now. Uh, your abilities that you cast do more damage. Sounds good. Need that. Uh, survival Instincts and Barkskin. Making, making Barkskin a 30% DR. Sounds good. Need that. Uh, if you're in Mythic Plus, you need Incap Roar. Uh, in Raid, you could not take this node, though. Uh, just thinking kind of like Mythic Plus right now. And then what? Maybe you need Innervate. Maybe Nature's Vigil. Fluid Form is actually really sick, but do you even have the points for it? We have three more total points. We wouldn't even have enough to get Nature's Vigil. So, like, here's my point. Like, when you're looking at things you, like, in quotes, need in the Druid Tree, you spend every point getting them, at least for Guardian. Yeah, they came out with some cool new stuff, but... Where are you even getting it? It's like you have less stuff than you had before. 
as opposed to Monk, where you get everything you had before, and then you have like six to eight points to spend on really cool new things that are all fun. Right? That stinks. Maybe we look at it from like a Moonkin perspective. Maybe it's a little bit better. Maybe I've only looked at it as Guardian. All right, so let's be Moonkin now. So you need Sunfire. We need improved Sunfire. We need magic damage increase for sure. Uh, we probably want Bark Skin Duration. Probably take Frenzied Regen. Bark Skin Duration. Uh, healing Receive for sure. We're super squishy. And then do we need Movement Speed? Probably not. Although we have a couple, we have like what one more point to unlock. So we have. One, is there any one point here that's like super value, as a Moonkin? Uh, it's not Hibernate. <laughs> soothe. It's not soothe. Do you mean dispel? Oh, maybe what you do is you take the point out of in, out of frenzied regen and just grab rejuve, so you can do this. Wait, no, actually, you kind of need Iron Fur to get Thick Hide. 4% DR is, like, required. And, okay, this is bad pathing, right? If a if a fucking Moonkin or a Resto Druid wants a 4% DR, they have to take Frenzied Regen as a hard requirement into Iron Fur. That's fucking trash. Like, that's, that's the kind of thing that bad trees move away from when you create new ones. Right? That's just, it's bad. Uh... So let's go ahead and do that, which means we might need to just not take remove curse here or rejuve. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so no curse to spell. If you make me get curse to spell, we're feeling bad. This is this this tree fucking stinks. I'm already saying it right now. This is bad. If this was my class, I would absolutely hate this. Range on all spells. Yup. Uh. Yup. Renewal, uh, Rising Light, Falling Night for sure. Let's grab some of the utility now. Let's grab like Ursul's, let's grab that. Need Roar in like almost all content. Uh, Stamina and Bear Form could be nice. Wild Charge is probably needed. Uh, what we have uh, three more points to spend. Matted Fur and Ursine Vigor are both uh, really weak. Um, actually, this might be nice for specifically Moonkin living things. Yeah, I was thinking that for bear earlier wasn't that good, but it's whatever. Um, is there any other point here I'm missing that druids definitely need? Healing received, 10% HP and bear. Okay, 10% HP and bear and healing received. We could leave it at that if we want. Uh, that's with no Typhoon, though. So maybe just Typhoon instead of Healing Received. Kind of makes sense. Or maybe Healing Received instead of Stamina and Bear Form, since it's ap applicable all the time. Could be Fight Dependent. Uh, Kick? Uh, you're never getting Kick as a Moonkin. You're already strapped for points, and you would have to give three points to get Skull Bash. That's, a, that's an ain't-no-way angle. Uh, yeah, this is fucking horrible. This is this is a terrible, terrible tree. This is embarrassing. Like, how do you make a new tree and make mistakes that we figured out were bad a year and a half ago in development? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Why even release this? Just take more time, right? I mean, Jesus Christ, yeah. I mean, Innervate in almost all content. Nature's Vigil. Fluid form, would that be good for Moonkin? Not really. A fluid is for massive attack hero talent. Dude, I love that it's called massive attack. Yeah, it would be really good for that. I mean, it's good in general. Not having to spend that global to go into form is huge. Yeah, I don't know. We have four more points to spend. I don't I don't know. Just put them somewhere. Woo. Uh, by the way, if Moonkin want to get something like in-cap roar, 
for Mythic Plus or Barkskin increase, we're going to have to spend two points in something that increases damage on something we would never interact with. I mean, what the fuck is this? Like, this is so... This I'm serious. This is maybe the like one of the worst things I've ever seen that has been released as a tree. Like, this would have been bad if it was at the beginning of Dragonflight's alpha. And they just did it now. That's fucking insane. What the fuck is going on here? Maybe it's like way better for Resto Druid and and Feral. Okay, Feral right off the bat has a way better beginning. Everything's way more in line. You even have, like, extra points to go around. You could, like, easily get a uh, Curse of Spell if you needed it. All right, let's keep going. That, 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 uh, that, uh, that probably doesn't matter for Feral. Uh, easy, easy, easy. Um, healing Receive would be good. Range of Spells, let's do that. Renewal too, and this. Oh, dude, Feral's. This is piss. This is Feral's so much better, right? Uh, you need to take fluid form if you're playing this build, right? Uh, and you still have one more point, so you could get Nature's Vigil or Typhoon. I mean, this is way more accessible than Moonkin. It's not close. It's like three point. It's probably like three class points better than Moonkin of things you don't. Because like, you don't have to do that Iron Fur point because you're gonna grab Killer Instinct anyway. Missing far left one next to kick. Uh, when you critically strike an opponent that generates a combo point, you gain an additional combo point. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's way... That's insane. Uh, we can either... At this point, then, we either pick up Typhoon or Incap Roar. I guess you could get both if you don't play Fluid Form. Drop one minute roar outside of raid. I guess, yeah. But you see the point, right? Like, this is... I just... Okay, this is why I'm so confused. Okay, if you're in the middle of cooking a tree and it's not finished, why release it? Releasing it implies you think that it's good and that it's done. So then that... If you... If you made this and someone peer-reviewed it and thought it was good in 2024, that's mind-blowing. There's so many obvious flaws that are not like oh like they're not making cool enough abilities there are cool stuff in here but like bro how do how do moonkin and resto have to spend points into iron fur to get thick hide that doesn't matter why does why does resto and moonkin have to get points in brutal slash and swipe to get defensive options and cc options in their tree that are completely universal 
wh wh why why do you have to take moon fire and sun fire damage and healing increases to get fluid form which you may only want as someone who does none of that this is it's just nonsense like th this is cr i can't believe this i actually can't believe it i just I, I can believe that it exists a year ago i can't believe it exists now and they released it on purpose that that i can't believe crazy maybe maybe it's like an impossible issue that i haven't gone through the thought process of figuring out which is having a class spec tree with four specs that all cast different spells is completely ridiculous and maybe it's unsolvable without making just most of this baseline maybe it's that too you know why i think it's that because you see these fucking you see these arrows right here you guys ever seen this moonkin arrow go from the right over here all the way to hibernate All right, Druids, you have to lose a spec. Pick one right now. You have 10 seconds. One of your specs is just gone forever. You got to pick it. We got to fix this class tree. Damn, the moon can hate is extreme. Jesus. I don't need to pull it. There's like fucking 10 times more Moonkins than the rest of them. There's a lot of Ferals, though. A lot of Feral. Just the Moonkins are like, no, please, that one. <laughs> That's all the Feral Sayers. Max, my buddy just got silenced on WoW for having the word shit in the middle of Twitch name thoughts. Your friend got silenced on WoW because he had the word shit in his Twitch name? What are you talking about? And he, like, advertised his stream in-game, and so he got banned because, oh, maybe that? That makes sense. If you advertise your stream in game, you should get banned. That's fucking weird. Don't do that. It's like having Twitch.tv or TTV in your name in like a Battle Royale game or something. I love the Franck is a rat channel emote. Yes. Max, can you look at Hero Talents? No, no. So, this is a video idea leading up to the War Within. And there's no real timetable on this. In fact, I should wait as long as possible until these are mostly complete. But the idea isn't to do an individual YouTube video on every single Hero Talent. It's actually to do one on every single spec and talk about how that spec interacts with Hero Talents. Right. It's like you'd be talking about Windwalker's version of Shadow Pan and Conduit of the Celestials. Not talking about Conduit of Celestials as a whole, because sometimes it differs between specs really. But that's a big project and to be done over a long period of time. They should make Guardian and Feral one spec. Boy, do I have news for you. That's how it was for a fucking long time.
Let's make this beautiful monk class tree again. Oh, perfection. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, we never even talked about flow of chi, chat. We talked about everything else but flow of chi. Above 90% health, you're faster. Between 90 and 35, damage taken, passive reduction. Below 35% health, healing increase. Let's go. Wait, Weed Bird is back? What, for Mistweaver? Where's Weed Bird? No, the choice note on Ring of Peace? Song of Gigi? Hasn't that been a thing? That's the Weed Bird? I thought it's been a thing. Yeah, but now it's, like, good. Oh, shit. It was in the Mistweaver tree until 10.2, and then they removed it. Ooh. Oh, it's in Conduit of the Celestials. Is it? They have the... They have Yulon. Oh, this guy. The Red Crane, right? Jade Wind and Spinning Crane could have a chance to cause Weed Bird to quickly rush to five allies. That's Crack Bird. Oh, shit. I didn't realize there was different types of drug birds. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, well, there are. Okay, well, shit. I mean, I'm sorry. That was that was ignorant of me to not know that. Damn, my brain is fried. I think I've had enough talk in alpha for today, boys. Alpha comes up tomorrow. I kind of just want to chill for now. But unironically, what I would do is turn my stream off and play Plunderstorm. So I kind of just want to play solo Plunderstorm and just talk about what's happening. I'll fuck with that. Queue up. It's time to brawl. Y'all are going to snipe me, man. Do it. Your Plunderstorm gameplay is fun to watch. I just got my food. How did Tobo come to Liquid? He just he just uh, came on over here. He was like, hey. And we were like, yo. And then now he's here. Um, Dude, I think, I think it is time. The only thing is... I want to say, man, I kind of want to play duos with random pugs and, like, create lore for them as we're starting the game. I wish you could see, like, your last games. Max, it's late as fuck, and it's nerfed to shit, but I'm still proud that we downed Fire Act. You should be proud. No one is actually playing Plunderstorm. They all farm for the first two minutes. I'm telling you, the last couple games I've played, 
has been absolutely slaughtering PVEers that were running away from me the entire game. It was it was like surreal. I couldn't believe what was happening. <laughs> So let's do some solos. I'm down. I just queued like 15 games of Plunder Storms and it was all a brawl. So maybe I'm wrong, dude. Hopefully I get fucking shit on. I hope one of these guys destroy me. You're just trying to grind for the mounts? It's double RP weekend, bro. All right, let's see. Do you guys think any of these guys are bangers? We got Chevy Cowgirl. We got Boo Shio. We got Dairy King. Mick Swagger. Young Gravy. Wait, I recognize that from stream. I think, yo, I see some stream viewers in here. Grandma Joe. Young Gravy Bear. All right, dude. Let's see if we see any of these people on the battlefield. Grandma Joe's going to fuck your entire day up. Dude, I bet. Dude, I haven't played this in so long. Well, the other day, but <laughs> it still feels weird. I think mostly because my brain's fried from talking all day. Uh, Wow. Uh, I guess I'll land here, but this spot fucking stinks. Let's do this and then the rare. Hopefully no one's with me. Oh, okay. That guy might go for the rare. I'm going to get all these mobs, though. I could actually try to steal... Oh, he landed on the rare. That's a mistake. Is he going to try to steal these mobs? I'm holding the mana thing till later. Grabbing a few of them. Dude, fuck you, buddy. What are you doing? I need that experience. I'm going to level. Bro. Stop fucking attacking me, please. Do something else. You're fucking up both of our games. I can't click this. Fuck. Oh, these things melee you. That's actually super dangerous. I could fucking die to NPCs, bro. Please fucking leave me alone. Fucking dangerous. Actually, we're randomly level 4 right now. That'd be way lower. Oh, we're right next to the storm, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get all these rares. Oh, that doesn't Z-axis. We're going to need to speed the fuck up for sure if we're right on the edge. Storm has arrived, and then I don't think it's converging soon, so we should be okay. Oh, that's better than this. Did they fix it? Uh, we'll see if they fix it or not. Oh, looks like it's still bugged. Ooh, chains. Very important for me. Ooh, and that. Both of those are good. I'll take both. Again, Storm's coming in 11 seconds, so I have enough time to kill this, uh... couple of these guys here. Let's grab their aggro, and then I'm gonna have to get out. Okay, not a great ability set, but we can fuck with it. We don't have good escape. We don't have the ability to chase down really well. Oh, that's a slicing winds, though. Give me that fucking... Give me that fucking plunder. Uh, anyone land here? They left a slicing winds upgrade. Oh, 
Okay, let's just do nothing then. We actually need this too, unironically. Now we just need fish or axe. Uh, I'm also gaining no- Oh my god, someone's just leaving the kit! Insane RNG. Just leaving slicing on the ground. Dude, maybe they're leaving me- Maybe this is like some- This is like some fable shit. This seems like they're leading me breadcrumbs and I'm about to get slaughtered. Oh, well, that guy's level 7. Dude, this guy's scaring me. This is like breadcrumb. This is breadcrumb guy. You wanna fight? We can- We can fight. Oh no, they're instantly barreling. That's a- we, we kill that guy for sure. You're fucking chickening me, bro? Hey! Oh, he missed his searing axe? Not looking good for this guy. Uh, He's level 7 with only searing axe and fey form. What? That that's so weird. <laughs> like that's that is extremely weird. Uh Okay. <laughs> that's a rep farmer. Yeah, but like there's efficient ways of rep farming that involve picking up abilities you see, right? Oh. Uh we'll take that leap over that. Wait, that guy had axe. What the fuck am I thinking? That guy just had what I wanted, and I just left it there. My brain's broken. Too much alpha. The question is, I'd rather have lightning bolt work, I think. This works, though. I mean, this, this definitely works. I'm definitely going to fucking murder people with this build. I just need to level it up. Let's hit 8, and then we can... We should just kill people now, I think. Oh, does someone have the pieces of hate? Or is he fighting an NPC? Oh my god. So good. Uh, I think there's a guy there. That's That's good news. Hello, Pranima. Stop this chicken coop cast. Get absolutely destroyed. Wait, it still went off. Oh, I almost I thought I went behind that. Stopping that. Searing. Chaining him back. Then Oh! My fucking good golly oh molly. Look what he had. Uh, question, do we tank Ray? Do we take... Uh, rank 1 Bulwark there? Okay, that did not work out well for me. I was a little low going into that. The Juke! He thought I was going to fucking chain him. Good luck, buddy. Alright, uh... Don't want chains. Want lightning bulwark for sure. I hear some noise. Who's making noise? Was that was that the spider? Ooh. Purple, purple stuff. Lightning Bulwark ranks? Nope. Bunch of two repels? A lot of people with repel this game. Did they buff that? I think that spell stinks. Okay, level 8 guy. Wait, this is more competitive than before, though. I think you're right. I might have gotten a couple of just, like, random games. Dude, the I wish I recorded the random games I was playing, bro. It was the weirdest shit ever. It was crazy. This is like a bunch of level 8s. They were all like low level. I was just fucking murdering them. Going for the lightning bulwark there. Guessing. Right there. Nope. 
Are you slicing into me or away? Okay, yeah, I got his heal. Oh, he has lightning bulwark. It's fine. Fuck. Bad for me. Bad for me. Okay, lightning bulwark nothing. Quick heal then. Fuck, he fished me again. I can lightning bulwark this. No more fish. Won't, re won't reach me. I can get some distance. I have leap. I'm going to have to lightning bulwark his next hit. He does have blink as well. I need to wait for my next heal. This guy's here. Oh, that's Grandma Joe. Okay. Okay, now he's getting battled by someone else. Fuck. Very bad for me. The fuck out of here, bro. Nice. He's, he's slicing winds nowhere. Let's go. That hit me? Ain't no way that hit me. I think he can get me, actually. Dude, that's John. He has a fucking hog. No. He tried to hog me. No. No. Dude, do you guys remember that name? Do you remember the name John? We're from the fucking Trill game where we were saying John for like like 15 minutes. Holy moly. Okay, apparently no one was here. It's every white man in America. No, it was an epic game. You'd remember. You forgot the purple leap? Oh, shit. That would have really helped there, actually. Dude, we were kind of right about Grandma Joe. Lucky what we have here. Another... That guy's a stream sniper. Oh, interesting. He was in a few of our games, and he... Him and Trill 1v1 for a very long time. Oh, Diaz. Oh, weird. Weird, buddy. Weird to see you in here, huh? That's a mod of my stream right there. Fucking strafing in my face. Who do we got here? We got Vulcan Jew. We got Akira. We got Hollow Wizard. We got Holy Carp. We got Young Buck. Yo, Young Buck in all caps. Oh, fuck. That guy's going to destroy everybody in this lobby. Dude, I'm I'm legit scared of young of young Buck. Oh, getting in there. All right, please give me a landing spot over here. This is my this is my shit. This is my my shit over here. I like this. Where are we at? Oh, fuck yeah! All right, let's see how much competition we got here. Uh, one Harvest Golem, one here. I'm gonna contest Harvest Golem. No, they're going, they're going farm. Am I alone? That would be extremely hype if I was alone. Extremely broken if I'm alone here. Uh, I have someone close. I need to make sure I get the killing blow on the rare. That's Buck! Not, there's Buck and Young Buck in this game. Wait, this guy actually owns me. This Syndicate Reaper. Okay, I can finish him now. Okay, going for a quick heal. Finishing the rare. Getting the rhyme. Telling Buck to fuck off. Dude, he's just stealing my arrows. I'm not letting you loot that. Fuck you, buddy. I'm going to loot this now, I think. Can I actually bait this Magus away from me here? And then go for the loot? No, I'm not going to get it in time. Actually, I'm going to get up on this thing. Is Buck still looking at me funny? No, you're not looting that, man. Fuck you. Nah. Okay, now he's looting it. Fuck. 
Dude, pulling that Reaper is really dangerous, actually. That Reaper does a lot of your health. Oh, now we got another guy. Uh, okay, they're both out leveling me. Not ideal. We might have to stick to the edges here. We do have some escape if necessary. Rhyme arrow, awful, but uh, at this point in the... Okay, this is just obnoxious. All right, he's getting fought by someone else. Ideal as fuck. I'll be getting in there in a moment. All right, let's just get a big brawl going here. Oh, I am underleveled. Barreled away. I'm fine. I don't need that. I'm just, uh... Alright, fuck you, buddy. Uh -oh. that I have heal in five. We can trade. That's fine. I just need to... I can't stop leveling. I'm gonna just get out-leveled late game. I'm down to get in this fight, but it's just not excellent for me at the moment. Okay. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. You're gonna die for that. You went through his roots to do that, you fucking rat. You're done. No, please don't get upgrades to the abilities I need. Hey. Stop that. Okay. I remember when you were a Rhyme Arrow Enjoyer back in the day. Those were the days, yeah. Uh, let's grab those. Let's kill this rare. All of that's dog shit. And we, we can do it if you want. It just it's not, it doesn't benefit either of us. Yeah. Okay, you're shooting me instead of the mobs. Okay. Dude, my build right now is fucking dog shit. <laughs> I have to just... uh. It's so much harder until late game. No, no, Rhyme is just bad. In, in, in solos, you want to be slicing wins as a requirement, in my opinion. Uh, I think you want to be fish. You definitely want lightning bolt work, and then you can get a lot of things after that. But leap, leap is my favorite. In, in, sol like in, in duos, that's dangerous late game. In trios, that's psychotic unless you're fighting someone way better, or you're way better than someone. Oh, uh, rare up here too? Okay, we'll do that. Well, a bunch of mobs over here, too. A couple magic chests. That's actually solid. We should do this. Okay, that'll hit seven. Uh, let's go do the rare. Heard someone just fade to nothing. Or fade to shadow. Right? Oh, that's because they just killed this. And they left. Oh, yay! Uh, still some mobs up here. And there's a magic chest. Okay, there's a guy here for that. We got Buck. Boys, we got Buck again. Fucking young Buck from beginning. Uh, that's such a bad mana orb. Get stunned, Buck! You're actually so done! You're actually so done, Buck! Dude, Jag, that was bad. You're barreling after him. Jake is a fucking aggressive man. Go for a little double hit here. Got that. The little Michael Dublé. Oop. I'm gonna bushwhack this guy unless he hits me. Fuck. That was actually really bad for me. Okay, all my shitty abilities just got better. Hype. Super hype right there. That guy's fighting the pieces of hate, but he outlevels me. Fighting the pieces of hate is illogical, which means he probably doesn't play the game a lot, but his character is bigger than my character. And my build is as bad as it could possibly be. 
Uh, I mean, right now, I might as well... Like, I want Searing Axe instead, but... Okay. Yo. Hello. Why? Oh, yeah, this, this shouldn't be that bad. He thinks I'm behind him. This guy's so lost. Oh, nice lighty B. Oh, he wants him dead bad. My kill, buddy. Why did it go up there? What the fuck? Dude, if I'm that if I'm that guy, I'm actually screaming right now. How the fuck did that happen? Bro, what the fuck just happened? Why did my shit go diagonal? He has a fucking bird. Fuck your bird, buddy. All right, this is kind of just an all-out brawl right here. Wait, I can get purple rhyme arrow. Not a drill, boys. We are doing a rhyme arrow game right now. This shit stinks. Okay. Uh. Okay. Uh, grabbing this just in case we need it. Dodging that. Don't like that at all. Not pressing this. He canceled. Okay. I got stunned. I might die. I can try to jump. Why can't I jump? I... Okay. Well, I fully committed there to just jumping with this thing, but it just never worked. If that thing's in tar, does it not work? I guess. I looked like I was right on top of it. Does glue prevent you from getting the buff where you can jump? I was just trying to jump for like, like six seconds. It was on CD. It was on the, it was on the ground. It it wasn't, it wasn't on cooldown. I, it was on the ground in front of me. Doesn't glue slow down CD recovery. No CD recovery there was relevant. It was, uh... Yeah. Yeah, not, not the leap, guys. The, I put down a gravity thing where you get the three crazy jumps in the air or whatever. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'm I'm probably being confusing or something. Here we go. Oh uh, no, it's not updated. Should have used YouTube VOD. I still can. I still can. Right here. Okay. So right here, there's a gravity well down. I put it down. Wait. Oh, no, no, 20 seconds. I put a gravity well down now. 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 I get stunned. I'm trying to jump out of it. Pressing jump. No jump. I just I just never got the buff from this thing, even though I put it down right on top of me in the thing. That's why I was wondering if the uh if the tar prevents you from gaining that buff. Uh not great. Maybe just farm. Oh, I don't know if I can turn this fast enough. Oh I'm gonna have to go for these chickens. That's actually really good. Anyone with me? Someone usually lands close. Yeah, that guy landed right there. Let's uh go ahead and just grab all these things. Let's do a big pull out here. Get a ton of experience. Head towards that rare. I want this rare, buddy. I will be using Repel on you into the Fire Whirl. Fuck you, dude. I got the kill, though, and the experience. 
I'm not looking to fight you. Fighting you serves none of us well. I'm going to just take your XP, though. I need this XP bad. Oh, he's in there. I'm going to get this rare then. All good. Fuck out of here, buddy. Oh, right behind the house. Hey. Uh, now what? We're in the barn. We can go find people over here, I guess. That was not close enough. Cool. Uh, some guy just went over here. Does that stuff? Earthbreaker, Hunter's Chains, Repel Rank. That's massive. <laughs> Huge Repel Rank for me there. That guy's level three and not healed. I'm I'm gonna fucking kill that guy. That's free experience. I hit him with my hog. It didn't work. No, I won't be able to catch up. I don't think. I tried to hit him with my hog. Worst worst decision ever. Repel just slowed you. Ooh, very nice upgrades. Thank you. Thank you, big dog. Uh, what was over there? There was some stuff I wanted. Oh, lightning bulwark. That's me. We'll be taking that. That's an awful ability. Guy up there with Star Bomb. Attack. Guy down here. Super Ninja. Oh, a couple dead guys over here. A couple of abilities. We like that. I missed. Fuck. I should have waited for the blink. Come on. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. I can heal too. That's fine. No. Fuck out of here with your barrels, man. He's gonna get another... Omega tilted. Omega tilted. Ultra tilted. What's funny is it was your barrel. It was my barrel. You're actually right. Oh, nice little brawl going on over here. We can get into that. If only I had Slice, man. That's fine. One of these guys will have it for sure. We're going to have someone come into this uh, party late from over there, but yeah. Oh. We have a Natty Star Bomber and a level 5. That's probably going to barrel away from me. And I'm going to love it. Like right now. They're just going to Fae Form because they just picked it up. That hits for sure. They're going to jump. I can follow. Oh, thank you. Oh my god, you had everything. Rank 1 fish. We like fish more than uh, this, but yeah. Anyways, let's go back and kill the other guy. 
Yeah, when you see people attacking the pieces of hate, you already know what's up. And what's up is that they're about to die. Oh, I, he juked me. Dude, no fucking way. Nah, not, not today. I won't let this happen. You have to die. Oh, purple leap. Holy shit. Uh, nope. 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 Off. New friend! Oh, I got hit by the fucking guy. That's hype. You can't hit a rock, buddy. You let me have that? Alright. We'll take the gold EC. One, like, kill away from nine. We should definitely fight this guy. Oh, he cancelled it. This guy's good. This guy's really good, actually. Yeah, I outrank him a little bit, but he has a better ability than me. Good duel. Respectable. Um, blue fish over axe. I think I take that. I think there was another fish rank up here, too. Somewhere. Is it this guy? Yeah. That was a respectable duel. I'll miss him. Oh, he has to be so low from that. If you attack me, we have problems. All right. There's some murdering happen right now. It's a fucking brawl right now. Going hot. You coming after me, buddy? This guy, I can't stop his heal. Lightning Bulwark if you're smart. Yep. Nice play. Go for your hit on me. Oh, nice. He baited it. That guy's a beast, bro. I'm out of here. That guy outplayed me hard. All right, I know this the tech now. Get moving or die try. Can we get to ten? You know that's not gonna work, buddy. Okay, you can bait... Dude, I need to get better at the game. There's stuff that people are doing right now that is crazy. You're, like, charging up a Slicing Winds, baiting a Lightning Bulwark, canceling your thing. I need to think like that. I haven't been doing that. Had some good shit. Oh, fuck me. I'm dead. Yep, I'm the fuck out of here. Ain't no way. You can chase me if you want. I'm, I'm not fighting that. Not procking that. And we're out. Just a bad fight. I didn't mean to do this. This is actually a bad idea. Going back this way, grabbing the barrel.
All right, where's the guy who needs to die? That Amitsuki guy is for sure the most dangerous person. Oh, he stopped my thing. That's fine. Waiting on heal. Can I get 10? I have to have to get a killing blow to get 10. All right, let's get it. Amitsuki guy, definitely the most dangerous. This level 10 right here. And then me and this guy will duke it out. Oh, he missed his toxic smack, bro. This guy's got the schmooze. I can feel it. All right, he's going to run away forever. It makes sense for me in this level 9 to 2v1 the 10. All right, this guy wants my blood. That, I can't believe that hit me. Whatever, early heal. Not scared of that nine. He's hopping on a hog, bro. Ain't no way he's hogging after him. That's crazy. The fucking, the fucking hog knowledge, the hog gap. He fucking hog gap, this guy. Couldn't stop. Guys, gonna go for a quick heal. I have heal off CD. I'm so dead. Alive? Dead? Dead. Fuck! Dude, holy fuck! That toxic smack roll is so sick. I was so aggressive there. I, I should I should have used. Oh, is Amitsuki? Were me and him fighting gonna make us lose? That's actually fucking lit. Bro, kind of gamed on you. That that guy was sick. That guy was hard gaming. Yeah, dude, I think the double XP weekend, these games are not looking nothing like the ones I was queuing the other day, random. I contributed in his loss. Yes, I did. And I'll fucking do it again. The low CD multiple movement strat is just feels bad. People just run for days. But it's also the only way you can close on fights, too. They're just the best abilities, man. Did I count on play some duos and trios? Because at least it feels diffy. Other abilities are good. All right, we got Gravy Train. We got Beer Life. What do we got here? What do we got? Any other good names? I think Thunder. There's a guy. There's a guy named Thunder. Can I stop getting these birds? I mean, I guess I land here, but. I think there's a guys right here. Yeah, they were good. Give me something good here. Star bomb. Unironically, not bad. That guy didn't even land and get an ability, and I'm gonna star bomb to finish off all these mobs. I'm gonna try to get the killing blow. So he's gonna get blade storm done. I don't care about killing anything here. I just want the killing blows on it. Okay. Should get them all. This guy is getting absolutely styled on right now. Oh, new guy with Fire Whirl. Bad news for me. I don't want to get fished again. Yep. Fuck that. Uh, I just tried to pick that up. Please. Please. Got one of them. 
Uh, I'm going to have to barrel out of here. Yeah. Nope, I'm going to die to Toxic Whirl. Wow, man. Fuck me. Might live, actually. Yep, they jumped. Oh. I can move into my Star Bomb for protection. I'm so dead. Fuck, dude. I fucking put the moves on the one guy, but we just got uh we got two v one unfortunately. I also I I dropped the fish on accident for the storm archon. The fish was way better in that situation. Like fish early that early game is so fucking good. I should have kept that for sure. Like storm archon is like kind of bad in early game because like you might as well just be mailing them. It's good if they try to run. But also it's the only reason it broke my barrel was because I was poisoned. New Nubisco, Juddles, Alpha XL, Idiot Box, Chocoholic, K Boom, Steel Gaming, Disney Girl. Okay, Disney Girl's gonna. There's like two. There's two universes, and one of them is Disney Girl's gonna destroy everyone, and one is Disney Girl is gonna get destroyed instantly. Get mad. Oh, dude, you don't want to be poisoned when the game starts. It'll actually do damage. Wait, like right now. Am I poisoned fresh? No, it's not fresh. You will actually tick down from a poison as the game starts. Uh, wow. Uh, okay. So, are there little small mobs? I'm going to land on a rare. Oh, I almost didn't land on a rare. Anyone here with me? Nope. I'll use this to stop the Elements Unleashed. Gonna open some of these goldies. Wow, that's actually not a bad landing spot. Not good, but not bad. And now I can go clean up the people in the town, maybe? Okay, level five. Pretty fast. Killing four mobs. Uh, yeah, let's go into town. Let's kill some of these mobs into town and clean up whoever's there. That tarantula dodged that. Oh, he almost did. <laughs> Typical spider behavior. There's a guy out there, level one. We'll let that guy be. He's just a PvEer. Okay, uh, level three, and another person. No! It hit the terrain, and those mobs got fucking... And they have Toxic Smack rolled. Really bad for me. The literal best 1v1 ability. I don't know if I want to fuck with this. Even low low... Oh, they missed. Okay, this should be good. Oh, I didn't... I should have waited for Star Bomb to be up with it. They're boating in my face. Uh, taking that. I'm gonna barrel up here. Oh, maybe got him? Nope. Can't go up the stairs, buddy. I got a barrel too, big dog. You 
You're going to instantly get brought out of stealth. No, do not. No, no. I refuse to let you die in the storm. Me versus you. That's it. Oh, I'm going to take a lot of damage to this. I might be dead. I think that guy just killed me. Maybe not. Oh, wait, no. The map is wrong. Interesting. That guy's about to run into the storm. There is no crime more embarrassing than running into the storm when someone's fighting you. It's it's a horrible. Uh, oh wait, three things. Oh, star bomb rank, fey form rank over there, huge. Huge for my current build. Do we try to win a star bomb solo game? Well, what happens when we run into a slicing winder later? Do we just die? We just, and, and they're good at the game? Do we just... Is it just over? <laughs> Alright, this guy's name is Wild No Caps. Insane. He's jumping away. I see him. Oop. Slicing wind star bomb game. No, he, he CC immune to my shit. Bro, that was my whole combo. Please stop. Come back. Stop blinking. Please get comboed. Oh, he's right there. Thank you, bird. Oh, what do we got over here? Earthbreaker Ring, Caltrops, Holy Shield. Uh, Guy. Hello, Frosty. Uh, Yeah, Leap is probably better. Leap also enables Star Bomb, kind of. Why am I why am I saying words like enables Star Bomb? Let's try it. Okay, that one. Oh, wait. It worked. I couldn't see repel. What the fuck? Uh, seeing if he has barrel. Uh, this might be. Yeah. He's backpedaling in a circle. This is not good. All right. Uh, nope. Please let me just take my thing. Please, dude. I'm so I hate when this happens. I want that. I don't want this. I want that. I want my ability. Please give me my ability. How'd you miss him, you stunned? I'm out of here, bro. I'm the fuck out of here. One more heal in a second. I need that uh, other ability, but it's all good. Okay, guys, the Star Bomb build feels so bad. <laughs> this feels bad. I I'm down to fight this, but... Uh, what did he just get? Purple what? I didn't even see. Oh, it was an upgrade to what he already had. Windstorm. Uh, ooh. Hunter's Chains. Uh, that's actually for my build. Okay, Faye. All right, guys, trust. The build is good. I'm not. I'm not swapping. I'm not swapping, chat. We're we're doing the whole game with it. There. Told you, chat. You just gotta read it. Okay, I can't stop the heal. Gonna turn around and fight this guy. Let's just exchange heals, by the way. Ooh, Fae formed early. Fatal mistake. Because now you can't get out of my fucking star bomb, buddy. You're fucking done. 
No, now he's gonna barrel in my face. Yes, yes, we stopped it. All right, let me look through some of these items. Maybe I can get something here. Oh yeah, let's drop that. Let's get this. We like that. Oh, he, did he just kill someone over here? <laughs> we can trade on that, sure. No, fuck Starbomb, man. I meant to cancel it. Nice. Good job by you, buddy. This is such an annoying fight. I'm just leaving. You think I'm running. But you ain't running for me. Better I blink. Yep. Oh, so close. It's so hard to hit a star bomb, bro. We're fucking out of here. Oh, that guy's level 10. I'm so dead. See you later. That star bomb just, uh, that slicing wind just hit me, by the way. All right. Well, we're dead to the level 10. So we got to keep star bomb then, right? And fish smack. Bro, at least try to bait me. Like one fucking... Oh, he has a higher rank slicing wins. I don't know if I can kite him. Nice. All right, let's get in this. This is where the power of star bomb comes in, chat. Even though we're underleveled, and even though our abilities stink, we can bomb. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We like this. You got to go for a heal now, right? Oh, no. Rank 1 Slicing Winds. I'll never catch him. Yeah, dude. Slicing Winds kind of sucks. Because, like, the fact that Slicing Winds exists, it just means that everyone plays like this at late game. And it's just infinite movement. All right. Do we swap off Star Bomb chat and try to win? Oh, purple Star Bomb. It's a fucking sign. Keeping it. Keeping it. No, dude, Starbomb fucking pisses me off, man. I know I got stunned, but I went for the hit. Oh, so low. No. He has Starbomb too. Friend. No, no, no. Friend. Not foe. I'm not going to take leap. I'm going to have no mo mobility, but I think this is the only way I can land star bombs. Ooh, do you guys think this is even playable without slicing? Like, I just have no mobility. Like, if, if I get caught out in any fight, I'm dead. <laughs> All right. Let's get... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, sir. Oh, one of these guys, I bet, has, has slicing. Get fucking bombed! No. I'm mad. Don't aim that at me. That would be so disrespectful. Oh, slice. Oh my god. Please. Yes. Oh, baby. 
Star bomb. He has lightning bolt workup. Oh, wow, I missed. That would have actually been able to get him off, though. Get him off? Did I mean that that way? Oh, he can catch me because I have this. Yep, he had to go the other way. That's going to give me some space. He's going to lightning bolt work. It's fine. I'm going to lightning bolt work. I'm going to dodge a slice. Oh, just kidding. Oh, nice hit. No, please, 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 please. Stop this. Yes, he lightning bolt nothing. That's very important for me. That means I can do this. No, it hit a rock! All right. Everyone's looking at me funny right now. Stop this. Okay, quick little heal. We're back in the fight. That guy might have lightning bulwark. We need to get this guy's lightning bulwark and then just stun him and star bomb him. This guy, he has it right now, so we need to bait it. Uh, we got baited. Just kidding. Uh, okay, we're getting owned right now. Okay, this guy's fire whirl. That's interesting. I can get a little star bomb on him before I die. That'd be fun. Let's get out here. Okay, he tried to get me. I can get a quick little heal. Going back in. Guys, we're trying our best. This fucking sucks. Uh, okay, we don't want to kill Lasher. We want to kill Wesley. No, the fucking star bomb hit the... Dude, star bomb with terrain so bad. Stopping his heal. Oh, my God. That guy just died to nothing. Hey. I tried to go around it. Lightning bolt nothing. No, I needed to hit that. I fucked and I healed nothing. This is over. You're fucking done. Get bombed. Oh my God. Holy shit. Get bombed on. All right. Very good. Let's go. Dude, having slicing wins and star bomb at the end of that game in the circle that has all the small pebbles is not ideal. <laughs> Max, is Liquid going to play Cataclasic? Nope. I might play it. Sounds kind of fun. Are you going to Mythic Plus or anything in Season 4 or completely skipping it? Oh, completely skipping it. Shit fucking stinks. Big stink. Is Alpha really tomorrow? Yeah. All right, who do we got here? I didn't see any names. J Devil, Fat Man, one, two, three. Oh, we got some bangers in here. Someone's name is the Wagon. Oh my God, the Wagon is a murderer. By the way, I can feel it. All right, this is really dangerous. What I'm about to do, but I want to land here, so I'm gonna do it. Usually, this is really lit and not efficient because of its litness. Yeah, we have someone up there. They landed in the slightly better spot too. I have a nice goldy C down here. That didn't do damage to the big guy. Slicing rank is good. Let's get the golden chest. He's going to have better mobs than me. I can maybe go steal that rare, actually, if he's not contesting it. I don't have a second ability, though. I'm going to go for it. Yeah, 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 yeah.
You gotta box out your rares, buddy. And and his golden chest. This guy's giving me everything. Thank you. Uh, harvest golems? Oh my god, harvest golems still up. Great googly moogly. Alright, we're trying something forbidden here. Okay, never mind. Uh, everything got broken, so fuck that. They call this efficient. Nah, 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 nah. Get out of here. Scram. Alright, the start of this game is fucking crazy. We are extremely powerful. Uh, That's better than what I currently have, but not ideal. Very fast. I am very fast right now. <laughs> like, I literally have four movement abilities. Okay, I'm just trying to suck up all this plunder as efficiently as I can here. I hate Fire World, though. Fire World fucking stinks. Yo, the wagon. Wait, his name was off the wagon. I thought it was just the wagon. That's my rare, by the way. Get out of here. All right, now we can get it. He only had fish. Oh, I should have done that. I actually shouldn't have done that. Oh, all these rares are up. Yo. So value. Is that, if this is a fake chest, I'm pissed. Because that means someone came here, didn't kill the rare, and left a fake chest. That is... That is, like, peak levels of trolling. Uh, okay. That for that. This over. Oh, that's why. Alright, I've only killed one person and I'm level 9. Uh, Windstorm. We just need to murder now. Oh, we fought this guy a few times. Teb littered. Does he want it again? We don't have awesome abilities here for a 1v1, but I'm, I'm down if he wants to do it. Oh, he slowed me. Fuck you, buddy. Quick little heal. All right, reset. I'm Bush. He doesn't see me, chat. Where could I have gone? <laughs> Come on, get close enough to him. Come on, cast Bushwhack. No! That would have been so hyped, though. He's going to snowdrift. Getting out. Oh, it still hit me from there. Hogging out. Not feeling good about that.
Oh, he's hard chasing, huh? Oh, he wants me fucking dead. Holy shit. I respect that. I'm a coward for running. But I kind of hate the fact that I have firewall, or I have a uh, fire whirl, and he has fish. Fish just gaps in that scenario. I also don't have lightning bulwark. Yeah, yeah, let me just click on that. Let me just click on that, by the way. Yeah, that's fucking insane. I fucking respect the fuck out of that. Maybe I would have gotten tricked. That's him. Okay, I fought him a few times in the last circle. He's definitely a gamer. Need lighty be bad. Oh, let's just go straight down. Wesley. Yo, is Wesley alive? Wesley looks like he's just sitting here. Wesley. Come on. Perfection. Please drop. Please drop. Now we've got a build. Uh, let's drop that for Searing Axe. Call it a day. We just need to get fish from somebody. That's all. There's a lot of stuff in the fields. Maybe we can get something over here. With Firestorm, traps should be good. Fi uh, Firestorm's really bad. You just die. This is the guy I said was going to... He's hogging in my face! How did that hit him? Hello? Is that some, like, client-side shit? Max Tiblerd has fish. I know, he's fucking beating me over the head with it. I mean, I'll fight Tiblerd if it comes for that, but both of us looked like we wanted to go our separate ways and just fucking farm everybody else first. We can meet at the end. Look, he's just fucking... Is that him murdering Lemon right now? Probably. Yo, what's up? Yo, I need that. No, please don't do that. I need to get that rank. Thank you. Ain't no way. No! No way! Such a good fight, though. No, please don't. No, 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 no. Not me. Not me. Anybody but me. Ah! There's so many people! Stop it! Okay. Wait, my, my heal just canceled. Okay, we're in the fucking dumps right now. We're in the dumps. We're in such in the dumps. We are as dumpsy as you can be. This guy wants my fucking... He wants to see my head on a pike. He's gonna kill me. This guy... He has a jump pad. So bad for me. So bad for me. Woo! Heal in three seconds. And then we can fucking get it, by the way. Yeah, you see me turning around, you little bitch? Huh? You don't see so confident now? Huh? What happened? What happened, Ludi? What happened, Ludi? You have Star Bomb and you're doing that? Get out of my game, Ludi! Get sent to the fucking briny deeps, buddy! All right, let's go.
You're fucking done for. No, he's gonna live. Wait, he fucking came back in! I respect the fuck out of that! And he stunned this- he stunned my enemy! How is his not- thing not breaking mine? You're so fucking dead. Oh, he had better abilities than me, too. Holy shit. That guy had fucking everything. Who's next? Where's everybody at? I'm feeling hiding in a barn angle. Is anyone else feeling hiding in a barn? There's an enemy in here, no way. Oh, that guy messaged me, by the way. Moving my chat, this guy said, get a life, and then he said, no life. <laughs> Wait, wasn't he the one who attacked me? That guy definitely attacked me. <laughs> you think he's a bush chat? Which one? You can usually tell. He would have to already be posted up in the circle. Maybe he could be a boat right now. I did leave a boat out there. He could be boating. By that fence to your right? Nah, none of these. Wait, actually... You think it's this bush? Nah, I don't think so. No! What happened? Why? How did... How did I win? I was going to let that guy win if he just showed himself. Poor guy. Wait, that guy was whispering me in spectator mode. Can you... Someone just whispered me and they said... One second. Oh no, it resets your chat. Someone whispered me and said he's in a bush next to the brown barn. Was that someone spectating? Can you whisper people in game when you're spectating them after you die? That's fucking bullshit. I didn't know that. You could ghost like crazy. Dude, am I crazy, by the way? That game, when did I kill that that guy that was like J something. Not this guy. Not when I killed Tebler. Although that was... How did I survive that, by the way? So I got chased down by this guy. Came back. Killed him. And then Obsd or whatever I'm fighting. And then I'm sucking up that plunder. And then Regisy is there. I kill Regisy. And then this guy. Didn't... I swear. Didn't he attack me? I'm going to kill this Regisy guy. And he sliced in to fight me. And all I did was kill him. He, like, fought me straight up. Like, if it was someone who was trying to go into the zone and then... You know what I mean? Like, this is the person who messaged me saying, You have no life. Get a life. Bro, you were... You started the fight. W what's going on here? And even implying that not starting the fight meant that you... That would... Any of that make sense. I'm just so confused. Is that guy just mad? Like, just insanely mad, I guess? Uh, okay. So, let's go farm, I guess. Uh, I don't know where anything is. Oh, okay. We landedly ran it on some birds. Oh, okay. I don't know if there are people here. 
but this is the best use. Landing Storm Archon can sometimes be bad and sometimes be insanely good. The insanely good part is you can pull everything. Like this. Oh, the uh, these things scratching me is dangerous. Like this. I should steal this guy's kills here. Oh, he's going to star bomb. He's going to get it. Oh, nice. He's going to snow drift me. That's a little annoying. Okay. A little annoying. Please stop. I'm super rooted. Whatever. Uh, we still have a rare over here we can get. This guy's going to contest me for it. That's smart. All I need to do is get the killing blow. <clears throat> He's going to go for it. No. Okay, got it. And slice. Got it. Quick little heal. Okay, now I'm in the driver's seat. Two levels up on this guy. He has barrel. I have barrel. I have slice. I'm faster. He earthbreakered nothing. Stopped his heal instantly. He's going to barrel. I can counter barrel. He already healed. You have to barrel. There's only one choice. Please just go ahead and use it. Nice repel. The other guy has snow drift, right? Uh, I don't think I can wait out his next repel cooldown. Why would you just not attack me? <laughs> the auto attacks there would have been value. Uh, me and Morg, you want to get it? Oh, he blinked? Okay, I kind of want blink. I'm going to repel this guy's bomb. It's still going off somehow. Okay, fighting this roll. Ooh, I want Toxic Smack roll though. We're gonna we're gonna battle because I want that spell. I have barrel if I need to. He can go for a heal. I don't I don't think I've gotten his heal yet. Uh that almost positive hit him. Uh he's gonna go for a heal now. I'm not gonna use my barrel because he could barrel after the heal. Dude, this guy is so annoying. <laughs> I got him. I wanted that leap back there. It's not worth chasing him. This guy's super annoying. Uh, I can grab a second ability too. Uh, anything here? S Mana orb. Slicing rank. Bird. Okay, we like that. And we can maybe kill this Holy Shielder over here. Oh my god, he had purple lightning bulwark. Holy shit, that is good. I literally had the full kit. I just need to not die right now to being in a bad position because I just finished a fight. But I have fucking everything. Holy shit. Alright, let's get it. This is that guy from before. Fucking DeVito, fight me. I'm I'm I don't care if it's not the right move to kill this guy, he has to die. Fucking get out, man. Please. So annoying. Alright, uh more. Oh yeah, let's just get it. 
Oh, nice lady B. You're just gonna run over me with that? Like I'm a fucking, like I'm nothing to you? Oh, wow. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll chill out a little bit. Oh, that's bad for me, actually. All right, we'll dip. We'll dip. Say less, buddy. I get it. You want me to die. I understand. Fish way better than axe? That is correct. Uh, I don't know if not, like, regular axe is better than, or regular fish is better than blue axe. I don't know if I'd go that far, but... Ooh, Bobi is high level. Ooh, we're just gonna... Please don't shoot me with that. Oh, he has fire world. That's good. That's good for me, at least. This guy's gonna just loot that. Uh, I should have delayed even more. What is this? I'm really low level. It's probably from chasing that fucking idiot all game. All right, let's get some levels. Uh, that went on cooldown. Uh, can I get levels at this point? Different question. Uh, maybe by picking on somebody my own size? Like this guy? Oh yeah, this guy looks like a PvE farmer and everything. Let's go. And we need his abilities? Let's go. Wait, I didn't even level off that. Uh, I need to suck up this plunder. Maybe I can get it. One more. That guy just appeared out of nowhere. Trying to murder. Please stop. He's still a level higher than me. Come on, man. We just juked each other. Yay! Yay. That guy was higher level than me. I should have gotten more experience from that. Game bad. Ooh, hog. Oop, heard a guy. I, I I was not running from you. I didn't know you were there. I would never. I would never run from you. Bro, ain't no way. He's going for a quick heal. I just need to stop his heals all. No, he's gonna... Fuck me. He's gonna use Lightning Bulwark. Try to bait it. Nice. Lobby out. Alright, uh, we're gonna have to run into a few level 10s here, I believe, but that's fine. How would one know if you're in the war with an alpha? You won't know yet. Uh, they haven't, as far as I know, the access hasn't been given out yet. It's gonna happen tomorrow. Hello, Lucas Bowman! Hello! No, I thought he was going towards me. Fuck me. He's going to run so hard. I got his heal. He's just going to run. Oh, I fucking hate this. Come on, get a dot. Yes, I got a dot on him. That's so huge. Come on. Shoot me. Oh, he's so lucky. Stop slowing me. 
Got his heal again. Get owned. Oh, that's so much plunder. Oh my god, I'm gonna suck this shit down. Can I hit nine? Fuck, I'm not gonna hit it. Fuck. Oh, nice. I can hit nine off this guy. Nice blink. Oh. Oh. Oh, this is this is not fair. No! He stopped my ability. I don't think I got a single kill X. Oh no, I did get a kill there. That repel is gonna stop both of them, but I had a bleed on that guy. Or uh whatever it's called. Sucking up blunder. Wait, my leak still went off? Oh, weird. I was wondering how they both died. This guy's name is fucking Destructo. Holy shit. Destructo friend. I don't want to hurt him. Wait, what the... What the f is attacking me? Pick. Pick. No. Destructo, please. These are not, these are attacking spells, but I'm not trying to hit you. I'm trying to just stay with you to talk. Destructo, please. Have you won yet? I'm not- I could be attacking you, but I'm not. Respond. Respond to me! Guy, Destructo doesn't give a fuck about me. Please. I just want him to ca- He attack! He attack! Not yet. Got you. Alright, where the fuck they at? Operation Save Destructo. Wait, he said it with a smile. You think he's... No, 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 no. We're not working... No. I don't want to win fights with you. I'm just not going to kill you because you're a friend. I don't want to 2v1 people with you, but I want to kill them. But I'm trying to get Destructo a win. Oh, I hit him on accident. God damn, I hit hard. All right. Uh, I think he thinks I'm trying to team with him. I don't want to do that. I just... Wait. Let's see. What, what's the landscape of the last circle here? I think there's a few bushes, maybe? Guys, chat, what do you guys think? Do you guys think the smile is saying that he has a win already? Do you think he was lying? Oh, this guy's here. Hello. Why, why run? No, Destructo, no! No, no! Enemy! Destructo, why were you fighting? God fucking damn it, Destructo. No wonder you haven't won. All you had to do was just fucking sit in a bush somewhere. You fucking ran into the battle. Okay. God fucking damn it. I tried too. Yeah, I failed the escort quest. Yeah. Max whispering in spectator doesn't work. Wait, so he messaged me that while I was killing him. But he attacked me. I'm so convinced. Do I still have it pulled up? This guy. 
I, I don't, I can't, I'm not showing my messages here because my camera's blocking it, but. So that means that you can't whisper in spectator. That means that this guy directly whispered me somehow before he died. But he, again, he attacked me. Like right here, he tries to kill me. It's not like he's PVEing and avoiding conflict. He's level nine. He's been killing people. And then at some point he stops and types no life. When is it? It's gotta be right here, right? No, I mean he never he never types it. It had to be after. All right, let's see what kind of people we got in this game. We got Matt. 07 Justice for Destructo. Yeah, dude. Is Destructo in this game? Come on, Destructo. Is he back in here? All right, fuck. Oh, shit. Best spawn of all time? Wait. Yeah, over here, over here, over here. Turn. Bird up, bird up. Uh, One guy's here. No one's uh, at the good spot. That is beautiful. I'm going to land there then. Give me a good ability. Oh, my fucking God. That's a good one. All right. Aggressively barreling. Chicken, stop it. They're, like, predicting my fucking movement. Guys, that is worth a barrel, I think. Be insane if someone just caught me at 30 HP there and killed me, but <laughs> we take those risks. Already level four because of that. Destructo was in the lobby? He, he was in the lobby. He died. Chat, in, in, look, look, look in the chat right now. Look. Rory the cat, enemy. If we see Rory the cat, fucking it's on site. Avenge Destructo. Oh, yeah. That's my mob. Please don't take my mob. We don't have to do this. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to fight you. I'm just trying to get this mob. Please don't whisper me some mean things. You know what? Fucking get back here. Nah. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I was I was feeling aggressive there because I was mad about Destructo, but I I realized it wouldn't have been fair to take it out on that guy. Better get moving. Storm's coming. Ooh, double melee build? Forbidden forbidden tech? There is a... What the fuck is happening over here? This is a fucking brawl. Little Michael Dublé. Nice, nice, Lighty B. No, I just stealthed too. What's that thing? Explosive Caltrops? Uh, so everyone's just going to run, huh? All right, me and you, we're the same level. We're both... I'll take Caltrops, actually. Is this still bugged? 
Yep, it's still bugged. Okay, unusable. Dude, he fucking juke me. He juke me twice. I have to put this down. This thing's still bugged. Unfortunately. Where? Oh, he took it. He took my fey form. Fuck. Uh -oh. This little rat. Fuck, lightning bulwark. Nice. Oh, he got fucking crammed, though. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. He has, the, he has a dot on him. Even if he heals, he's fucking screwed. Oh, man. I can't catch him, though. Guys, being this slow is so sad. It's so sad. And before this fucking level three gets away from me. Yes. Again, we looked at each other earlier. We can we can do it if you want to do it. Fade away searing. Ah, oh, that didn't work. Okay. Little gift. This guy came farmed plunder all game just to come and give it to me. Uh I need to get slicing wins real bad right now. My build fucking smells bad. Grimhorn did not kill Destructo. It was someone else. Uh, ooh, nice. New guy. No, he has... Oh, wait, he has Slice, which means I have to kill him. Barreling aggressively after this guy. Ooh, Toxic Smackerel ranks. He's going to go for him, isn't he? This guy's my worst nightmare. Please don't take those. Okay, we're good. Whew. My only mobility is leap, so I can't really use it early. I kind of need to also connect with it to get any damage out. Here we go. Michael Duble! All right. Yep. Everyone in this game makes me mad. All right, only movement here in a second. God, not having slice feels so bad for a melee build, by the way. It feels insane. Oh. Oh, my God. Let's get in this. Let's get in the middle of this mess. Okay, good, good by me there. Oh my god, the kit. The fucking kit. Thank you. Alright, where is this absolute fucking bitch that killed Destructo? Let's read some names. Drowsy? No. Is it the guy that just blinked? This guy, Cal Mustang? No. Hanu Card? Dude, I'm seeing the same people in every game. I've killed all these people so many times. That's probably why I was getting whispered. Maybe I didn't just kill that guy one game. Maybe I killed him multiple games earlier. I didn't mean to do that. They're not... They're not... Wait, pick... Terrible lightning bolt by me. Insane that that hit. Hey, stop it. Stop it. Uh, that canceled my heal again. A little unfortunate. That's fine. I don't know if I'll need it. Uh, 
Uh, we can play pretty aggressive. We have good abilities. Maybe I can hit nine off this guy's plund. Let's see. Nope. Unfortunate. Really unfortunate, actually. Uh, that guy's still fighting over there. We still got some brawling happening over here. Dude, there's so much stuff on the ground. That hawk guy wanted to fight me earlier. Let's get it, hawk. Red. All right. Zara. Don't recognize that name. Rhyme Toxic Smackerel. Rare combo. I thought I could slice behind him there. Toxic Smackerel, nothing. Plunder to 10, maybe? They had a lot of plunder. Someone spawned chickens! More plunder? Hit 10 angle? Got it. Oh, you stopped my heal. Fuck you, buddy. Absolutely fuck you, kid. Oh my god, get destroyed. Jesus. All right, I should probably be a little careful now, huh? Oh, I thought I was going to read that, and he, like, counter-read me. You're playing Manosphere, though? That should be a pretty easy, pretty easy win. Uh, oh, it's just me versus him. I wonder if he's won a game yet. Have you won yet? What's his response? Yeah. All right. It's on site then. Wait, I caught him typing. I'll let him heal up. He was typing. You can heal up. That's some bullshit. You're good. Heal. Or pick. Okay. Stop typing. He said ready. All right, let's get it. Nice, nice blink. We canceled it. Let's go. Ah, nice job. He's going for a heal. Where the fuck is he? He's a fucking wizard! How'd he do that? Real wizard! Real wizard alert! It's been real, buddy. Alright. What does Max mean when he says pick? I don't know, maybe they just want to take a nice picture. Not everyone in this game is hostile. Sometimes they're friendly.
there's friendly gamers. Yeah. You just have to walk up to people that are way lower level than you. And they'll usually start spamming their abilities because they're scared. But don't start fighting back because, you know, they're just scared. They don't know any better. And then you just have to, like, ask them for pick or just say hi. And then they're cool. You can tell sometimes when people in this game are pacifists. Finished slow horses need new show. Apparently I need to start watching Shogun. That's the that's the word on the street at least. I think Fired Up just whacked my team in plunder if he's playing. Oh, let me see if he wants to play. All right, guys, let me know. We're on Destructo Watch. Let me know if you see Destructo. Uh, let's go farm. Unless it's, like, super crowded. Let's see what we got here. One bird, two bird, zero bird so far. Dude, if I get solo farm, it's easy win. That's way too much value. Someone else has got to be coming here. Unless? Wow. Uh, let me do this to group into one more fire whirl. No, I'm going to get stuck. Oh, we're good. We're good. Oh, wait. Someone's here. Hey. No, 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 no. No. Come on. Get the killing blow. Nice. Oh, so efficient. Just peak efficiency. I mean, that's insanely efficient. Fucking killed that guy right on top of the fucking rare. Max was WoW 2 earlier confirmed by devs? Yeah, WoW 2 is coming to Xbox. It's an Xbox exclusive. Today they were given out signed copies by Bill Gates. snakes Yay! Oh, that guy's good. I played against that guy at the end of a game before. We might want to go our separate ways and murder for a bit. I'm down I'm down to just get it though. If you want to get it, we can get it. Put a fucking boat on your head? Uh, he's gonna go for a heal. I should probably finish that guy off while I can. 
Dude, he's so fast. That guy's going for him, too. Yeah, I should definitely try to kill this guy. I mean, I'm so slow, though. I have chains. Had level fives going after him. I'm your friend, buddy. I should have never left that thing on the ground earlier. All right, I'll kill this guy for some quick experience. Hey. Don't do that. Die easily. That's what I'm always looking for. I want you to die fast. Like that. All right, you can get it too, buddy. You came in here to steal my fucking... Okay, I won't be able to get out of that in time. Nice mana sphere by you. You gotta be looking to get away though, right? You're not can't be feeling pretty comfy right now. Okay. Okay, that guy is still close. I should probably go for him soon. Let me get this kill first though. Nah, that's the end of you. You had to bait me. Your only choice was to bait me. Okay, now I have some speed. Okay, that guy probably killed. Wait, is that a level one? See, this guy's a pacifist. Good luck. Make it all the way to the end, buddy. You can have the win if you make it there. Wait one second, let me... Alright, I need some levels, though. Stop griefing him. I'm not fucking doing anything to him. He's friendly. I think this guy is probably the best one to kill. Fuck me, I'm so bad. Oh, he's still attacked into it. Okay. He's worse, so all good. <laughs> oh, so big. Okay, just don't scratch me then. I was going to use you for some free movement speed. Oh my god, just a random slice rank. Wait, oh, there's a whole minefield of stuff over here. Toxic smack rule, three ranks, yes sir. No, it's in the gas. No. Uh, future sims, let's get it. Wow, uh, it just canceled my leap. Maybe he dies a dot? No shot, right? Three. I think he's going to have like two ticks from dead. I don't think he quite dies. Oh, that's... So, I fucking... Oh, I'm so bad. All right. That's him after he just healed. Hopefully that level one's still alive. He was on this side of the circle. We might need to protect him a little bit. Oh, he has the fish rank we need. You're right, I do need to hunt him down. And he already knows what's good, so he'll be he'll be scared. 
There he is. Okay, just got a second heal off. All right, you've gotten two full heals. Are you, are you, are you ready? No way you're still running. We're the same level. You're full health. Hey. Stop. Attack me. Uh, not good for me. I'm getting a little 2v1 right here. Use an ability. I might die to that. Quick heal. I canceled my heal. I'm so... This happened last game, man. If you try to heal too fast out of the thing, you just don't get it off. Maybe I can get away. Actually, what the... Like, what the fuck is doing that? If you do it fresh out of a... Of a thing, it just doesn't go off. That guy just got all that loot, too. That's so sad, man. That is so sad. That guy may be faster than me. He is faster. I don't think he'll quite make it to me here. Oh, my God. If, if there was anything in the world, that could be worse for me. Try to bait it. Nice. Got it. I have lightning board for the next thing. Bait his fish smack. No, we did it in stealth, bro. I'm so dead. Go up, bait him a little bit. Healing in two seconds. Going for it. This guy has fucking quadruple movement skills. Stop it. I'm so mad. That's going to do damage to me now. He has uh, that into... F he can try to go for fish. Oh, he's fucking stealthy my fish. I'm so dead. Oh, he missed! Thank God! And he sliced the wrong way. That is so good for me. Healing. Into my fuck... Okay, into a new guy. Sounds good. What? Excuse me? My lightning bolt just didn't work. Okay. Of course that guy just comes out of nowhere. After that guy ran for me earlier. Fucking fourth partied. Let's just, let's just fight the whole lobby. I mean, why not? I actually died to a bug. Like, like a minute or two before, I had a free heal away from everyone, and it just fucking stopped. I didn't jump. It was right after I used... It's either slicing or leap. If you're spamming heal out of those abilities, even though you're not in the air, it will cancel it. It's one of those two. It seems like it's bulwark. I don't think it's bulwark. I can show you. I can show you what happened. While we're waiting for a game here. Alright, right here. Alright, here we go. Just before this. Alright, so. I'm in bad, bad spot, right? So, I... Slicing wins. Into a heal. Cancel. You see? Slicing wins. I'm spamming heal as slicing wins ends. I land, don't jump, and the heal cancels and it stops. It doesn't do anything. Was your bulwark still on? No, my bulwark was all the way off, right? No. It's my bulwark's completely gone when I try to heal. Uh, oh, that guy landed hella early. Uh, oh, I can farm a bunch of XP, though. I can hard screw this guy right here. Can I do it in time? Yes. And get the Earthbreaker. Insta, insta use. Okay, that guy's pissed now. All right, I'm going to grab all this stuff. Uh, he's smart if he's... Oh, he's, like, hard running. Interesting. I'm not trying to kill you, bro. You were just trying to take my XP, and that's fucked up. Can't do that. 
Uh, did someone land Harvest Golem? Oh my god, no. I'm going that way. Uh, yeah. That's way too value. Hmm, holy shield over blue holy shield over oh yeah, that's way better. What am I thinking? Is that guy still over there farming? I don't know if we need to take him out. He seems like he's friendly. Uh what do you guys think? He blamed <laughs> No fucking way, man. The fucking bush was crazy. Dude, I should have just ran away and just been like, where did you go? <laughs> Is this an Earthbreaker Holy Shield game? What did I just say? I just said some stuff. No way you don't die to that. Oop, fish. Okay. See you later, Earthbreaker. Fish is so broken, even at low levels. Oh, oh my. Rank one slice? We're online. Well, we're missing some things. That guy doesn't want to fight. That's okay. Oh, there's a bunch of mobs here that I need to kill anyway. Sounds like a guy just sliced next to me, so he's a prime target for being dead because he can make my guy bigger. Let's see if he wants to get it. Appears, appears not. It's not bad, because he missed... He didn't get a... Uh, if he has a, the ability to get out here, I can't really chase. Oh, his slicing wind's cancelled. That's the best chance for me to kill this guy. I can get a root if he fucks up again. He's gonna die to a dot. Nice. Oh my god, you have everything I want. Uh, rank 8, level 8, Quaking Leap level 1 instead of Roots. Okay, we're almost online. Oh no, no, that guy's being bullied. Save! Pick on somebody your own size, buddy. All right. Where's, uh... Will you go up top? Yeah. Wait, did you kill me? Yes, I did. I must have. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know if I killed you, but you asked me if I killed you, and I'm doing a lot of killing, so it's... And if their name was Max... Oh, Jesus, I feel bad about that. That fucking... That was... That wasn't good. Uh, okay. <clears throat> no! Insane. He is a star bomb strat! Oh, my God. I gotta eliminate this guy before he takes me out later. Holy shit. 
Uh, I'm just going to suck up this plunder while this guy looks at me. If he wants to get it, we can get it. I'm just getting plunder. If you attack me, I'll attack you. Oh my god, he's searing axe nothing. I, I shouldn't kill that guy. I'm just going to let him do his own thing. He literally just fucking keyboard turns searing axe the air. That guy is not dangerous. Hey, no, no, no. Okay, that's my chest. Okay, no, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it. No, you can have it. You can have it. You're good. You can have it. All good. Live your life, wild wolf. Yeah, see, no, please, please. No, no, no. No, he, no he got chat. He, he's just scared. He doesn't know what's happening. He's just scared. He's just scared. I'm not, I'm not trying to attack you. Stop chasing me down. Stop it. I should have canceled that. I forget you can do that. No, you're going to die in there, wild wolf. No, you fell into his trap. Justice for Wild Wolf. We killed his oppressor. He saw your kindness for weakness. Do you think so? Dude, it's 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 fucking slicing winds. If you use anything mid slicing winds, it like bugs out. That must be what it is. Weeby. Weeble. Wait, he looks like... Oh, he juked me. I, I saw it last second, but... Oh, wow, I'm bad. Max, let the poor guy live. Oh, okay. I tried to save one earlier, but then someone else just kills him, and then I don't hit level... I'm, the only reason I'm not level 10 is because I didn't kill that guy. What's up, big dog? Sorry, I got it level 10. Oh, you got ahead of yourself there. Ooh, what a fucking gameplay maneuver. Oh, I can't. Oh, I didn't stop his heal. This guy's a fucking gamer. He's gaming. All right. Ooh, lightning bulwark. Rank one versus rank four soul shape. I'll play Faith. Hello. <laughs> hmm. That's good. There's a chest here. Oh, it's fake. Oh, okay. Fuck. Is there more lighty bees out here? Lightning borks. I can get rank two. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get rank two. Wait, is that an, is that dangerous? Is this dangerous to do? I think maybe it's a little dangerous. Nah, we're fucking hard vibing, right? Alright, do you guys think there's a single lightning bulwark in this sea of fucking abilities on the ground? I don't think there is, actually. I would have uh, got it earlier. Bro, there's no fucking way, right? Like, literally everything in the game. There's so many mobs. Or so many things. Bro. Any... Th there's no... Okay. There's not a single one. Oh, Ducky dies level 10. Let's get in there, like swimwear. Oh, you're killing that level seven. Ducky die, fuck you, buddy. Fuck 
Fuck me, dude. I might die. Healing quick. Okay, I might die to that bleed. No! Oh! Oh! I went over it! I have to- I have to fucking- No, I couldn't! I was in a barrel, so I couldn't use that lightning bulwark! No! Oh... Uh. Uh. Alright, at least hopefully this guy can win. Wait, why are they not attacking each other? Okay, they were both like, let's get some plunder. And then they then they just it both decided to get it. Okay, one of them deserves to win. Who do you guys got? That guy is playing... This guy is playing Fish Holy Shield. And we got Fire Whirl Earthbreaker. Okay, Fire Whirl Earthbreaker, Repel Chains. All of these abilities stink. Literally all of them. If this guy wins, he's a fucking monster. And he's lower level. He fucking didn't even give a fuck. He just natty dodged it. That guy's in the... He's just in the store. <laughs> he's just in there. He went back in. Okay. He's going to get whirled on and he's dead. Let's go. Let's fucking go. I respect that. All right, Fired Up said they're done playing. They're going to do some keys for an hour, and then maybe in an hour he'll play. I'll probably be done in an hour. Hey, Just playing whatever abilities God gave him. Bro, we had a Slicing Wind Star Bomb Windstorm game earlier, which was actually pretty fun. But it's race to world last Plunderstorm 40. Bro, I've been Plunderstorm 40 since the first day. Only gaming for fun. Look at look what this guy said in chat. Remember, kids, 500 plunder, then into the thunder. That guy's gonna destroy himself. All right, let's look at some names. How come I can't see a lot of names? Oh, there we go. Let's see, let's see if we recognize anybody. We got... I don't recognize any of these guys. I don't recognize a single person in this game. Alright, let's fucking blast. Let's absolutely destroy. Uh, Who's feeling the long haul all the way? Can I make it? I don't think I can. Boy, this is a bad idea. I might be dead. Unless no one landed here, and then I'm I'm alive. And we're happy. Looks like I'm alive and happy, I think. Oh, that just went on cooldown by, by swapping its positions. Alright, I will counter that with an aggressive barrel. I might die to chickens here, unironically. I am not I haven't leveled yet, and they do auto attacks that you can't dodge. Okay, now we're good. I pulled a lot of fucking chickens. <laughs> Yank that fucking dumbass moonkin over here. It didn't work. Slice rank. Bulwark. Okay. Uh, we take those for sure.
Uh, did someone land Harvest Golem? They did, but we should out-level them. We got a really good landing position, and we've been fast, too. Only thing is we don't have a second offensive ability, so it'd be hard to win a 1v1. That Lightning Bolt works really good 1v1 early game, actually. Maybe we just... Oh, there's an ability. Ugh. Stinky, stinky, bad, bad. Missed fish? Did I really? There's no fucking way I missed fish. That'd be insane if I did that. Where? A while ago? Uh, I mean, I haven't been very far in the game. At the boomy. Bro, this is the boomy. You you looked at the wrong icon, I think. Unless you mean a literal fish, like, in the water. In which case, I'm mad. No, I was just wrong. Oh, it happens to the best of us. But also, never be wrong again. Don't be wrong again. Nice, level 7. We like that right now. That's good. Fire Whirl. All this stuff farmed already. Ooh, we can get some stuff here. Grab him. These guys are chasing, but I think we can tag. They don't, haven't lost threat, but I can kill. Are you fucking kidding me? Pieces of Hate probably has some guys on it. Level 7 right there. Drock. Oh, I've seen him in a few games. Oh, fish! Very good. I can't swap. Okay. I almost just died to the fucking... Fuck you, buddy. I'm out of here. I'm gonna stealth out. There's a lot of people here right now. Oh, he showed my position! I'm gonna wait for a heal. There's a lot of people right now. I could easily get fifth partied. Just gonna chill for a second. That guy's going for the chest loot? No shot. What are you thinking? No way you get that. All right, I'm down to get weird. Oh, 
unfortunate. Oh, I got rooted for that, though. Uh, big, big damage for me. That guy's so dangerous. I need to get the fuck away from him. That guy has fucking Searing Axe and, and, uh, Fish Smack. That is fucking turbo danger. You gotta be ready to kill that guy if you're gonna get in melee range of him. That is so much damage. Oh, Star Bomb! Oh, I shouldn't have... I got hit by that on accident. A lot of murdering happening right now, huh? Panda TV. Is that like the Panda TV? All right. Now that I've bodied everyone off this chest. Maybe maybe a 10 angle here. <laughs> 